Disclaimer. Several of the languages presented in this video require breaking laws or literally would be so painful to speak that they could cause physical harm. Again, I must remind you, do not do illegal things and don't hurt yourselves. You are about to witness the largest agglomeration of constructed languages in the history of YouTube. Depending on how copyright checks go, this may need to be split into two or more videos. If you're watching this live, be warned. This could literally take days. So, like, subscribe, and enjoy the chaos. Hello, one and all. To perhaps the largest and most vast conglomeration of disturbing linguistic creations ever assembled in human history. I present to you the 2023 Cursed Conlang Circus! Before we begin, dear viewer, I must warn you that the video you're about to witness is going to be enormous. Like, like unfathomably large. Like, we're contending with reaching or surpassing the YouTube video length limit here, okay? I received nearly 120 of the most brilliantly disturbing creative projects I have ever witnessed in my life. 120! Last time? It was 37. There were so many hours of footage, so many languages, so many mind-breakingly wild things that I've witnessed over the course of the past several months. I am... I am broken. I am... I am changed. And... And I want the same for you, too. I want you to be destroyed. Taken... Broken down into grains of sand, just like I was over the past several months getting through all of this. And you're gonna like it. You're gonna like it for over the next, who knows, 30 hours? Maybe if it gets split into two different videos, it'll be two 12-hour videos. I don't even know how long all this footage is gonna turn out to be whenever it's all compiled together. I have no idea. Eight different sessions recorded over the course of three months. Eight nights over three months, but now you're here too. Whether you created a language and submitted it for the contest and you're waiting to see your submission, or whether you're just here to watch us react and slowly die inside from the monstrosities that were made for this, I, I welcome you to ignore the holiday season, ignore the beautiful weather, ignore it all. I want you to turn on this circus, let this premiere run, and if it's two premieres, switch right over from the first one to the second one. Abandon everything. You have no family. You have no friends. All you have is this walk into hell that we have created for each other. <sighs> Welcome to the circus. I will see you in several intermissions between each of the days where I will impart upon you some secret knowledge that you won't get anywhere else. Go ahead. Roll it. Let's do this. All right, everybody, welcome to the Curse Conlang Circus 2, or the 2023 Curse Conlang Circus. I am currently joined with Eternal, and others are expected to join along the way, but since we have an absolutely ungodly amount of footage to get through, <laughs> we are just going to start. And people can come and go as they please, as long as there's at least the two of us here, because we just have so much to go through that... Uh, there's there's no time the, the the clock is ticking towards the end of our lives and we must do this before that clock is reached so uh, <laughs> uh, yeah yeah so we, we have a lot of terror to witness and mm -hmm. we may as well start with uh with this one right here skibbity bottom dada uh, of course which seems to be inspired by the the famous meme from a couple years ago presented by mm -hmm. large um, and we're, we're just gonna dive into this. Are mm -hmm. you ready, Eternal? Yeah, good God. What have you done, Agma? Yeah, I... <laughs> I there's, there's, there's no words. There's no words. Ironically, because this is a linguistics channel. Hello, yeah. Also, why is that an too. integration oh. sign? <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling we'll find out. 
Oh dear. <laughs> Let's skip the button. Da -da. This right here is a very Can you turn up the volume? I can't hear anything. By me. Gotcha. By me. So the words cursed and conling are in quotes. That is intentional because I don't know if this is really a conling more than it is like you take English, apply some rules to it, and you just speak it in a different form, but eh, I don't care. You're, you're gonna see what it's all about. It's definitely cursed, okay. though. So <laughs> what is Skip and da -da? No, that's So Agma Schwa, th this guy right here, made a video <laughs> announcing the Curse Conling Circus version 2. And, yeah, it's this guy. I saw this video the day what after it was announced, which is... <laughs> For today, it would be yesterday, and I just decided oh, to dang. submit an entry because oh, why the heck not? <laughs> and the other okay. thing is, I created this all in a single afternoon. Oh no. And I just oh, no. am recording it on the next afternoon, today. So just don't expect genius or anything. I, I don't even know what half this stuff means, but... <laughs> I, I just let my, oh, my God, wild okay. Just, just oh, because of that, I'm expecting that, genius it. now. The, the, so, <laughs> what it, some more explanation. Everything is translated into one of three languages. Yes, three languages. We have oh, no. English, Indonesian, oh, no. and Mandarin Chinese. And all the English and Indonesian <laughs> parts are going to be put into international Morse <laughs> code. We're going to be putting them into letters later. We're going to be pronouncing oh. them. Why? And everything here now will be how outlined how to translate any English text into skibbity bot and da da. And then to translate our sample text into skibbity bot and da da. So buckle in, buckaroos. This is going to be a wild ride. So, step one is to take all of your dashes in the language and count them up. And then you're going to take all the sentences. If the total number of dashes in your text is divisible by 14, then you translate <laughs> your sentence into Chinese. But that only applies for the first two sentences, because there on out it transforms to 23. And Chinese sentences cannot directly touch each other either, so it's got to be... There's gotta be at least <laughs> one English or one Wait. Indian. Okay, so how many, <laughs> how freaking, how big are these strings of numbers? Are, are are like these strings of Morse code gonna be if divisible by fourteen is a valid oh, criteria? That's why, that's why saying dashes. I was gonna say because I don't think the original text has any hyphens. He also said dashes, not hyphens. So I got all bit confused there, but that makes sense. Yeah. I forgot about them. Oh it's, God, it's I forgot freaking, about the Morse code. It depends no. on the Morse code being. If it's no, divided no, no, by no, no. 14, oh god. Oh, god. Okay. Okay. Jesus okay. <laughs> okay, moving on. Asian yeah. sentence Let's in see. between Chinese sentences, that's a whole thing. But if you can't translate into Chinese, you're gonna look at the numbered sentence. So if it's the second sentence, third sentence, fifth sentence, seventh sentence, etc., etc., you're gonna translate into Indonesian. <laughs> Otherwise, you're just going to translate into English. Obviously, but another yeah. thing is, you're going to take note of all sarcastic sentences. It doesn't say it here, but all questions, all plural nouns, verbs, names of living creatures, and where they are before <laughs> and after translation. You need to know which words they are, too. But another oh, thing God. is, don't translate names of living creatures. You're going to see this later on. But don't <laughs> translate the names of living creatures. And another thing is... Uh, yeah, this is very complicated, for seemingly no reason, but it's funny, so. So what you're going to do is you're going to take all your plural nouns and chop them into singular nouns, no matter what language you're in. But the thing to note is you need to take note of where your nouns are. And you need to take note of which ones they are, because you're going to add a pluralizer to them. Plural, plural. Is that the right word? I don't know. I'm not a linguistics major. <laughs> so, starting acceptable. off, if you're it's translating acceptable. into English, mm -hmm. you have your English sentence, you're going to remove all of your articles, A, M, and D. Simple. Okay. If you're translating into English, or Indonesian, excuse me, uh, then you just reverse the word order. But another <laughs> thing is you need to take okay. all punctuation and consider oh. any punctuation attached to a word. What? Is that for the Morse code? That word. Oh no. no. So if you have a period at the end of the sentence, that is not a period that stays there, that is a period that is a part of the last word. And now it is 
at the end of the first word now if you're doing your reverse word order. Excuse me. So if you're translating into Chinese, you're going to do this. Oh, God. <laughs> so you're going to take your N rotation, which is a rotation between 2, 3, 6, 9, and 14. So the first time is 2, second time is 3, <laughs> dot, 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 fifth time is 14, sixth time is 2, seventh time is 3, and it just keeps okay. going back on itself. What do you you make count sense? every N symbols, take the next symbol out, and put it, put it into its own separate group. What the and heck? you can take every symbol that you didn't take out and you rinse and repeat until you have under three symbols left. And Actually. another thing to note, carry over counts. You will not start ah. back at the beginning each time. No. You will have to start back where you left off until you get to the end of the word. This is a, and then you this is a freaking like sundial. The beginning and you keep <laughs> like... going, you keep repeating onto yourself. God. And then, once you have under three symbols left in your group, you apply your original spacing of the words. Say, for example, when we have three characters, two characters, three characters, and one character, it's the same over here. Three, two, oh. three, and one. Oh, and no. for I'm the not even... example two, we have three, oh. four, four, two, oh. four, five, and four. Wait. It'll go to three, four, oh, four, God. two, four, five, and four. What? <laughs> what? Wait, wait, wait. what? So you, n is between that. So you 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 count n. So you take one and two. You take out three. Uh huh. Then you count three. So that's four, five, six. Take out seven. So we have three and seven. And then you count six, but you wrap around. <laughs> uh, eight, nine, one, two, four, and five. So you take out six. Um, six, seven doesn't exist anymore. So now we're at eight. Now we need to count nine. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine. Is that? <laughs> I forgot what I was. It's two, I think. So the next one would be four. I'm not sure what's going on here, candidly. I, I think that I've is... lost count. The, it's that this is, is it's like a, a linguistic like calendar. It's just like a, a repeating like circular a, cycle of linguistic information. Reminds me of like the, the cryptography lecture I took last semester. It's just shuffling around yeah. characters. Good God. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> okay. Uh, let's let's see where this goes. Just know this is correct. This isn't. Okay. I did this three <laughs> okay. times. Okay. For example, one three times, I got the same exact result, this, every time. For example, two, I did the exact same, or I did this three times, and I got three different results every time, so uh, if you're going to try to do example two, just know that you make a different answer than me. <laughs> and again, as mentioned before, don't translate your names of living creatures into Morse code. Because that it's just disrespectful, you know. <laughs> That'll just be rude. They'll, they'll that just be stored as plain rude. text or how they're stored normally. And another thing, if you're asking a question, take your inter international Morse code and just ditch it in favor of <laughs> American Morse code. So we're just translating the English and Indonesian parts in the Morse code, not the Chinese. The Chinese stays as Chinese characters. I know they don't make sense, but to a native speaker of skip the button, da da, it all makes sense. Everything yeah. makes perfect sense. Most so, definitely. So let's get Actually. going, shall we? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So step two is you need to convert <laughs> all your Morse two. code into an alphabetical no. form. So Morse code by nature is not really pronounceable, let's say. Uh, it's just you mean you can <laughs> so we're going to put it into, into its own alphabet, and all Morse code characters are going to be grouped into the following letters, which is going to be God. B, B, B. <laughs> Soft and hard B. I mean, alternatively, for four dots, you oh, can God. go B. <laughs> and then we have A, ah, E, E, and... Oops. According to all oh laws of aviation, the bee shouldn't be able to fly. <laughs> oh my God. Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the, the ground. The phonemic <laughs> bee movie translation. <laughs> because bees don't care what humans think is impossible. <laughs> okay, on, I wonder how many people are going to do that, though. <laughs> Just literally make the bee movie oh, translation a phoneme, like... 
Oh no! Oh, I have a feeling. God. I just have a feeling this isn't going to be the only oh, time that we see we'll that. See. We'll see. There's, a, there's there's 119 chances to see whether that happens again or not. We'll find out. Oh God! I wonder how long the translation is going to be. It's either just going to have the first four sentences of the B movie a bunch of times in there because it's just a phoneme, or the entire translation is, is just the single phoneme. We'll see. Yeah, well, we're about to find out. Yeah, that that's actually what it says. I didn't want to have to do all that in the IPA thing. But this will be for all your dots, all your dashes, and yeah. So another thing is American Morse code, as ingenious as it is, it has four different things. It doesn't have two different things. It doesn't have just dots and dashes. It has <laughs> long dashes, which... <laughs> The long dash, I believe, is only used in the letter L, and the very long dash is only used in the letter zero. Correct me if I'm <laughs> wrong, but... The letter zero, yeah. We have the O, which is Michael Jackson's all, Ow! My voice doesn't go high enough for that. And then for our very long dash, we have Shimoni. <laughs> just, yeah, okay. just a Michael Jackson's all Shimoni. Yeah, you actually have to do these. I can't wait but to see another this thing practice. is we have special characters. Do you think we're uh, just gonna leave it off as this? Nah. So, in addition to our regular characters, we have special characters. Uh -huh. We have skip the button. Dot up. This is only used to refer to the name of the language, and naturally, this is its only use. <laughs> and this is only how Good. you refer to the name of the language. You can't refer to it any other way. It has to be with this. Mm -hmm. And take note, this is not like the long S or anything. This is the integration yep. sign. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. it is the integration Indeed sign. Indeed it is. Then we have mm -hmm. GG, which is, Hey, I'm a goofy goober! <laughs> Get your inner rock star out, because... Y yeah, you, ha you can insert however many of these you want to whenever you want to, but just know... There has to be at least two of these per oh, 77 dot strings in a message. And they both have to be separated by at least 17 dots of space. Oh, like and just know, <laughs> if there's not 17 dots of space, then it doesn't really matter, just so long as they don't touch. But God. if you just want to say <laughs> as one long word, as you could touch. just say, Yeah, I'm a goofy goober! Yes. Yeah, I'm a goofy goober! Yeah, the, you actually have to do that. You have to. That's my favorite, by the way. And then we have I own zoological in mis pantalones. Get his bed. And it's funny because this lines up pretty much perfectly with the actual Spanish words. Excuse me. Why <laughs> don't translate that for the audience? There's a zoologist in my pants. Do you want to see it? <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> that that might be some kind of reference, but I, I it's honestly better if it's not. I'm I'll just accept it. <laughs> I don't know. I've never heard of them. Never heard of them before. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so when referencing someone else by their name, again, you you're not translating your names. You have to say this, and then you say their name. This is like kind of the formal introduction thing. Oh. Except there is only one formal introduction thing, so that's fun. Then we have this, which is <laughs> you just stick your tongue out and blow oh, like you kind of did in elementary school. So if something is a plural noun, trail, that's aka uh -huh, uh -huh. just dogs, then you will say single, or then you will say this, just <laughs> dog. <laughs> And that okay. is how you say dogs in Skibdibat and Dada. Then we have Q, which I have no idea how to notate this, which you just take your hand, put it on your cheek, grab your cheek, and then you pull out and push back into your cheek in quick succession, so it sounds what? something like... <laughs> so when you want to notate that a sentence is sarcastic, you have to put this in the exact middle of the sentence. Yeah, it has to be the exact middle of it. If it's, if you have an even amount of characters, you could just park them like the Red Sea, put the key right in the middle, and you'd be good to go. But if you can't park them like the Red Sea, you have to, like, there's already a thing in the middle. Say, in this case, there's a five in the middle. 
it goes at the right of the five. It, Naturally. it can't go on the left, okay. it has to go on the right. <laughs> and Obviously. then we have our Lego breaking noise, which I, I can't do because I'm not a native speaker. I'm not a <laughs> thing of rocks. But if you have a phone, um, you could just do. Oh. <laughs> and this will kill the start the of Lego every death single sound. sentence. Yes, every single sentence. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. But then we have our laser noise. Yes, this is a laser noise. And there's rules to it. So if it's in the past, you make a low pitch noise. In the present, in the future, <laughs> If it's a successful action, you just make a single sound. If it's unsuccessful, then you have to have two sounds with a gap. If it's something that didn't happen, you gotta replace all of this with TV static. And if it's <coughs> if it's a command, then you have to do fifteen sounds in quick succession. I think that was 15. That was 15. And then okay. we have our slash, okay. which is not really pronounced. It's just kind of like training wheels on a bike just to keep you everything located. Okay. So we, uh, let's <laughs> translate was, our sentence. Let's Someone's keep going, cute. shall we? Here we so go. So step one oh, is to God. translate <laughs> all of our uh, sample text <laughs> into our respective languages. So we have English, Indonesian, Chinese, English, and more Chinese. And okay. this oh, will God. turn into this then we have to turn our Morse code into something that the native speakers can actually read. And then we add our special characters, and yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and try to pronounce this now. Uh, wish, wish me luck. Oh god, I to the Chinese, good girl. <laughs> ba, a bub, a bub, oo, bub, ub, 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 ah. Hey, I'm a goofy goober! Oo, <laughs> ba, bub, bub, ub, ub, ooh, ah. B ab bab ba b u bab ba pa ba ba b u ab u b u af b. You're my goofy goober. U ba ba ab ab. According to all known laws of aviation, <laughs> there's no way the bee should be able to fly. No. Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. No. The bee, of course, no. flies no. anyway, because bees don't care oh. what humans think is impossible. But. Uh, uh, <laughs> just, uh, it just moved uh, right on. Uh, 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 <laughs> ah, ba, ah, ba, <laughs> ba, 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 <laughs> ah, ba, 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 <laughs> ba, 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 up. Ah. Yeah, I'm a goofy goober. Up. Up. Ba. Ab. Ub. Ab. Ba. Ah. Psh. Ah. Ab. Ah. Ba. Ab. 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 B. Bob. Ah. B. Bob. Bob. Ba. Bob. Ah, the Chinese do. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Bib. Ab. Ab. Ba. Soon. Mind my Chinese, please. Wo hoi lo feng lon he. Me. Psh. Fe hui dong. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse my grammar. Up, 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 
Ooh. Ab. But according to all known laws of aviation, <laughs> no, the bee should be able to fly. <laughs> its wings are too slow to its fat little body off the ground. The bee, of course, flies anyway, because bees don't care what humans think are impossible. It just makes you feel like you're ah. so close, Psh. and then yeah. that yeah. hope is just stripped away from you. Yeah. <laughs> Bob. Bob. That was the last one, though, I think, luckily. You have a goofy goober! Ah. Oh god. Ah. Ying Feng Mi Dia. Wow. Okay, so going oh, into god. our word inventory. Oh, wow, god. it's empty because we, we don't have any special words for this language. <laughs> uh, everything has. Yeah, uh, I, yeah I noticed. It's borrowed yeah. from other languages. I see how it is. So, yep. Yeah, for the sake of my mental sanity, I'm not going to pronounce this, but most people. Are, would have stopped here, and I'm going to translate the entirety of the words to Wonderwall. Oh no. So, yeah. Here's all the lyrics. Oh god. Oh no. Don't do this to me. Wait, how long is this working video? I don't think you can do it. Yeah, that's all folks. Take care. Okay. Have a great rest of your evening. Or whatever you're watching this. That was a solid troll right there. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. Well, on that <laughs> note, everyone remember to lick and subscribe. Yeah, li lick and subscribe to large. Um, <laughs> <laughs> large and right. skibbity bum da da. 733 views already. That's pretty solid. All right. So, what do we think about this one? <laughs> I, I think it's pretty solid, right? Um, quite, quite something, yeah. Exactly. Now, first of all, for like our, uh, for our sheet. You can see we have a nice new uh, newfangled sheet for this one, um, mm -hmm. and here's our point uh, system here. We'll mark whether the language is rock themed or a posteriori or both for consideration for its, uh, you know, for for its. Uh, what, what did I call it? Honorable mention. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. So here we go. Uh, me and Eternal are um, judges by default, and we have spaces for up to three more other people, depending on like who shows up and for how long. Yeah, you can also add more columns. I've just put in three for now. Yeah, exactly. So now this one is uh, is number three on the list. Skibbity bomb da da. We yeah. have our we have our three criteria, of course, which is like the mm -hmm. creativity, the cursedness, and the execution. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> which well, I'd say it's it's definitely very. It is creative, I'd say. It is solidly creative. It's like it is. It, it's it's interesting because it's like it's different from your average conlang, you know. Mm -hmm. Like uh, just just the if it was simpler, it would technically be more of a relax. But it's like been yeah. layered so many times over and into diff like using different languages as the tools. I'd say mm -hmm. it's pretty solidly creative on there. Yeah, I think, at that uh, point it's more like a Creole. Than yeah, a yeah, Creole something like that. It's a freaking cipher Creole thing. <laughs> I, I think I'll, I think I'll give it like an eighty-five for creativity. Yeah, that that seems reasonable. <clears throat> All right, it is. I mean, it is very cursed. It's very cursed. It's very okay. cursed. It takes it takes a real long time to utter. And that's kind of mm -hmm. like half the point is that it like just goes it through so many point. complicated it's layers. It's to... <laughs> yeah, it's also how painful it is to your own to listen to him. This one was. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> it it, re it really made you beg for mercy. So, uh, I, th yeah. I think uh, I think I'll do eighty for that. <clears throat> I'll give it a ninety for this one. Actually. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And then the execution, of course, solid presentation. Mm -hmm. Um, very solid presentation. Um, I mean, <laughs> I the, the freaking Lego sound that that's 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 peak production value right there. 
I think. Uh, I like I like the point where he went back all the way to the first slide to read the B movie script instead of just inserting it again. Like that was like peak presentation skills right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I think. Uh, I think I'll, I'll do uh, also an eighty-five for execution. <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, I'll give it a. I'll give it a ninety. You know what? Sure. All right. Cool. And now. And is it rock and is it a posteriori? It mentioned it rock. Definitely a posteriori. It is definitely a posteriori, I'd say. Yeah, very true. Now rocks, it um, mentions rocks, but it's more just it, 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 but it's more just a Lego death sound. Yeah, right? I think that's like the only rock theme in there, and I don't think that really counts. Yeah, it's Lego, which is good, but I don't know if it's rock. Mm -hmm. So we'll, mm -hmm. we'll we'll give you a posteriori. On here, uh, this is from Kazizzle Zip, who who submitted a language last year too. So let's see. Oh, I see. That's why it says the sequel. Yeah, exactly. So let's uh, see what we got. So I did try to do a screen recording, but it was so bad. I gotta <laughs> do a sideways phone recording. So oh, okay. round two. I'll, here I'll take it. I did I'll last legit. year's, and uh, well, last year I was not very true to myself. <laughs> Honestly, and I feel like that just made it bad. Okay. You know? Okay. Like, I just, I, I was so rushed. I was a week late and still was rushed. <laughs> so this You're not alone there. You're not alone there. Better to be early, alone. you know? So, I looked deep into my inner self. <laughs> and what did I find? Uh -huh. But of course, the noble, the robust, the snake. And it said <laughs> to me... Oh god, so okay. I see say, I was pretty confused. And I was like, <laughs> oh, huh? And the snake was like, S -s -s. So I was like, can you tell me? What does S -s -s mean? And it was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> uh, so, it taught me. And this is S -s -s, which is, it can be called Snacklang. Because <laughs> it's a language. It's a lang of snack. Now, I am so unbelievably sad, because I asked my Alexa earlier today, like, I just said hi, and it was like, oh, great, I, you know, all this week I'm preparing for Snake Day, and I was like, what? Snake Day was yesterday. <laughs> I completely dropped the ball with this one. Oh, Anyways, unacceptable. The sounds, I tried to do it IPA, I don't really know IPA, so I'll just <laughs> say them. I see. <laughs> Okay. okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I, I don't even know where this, where this, this, where does it go? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one is a bit complicated. Yeah, too. that it, that is tough to talk about. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> um, I saw your thing with like the rock, cause I watched, uh, cause uh -huh. I watched the video, and so I asked <laughs> my inner snake self oh, very politely. Can, can you can you do something with rocks in your language? And it was like, yeah, okay. So this is a writing system of rocks. <laughs> okay, there you um, go. Box check. I have the rocks. Yep. Yeah. Um, the pictures are kind of bad, and the phone's making it worse. <laughs> so I apologize for that. I'll link I'll link the slides with this video, and the spreadsheet so you can see the words. Um. I don't have this anywhere in the slides. It is S V O, word order. Okay. And, um, okay. I didn't really <laughs> uh, know if I should trust the snake, due to previous instances, but um, <laughs> naturally, I thought good, might good as well. You know. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Anyway. Uh, so mm. it also told me there are eight classes under two super classes. Oh, if oh you can see right there. Okay. Um, uh -huh. super classes, animate, inanimate. They're okay. not very okay, important. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Now, under animate, there are low, high, beneath, and sky, which just kind of talk about the domain of the oh. thing. And okay. animate doesn't really mean alive. And inanimate doesn't mean not alive. So like snakes consider as, worms as, as a inanimate, <laughs> but it, uh -huh. it would consider a car animate. A uh, low, high, beneath sky Actually. that talks about his domain. Mm -hmm. So low, that's like snake, dog, and cat. You know, high is like humans, elephants. Beneath, that's like fish, kinda. If you know, like it's 
but beneath uh, where a snake would be. <laughs> and sky, Not of course, really. like birds. For inanimate, edible, green, wet, and other. Other's kind of a catch-all in this one, because snakes do admit, n if you're not edible, green, or wet, like, that does exist. Something that isn't edible, green, or wet. Now, green does mean vegetation, but it also just means the physical color. <laughs> so, like, a green Lego is not considered other. It's considered green. Um, like, worms, you under inanimate, good. they're considered wet. You know? the This is the order. Fair. Fair. The... Like a cast system, like this would, right here. <laughs> low is top, wet is bottom. Worms uh. or snakes hate wet things. Do not call a snake <laughs> wet; they will hate you. This isn't very important linguistically, though. Uh, you conjugate stuff, right? But otherwise, this like whole cast system doesn't matter. Um, unless, of course, you want to join <laughs> snake society, and then, of course. I understand. I want to. So, I'm internalizing it. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I was very happy when I saw that you said we were doing B-movie script, because if you did not know, snakes are the only natural predator of bees. And <laughs> bees I, I somehow... are the only natural <laughs> okay. prey of snakes. Okay. It's yeah, very, obviously. It's a very niche obviously. little thing. Anyway, oh. So, I did the rock translation <laughs> just for this slide. I do not have the time to do it for every slide, especially since I'm already okay. a day late for snake day. Anyway, uh... Hmm. <laughs> 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 you learn this language from Voldemort. It does it does remind me of that too, yes. <laughs> I thought it was just me. <laughs> no, I, it's, that's, it's, that's pretty good. Okay, um, now... Uh, oh. Oh no. I oh god. I say, wait. Oh, yes. Um... <laughs> okay. Uh, phonemically, like, to build a syllable, Syllable. There are no vowels. Um, so no real coda. Stress isn't important. A T can only go in front of another letter. A T cannot be on its own. Anyway, I'm working on the nice. on the spreadsheet. You can you can see kind of. I'll link it. I'll link it. Don't worry. <laughs> now something for verb conjugations. Um, and adjective, but verb specifically is only conjugated for this, and this is put like behind the verb so uh -huh. it a low mm -hmm. is is tss, tss. okay <laughs> okay and okay anyway mm -hmm. these are put before the verb and if you have no like not you see there Shh. that's put before these Mm -hmm. These okay, are also that, yeah. attached to the end of the adjective that they're describing. So, like here. Okay, so now, if the adjective green, is turned to an adverb, which any adjective can, um, then it just doesn't get one of these. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, this is a slide link. I'll <laughs> link it, oh, obviously, God. better. But in case you <laughs> yes, just want to type it all no, out, let's, go let's, ahead. Let's, let's, let's type <laughs> that all in manually. Uh, now. Anyway, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. All right. There it was. 
<laughs> all right, that was pretty solid. Uh, next, Rock Lang. All right, I I asked for this. <laughs> you did. Yep, this is Rock Lang by Lark, right? Okay. Yep, Lark. Okay. I'm watching How us this whole time. Oh God. Oh God. Okay. Before we get into the Kun Lang, we need to talk about a few <laughs> conspiracy theories. Oh God. No. I believe that there is valid scientific evidence that rocks are sentient and have seen our every step. They're just kinda quiet about it. <laughs> okay. And not only that, but they can actually also move and jump around. This is, like this how is do the you ghost think they get in those in nice Charmaine. patterns on pathways and stuff? <laughs> but that's not where it ends. The only reason geologists would pay so much attention to studying boring rocks was if rocks could control them. <laughs> oh shit, okay. <laughs> Let's start with the phonology. <laughs> Allow me to explain. Um. <laughs> the first table on the right represents the rock jumps, which come in three sizes, small, medium, and large. The other table represents the rocks throwing themselves at objects. There are four of these throwings. Hitting a window, <laughs> represented as the one symbol. Hitting a car, represented as Hong. Hitting a person, represented as Ao. And hitting a dog, <laughs> represented as Quack. Those tables are only possible because rocks can actually move around. But the rocks also put to use the fact that they can control people. They can force people to say certain vowels. Consonants are considered rude making speaking the language a duet of sorts as to why the rocks use every single vowel we'll get to that soon i promise but first we need to understand a bit of rock culture <laughs> rocks are pretty dumb so they had no need for a language until artificial intelligence put their financial stability in limbo however when they developed a need for language the rock community wanted them to be united against their problems <laughs> They based their language off of their favorite human languages, which they had knowledge of after thousands of years of listening. This is where the a priori aspect comes in. Let's see how rocks formed their words off of pre-existing yeah. human languages. Here is the equation to find the score of the word, which will be used later. Here's what the variables mean. As you can see, rocks greatly admire French and its orthography. <laughs> Wait, what do, you, what do you mean fundamental equation? <laughs> what? What? What is happening? So F2. it's... I, I think it's just the... I think this is supposed to be... Uh, it looks like a long S to me because the horizon... I can see a very faint horizontal line. Yeah, there is. I think those are Fs. But it... Yeah. It's very faint. So we have... Oh, F1 God. times 20 minus F2 plus F3. Okay. okay. <laughs> Alright, let's see how this goes. Here's a quick example. B in French has three silent letters, seven letters total, <laughs> and B is the second letter. So using the equation from earlier, we get 41. Oh God. Now, take all the digits of this score, and take the score mod 9 to get a list of numbers, which in this case will be 3 in length, 4, 1, and 5. Oh God. Each digit maps to one of the rock's favorite languages. Listed on the left, use the first vowel in the translation of the word in that language in the original orthography. <laughs> Additionally, jumps and throws More can occur simultaneously with vowels yeah. and can change the meaning of the word or mark the part of speech. The smiley face is the notation that ends the list of simultaneous sounds. <laughs> the smiley face. Confused. Let's look at the B example. The digits are 4, 1, and 5. Language 4 is Tamil. And the first vowel of B in Tamil is E, I but like we would write it how it would right be written now. in the original language. Do this for every digit and we've got our word. There are some extra <laughs> rules for different parts of speech which you can find on the document. Here's a bit of the grammar. This is quite abridged so if you for some reason want to know more visit the document. Nouns are pretty simple and have no cases. But the rock language actually has a complex pronoun system that isn't derived from any other language and has its own special orthography. Additionally, there's a system where adjectives have to have every vowel that a noun has for them to agree. Okay. 
<laughs> Verbs can express seven evidentialities and seven narrativities, created by making simultaneous sounds with the extra vowels at the end of verbs. <laughs> Heard from God, oh God. <laughs> oh no, IDK, what to put for this one? <laughs> However, rocks are stupid and soon got tired of being original, so they copied <laughs> the rest of the conjugations from Estonian. Lots of nice rocks in Estonia. Estonian. <laughs> I get Additionally, it. Additionally, you can get separate it. words by using five of the vowels oh, not in the sentence know. consecutively. Uh -huh. Sentences are ended by jumping three times and saying the vowels from the French word of the sentence number. <laughs> One last portion to this monstrosity, <laughs> I promise, and that's how the rocks gain control of humans and get them to say stuff. It's a highly formal process. <laughs> you need an igneous rock, a sedimentary rock, and a metamorphic rock for the incantation. The igneous represents the type of talking you're about to do, the metamorphic represents how long it is, and the sedimentary represents the primary and secondary vibe. For example, if you wanted a one-sentence propaganda that was happy with undertones of Umami, you might use Pyridotite, <laughs> Mica, and Wake. The actual incantation is quite simple. It consists of a royalty-free rock song, a few jumps, all the vowels to be used, and lastly, a prayer to their one and only God French. A typical one is listed here but some last for as long as 20 minutes. Here's the translation. I was going to add a visual, but I was busy. Okay. Jump, 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 God. jump, 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 jump. Ooh. Eh. Eh. Uh. Oh. Uh. Oh. Uh. Ooh. Ah. 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 Eh. Ah. E. Ooh. Oh. one of those like 2012 like flat earth conspiracy videos 
Like, <laughs> like those dramatic text-to-speech with the deep music in the background talking about uh -huh. like, the 2012 apocalypse or something. That was beautiful. Yeah. Uh, Alright, time to move on to Japona's Leverite, or Leverite. Leverite, let's see. Let's see. I remember yeah, when this one came out. Rock thing. Yep, it, it, it would appear so. Let's find out how. ...about Leverite, my submission Le to Ekmashwa's first Konglang Circus. <laughs> I like the rock music again. What is Leverite? Well, Leverite is an international ox lane that utilizes <laughs> a familiar <laughs> site for all of humanity, rocks. <laughs> The name Leverite derives from the term used in archaeology, geology, and other fields for a rock that appears interesting but is not. It <laughs> utilizes the name of over <laughs> types of rocks and utilizes syncism, which is taking all the grammatical uh, anomalies from different languages and just merging them together because, after all, you can just speak normally, right? Oh god. So. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. In. Never no, right. No, there is no geology. <laughs> only geology. As you can see here, we have all our geonomes, which are all different rock names that I'm sure all of you will be deeply <laughs> familiar with <laughs> as people that <laughs> know what a rock is. Right? Oh yeah, obviously. Now. I have selected some languages to be used for the Oxlang, as I think they are representative of their area. We have Bengame, a language I said it's spoken by the Dongon on seven villages in southern Mali. Okay. Basque, okay. a language I said it's spoken by. Is it all isolated? In Europe. <laughs> we have the Ainu, <laughs> a language I said yep. spoken by a few mm. elderly members of the Ainu. The, mo the most the international auxiliary you could be on. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, Aboriginal Australian language. I said it's spoken by a small number of Wagimon people. Savaso, Savaso, uh, a language I said it's spoken by Savo, a small volcanic island north of Galata Canal <laughs> in the Solomon Islands. Oh, we got Kaluk, a language I said spoken in uh, northwestern California by the Kaluk <laughs> people. And Yalakabre, a endangered language I said of the central Bolivian Yelakane people. Oh god. So, the word order in Leverite oh is SOV because from my browsing of the very respectable wikipedia.org has revealed that at least Bengame and Ainu share this quality. <laughs> Never mind the interesting underlying linguistics about how Bagime uses the SOV for the present tense and the SVO in the past tense perfective. That's actual linguistics. And as we all know and have learned from every Opslanger, actual linguistics is boring. <laughs> Wagimon does not categorically distinguish nouns from adjectives. These form one word class that is called nominals. This means I can be lazy and forget about making adjectives. Instead, like Wagimon, <laughs> these fancy nominals take case subjects that denote their grammatical or semantic role in the sentence, which I'll show in the next slide. Finally, I will be lazy and use the English adjective noun, or now nominal nominal, but with fancy <laughs> grammatical cases, and pre possessor, possessor. Possess e. okay. As you can see, I have definitely processor, more than processor. service level knowledge of <laughs> linguistics, like every Oxlanger. It's funny, because I don't know what I'm doing. So here's our nominal cases. We have the dative, the instrumental, the comative, the locative, the allative, the ablative, the privative, the temporal, and the symbolative. <laughs> oh god. And these um, all are just stolen from grammatical tables I found on Wikipedia and smoshed together ah, yes, because the they look cool. Case table. Yeah, exactly. Like every the, the case does. table, most certainly. So we have got our pronouns here. We have the first singular, the first dual, the plural inclusive, the plural exclusive, the singular, the plural, the singular, and the plural, and we got nominative, accusative, genitive, and these were stolen directly from Wagimon, as I <laughs> could not bother looking at other pronoun tables. 
So, I couldn't bother researching these languages' unique and endangered systems, so, as I can't find it in the video, <laughs> I will use English because I told you this, therefore it must be the best oh, language. Oh, my and God. to add on to that, I am too lazy to make another table, so have this. We have the simple present, <laughs> the present progressive, the simple past, the present past progressive, the present perfect simple. These the freaking present, rocks, perfect, they're, they're like the such past, obscure perfect, simple, ones. The past perfect progressive, the future, future progressive, future perfect simple play. We have this translation of the beginning of the beam tree that goes a little something like this. Delight. Less delight. Oh Great no. String, <laughs> oh my god. Nectrobolite. Oh. Oh. I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> Anthrostolite. Argilite. Bithmus coal. Lermichel chalk. Lestock, 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 and oyster. Tromacademite. Blue granite. Gay sterlite. Oil right. shell, drink it, demand, amphibolite, munikit, munikit, tele, tokadite, eloit. Lowstone, lowstone, gridstone, oil shell, drink it, demand, blue, granite, oil shell, drink it, demand, amphibolite, tilete, aa, mugrite, bathymetic, katas, and light, less the light, aa, less the light, tilete, or styrite, phosphatite. I don't, even, I don't even know what to say. Lustite, Lustite, Gritstone, Oil Shell, Tremagadenite, Blue, Clanite, Oil Shell, Tremagadenite, Amphibolite, Lustone, Lustone, Gritstone, Oil Shell, Tremagadenite, Blue, Clanite, Orphan of Stite, Gritstone, Shona Kite, Kite, Unakit, Lamiche, Nephilim, Stonelite, Gritstone. To just the sheer amount of suffering. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, I think it's like the all the the, the fricatives, maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah, like maybe. Was... I can just imagine someone like like people traveling with like these giant suitcases full of every one of these rocks required to speak this language, going up to <laughs> another person and just like spelling things out with their pile of rocks. Gally <laughs> Stone. Come on. There you go. Uh, fire. Una kit. Lime show. You will find the word list linked in the description below. But this has been my language and submission of the cursed Conlang Se. <laughs> the cursed Conlang Se. All right, <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> so okay, that, that that was that was a good time for sure. Um, again, just like the, the translation itself is just brutal. <laughs> Time resumes. I'm going to insert this cough drop into my mouth because I know I've got a lot more talking tonight to do. <laughs> so let's let's let Nightmare Russian take its course by Thomas. You know what Baldwin. also helps? What what also helps is drinking water. You know that yeah, that, that also helps. I do indeed have a cup of water here and a okay. nitro cold brew to kick open at some point soon. After the cough drop. Mm. Let's let's witness Nightmare Russian. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Is the sound? A Lukoyan. There is. <laughs> when I was first getting into constructed languages through Doom Eternal of all things. Oh. I found myself commonly using the sound H in place of a glottal okay. fricative. <laughs> I found it relatively easy to make and distinct from English, so I used it a lot. Mm -hmm. This particular sound caught the attention of a nameless friend who speaks Russian, and they asked me questions about my burgeoning, now well-abandoned, language. The result of these questions was a summer project that I called Nachach Kyovsnikov, or as its directly intended translation, Nightmare Russian. <laughs> okay. At the time, my only known languages were Mandarin and English, so I conceived Nachach as an unholy combination of the two. Oh god. How does Russian fit in? I'll get to that later. Now, does this make it somewhat <laughs> a posteriori? Hmm? It's not for me to decide. <laughs> okay. After a year and a half of work and revision, I am very satisfied with the result. However, in favor of being cursed, I shall instead use version 1 of Nachach with its various... 
Let's say quirks. <laughs> With that, let us commence. The basic word order in Nachach is the same as Mandarin. Subject, verb, object. Similarly okay. to Mandarin, the first version of the language is analytical. Tense is designated at the beginning of a sentence for the subject. If no tense is stated, it is assumed to be the present tense, but can also be indicated without certainty in verbs. Ergativity is defined with a, gr a grammar particle between the possessor and the possessed. Oh, God. Or the possessor taking an earlier place in the sentence. <laughs> Due to the analytical nature of Nachach, there are no conjugations of any kind, nor any prepositions other than tense, possession, location, and plurality. Okay. Similarly to Mandarin, once mm -hmm. again, adverbs are indicated through ergativity articles, with a described verb being the possessor. As you'll notice, there are a few complex sentences in languages. The only ones being allowed are what I know as combinations of incomplete and complete clauses other than combinations of more than one complete clause. Okay. Sorry if that isn't what isn't the right term. That's all I know it by. Still relatively new, but anyways. We'll I have see. not yet told you what makes the nightmare language a nightmare. First there's a quick word about animacy and word order. For the most part, animacy is not employed in Nachach. There, however, are exceptions. Animacy is represented by moving a given animate word into the subject, or if the first word of a sentence is not a subject, moving it into that place, in front of it. Mm -hmm. The animate object is then marched, mm. marked as such by the quotes, Ekla and Scotso. However, this okay. creates a rift in the sentence where the animate noun once was, and thus it must be filled by a particle that indicates plurality. What's really painful about this is what counts as animate. In Nachach, vegetable fruits are considered animate, and are <laughs> the only class of nouns represented as such. Okay. <laughs> as a matter of hey, fact, they oh. are the only <laughs> class of nouns with definitive NVA distinction, which is something that I'll talk about soon. Anyways, vegetable fruits are considered to be tomatoes, peppers, pumpkins, peas, String beans, eggplants, avocados, olives, <laughs> corn, zucchini, any and all beans, and most importantly, <laughs> cucumbers. Okay. <laughs> it's like, oh god, what's happening? The most nightmarish thing about the nightmare language is a little feature that I like to call NVA distinction. Oh God, that stands for noun verb adjective distinction. Again, if there is a more separate, more accurate terminology for this, I'm sorry, still relatively new to Conley. To illustrate, some languages might have a central word for the three that changes in some form to adapt the three rules. Other languages just might have independent words static. entirely for the three functions. Yeah. Hmm. In English, for example, you can say that you are reading a book, say that you have a book, and say that you are bookish. <laughs> Nachach is not like other languages. In Nachach, there is no NBA distinction. The word book is book. The word that means to use a book is book. And the word that makes oh, a noun no. book-like is also book. Okay. 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 For a more specific example, <laughs> like, take the sentence, uh -huh. the night is black. Or in Nachach, Gajachov Chestov Yelutz. There is no way to distinguish one part of a given word's function from a separate part based off of conjugation, word variation, or any other linguistic tricks I can't even remember the names of right now. And that's without mentioning that certain nouns are comprised of more than one word. There are no words that can serve all three functions, as using traditionally verb words such as carry or to have. As a noun means talking about the concept of the action itself. Mm -hmm. This uh -huh. is very confusing for people who aren't a native speaker or Nachach, or people that aren't me. <laughs> this is, as I like to call it, the stuff of nightmares. The lack of NVA distinction leads to a few quirks, one of the most common of which is something called verb object of simulation. Take, for instance, the sentence, all, all. <laughs> and yes, those two letters 
are a full and complete sentence in Nautach. Oh. Anyways, O oh, is used to indicate oh, the God. first person. Basically, I or me or Tahanyur. So, the assimilation of both the functional verb and the object of a sentence into one word, uh -huh. you have O O, which means I am me. Okay, Another that's more fun cool. example is in the sentence O Dil Stove, or I Destruction. <laughs> Due to the NVA distinction, the sense can have a variety of meanings, such as I am destruction, I destroy, mm. I am a destroyer, I have the qualities of destruction, and I have the qualities of a destroyer. Mm -hmm. Fun fact about the word Dil Stove, it's a misremembering of the Golden I 007 pistol DD44 Dostove. Remember that what? example from earlier? Uh, that's extremely. It's a deep cut right there. Ol uh -huh. can mean either I read a book or I am a book. Notice that at no point did I ever use anything e resembling Russian grammar or anything based to be different from Russian grammar. I didn't even research Russian grammar. <laughs> <laughs> That should cover all of the necessary grammar. <laughs> now it's time for phonology and writing. There's a reason that I included the grammar before phonology. It's because the phonology and writing were made at the same time. See, oh, what I no. did was I went onto the uh -oh. Wikipedia page for the Russian alphabet, wrote down all of the letters and their English equivalents, and used that to make both the writing and phonology. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Except I lied. Uh, to make oh, things even oh. more nightmarish for native speakers of Russian, I included five extra letters. <laughs> Eight of them. Ulfi. Urs. Eyes. And staff. Yes. Uh -huh. That is a Nordic O with a line through it so that you've been seeing this whole time. Oh, God. And I made names for all of the pre-existing letters to further confuse uh -huh. them. Good, Things were good. written strangely also. The first letter of a word is capitalized and the remaining vowels are half the capital letter size <laughs> and the consonants are halfway in between the two. I that. This actually looks really cool in writing, but when trying to replicate the effect online, things start to look a little janky <laughs> without I, 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 painstaking yeah. work. Gotta, gotta use that dulo seal. Naturally, the, tr the transcription of the same text will be done mm -hmm. in the online fashion. Paris, yeah. <laughs> As I previously said, all letters have their own sounds, and all letters have their own in-language names. I shall thusly show each letter and speak its associated sound. Along with each letter, I shall show its in-language name and the sounds of its name in the original Latin transcription. It is very important for you to look at the Latin transcription. It will make you feel pain. Okay. Here goes. Ah. B. V. G. Oh, God. Da. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ja. <laughs> okay, the romanizations e. are pretty brutal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> K. Good, good. La. M. How? Na. O. P. R. S. <laughs> the sound Ta. evolution just went beyond Ooh. this orthography here. F. Deep Ch. beyond. T. Ch. Sh. Sh. Ch. Uh, no sound. <laughs> okay. E. Also, no sound. E. U. Yeah. A. St. <laughs> oh god, o. what was that? <laughs> er. I. Ugh. And now here's a consonant table. Oh man. And here's a vowel table. Ugh. Okay. All of those letters took around four hours to get right. What? <laughs> now, I'm sure that you noticed that the letter that usually makes the J sound is pronounced as J with a soft H, unless the letter is at the front of a sentence in which the soft H is realized as a hard H, unless the following consonant is Y, but eh, it's getting into semantics. This is <laughs> definitely not a mistake. 
<laughs> this letter is also changed. In normal Russian, the letter would make a consonant, quote, soft. Mm. In Natach, it gives the letter a second sound. Uh, Take a look at um, yet, for example, being pronounced as you would, as such in normal context. If you add the soft consonants to the end of it, you have an what looks like an E flat, and <laughs> you'd expect it to be realized as yay. It is uh, not. It is instead realized good, as good. Je. Oh no! <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. The same what? principle applies for e letters, in which applying the flat causes it causes it to be realized as a j instead of e. Conversely. This letter is like a musical natural sign that reverses the effect <laughs> of the soft consonant oh, on a letter. Oh no, we're going with the, the music note metaphor. the consonant has oh, would remain constant if it weren't corrected. <laughs> That's pretty good. There is some phonological evolution as I intended it to make a more naturalistic language in the latter days of creation. One example, aside from the je rules, is vowel degradation, specifically with <laughs> a and a in front of voiced fricatives. One common example is with the consonant V. In front of this, both A and O degrade into the schwa. This degradation only applies if it's not in the first or last vowel to occur in the even goofy word, but also semantics. <laughs> this is probably the most common example of evolution and is therefore the most relevant and indicative of its like evolving peers. Uh -huh. Anyway, now with that Got out it. of the way, time for the passage. Oh no. We <laughs> All things considered, I think that I did a relatively good job at making the first complete language. To be honest, I totally and completely failed at making a language that is a nightmare for Russian speakers specifically. That's the only thing that even closely related to Russian. It's language literally just was not Russian. My first at all. day working, yeah. level, and that was just writing down some Cyrillic characters. I don't even think I got the entire alphabet. However, I feel I succeeded. Making a language that is an error for everyone to learn. If someone seeing this knows Russian, <laughs> oh I'd be delighted to know how much of a nightmare this is. <laughs> I, still being proud of my creation and wanting to implement it into my con world, have since reworked the language oh, to no. make it more usable, but still keep its defining features. <laughs> I think that every language I make has something at least a little cursed. Like one language, Heja Sefsevan, has no stop consonants, hence the name Smooth Tongue. <laughs> I may or may not put out a video with Nachach in its refined form and its history within the con world, but hey. Go for it. I think you might find this to be pretty cursed. And again, I won't find out until the circus of. Yeah. Comes <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful logo, I love it. Hit <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Alright. All right. Beautiful. All right. So yeah, go Thomas Palmer. <laughs> good, good content, Thomas Palmer. Mm -hmm. that, that that was pretty solid. It, again, it it did turn out to have literally nothing to do with actual Russian, but that kind of <laughs> makes it even better. <laughs> yeah. All uh -huh. right. Uh -huh. Next we are on to Shadriarch's Geo Lang. I I think I remember something about this one too. I, I, I try not to watch any of these because I wanted to same. be like have like same. an authentic experience. It yeah, was kind of hard to avoid some of them because some of them like blew up on the algorithm like crazy. Oh yeah. Um, but uh, I, 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 I've seen like maybe the first like few seconds of most of them, but I didn't like watch. watch yeah, well, them me, yet. me too. When I like entered them into the spreadsheet, I didn't. But I haven't watched any of them yet. Uh, yeah. Though. 
I did see one or two in my recommended pretty much every day. Yeah, exactly. All right, Hello, person, let's see. Dragon Schwa. I'm Shady Arc, That's and my me. Submission for the second Curse Conlang Circus is Geolang, the secret language of geologists. I'll begin with a disclaimer, since in my effort to create a rock-based language, I may or may not have created another illegal language for the circus to deal with. <laughs> this is all right, building well, cairns, I'll, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Okay. The, <laughs> well, the penalties for making these cairns are equivalent to those for vandalism. Dubbed rock graffiti, cairns are considered malicious mischief and warrant hefty fines that vary depending on location. <laughs> and in some instances, rock stacking is punishable by jail time. We'll get true, into why this truly later, high later, crimes but if anyone finds on quote unquote speaking jail length, Make sure you aren't breaking any laws while you do so. With that aside, let's get into phonetics. As you might be able to tell, this is not okay. the IPA, and in fact there are no sounds to speak of in this language. These are petremes, the equivalent of phonemes in geolang. Hey, I like it. Rather than sounds, yeah. petremes correspond to a particular commonly found rock, such as shale or limestone. Geolang also diverges from traditional spoken languages in that this table does not actually include every possible petreme. In theory, Geolang incorporates all 5,000 known mineral species, while also considering size, coloration, or any number of other factors. These are romanized as R plus that particular Petrim's qualifier. The Petrim's listed here are simply those which a Geolang speaker would use or encounter most often. When using Petrim's to construct a lithine, the equivalent of lexemes in Geolang, they will be placed from left to right on their level. The orientation of a cairn may then be determined by which way the phrase and sentence markers face, but more on that can be found in the full document. On to the grammar. For nouns, very little conjugation is necessary due to the ordering <laughs> the of sentences and phrases, scale. but it is important to note grammatical number. <laughs> Geolang has three grammatical numbers, singular, plural, and superplural. In order to determine the grammatical number of a given rock, a Geolang speaker performs a test using the Mohs hardness scale. A rock on the low end of its relative hardness performs range is singular, a, a rock with oh, no. average hardness is plural, and a rock with high hardness is superplural. For example, if Gabbro was part of a plural lithium, we would determine its approximate range on the Mohs hardness scale, 6 to 7, then find the middle portion of that range, 6.3 to 3 to 6.65. I've included a portion of the table for the hardness ranges of the commonly found petrines, but the rest of it can be found in the full document. Oh, Here's a portion God. of the pronouns table, pretty simple here. Now verbs are where it can get difficult for an inexperienced oh, no. geolang speaker. The verbs are conjugated era. by age oh, according no. to period, which corresponds <laughs> to a given tense. The age of a rock is best determined through the use of a thermal ionization mass spectrometer. <laughs> Using this system, geolang has separate conjugations for remote past, past, near past, present, near future, future, and remote future, where the remote past is indicated by a petrine being from the Cambrian or Ordovician periods, past is indicated by a petrine being from the Silurian or Devonian periods, the near past is indicated by the Carboniferous or Permian periods, the present is indicated by the Mesozoic period, the near future is indicated by the Paleogene period, and the future is indicated by the Neogene period, and the remote future is indicated by the Quaternary period, which is our current period. Makes sense, right? Oh god. Still, it isn't guaranteed <laughs> yeah, that a geolang speaker can find a rock from a particular period, or that they have one in their collection. There is a process <laughs> for the irregular conjugation of verbs, although doing so is looked down upon as a mark of an inexperienced speaker. In order to mark a rock for a different period than it is, one may place a fossil from the corresponding tense and period on the left side of the petrine, which begins the <laughs> verb that needs to be contextualized. Here is a table with fossils, fossils that live specifically only during their own period, though any may be used as long as they can be found only from the period of the desired tense. Verbs continue in their complexity with grammatical mood, of which Geolang has five separate indicators for infinitive, indicative, subjunctive, potential, and prescriptive. A given Geolang phrase may only have one mood in its cairn, since a mood is denoted by a change in location. <laughs> Preferably, these cairns are as close to one another as possible, but this rule may be ignored to offer context. For instance, the locations which will be used to translate the passage provided are as close to New York City as possible, since the B-movie takes place there. The infinitive is denoted by being placed on or atop the a plateau, the indicative center. is denoted by being placed on or atop a mountain, the subjunctive is denoted by being placed at the entrance of or within a cave, the potential is denoted by being placed on or atop a volcano, whether active or dormant, okay. and the prescriptive is denoted by being placed at or within a canyon. <laughs> a geolang speaker indicates the location of the next cairn in a sentence or phrase by placing a map or pamphlet beneath the cairn which shows the site of the next cairn. The number of rocks <laughs> are set in a pile equal to the position of the cairn in its phrase to denote the order of phrases or cairns in a sentence. Here I will be going through syntax in the form of a simplified cairn diagram, but more on syntax can be found in the full document. This cairn translates to, I found a cool rock. 
Something to note for Geolang is that if a speaker is referring to a particular rock or other geological phenomenon that may reasonably be included in the canon, it must be. Such veterans are not subject to hardness qualifiers or any other qualifier that may have been otherwise imposed on them. Okay, wait a second, I just, I just, Hold on. <laughs> I just thought of, <laughs> just a thought came to my head that like, yeah, the, the, this, this current, like, the past two like cursed conlang circuses have added over 140 conlangs to the world, and oh, like God. now, now a significant percentage of them are like related to rocks and geology. So, so someone who like is good, who finds one of these languages or like comes to the conlang community without knowing that one of the themes of this circus was rocks yeah. <laughs> or like the B movie is going to just think that like, for whatever reason, conlangers in general are just obsessed yeah. with geology. <laughs> <laughs> like this is gonna be wow the geology community sure intersects with the conline community huh? oh my god what have you done agma what have you done Maybe no. it'll... <laughs> next next year's circus also has to be rock themed or something like that man. oh no just make rock <laughs> just, thing just, now. yeah just hammer it in until like geology is just literally mixed with con <laughs> yeah also uh, just... force it to be real <laughs> That oh my god, Agnes. Ju just hit my mind now that, like, geology may be, like, permanently infused with calm lagging. Like, <laughs> no, no regrets. No regrets. Anyway. You have brought this upon this, Agma. <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's, let's continue. Geolang are written, stacked, in SVO word order from bottom to top, and used to be read the same way. However, it became more natural for readers to read top to bottom which resulted in Geolang being written in SVO, but read in OBS word order. So this is written, I found cool rock, this particular rock, <laughs> but it is read rock, this particular rock, cool, found, I. Coupled phrase is the term for a can that has fallen over, whether naturally or as an intentional interference in communication. Coupled phrases can be difficult or impossible to read <laughs> since the order of the can may have been obscured partially or entirely. If a geolang speaker comes across a toppled phrase which they cannot parse, they may simply place a piece of natural glass atop the cairn, which signifies a request for clarification. <laughs> just glass? With all context out of the way, we can begin with the reading of the passage. I say reading, but I will simply be saying the English names of the rocks and locations. Since it is being read, we will follow the traditional OVS word order. Qualifiers such as hardness and age are written on the diagrams, but most do not appear in accompanying images. Complete cairns will be displayed alongside complete sentences, and maps and position rocks will not be. Here goes. <laughs> Cave, Mesozoic Diorite, Mesozoic Brecca, Low Hardness Marble, Low Hardness Granite, Pumice, Conglomerate, Conglomerate, Map, Run Rock, Volcano, Smallstone, <laughs> Low Hardness Jersey. Siltstone, Low Hardness Sandstone, Yellow Rock, Mesozoic Pumice, Pyrite, Low Hardness Marble, Low Hardness Granite, Map. <laughs> Mountain, Average Hardness Shale, Average Hardness Slate, Small Rock, Mesozoic, Amphibolite, God, top, the gloss, pyrite, the low hardness amphibolite, yeah. map, free rocks. Hill, <laughs> small stone, low hardness granite, low hardness limestone, low hardness siltstone, small rock, large rock, rhyolite, siltstone, rhyolite, low hardness amphibolite, map. Are there. <laughs> Are there actually <laughs> carrying at all of low these hardness, spots? Siltstone, low hardness sandstone, <laughs> yellow rock, granite, no, gravel, talc, pyrite, small rock. <laughs> Mountain, Mesozoic Sandstone, Mesozoic Shale, Pyrite, Low Hardness Sandstone, Low Hardness Sandstone, Yellow Rock, Yellow Rock, Small Rock, <laughs> Volcano, Small Stone, High Hardness Siltstone, High like Hardness Sandstone, blood. Yellow Rock, Pumice, Conglomerate, Peridotite, Rhyolite, Talc, Pyrite, Mesozoic Diorite, Mesozoic Brilliant. High Hardness uh, Siltstone, High Hardness Salt, Map, Rocks, Rocks. <laughs> it's all freaking at Lookout Hill, New York. Mountain, Small Stone, Campion Slate. Low hardness marble, low hardness limestone, low hardness grey whack, average hardness siltstone, average hardness sandstone, yellow rock, kelp, conglomerate, <laughs> slate, granite, limestone, one rock. <laughs> Said by the movie about the Link to the full document will be found in the description, and thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> the freaking gloss and the map leading oh to all these places. <laughs> okay. That, that was quality. That that that's a that's a yeah, ninety-five yeah, yeah. creativity for me. That that yeah, was that definitely good be, best usage of rocks. Uh, so far. I'll give it a hundred because that 
<laughs> yeah, best best usage of rocks. Definitely. Yeah. Now we are on to the Lutronai systems. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I, I don't know how to pronounce I, it. Interestingly, I had a comment on this one, but I didn't write it down. And it's the fact that I'm pretty sure you omitted the diarysis when you put in the names language, and you keep doing that. You keep omitting diacritics. Oh, I noticed no. that in several of these. Oh no! I was too lazy to copy and paste, so I just typed in what the tab above me said instead. Yeah, that is uh, fascinating because I don't understand how you can be too lazy. I even commented on that as well, how you can be too lazy to <laughs> copy and paste because it's like it's faster to press Ctrl C and Ctrl V than to actually type out this word. <laughs> I, I'm not sure I, how your mind works sometimes, Agma, candidly. Okay, may, maybe it was on the iPad or something and I couldn't copy. Oh, hey, Ringwistics is oh. here. I, Hello. Whatever. Hey, hey, Hello. Ringwistics, how's it going? <laughs> I apologize for being very late. That's okay. We are going on to our 11th submission out of 119, so you're you're good. <laughs> uh, oh, wow. Um, <laughs> um, I'm going to pause the recording real quick. Ooh. Go for it. Hey, Ringwistics. Wait. Welcome. Hello. Wait. Yeah. No, fuck. I was trying to think of something <laughs> funny. Oh, man. I can't. <laughs> okay. All right. We're but in. We're in. Here we I go. I can't believe I failed. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Let's <laughs> on, on, to the, on to the next submission. Woo! Comedy gold. The next one. Uh, if you are coming here from just the algorithm. Hi. Uh, <laughs> but if you are coming here from uh, Mr. Nga himself, or hi. in fact, are him. Are him. Hi, hi. That, that's me. Hello. Hi. He's Welcome talking to you. To <gasps> Renha <gasps> Renha a Curse Conlang submission to sub Curse Conlang Circus to submission by the Luchine system. Hi. Uh, so. What is right, this? Right. Uh, it is a curse, hopefully, uh, true posteriori based in okay. the northern Rhineland, parts of okay. the Netherlands, along with oh, various wow. minorities in France. Okay. Um, it's mostly comprised of formats of vocab with histrionic loans where I feel like it. Okay. Um, well, an important oh, thing okay. to note is that it's VSO okay. word order with SVO for questions, so SV inversion. Oh my god. It's the other so we have the phonology here, so... Mm. Uh, oh my. So we've got I, I, oh U, no. I, I, U, e, o, o, Dang, look at those vowels. E, o, o, <laughs> That's crying. I don't know, this just seems like a normal e, Germanic language to me. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I uh, well, well, uh, yeah, sure. For the short vowels, for the long vowels we have A, U, O, I, U, U, I, U, U, A, O, O, I, I, O, and then for nasal long vowels we have A, I, U, O, A, O, I, O, I, I, and finally O. Very, very Germanic. Uh, yeah, I mean, we have yeah, nasal vowels are different than long vowels are different than the different than the J, J, and and For the orthography, um, oh, it man. got here. It's um, oh boy. You have tense vowels represented by an acute, lax vowels with a lack of acute. Um, hey. <laughs> and the consonants are what you expect. However, CHG and FGH are alternating because of stress patterns patterns and because stress is marginally phonemic um oh god. Okay. you oh god. will get wonderful situations where um certain consonants soften in stress environments um or lenite at in word initially so uh -huh. if ptk or d are followed by are stressed, except for a few cases, they will lenite into P H T H C H 
such. However, the CHG thing is a bit more unpredictable. Um, for long vowels, however, this is where it gets hard. So, stress long vowels, tense long vowels are double acuted, and uh -huh. the letters are well, doubled for general long vowelness, except for long e and i, which is what represents the digraph by j. J. Um, <laughs> a lot of this takes after oh, Dutch, God, yeah, you're if you right. probably can't tell. Um, what? And uh, now on there, 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 it's got a J with an acute in it. Conjugation. Like if, like oh if yeah, you, that's uh, not unusual. Dutch, if you probably can't tell. Um, not, it's not unusual in Ultra French, at least. Um, <laughs> yes, I'm so uh, used now to that some story. Conjugations. We have <laughs> air, so um, this is fully regular. Um, this is much regular, but it's you know it's, it, it's not words. as yeah. Ubiquitous as some other Oh language. god, the conditional form. We have ear, <laughs> which is the more commonly used one for loaning words, especially from Dutch and other Germanic languages. Um, oh god. And if you see, you've got the asterisks and the uh, capital U M and brackets, and that basically tells you tells people that well, the ending. Causes it all out onto the basal, like or onto the root oh, vowel. Oh, first person oral. So, <laughs> that, yeah. that depth thong is awesome. And we have air vowels, which show a lot in common with the ear, but it's distinct enough. And so, so, so now we have auxiliary verbs. We've got so we have to be and to have, which are you know important. Um, I hate so that I can yeah, actually. Yes, oh God. <laughs> yeah, that so makes sense. Oh, no. <laughs> which, uh, you can see the orthography in practice there. And to have your H, I, of it, of it, of and of it, of it. So, uh, we have, again, orthography on display there. Mm -hmm. And now we get on to the noun declensions. So, this is what a typical first declension has. Second declension. Fifth declension, sixth oh, okay. declension, I skip by third and seventh declension, oh, God. and eighth oh, declension. Oh no! Okay. Now each of them have their own environments and typical where they Germanic. use um, and a bunch of other history that probably isn't that very important. So now we move on to the adjectives, which do not decline for case; they only decline for number and gender of the noun. Okay. Um, and it's mostly distinguished there. by an umlaut. However, <laughs> if the root is an I, you will not have... It, it's uncommon to get uh, the umlaut working properly, in quotation marks. Uh, okay. Now we have the uh, articles, oh, definite and... Dear God. So, <laughs> okay. Wow, well, yeah, there we go. It looks about right. Germanic. Deus, Germanic. You know, mm -hmm. Hyper-Germanic. And, yeah, it goes down. Four cases, genders. What have you? Now we have the pronouns. Um, I fu chay loy lo zi. Yeah, this all looks like scarily <laughs> realistic. <laughs> <laughs> this is the ultra Germanic to ultra <laughs> French. Yeah, exactly. Me fu chay loy lo zi. And we have the plurals. We have nuvo los laus, nuvo los lus, nauter vitor lurs laus, noi voi loves loves. And now, the final piece. Okay, I'm just skip that. Volge al ileus lechen, a avasoi hur. Oh. Eid lau i festival, ki votir avavat, vlegir unge aip. Zut laur ailen, te kleinen, boi zule vat, laur gorp, groes gloen. Vail Grompi. Oh. Oh, God. Zur Vlechit. Double diaries. Vlechit. No Zolicit. Zolicitat. Elias Aipen. Ki Esir. Dikit. Umechen. If first of all. Dear God. And. Wow. That's it. Um. 
I, I, I hope and pray you give me a good score. <laughs> uh, and if not, it was great fun making this. Good stuff. Thanks, Lucha Nice. Y'all are great. I, I hate good. that. Seeing as I speak German, I can actually understand part of it. That's yeah, the worst part. It like, it, it's like uh, un unfortunately realistic. It's like, oh god, yeah. I could see this being real. Oh god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, this is definitely ultra German. Yeah, so ultra cre German. creativity, that, that, that was pretty solid in terms of creativity. Mm -hmm. Next, we go on to Lingo Lizards Touch Grass. All right. Uh -huh. Oh yes. Boy. So, mm, take a look at that big boy lingo lizard. Let, let's see. Let, let's see. I, I if think I'm... I watched this a while ago because it was lingo lizard, but I don't yeah. remember. So, if we'll I'm see. biased in favor of the person ahead of time, do I have to recuse my vote? <laughs> you gotta be brutally honest. You gotta be All honest. Right. If you're abstaining. That's right. He is just merely one of these 119 submitters. Mm -hmm. All right, so there's see. this fellow Langtuber, Agma Schwa, Hi. who's hosting the second annual Curse Conlang Circus, <laughs> where people That's submit true. some frightening, horrifying, factual. but also very <laughs> funny conlangs. <laughs> a conlang is a constructed language <laughs> artificially memories. created by individuals, and I also very heavily dabble in starting and then shortly after abandoning conlangs. So today, <laughs> I present to you this Calm monstrosity, down. dubbed Touching Grass. <laughs> Touching Grass is a type of sign language where you communicate by doing gestures with your body. Except in this case, all of the gestures involve going outside to touch grass. Signs in touching grass are <laughs> made really up of needed three this parts. Language. One yeah, of them yeah, depends exactly. on which fingers you use to touch uh, the grass, using your pinky, ring finger, middle finger, index finger, thumb, all of the fingers, just the ring, middle, and index fingers, just the thumb and pinky, or clenching your hand in a fist. The Super second part depends moment. on which hand you use to touch the grass, <laughs> whether you're using the left hand, right hand, or both hands. The final part of a sign is what's on your head, distinguishing having hair on your head <laughs> from being completely bald. <laughs> so in order to sign the language, you'd have to shave oh, off your no. head completely and then grow it back throughout the course of a conversation. Of Alternatively, Easy. you could wear a hat to convey the opposite head status. Hey, so if you mom. have hair, then wearing a hat <laughs> substitutes going bald. And if you're bald, then wearing a hat substitutes spending obscene amounts of money on hair regrowing products. In order to use a hat as a substitute, it is required to be Good the hat. type of hat worn by people who go outside. The romanization has two Why forms, was... one where Not it's written like a description of what's happening as the hand touches the grass, but that, that can take a while- Do you think that excludes pangolin hats? Sorry? Do you think that excludes pangolin hats? No, no, it's, oh. it's, it's got to count. It's got to count, you know. <laughs> oh my god, I was gonna say secret handshake K-bop Creole. That, that's what we got here. Oh to type. no. <laughs> so there's a shorthand version, where each part of a gesture is simplified to a single uppercase Latin letter, oh, god. and three letters represent one sign. Is there a reason the within the boundary of a morpheme, are on? signs oh, are separated know. by hyphens, and when the morpheme ends, one or two spaces are used to separate it from the others. It is possible to make even more cursed signs, but since there are only 54 unique <laughs> oh, signs from combinations oh, of each no. of the three parts, this necessitates that multiple signs be used for a single morpheme. Each morpheme in Touching Grass is made up of three phonemes, you know, like in Vakil, and this leads to 157,464 uh, possible uh, morphemes in a language, a little bit naturally. more than the number of possible syllables in Vietnamese. <laughs> Which is completely necessary because yeah, the vocabulary is actually 6, a relax of Vietnamese. Oh god. A combination oh, I guess of this is actually and grass Vietnamese represents and K-pop one yeah, Vietnamese yeah, syllable exactly. and inherits ah, all the syllables associated <laughs> meanings. This is actually decently convenient since the majority of syllables in Vietnamese represents one morphine and can usually stand on their own as a single word, other times combining with each other to form compounds. Combinations uh, of three signs are assigned to Vietnamese syllables oh. at random, but this obscures any phonetic encoding from the Vietnamese words. Oh, for God. example, Vietnamese has reduplication, so the word for small, nha, can be oh, reduplicated no. to be nha nha, meaning very small or tiny. Uh -huh. But since the first syllable has a different tone, their touch and grass equivalents have nothing to do with each other. <laughs> this also applies to proper nouns. The word for <laughs> Poland in Vietnamese is ba lan which is meant to sound like Poland, but touching grass's word for Poland is just the equivalent of Vietnamese syllables ba and lan, and as a result, <laughs> it literally means three orchids. Vietnamese also has a lot of loanwords from Chinese, 
and oftentimes there will be syllables that came from Chinese that can only be used in compounds, which are also usually Sino-Vietnamese loans. As a result, in Touching Grass, there are also combinations of three signs that don't mean anything unless put into a compound word. As for the grammar of Touching Grass, it's very similar to Vietnamese grammar, with Not SVO familiar. word order, adjectives going after nouns, and the possessor going after the thing being possessed, which is separated with the particle mom. Pua nice. in Vietnamese, or Harry <laughs> left middle, ball both hands mid, Harry right fist in Touching Grass. <laughs> There's also a boatload of noun classifiers and the entire kinship pronoun system to worry about. Touching Grass has prepositions instead of postpositions, but many of the words that correspond to Vietnamese prepositions have been reanalyzed as cases in Touching Grass. It is universally accepted that Touching Grass has cases instead of prepositions. Anyone who says otherwise will get told to touch grass derogatively. The Vietnamese tense and aspect particles have also been changed around a bit. There's Vietnamese da, which is a formal way of marking a completed action, but has been replaced with the retrospective aspect in touching grass, which describes actions that occur before a reference point. The retrospective is just a synonym of the perfect. The only difference is that it has a name that isn't easily confused with another similar, but very uh -huh. much distinct aspect. In Vietnamese, se is a formal way of marking the future tense, and its touching grass replacement is the prospective aspect, which is for actions that happen after a reference point. Basically the opposite of the retrospective, <laughs> Vietnamese has tang for their continuous aspect, which in touching grass became evil and turned into the discontinuous. <laughs> Speaking of which, oh no. zoi, which is a casual way of talking about past actions in Vietnamese, is now the corrupted aspect, which oh. describes when the subject oh of the no. verb turns into a worse person through doing an action. <laughs> Lastly, Vietnamese <laughs> has always mai that and sap to mark I the recent that. past and near future respectively. Uh, uh. The touching grass equivalent of mai is the absentive aspect, denoting Sorry, someone what? not being at a certain place when doing the action. Just like when you're <laughs> what? Absentive what? that the subject was not at a certain So the opposite okay. of locative uh, or something? But it's that's like, but well, it's there, an is, aspect. It, there is a yeah, that's weird, that's an aspect because there is the abessive case. Yeah. That means being not there, but it's like that but as an aspect. Oh god, how would that uh, even work? Because I, uh, how would it even work for an aspect? I don't I guess it's just attached because to that is a bit weird, I will say, because aspects typically denote a, how something it's I guess it's like laid a verbal, out on the timeline. It's like a verbal dexis, I guess. Like Oh god. Like, like the verb has an aspect for whether or not the person was present for the action or not. Uh, uh, Good god. Uh, <laughs> yucky yucky. Oh god. Dad left to get the milk. The replacement of sap is the iterative aspect denoting the event repeating throughout a single occasion. There's also a few more aspects that totally aren't just some Vietnamese verbs and adverbs reanalyzed as such. To demonstrate touching grass in action, I will now go outside and recite the opening what? of the B-movie script outside? in the language. Oh god. What? That is a nice lawn. It really is. That's St. Augustine Bermuda grass. Landscaper oh moment. <laughs> you could have just Naturally. put two places together and said that and nobody would know the difference. <laughs> Just imagine if, like, other people walking by in the park while this is happening. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I wonder what your expression would look like while doing this. Yeah, exactly. I imagine, like, a face of, like, furious rage. I'm just imagining sheer boredom. Just imagine how many takes and how many scenes are being edited together here. But maybe, like the same look are... that, that Daniel Swans not in his face in the Babel video. Yeah. It's like that. <laughs> the bee of course flies anyway.
just love like the it's a gloss is technically just the Vietnamese tag. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that, if it works, it works. Uh, yeah. Thank you to all my patrons, with special <laughs> thanks to Sunder as a top tier supporter, and I shall now say goodbye, or as it is in Touching Grass. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Alright. Oh god. Quality. Okay. Quality okay. content. Okay. Let me close out of these tabs, and I'm gonna open up this oat milk latte. Oh yeah. <laughs> mm, nighttime caffeine. It doesn't get any better than that. Mm. I have never I'm had a latte late. before. No. Are they supposed to sound fizzy? When they come out of a can, yeah, because it's pressurized. That's a nightmare. <laughs> that makes sense, I guess. All I right. Suppose. <laughs> Our next one is JRG the Conlangers, a rota, or we'll find out how it's pronounced. I don't know. Let's see. All right. Let's do it. It's from Reddit, so that's a good sign. This is there my submission go. to the Cursed Conlang Circus. My language is pronounced, uh... Let me check. It's <laughs> pronounced... It's pronounced... Yeah. Uh, oh, no. Wait, oh, God. wait. What? Which means, of course, no. Oh god. <laughs> the goal of this Off to a good start. is to have uh, the minimum amount of effort put into it possible while still having um, a stupid phonology. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, phonology I like these goals. Let's get to that. Here are oh the consonants. God. <laughs> the consonants are P, T, Vela, Corona. <laughs> no! <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> Computorial? Oh no. Oh god. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, I guess the compute I guess the computorial approximate would be impossible. Ah. <laughs> uh... <laughs> What? The manual click. And look. <laughs> As you can see, totally realistic and totally uh, normal phonology. Oh, yeah. Constant inventory. Mm -hmm. Obviously. <clears throat> I not only just spit it out the entire constant inventory, but also the entire lexicon. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. What? Oh. <laughs> God damn it. Every word. <laughs> Is a consonant. <laughs> AP shit is aqua. There is, however, one exception. Uh, the word for aviation is agma schwa for no reason whatsoever. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Why is there an H? Probably a recent loan word for some other language where the word for aviation has been happens to be agma schwa and they that's, incorporate into the language without. Uh, that's the aqua schwa um, of the copy pasta from last nationalizing year. Nationalizing the word to. Uh, their phonology. Yeah. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> so that's enough of the consonants. The vowels are Oh god. E, 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 U, E, 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 What are the subscripts for? Oh god. Yeah. E, E, R, O, A, Ah, oh god, it's like ah. a spiral. It is. The 16 vowels all have numerical uh, values. Oh, oh so no. Numbers. <laughs> and the numbers serve up to free to free up the word order, essentially. Uh, more on, on that in a bit. Oh god. <clears throat> <clears throat> now to the grammar. Sentences are constructed from continents by a 
via English logic. <laughs> then vowels are added to each word in the clause, starting from zero. So you're going to, so in the clause, you just, you just sort of number the words zero, one, two, three, four throughout the clause. Uh huh. <clears throat> the numbers uh -huh. allow any clause to be shuffled to mark emphasis. The earlier a word appears in the clause, the more emphasis is put on it. And I give an English example. So the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog with these numbers. These numbers there, the sentence can be shuffled around to lazy fox brown jumps over <laughs> the, the quick dog. And the numbers <laughs> Like serve, the two articles in a row. Um, yeah. Uh-huh. 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 The syntax, but of course these numbers would actually be pronounced within the language. This conling. However, uh, translation, the translation will not shuffle the words like this, um, because I am lazy. <laughs> and now we're going to get to the copy pasta. Fair enough. Oh no. Oh god. This is, this is the hardest part in all of this. <laughs> P ta <laughs> uh, where was I? <laughs> P ta <laughs> e e <laughs> e v agmashwa e sh a Oh, uh, the freaking hand rubbing sound. Yeah. I hate that. Oh, God. Three. Two. Do bees no. do that thing where they rub their hands together? Or is that a different insect? The, that's the praying mantis, yeah. No, wait, that's a, those are flies. Uh, yeah, I guess a lot of bugs do it. The... They rub their four legs uh, together to wipe off dirt, according to Quora, the best source uh, on bees. Oh yeah, yeah, Quora is known <laughs> for spewing yeah, nothing but facts. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Especially about bees. Yeah. Yep. E. The. <laughs> the sarcastic mm. clap. <laughs> <laughs> I think it should have been slower, <laughs> honestly. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> If you go too slow, then it's the evil villain. Uh, clap. <laughs> yes, but if it's too fast, it's an earnest clap, which isn't a phoneme. That's true. That that goes. I guess you could say it's an allophone uh, of a sarcastic clap. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Are they lost? Yeah. <laughs> the, Possibly. This, this is a very challenging one right here. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. We. Do le. Okay, uh, that that was very awkward, but at least I technically read out uh, the entire, <laughs> the entire, <laughs> uh, the entire text. Certified. This language, is, this language is stupid. I, I'm not going to touch this again. <laughs> I, just, I just hate it. I think, uh, you think they were, like, looking uh, up at their screen this for the... should be sufficiently the... cursed, because I... Personally, I can't even stand what I just made. <laughs> oh, <Okay>. God. <laughs> wow. Yeah, well, I need to stop I think, this. I think what was going on during that trend. <laughs> oh, are they still going? Nope, it's oh, done. No, they're not. I'm, I'm done. I'm crazy. Now it's time for Frotz's Moldovanto. 420. The video duration is 420. I hope that was on purpose. Whatever you want. Oh, I just clicked on, on my gory video. Yeah, anyway, there we go. Alright, here we go. Ready? Let's do it.
Oh god, the writing system. Hello, this is my Conlang for the Conlang Curse Circus. It's called Motoranto. And I'd like to present it to the people at the Conlang Curse Circus. It was made by I, Frod, the real one in the Cakeland server. So if there's any impersonators, you know that I'm the true one. So <laughs> the one that. and only Frod. <laughs> That's enough. Mm. Anyways, let's get to see. I'm glad Ranto there's only one. It's written like that <laughs> in the romanization of the con of this Conlang. And it's the flag, and let's get right into it. Yes. Languages that <laughs> I took inspiration from. These are the ones. Basque, a language I've spoken in. Basque. Although a language I've also spoken in. Although then. It's <laughs> from the box, a language I've also spoken in. <laughs> and Sorry. A language I've also spoken in. Your mother. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did they just... Can we go back at one uh, one slide? Uh, <laughs> did they just call Esperanto a language isolate? Spoken in blank. <laughs> and then... No, the, uh, no, the, no, no, Eternals right. The isolate thing is clearly the weirder offender. <laughs> I I love how Moldovan is also read as a language isolate, and then Rock is of course the language isolate spoken in your mother. <laughs> Moldova mm. is a language isolate too. <laughs> it's is that a La, uh, as, as far as I can tell, Mol the the term Moldovan refers to an ethnic group of Romanian speaking people, not to, yeah, to a language. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if there actually is a Moldovan language, but I think that's kind of the point. I think this is just a, a solid shit post right here. Yeah. What? Also, no. I like the Nobody would rock. ever shit post in a yeah, cursed who, who, who online would, contest. Who would do that? Who would do I, that? I do like the the comment next to rock. <laughs> the language isolate spoken in your mother. Uh, all right. Let's well, it watch. needs to be spoken somewhere. Uh, exactly. Oh well, God. Just, um, <laughs> there's a disclaimer. The rock sounds will be made by me because I've tried like three times before and they just couldn't go through the microphone. So that's what you get. <laughs> Anyways, the other, the other consonants. Why is Alvia yeah. like the end? Oh but, no. <laughs> Agma is the orthography for Nga. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, so. Uh, <laughs> 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 Four. <laughs> 39 apostrophe <laughs> is the phoneme <laughs> for rock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Uh, and there's also the, the apostrophe um, is the transcription. We need to. And then the 39 take, is also the transcription. Yeah, we need to take a look at this because there's a few things that <laughs> you might be missing here. First of all, I might direct your attention to the fact that alveola is for some reason at the end. <laughs> After, Whereas, after rock. <laughs> also, it seems that this that this speaker's uvula has had an unfortunate accident and like somehow fell down past the glottis. <laughs> oh god! Because uh, glottal is before uvula. I mean, dun, it dun. makes sense after they put also, after they after they got the rock in their throat. Um, it rearranged some things. I also want to know why rock is both a place and a manner of oh articulation. Oh god, <laughs> rock and rock. What does it mean? And that, well, it's it's <laughs> sort of pronounced like um, like rock. Uh, it, it's pronounced rock. I also love like these are the. I'm not familiar with these IPA symbols. As someone who has a master's degree in linguistics, you can enlighten me, maybe. Agma. what does the four, the <laughs> ampersand, the pound sign, as well as the asterisk and the dollar sign stand? What do those stand for? Is the that dollar sign represents cha ching. Yeah, yeah, cha ching, ph mm -hmm. phonemic cha ching. I see, um, I see. As for the four, it's obviously the very commonly concurrently used transcription for Mayan uh, consonants uh, written, mm. a, a, as recorded by the Spanish in like the 1600s, obviously. Like naturally. They call uh, that, what did they call that? Like Cuatrocento? Something like that. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. As for uh, as, as for R for apostrophe K and and is that pound? That is a pound sign. Yeah, yeah, that's a pound sign. Agma, you don't know what a pound sign is. That is 
That is abysmal. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm too busy looking at all my phonemic cha-chings. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, I also yeah. like how the L is just off to the side. It's not alveolar. It's not alveolar. <laughs> no, it's, it's not. It's just, it's, it's something else. It's just off Entirely. there on its own. It exists. It is. It mm -hmm. just is. It's also, uh, I love how the four is adjective, apparently. <laughs> Oh man. Okay. Let's let, let's let's move on with this this thing. I wish I wish we had someone here who knew which Han character yeah, that, that was. was. Yeah. A -O -O. <laughs> Agma tube is just a schwa. <laughs> Multilateral has a R S A T C O V R. Oh no. Word order. Oh no. Subject, adjective, tense, case, object, verb, position, and realm. Adjectives <laughs> realm. may also first after realm. every subject. Adjectives may be other even after subjects, in the force nonetheless. Adjectives <sighs> may have adjectives. <laughs> <laughs> the other cases. There are seven cases, those being absolutive, native, tentative, definitive, instrumental, plicative, and rock. Right for singular, plural, and seventeen all. You can see the word for seventeen house being changed. To seventeen, seven for and seventeen and more, or, or just seventeen. My favorite one is seventeen Naturally. rock, because you never know how many rocks there are. You never know. <laughs> the pronouns are non-existent. Very <laughs> language. It doesn't use pronouns. <laughs> sorry, sorry, for automatism. Care by default. This is the only language that's going to make this joke. <laughs> Wake up, what? sheeples. Verbs <laughs> just, just are, no pronouns. Verb tenses are infinitive, present, future, past, and rock. My favorite one is still rock, but it's so fun. <laughs> and here's a text <laughs> that was supposed to be translated for the E. Woo! I could have banged. They mentioned the microphone not picking it's... stuff up. Oh. Insects. Uh, <laughs> Whoa. No. Bleh. Bleh. Insects are Insects are Oh. No. Bleh. God. Insects. Built. Noticing the bold characters. Bleh. <laughs> so. Insects. Go. Yeah. Oh, umana fenter. Well, thank you for listening to me being a fucking moron again. <laughs> this is like the fourth time I recorded this. I blocked it. I didn't. I'm in pain. My throat hurts. Hell. Welcome Goodbye. to the club. Have a nice one, Agma Shua, and people at the Agma Shua channel and Earth Conlon Circus. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. Later. Yeah, there's a comment on that one. The translation is not recorded because it got eaten by an evil kumquat, unfortunately. Happens that's to us they, That's what they put in there, I think, on Reddit or something. I see. Alright, so this one it is highly illegal to, to speak. Oh, God. Alright, two languages so far that I need the disclaimer in the beginning for. Yep. Alright, let's see. Warning. Oh, come on, come on, there we go. This language is a joke. Oh and god, the process of what the is hell? Illegal, <laughs> as it requires hacking into other people's stuff. I don't even. Do not, in any way, try to use this. Can you skip around and make sure that this doesn't, like, last the whole video? There are rumors if this lasts does. the whole video, I'm not listening to it because I, my, my ears can't handle that. Oh god. Okay, I think we'll have to, uh, call an executive decision here and just silence it, yes. Because, uh, <laughs> if, I'll tell you, if I have a, if, if, if I get sound in only one of my ears, my ears just hurt. I can't handle that. Yeah, that was... Uh, uh, <laughs> Wait, I heard that in both. Do I have, like, my audio on, like... You might be on mono. For me, it was just was... in my yeah. left ear. Yeah, for me, it was one. also just the left ear, which is even weirder than Wait, just the right. Let's play it again to make sure. Uh... No. <laughs> you can open it yourself and look at it if you want to. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, that is a thing I'm capable of doing. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. 
Anyway, I, I guess we could just... Uh, we'll, we'll go through this silently at our own pace, I guess. Yes, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> should, we, should we do voices? You can, you can give a dramatic reading if you want. I can read it out if you'd like. Go for it. Um, okay. <clears throat> Summary. The Kungwat language, also known as the Kungwat language, <laughs> is the language spoken by all digital Kungwats, subspecies Kitrus Digitatus, that have evolved sentience and the ability to make sounds resembling those that humans in revenge for the enslavement of their species during the agricultural revolution is there a verb in this sentence? <laughs> That's not a complete sentence. I don't think it is. I was looking for one. Um, they what had is evolved. That humans in revenge for. <laughs> they had. They had. Wait, hold on. I, I want to make sure that I'm passing this. They had evolved and been able to make sounds. I mean, those are humans in revenge for. They just like, yeah. There's just a verb missing in the relative clause. Okay. Uh, they had evolved gradually over the past myriad years, switching from a po uh, from a photo. I almost uh, read this as polysynthetic because. I'm too used to linguistics. Photosynthetic <laughs> diet to one comprising of websites and HTML code, oh, which happens to provide just enough nutrients to make the digital kumquat grow to become the largest plant in the world. Now they wreak havoc on the World Wide Web under the leader. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. <laughs> like, I, 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 I was going to pronounce it, but then I saw the thing in parentheses, so I'm not sure what a, to make of the asterisk. A asterisk. Dweet. Bouillon, bouillon. Something, something like that will do. Yeah, yeah. Destroying any website and piece of HTML code they come across, uh, thank goodness. <laughs> Often <laughs> summoning themselves in the real world to wreak havoc on the entire human population. These kumquats are currently designated as a threat to humanity and actions must be taken in order to protect our civilization. Discussions have been taking place to voluntarily abandon Earth entirely, <laughs> and other star systems because of the Kumquat threat, and will modify dogs to contain human DNA. I've heard that part oh, no. before. Wait a <laughs> oh, abandonment so that their descendants Wait. will establish new civilizations two million years in the future. What? I've seen that part before, I think. Wait a uh, second. <laughs> hold on. Hopefully. You have to add kumquats into your world now, Agma. Hopefully oh a time traveler from a state that is definitely not a wasteland. God damn it. The name of redacted, <laughs> we will... But the name of Redacted <laughs> will travel to this world, catalog its history and languages, and will publish it in a comic book that no one will okay. care about. Ouch. God damn it. Oh. Ouch. <laughs> uh, hey. God, God damn it. God. <laughs> This will make sure that the abandonment will take place quicker and that these kumquats will go extinct as soon as possible so that our descendants will find a new home in the vast, empty void of space, free of kumquats to slow their progress. <laughs> oh, that is a lot of text. I think this is canon. Okay. This is canon now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ne ne next slide. Cer certified <laughs> canon. Oh. Oh, yep, too far. That, that, that is the next slide. Ooh, can I do the... Phonemes? Of course. Sure. Knock yourself out. Represented with for some reason. That's dumb. And what? And then for um for vowels. Uh uh ooh, ooh, oh, oh. Uh, oh, uh, oh. I'm getting so thrown off by the, <laughs> by the transcription. Oh, oh. I might have bet I might have messed it up, but yeah. Close enough. <laughs> Close enough. The translation also. was eaten by the kumquats anyway. Also. Slight interlude. I found the other kanji from the previous one, and it's the it, it's literally the kanji kan, so that means China or man, at least in in <laughs> in Japanese. Okay, wow, mm. great. <laughs> the rockology is the kumquat equivalent of stress. It involves throwing a rock into the air. Oh God! <laughs> Oh, Agma, pause. <laughs> An open syllable with a short vowel is one mora. An open syllable with a long vowel 
where a closed syllable with a short vowel is two more. Mm -hmm. A closed syllable with a long vowel is three more. You must That's throw the rock word. after you speak the syllable with the, with the fourth mora from the end of the word. How long are these words? And then continue speaking. <laughs> In words with less than four more, then you must throw the rock at the end of the first syllable. Or in monosyllabic words, you do not throw the rock at all. The time where you must throw the rock is marked with an asterisk. Ah, there's oh, that's the asterisk. what it's called. Okay. There it's like go. they knew we would have to read this aloud and made the background as hard to... They made it as hard to read as possible. Some real okay. trolling happening here. Oh, God. Grammar. Grammar. Go notable for it. Notable features, notable features of the Comquad language's grammar include scratch sprites marking prepositions. What does that mean? Scratch blocks. I, I'm oh, think, I think scratch that's the really programming language. Scratch. Oh, is there a connection to the previous submission? I do wonder. Scratch <laughs> blocks marking tenses and moods. So this is a programming language now. Polypersonal agreement, a strict animacy hierarchy, three cases, ergative, absolutive, and dative. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> three word order and three head. Uh, but, <laughs> <A -O. laughs> that, that, free, that's not a free that's, head. Sorry. I don't think that's how you phrase that. Sorry, that's not how you phrase that, yes. That is not how you Phrase that. <laughs> oh, oh. Move on. I mean, default default word order is VOS. Okay. There are no relative clauses. Okay. Uh, there is no copula unless in transitive senses where there is no verb available. So I'm there is not entirely. So there is a copula. <laughs> yeah. If you just say okay. there isn't a copula, then there isn't a copula. Oh yeah. Also, yeah. Uh, they, they used a they, a hyphen instead of an m or n dash after grammar in the title, which is a, a just a, a horrible typographic mistake. <laughs> it's just sad. It's just sad. Absolutely shameful. Okay, let's see nouns. <clears throat> There are three noun cases and four numbers in the Kumquat language. The cases being, oh yeah, three. Ergative, absolutive, and date. Did we just talk about that? And the numbers being singular, porco, two hyphen That's ten. Not what would... means, is it? <laughs> I guess in this context. No, in this context. <laughs> okay, so it says porco two hyphen ten. I can't actually read this as two two ten because that would require an n dash. But this is a hyphen, oh so two God. hyphen ten of a thing. Decimal ten hyphen nineteen of a thing, <laughs> and plural more than nineteen of a thing. Adjectives and possessors. Sorry, po po set po possessors. It's, it's, it's spelled it with one S, that's why. <laughs> it's spelled with one S, that's why. Uh, have to uh, uh, agree in case and number with the dependents. And we have the the uh, case markers right here. They get a bit. They do get a bit long in the plural. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Of course. I mean, who counts past nineteen anyway? Who counts past nineteen? That's true. Uh, we do because we have one hundred and nineteen things to. Judge, yeah. <laughs> oh, and there's our Holy what in the agreement. world? Oh no. Okay. I'm not sure how. I, I I can't read any of that. Yeah. I'm I, not reading this out either. No need. I, just I, no, I, it's it's big. It's big. Just let's, let's take this in for a second. <laughs> oh, and I guess it's on. Oh, there is. There, there are. are the blocks. Oh, there's the yep. There's the scratch blocks right there. Uh, that that gives yeah. me memories of like ten years ago. Oh boy. Oh god. Tenses. There are eight tenses in the Kumquat language, those being present, recent past, distant past, very distant past, recent future, distant future, very distant future, and conditional. <laughs> These tenses are written in the, Rom in a, <laughs> in the romanization <laughs> using stack blocks from scratch that are yeah, placed the after the verb and before the mood blocks. In the language's orthography, you must remove the dashes. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay, so the result of this, this is a programming language, sort of, or rather the result of it is a program of speaking this language. Interesting. There are Isn't also it? four grammatical moods. Indicative, optative, potential, and necessit nex ne necessitative. Necess there you go. The, these are expressed using pen extension blocks that are placed after the tense blocks and after the verb. Oh, man. <laughs> Erase all stamp. Erase all. Oh god, they literally are. 
god. Also, I think the I think the reason why you were struggling to pronounce that is because they missed a syllable. It's typically necessitative. Oh, I get it. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. All right. Anyway. Okay. Next one. Basic vocabulary. Uh, the Kumquat language's lexicon is entirely based on English vocabulary, because Kumquats like to steal and plagiarize random stuff from other languages for no reason. <laughs> Lexicon Only is English. Complete, yes, Not from and it will be, yeah, just English. And it will be expanded over time. Sadly, the official lexicon page cannot be linked because it got eaten by an evil kumquat before this circus even began. Hmm. To the that is class. unfortunate. Uh, hmm. Some words include... Uh, we have some nouns and verbs there. Okay. I don't Use remember. social insect. Of course, there's a word for that. <laughs> Use social insect. Of course. I I like human. Oh my god. <laughs> and the oh, pronoun. Okay, the, 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 oh, there, okay. there they went. The, there's a whole bunch of pronouns there. Interrogative. Yep. Those are inter sure our pronouns. Is, okay. Yep. Them are some big pronouns. Interrogative is a that is interesting. I mean, it's it's. I guess. A, yeah. It, it's not a person, really, but it's rather just that there are first, th second, and third person personal pronouns as well as interrogative pronouns, I presume. That's what they meant by that. Uh, oh, God, what is this? Okay. Uh, is this... This is... Because it's in angle brackets, I'm not sure if that's spelling or phonemes. I... I think it's both in this. <laughs> okay, I, I can't... I don't have a rock here right now, so unfortunately. Uh, I, I can't, unfortunately, unfortunately, I cannot pronounce this, but that is the loan word word that does say loan word word. In order to properly speak the word, you have to hack into a random person's scratch accounts. A tunnel can help you hack it if you want him to help or you're bad at coding. Uh, but while that does you know how to hack scratch? Uh, no, uh, <laughs> while it's, I, I do not know how to hack someone's scratch account. Okay, um, good. Then my old Scratch account from when I was in fifth grade is safe. There you go. Yeah, I, I don't know how how good Scratch are at like encrypting their stuff or whatever login system they're using, but we'll okay. Um, scratch account. After you speak that word, eat their forum signature. Oh, I forgot they had forums. <laughs> and what? This that's not the. What does eat their forum? How do you eat? <laughs> I'm not sure. They, they I eat suppose HTML. That, yeah. that, that's all. They, they eat HTML. HTML, right? I forgot they, about exactly. that part. Exactly. They eat HTML. That, that makes sense. And replace it with the loan word. And the orthography of the loan word is to be transcribed in Proto Indo European <laughs> to make it as possible. <laughs> okay, that's make good. <laughs> obey your apology while replacing the signature. For example, Agmashwa would be. <laughs> that. I, <laughs> Like, just, oh god, I can't pronounce that even, I, there's, this I can't, especially can't pronounce because we don't even know how to pronounce the, 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 the laryngeals, so. Ich, um. me, ich, me, chwe. Oh, Juno is here. Hello, my man. Hey, Hello. Juno. Uh, while watching my screen, we're in the middle of one that we had to mute and go through ourselves because the music was deafening in one ear. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, yikes. <laughs> yep. Just, uh... Make sure to replace the signature with Agma Schwa or Nga after you eat it. Of course. Of course. Of course. Loan words are always adjectives and can be placed before or after the noun it, modi it modifies. Due to language having free... <laughs> <laughs> no! no! God damn it! Stop it! Stop! I'm so on board with this language. Oh my god! Okay, oh god. just say like. Oh my god! I free head is not a linguistics term, okay? <laughs> Please, it just say uh, indeterminate head directionality or whatever. That's a bit more clunky, but good god. <laughs> I don't know, maybe we should okay. just use free head from now on. It's, yeah. It's oh my god. <laughs> I'll, I'll, okay. go to, I'll go down to U of A and I'll tell Noam Chomsky to, to just to tell everyone about all the free head in the linguistics department. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they need it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, numerals, that's going to be interesting. The Kumquat language is a base 24 numeral system. That's new. <laughs> 
It's not base 12, it's base 24. The base change is depending on, I'm pretty sure 24 is not a particularly, I'm not sure if that's a good base, but okay. The base change is depending on Nur's age. Oh god. Oh, <laughs> am I 24? Okay. Are you 24 currently, is that accurate? Am I? Yeah, yeah. I Am I? Am yeah, I? yeah, I am. I am 24 right now. So yeah, that is, that is correct. <laughs> I would am call I, he goes. <laughs> yeah. I, I always want to count it. I'm from that person. I always, oh yeah, same. I, I feel like after you turn 21, it doesn't even matter. Yeah, That's exactly. true. You just stop counting. Uh, so in 1988, it would be base minus 10. How does that even work? You can ask Kate that. She knows all about negative and complex and imaginary bases. I have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about half the time, but she knows about all of that. You can ask her. Fortunately, it is very, very easy to learn to express a numeral, go to a random person's house, <laughs> most likely a nerd's house, oh, or a house near where no oh, is at, and use a spell that turns the person's ears into kumquats. <laughs> you want to click on that hyperlink That's so bad. bad. <laughs> the fake hyperlink. Have you, a, have you do a person speaker and force the speaker to say, to say the incantation for a spell at... Okay, hold on. A thousand... <laughs> million, billion, trillion, quadrillion at, I think this is one quintillion decibels, <laughs> which decibels enough. are a logarithmic scale, so I think if you're capable, if, if someone real, if something really is capable of producing a sound that is one quintillion decibels, I think the earth will explode or something. Yeah, I was gonna because say, that would literally, <laughs> that, scale. That, that would create a black hole, like, on the spot. Yeah, like, because yeah. going up by 10 <laughs> decibels is multiplying by 10. Yeah, exactly. That amount of energy. It's physically, it's physically possible to produce a sound that's that loud, I think. Um, Escape the house before the speaker activates the spell. Yeah, you'd better or you'll be pulverized. <laughs> and run as fast as you can as you may become blind forever if you don't. I don't I think that's the least of your problems. You'll cease to yeah. exist, I yeah, think. Yeah, again, a black hole. It will it'll just be a black hole. There, there will just, be no yeah. escape. <laughs> if you want to express numbers more than one, simply hack more that's one. Simply hack more speakers within the same house. Okay. <laughs> In the orthography. A number is represented in parentheses with S representing the number 1 and SS representing the number 2 and so on. The number 48 would be represented with SS empty parents. So empty parents are for 0. They kind <laughs> of do look like a 0, I'll give them that. M majestic. Absolutely majestic. Brilliant. All right. Majestic is a word you could use to describe this, yes. Okay. <laughs> and there's the translation. I thought it, they it, said the translation got eaten by kumquats. The the audio of the translation was eaten by kumquats. The audio. Oh, and oh. also probably created a black hole. But <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There, there's no way it was getting out of where it was spoken. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I love the scratch blocks just in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just in the in the romanization in quotation marks are just these little JPEGs. Just, okay. See, oh, that does make me wonder if, like, you about, like, making a language using the Scratch Pen tool or something, which would have been, I think, been funnier than just randomly having Scratch blocks as just images. I should make a programming language that's also cursed conline at some point. <laughs> or vice versa. <laughs> so, yeah, this one... Was... That's just the gloss right there. But, yeah, yeah that's, it... that's pretty much yeah. it. Everyone, this was the Kumquat language, language of uh, Kumquat, Scratch, and Freehead. <laughs> <laughs> Freehead, right, right, right there. Thank, thanks, Clear Ad two one seven six for the ear rape and the freaking Freehead. <laughs> I joined it just the right moment, it seems. <laughs> yes, it will seem so. That was fate. Right. How much? I'm have we spent recording already. Uh, yes. Three this is the hours. Thing I've been working on. Three hours. Okay, ooh, um, ooh joy. One sec, um, I'm gonna <laughs> also make it. We need yeah. to give points, and we should. Uh, Agma, are you recording again? Yeah, I just hit the oh. button. All right. Okay, so. I was just gonna say, uh, y'all are gonna hate me, but I should have just gotten some more water while you guys were muted, but uh, uh, it didn't occur to me. So I'm gonna go do that <laughs> now. I mean, you, yeah, that, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. God okay. damn it, Ren. <laughs> Okay. Moving on to unknown language by Jepesper with unknown length 
It might be a video. It might be a document. It is. I, let's see what this. I don't know how it's gonna be pronounced. Oh, it's right there. It says or something like that. Uh, I'm not even gonna try. Uh, yes. I can't do the sh sound too well, but it's something like a uh, Yes. Yes. Something like that. All right, let's hit play and see what happens. Yeah, Sounds kind of so. are still tonguey. The unknown language. Oh God. Introduction. The unknown language is the language spoken by the unknown entities that dwell in the shadows oh. of nature. Although okay. it has since the old Ugh. days also been immigrated from nature into human settlements. Oh, this is due creepy. to the few it dark savages like who has found themselves videos. a place in the shades <laughs> of human abodes. Oh. The language may <laughs> also be called. Oh God. The oh, no. Due to its hissing-like phonology. Phonology. That is, its consonants are fa, 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 sa, ha, sha, ha, la, cha, sa. Its vowels are eh. Double letters are separated phonetically with syllable breaks. Orthography. The language's yeah. orthography consists yeah. of, of was also graphemes wrong. from the Latin. Greek, Old Greek, and Cyrillic alphabet. I get that wrong all the time. They are all in uppercase, and That's each fair. has at least one diagonal line, no curves, and no serifs. I also can't tell if it they're actually voicing this. It is done this way to make the text voice. blend nicely together. I think it's mm. an AI voice. Having a no-curve orthography is also convenient, that since it's exclusively the written on rocks. Yeah, yeah. Grammar. That's true, though. The language has no copula. It is tenseless, and it has something I call reverse affirmation negation. Which means that all verbs and adjective are negative in their base form. Oh, to no. make verbs and adjectives oh, no. affirmative, one has to use the affirmative prefix. Oh God! Oh, nouns no. decline according to number. Okay, They're so the cursedness in form, is just in listening to, be to this one. Or collective yeah. through suffixes. Pronouns I mean, are also declined according to number. Oh, oh, also man. according okay. to nine different types of unlacy. Oh, fauna, oh. fauna diminutive, flora, funga, microorganism, supernatural. Technological, conceptual, and inanimate. Oh. I like how there's a difference. The Why do shadow beings Arcana. have a noun class for technology? <laughs> That's a good question. Hmm. Why do they have a noun class for fauna in the dimin dimin Or microorganisms? Hmm. Well, I mean, there's shadow organisms and there's shadow microorganisms, and they both speak the same language, so they need a way to differentiate. Obviously. Naturally. Obviously. Oh, okay. That does make sense. <laughs> Alright, let's listen <laughs> to this. Let's listen to this. Oh boy. Oh. <laughs> I don't like that. Oh. I'm comfy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm taking my headphones out, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this. This is horrifically this is unpleasant. Funny enough. <laughs> 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 Oh, oh god. Who's responsible for this? <laughs> I know what you're on about. This is actually quite pleasant. Oh, yeah. So, you know, what are you, like ASMR? Yeah. Huh? Well, actually, I'm not sure about it. I, I've never really listened to much ASMR. I'm gonna put my headphones back in. Hopefully, it's over. It's not. It's not it's over. Not. It's still going. Okay, I can bear. I, I can survive the last couple seconds. Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> Death. <Got me> again. <laughs> Death. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, Next we have Gumlang by Joe. Oh god. I'm oh, terrified. No, I don't like where this is going. I'm terrified. Oh, Right, uh, I know of one gum related lang already. Yeah, so gum yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's just a rip off mm -hmm. of gum smack. It might be. Let's find out. It's, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> gum lang by Joe. <laughs> and name. here is the phonology. Oh, God. Literally any click sound. Oh, God, the audio. Oh. Oh. So I imagine school children would be <laughs> mostly the ones who speak it. How does it work? I'm going to start with the writing system. Uh, like it's what I came up with first. It's also just simpler. Basically, you're just sticking specific flavor and color combos of gum in a line. Okay, so then how is it spoken? 
Well, it's more signed than spoken. Uh, because, yeah. So, remember the click sound from before? That's basically used as a verbal space. And then, each letter is spoken as a specific pair uh, of a color and a flavor of gum that you put into your mouth. Now, lastly, just like some miscellaneous stuff. In most dialects of gum lang, you have to use old gum that was already attached somewhere else uh -huh. when speaking. Uh, if oh, you God. don't do that, then it's just, like, grammatically incorrect. Uh, okay. Pronouns okay. are numbers this is gross. which person you're talking about. <laughs> oh, gross Ooh, parentheses so actually gross. Not context <laughs> would have, like, uh, would have number one, or, yeah, and so on and so forth. If the referent number isn't obvious, then just use zero. Loan words are just <laughs> taken directly, but in pig Latin. And lastly, you must oh, yeah, always use every noun, case, and it's article that applies. My man's is killing me with this audio. <laughs> I think off my headphones. Bad, honestly, my ears hurt. Uh, unfortunately, the emojis don't show for some reason while presenting a PowerPoint. Oh, geez, so that guess, sounds just familiar. Imagine they're there. <laughs> the non-compressed organization. <laughs> I'll just give you a moment to look at it. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, here's the list of tenses. Hmm. Uh, oh, God. Yeah, they're certainly something. <laughs> so we have the standard. That's quite, that's past, quite a few. Present, future. <laughs> it's it's present all in present uh, tense. tense. It's, it's all tense. it's a deeks. So it's like oh, deek dick tense. God. And then also a near and far tense thing that combine with the others in a specific order. Oh god. So uh, here Chris. we have the other grammar markers. Oh things. no. So. Participle oh, article, uh, inanimate article, animate article. I will article, say, definite like, article. this sort of table is not the best way of presenting this information. I think. <laughs> uh, I'd argue it's, it's close like, to the worst. It's just one <laughs> long list of morphemes. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, probably visually speaking the least efficient way to convey this <laughs> yeah. information. Well, no, you can have it in a random order, or because it is uh, fascinating how order. much space you can waste with tables. Sometimes, speaking from experience, I once reduced uh, in a certain book about a certain language speaking uh, spoken by a certain dog people i okay. managed to reduce a 20 page table to two pages <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah uh, 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 anyway article. improper article proper article unknown properness article oh my god article. Is, is, are they gonna list all of article. these Question mark. I think we can skip ahead a bit, okay. maybe. Yeah. Formal because mood. we have Formal 110 mood. other things to yeah. aspect. Mm -hmm. 100, 100 gotcha. at this point. And Moral, so there's a lot. We have the specific ordering. So, a uh, tense order. So, the near slash far thing that applies to the second tense and tense goes first. Ooh. Then the tense, and then, the, and then another near slash far thing. But, but this one applies to the first of the tenses. Or the first uh, tense and tense. <laughs> then the uh, adjective order, so color, Maybe I'm just weight, tired, but size, I have no idea what uh, that means. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, yeah, I'm getting real number. Charlie Brown teacher and energy from this. I feel bad for saying that, I'm uh, sorry. Plurality. <laughs> so it's now time for oh god, the rest of the video is the translation. Oh man. Money, oh god. I cannot actually, like, buy gum and speak it like that. Uh, instead, I will just uh, say the color and flavor of gum. Oh, the God. flavors will be numbered, and I'll just <laughs> say the color name. Jesus Assuming RGB Christ. as being colors 1, 2, and 3, respectively. Alright, let's begin. Uh, red 2, I green like... 3, click, click. <laughs> Uh, blue two, green okay. one. Uh, yeah, green I, one. I think we get the Click. point. <laughs> <laughs> oh my red god. One. Red one, yes, green I one. I think we can go to the next chapter as it says up there. Yeah, that is, that's intense though. That is a wall mm -hmm. of number and letters. Yeah. Yes. Did okay. probably just skip to the end. Yeah. Wow. Indeed we did. Got to save a little out. Incomplete, mainly just the lexicon. Oh yeah, hopefully it's, hopefully it's first enough. If it's not, it's whatever. I'll probably have something more first for <clears throat> next year. And lastly, the creation of this thing was tiring, fun, <laughs> and painful. Which and may, that's yeah, that's all that matters well. at the end of the day. So uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that is Bye. true. If you suffer like as much as we do, that's a victory. All right, now we're on to Kate Klein's Panafi. 
Yeah, um, I didn't when, know K. I didn't know K. Klein submitted. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I was going to, but then I, I got busy. <laughs> I I've seen this video a while ago, but I've I've got pretty fresh eyes, I'd say. Yeah, I think I, I saw uh, it just a couple days ago. So. Fellow. Yeah. So let's let's witness. Let us let us uh, embrace. A fine yeah. video submission. Fellow Langtuber, Agmashwar, is Lang -tube, something he calls the Public <laughs> Conlang Circus, Again. which I like to call the CCC for short. The, the idea is people, people submit <laughs> cursed constructed <laughs> languages, languages they made up for the express purpose of being I ridiculous like the in their difficulty and or execution and or plausibility. They're cursed. Hey, Klein That's has the point. Like my language will be submitted to the CCC the really mostly as a formality oh, yeah. because it started out as an actual competitive entry into that competition. But this video here isn't actually about making the most cursed language. Basically, the CCC got uh, me thinking, okay. what would be the worst <laughs> language? These are, of course, two <laughs> different questions. What I mean when I say worst is I want to take the purposes of language, the very reasons that exist, and make a language which completely goes against them. <laughs> Not the worst theoretical language, mind you, but a language derived from the worst possible principles a language could follow. So, a worst language. <laughs> First I felt I had to limit myself, I want to create a spoken and written language, so it's going to have a phonology and an orthography. A phonology which can be pronounced with a mouth and a mouth only, and an orthography which can be physically written. Side note, I've decided not to go for a cursed phonology. Given that I limited myself to Thank a normal you. spoken language, I feel there isn't really anything I could do with it. Sure, I could make it sure. more difficult, but that doesn't make it a worse language. Having 43 yeah, click consonants cursed, doesn't make your language bad, it just makes it, you know, cursed. Sorry, Tar. Mm -hmm. Native speakers <laughs> learn languages effectively, whatever the phonological conditions, let's be honest. So I went yeah, for easy fair. to pronounce, common phonemes, to be more easily able to demonstrate the actual grammar that went into the language. So, the purpose of language. Communication. That's ultimately what it's about. Now, it would be very easy to just make every word be k, and that's it. You just have a language that goes k, 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 and each syllable is written with a letter W as a joke, and, and, that, and that's all. No one gains any meaning from the orthography or the phonology. But the problem is that at this point, this becomes more of a call system than a language. People will simply start using this as a sound devoid of meaning. And then, sure, it will be a terrible method of communication, but people are quite good at communicating with tone of voice and gestures and things like this. No, to make the worst language, we need to construct something that actively hinders communication. And that means just... <laughs> the what? How do you put tone in your voice if you're going... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It's not a very Fair tonal enough. sound. <laughs> You could try. Yeah, could I, try. I, and Africa is very tonal indeed. Very. <laughs> Natonius. <laughs> God. Oh Sorry. God. Anyway. Ignoring <laughs> the lexicon of, uh, let's call this language, Penafi, for no particular reason, to ensure okay. that its words contain <laughs> morphemes, but still manage to be utterly meaningless. Take Penafi, for instance, composed of two morphemes, Pe and nafi. Pe means loads of or plenty, and nafi means words. A lot of words is a language, but it's also used as a name for the language <laughs> itself. Fantastic. Great start. But pe can also mean no or none, obviously, <laughs> so pe nafi <laughs> can mean no words, silent. Also nafi can be split into na and fi, which mean fish and soup respectively, so the word can mean plenty of fish soup, or also no fish soup. Also just like plenty of words meaning language, all words can be interpreted metaphorically. So nafi can also be a stand-in for food in general, as all food-related words can be. And of course, the word as a whole is a single morpheme meaning all of these things. So we have all of these potential meanings running around. Of course, there is no set word order or even preferred word order, and nothing to indicate what sentence part any word or phrase is. So anything in the sentence could be a verb, subject, or object at any time. You just have to know from context. And all this semantic information swimming around will help stop people from using their tones of voice and body language to communicate. This got me thinking about... Dyxis. Dyxis is where general language, such as set Love words and video. phrases, are used for specific things <laughs> dependent on the context. So, the word you is dyctic. It's semantically consistent, we all know what the word you means, but the actual thing being referred to by the word changes from case to case. 
say it denotes a person being spoken to by the speaker, then that person changes depending on the speaker and their audience. The same goes for the word tomorrow. It's not like every time we say tomorrow we mean the same literal day. No, it's relative to the time in which I it's do. set. These are incredibly <laughs> useful in language because it means every single tomorrow person and thing and concept doesn't have to be defined from some yeah. sort of objective viewpoint, but can be described in relative terms. Simple fix, avoid dioxys completely in order to make the language less useful. But... What if people just point at things as they talk? Like, as a gesture. Like, I'm gesturing at this thing, so that's the thing I'm referring to. That could ruin all the hard work we've done corrupting the lexicon. Oh no, no, Dykes can't just be left out. It needs to be bent to our evil whims. Of course it can't hurt to make no the only pronoun in the language, meaning both I and you and we. You know, that, that, that's funny. But the critical thing is to make our key spatial determiner, the word po, mean the thing I'm gesturing at, the thing I'm not gesturing at, the thing to the left of where I'm gesturing, the thing northwest of where I'm gesturing, <laughs> and something nowhere near where I'm gesturing all at once. <laughs> this tricks the speaker into trying to use this word to clarify what they mean, but when they use it, it actually mystifies what it is they're referring to. What if people just gesture at things they're referring to, you know, without using the word pot, just kind of gesturing at it while they say a word to distinguish it from its many homophones? I'd argue this is already kind of dealt with, because the weight of gesturing at something has been diminished by the language, since a gesture it doesn't always indicate reference to the thing being gestured at. <laughs> However, I concede that it's quite a common piece of body language which could make it easier to understand some things. Damn it, humans are good at communicating. I have two solutions to this. The first is to chop everyone's arms off. The second is, <laughs> bear with me, to make every word dyktic. Take oh, Panafi again, in the meaning horse, of course. Horse <laughs> is only a rough translation. Really, the word means the horse I'm gesturing at, and also the horse I'm not gesturing at. <laughs> also, every word has original dyktic meanings now. For instance, penafi has the meanings the thing northeast of where I'm gesturing, and something not south-southwest <laughs> of just left of where I'm gesturing. Oh, so God. there, no more gesturing. You can even keep your arms. Alright, orthography, the writing system. The purpose of a writing system is generally to communicate the phonemes and or morphemes of the spoken language so that it can be recorded in a visual format. Not exclusively, mind you, another big purpose of orthography is art, aesthetics, making something beautiful. My artist KVD made this orthography, devising these characters. He refused to make something that just looked plain ugly, so this writing system doesn't look <laughs> too bad. But we couldn't have it be stylistically consistent, so he added these extra symbols with a completely <laughs> different aesthetic. KVD made the symbols extra difficult to read by adding these lines to the end of all of them, which distinguish characters from one another. There's no way to tell with which character these lines go, because there's no way to tell the start or end of a character. So since these are all different graphs, there's no way to tell which characters make up this two symbol combination. Oh, and of course it can be written in any direction with no indication as to which direction it's going. Also, also, this can be used for per to wo, this for ne me or fu, this <laughs> oh, for fu, me or wo, and so on. All letters also have a chance of being silent, and vowels are never written. <laughs> the cat is m, ma, ya, and wa, like meow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh <laughs> anyway, <laughs> which is difficult enough in languages like any... Arabic and Hebrew. The what? <laughs> Go back, go back. Uh -huh. In the top right, there's two letters that just mean N and M. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, yeah, one with one line and one with two lines. Literally the same thing. No, they both have two lines. It's just one of the one. Look of how them many has characters the line at the oh, stand yeah. for N and M. There are more than those two. There, are, I think god. five of them. Yeah. No. Seven. Yeah. Oh god. Eight, I can count. Oh man. Oh, that's rough. Okay. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So yeah, thirteen of them can stand for either M or N. <laughs> I like that. All right. Anyway, moving on. Vowels are never written, which is difficult enough in languages like Arabic and Hebrew, where there are consistent enough phonotactics. Pinafi has no phonotactics. There are no rules or indications as to where any vowel is. <laughs> <Just> also, <laughs> as a joke, I left out the sound curve from the orthography. Like it can just appear at any point in any word at any time, and you just have no way to expect it. <laughs> And now, on to the final purpose of newly discovered languages. To prove Noam Chomsky wrong. 
So this language is going to prove <laughs> Chomsky right. Not only does this language oh, no. have recursion, but <laughs> recursion is syntactically compulsory. No sentence is grammatically complete without recursive structures. And what's more, juxtaposition is not allowed. So no words like and, no splicing phrases together. In fact, you're only allowed one sentence per time you speak. It's both rude and grammatically incorrect to keep speaking after that sentence until someone else has spoken. If you want to tell a story, you'll have to do so with recursive structures to contain it all within a oh, sentence. God. And now a translation of our sample text, chosen graciously by Agmashwa himself from the beginning of <laughs> the B movie, which happens to contain a great example of how all modal verbs are the same, Fyo, and how Penafi has genitives of all its nouns, which are randomly selected for each individual noun. Here on screen is the original, a literal translation of the Penafi, the Penafi IPA, and as All written in the Penafi script. No Here goes. Yeah, no wait, wait. <laughs> he should and fly, which has reason that wing of B too small for purpose, which makes these that small body off ground, despite which B of course fly, which has reason that B not care about <laughs> thing which human thing. <laughs> oh god. Okay, let's hear it. Uh. Peraki makata fi no peftk, tama no pakat no peftk, tama fi kvit mfjom fjo, so a mem fi yep mjo no fe kvit fip in so a tama pakat fi so not kvit fip anof so a impu skepatak pefi kvit mala so a mem fi yep mjo no kvit pemol emfta fi ampus. And so on. I've also included some meanings of these words, the ones I oh, included. Oh god, wait a second. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I like how mfyo is should, can, will, want to, would, and could. Yeah, it's all modal vows are the same. Oh, Don't and forget. Then mfyo, and then mfyo is listed again right next to it with the same set of verbs just in a different order. <laughs> <laughs> Then, oh, it's just should and can flipped around. <laughs> inya, inya up nor towards the top right is either two or loot box or the best. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Human, smelly, evil, stupid, cool, and rat. <laughs> Yampus. Oh, that, that's, that's pretty solid. Alright, let's finish this. Were ones where the whole word was taken as a single morpheme. There like are plenty of composite words that these you. could each mean. Like, don't forget that peftk could mean no way, but also mean plenty of ways, or all ways. There's also the metaphorical <laughs> meanings of each of these, but you can use your brains to figure those out. And, here's a few examples of the deictic meanings too, which every single <laughs> oh, word has, God. remember. Also, I put this in fairly English word order for my own ease of translation, but these words could be in theoretically any place within their respective <laughs> clauses, so bear that in mind. Anyway, that's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> That was pretty excellent. That, 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 yep. was, that was some quality content right there. All right. Next. Next we have Sniffles by Wasato. All right. Here we go. Juno will return while we're watching this. Hello, Agma Schwa and guests. Today, I'm here to talk about Ooh, my really entry to the, the Cursed Cuddling Circus 2. Sniffles. The language of illness. <laughs> so, but... Now you're maybe asking. I unironically thought it said the language of ill in the way for a second. <laughs> well, sniffles is a language spoken by people with flu like illnesses, or FLI for <laughs> short. That means stuff like uh, flu, of course, or COVID, or allergies, stuff like that. It is known demonymically as Nimono. <laughs> it is. It is completely a priori. Okay. It somehow spawns in the person's brain as soon as they contact contract <laughs> an FLI, and it disappears as soon as they are cured. And we aren't really sure as to how that happens. It is unclear if it is a work of God or Satan, or both. And it is currently under study by some very brave linguists. Alright. So, Onto the phonology of the language. It is. It has common and special phonemes. It has t 16 consonants, 10 of them being common and 6 of them being special. 4 vowels being 3 common and 1 special. 
and three tones, low, low rising, and high falling. Okay. And also the tone goes on the last syllable, always. Oh. Also it's C at the end. Here we have the common consonants for the language. We have M, N, no N, N, the flickering. <laughs> B, D, N, V, Z, N, <laughs> Are those L. all the double acutes or are they tildes? Those are tildes. And are tildes, yeah. we have the common vowels. Those being N, E, and E. What are those <laughs> transitions? Good <laughs> God. And now we go on, go on to the special consonants. <laughs> we have the bronchial series, which has two consonants. Those being the bronchial plosive <laughs> and the bronchial fricative. <laughs> the cigarette. <laughs> then we have these, oh, these special consonants. <laughs> those being Oh god. It's not a click. Oh god. And <laughs> Objective also, we have the <laughs> special Objective vowel. Nodes. It is known as the general sound of suffering, or GSOS <laughs> for short. That being. Oh god. Uh, <laughs> 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 pretty solid. <laughs> We <laughs> go on to the good. romanization of the language. <laughs> this, oh God! We in this romanization we remove the tildes for a convenience sake. Oh, how kind of you! We write the vila nasal with ng. Unacceptable. And most of these special phonemes are written with trigraphs. Of course. <laughs> All, uh, while That's the true. tones are marked with diacritics. The low tone going on mark in this case. Here's the f the writing system. We have the writing system. The oh romanization. God. Pardon. We have <laughs> going on right now. <laughs> okay. And now on to the grammar. <laughs> the okay. <laughs> language has <laughs> two grammatical genders: sick and healthy. Wow. It has five cases, the nominative, accusative, locative, genitive, and an instrumental. Does anyone hear like a buzzing it in the back? It has three tenses, yeah, it's, it's past, very present, fun. Yeah. and future. Four moods being those, the indicative, subjunctive, does imperative, and Does it sound like it's getting habitual. louder? It does. An okay. Eight pronouns and eight articles. Oh god. It also uses the VOS sentence structure. Here we have the verb conjugation for the language. We have the verb root at the f end of the phrase, the verb, pardon, the tense marker going in the middle, and the mood marker going on first. For yeah. example, we have nomono, which means <laughs> spoke, using the past um, tense marker and being in the indicative, and we have zimono, word to speak, using the oh subjunctive. <laughs> okay. And the case marking. We have for some example phrases here. We have. <coughs> oh <God>. Meaning, <coughs> I like them, which uses the. An accusative marker for the uh, them. Uh huh. Oh God. Baby, <laughs> which means he lives in Arizona. Okay. <laughs> Using the locative. <laughs> this does sound very ill. Yeah. Meaning the person's clothes using the acu the genitive oh God. And I think this language needs grammatical creaky voice honestly to complete yeah. the sound. I think that's like the default at this point. Mm -hmm. Meaning I move using legs. Oh god it's cutting out. Instrumental And 
now. The on to loan words. There are two ways of pronouncing loan words. Either you adapt them to the phonology and phonetics, the tone in always being rising in this case, or you pr always pronounce it like Toby Fox does in that video. <laughs> so, for <Okay>. example, <laughs> we have. <Okay. laughs> I didn't know how Toby Fox spoke Japanese. Yeah, really. Me either. Uh, it makes sense, though. He's always a big fan of classic <laughs> RPGs. Arizona. Agma Schwa. <laughs> Agma Schwa lives in Arizona. <laughs> Okay. So now, that's about the tone that I'd expect from someone figuring out that they live in Arizona. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that's about the, the, the tone of voice that I'd expect. Utter, utter misery and, okay. and, and, and sadness and the dejection and despondency about the enormity uh -huh. of the situation. Uh -huh. Poor Agma. Uh -huh. Everyone's just shitting on his home. <laughs> Arizona is Arizona is best place in the world. I I will not be stopped. What about Phoenix? For getting heat stroke, sure. The, I've the, definitely we don't talk. I've about definitely Phoenix. been. To, I've been to Wyoming, and Wyoming is definitely worse. But that is true. That that is very true. I've been to many many states. Arizona supreme. Anyway, moving on. B movie translation. translation. Certified facts. So for this part, in the middle there's gonna be some <laughs> funny illustrations. <laughs> While at the bottom there's gonna be the phrase in Nemono. The phonetic transcription of the phrase. And the glossing for the said phrase. So, well, let's go into it. <clears throat> The picture, the, the laws of aviation and a bee shouldn't fly. <laughs> Amazing. Fat little body. Yeah, the, there, there's the creaky vowel over everything, including the consonants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like I'm listening to my preteen cousin. Oh, God. I love the rush to the death. Well, we all know that teenagers perpetually have a clue. Exactly. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> 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 why, why is the B middle? Because he doesn't care what humans think is possible. He doesn't possible. care what the humans think. Um, oh yeah, I forgot this was the B the movie script for a second. I was just lines. listening to the sounds and forgetting that it had <laughs> anything to do with any meaning. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's yeah. do the thing. Director Doc. Um, that. Let's see how they yeah. pronounce it. <laughs> Probably something like, I don't know. Olivia. Hi, I'm Director Doc, oh. and I would like to introduce my entry for the Cursed Conlang Circus, or the okay, CCC. We got, like, a my character. Conlang is called mm -hmm. Lan Huaga, and oh. first thing you may I notice is that, that the name uses a bunch of different characters. Uh, you may notice the Armenian Aib, the <laughs> Rama, uh, the Shwa, which it's in Azerbaijani, but I don't think you know it from there. And okay. what you may not notice <laughs> is the Ukrainian ooh, so, or the Cyrillic ooh. Oh, right. God. Yeah. Specifically. Anyway, this language 
was designed in such a way that line? it has just been polluted with words and letters from other real world languages, not like other fictional conlangs, like real world languages. And okay, because uh-huh. of this, the pronunciation and phonology is dependent on the language that the word originates from. And this will make sense a little bit later. Uh, the grammar of this conlang and the word order is just the same as English. I couldn't be bothered to make it any different. I know it would have been funny mm-hmm. to make all adjectives be required to be put in a footnote instead of before or after the word, but uh, I don't want to do that, so yeah, I just left it well, as is. Glad uh, you're the being point honest. of this language is that the rules <laughs> All right. for translating English to this language are completely ridiculous. They're outlandish, and there are exceptions all over the place. And I Thus will far, once again this is giving me kind of NADSAT lingo later. energy from Clockwork uh, Orange. The most unique part yeah. about this conlang no is, what that is a process that I like to call longification, which is... Uh, actually, I'll tell you right now. So the longifica- longification process oh. is where you take every letter of the word and replace it with a corresponding symbol. Now, most of these okay. symbols are different. Uh, some of them remain the same, like you'll notice L and O. L and O. L and N are different. Freudian slip. I'll get to O later. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, no. so oh, A is the Armenian. I, the B is the Phoenician. Bet, the C. <laughs> this is called an anti-sigma, or the <laughs> it is. lunate... <laughs> Reversed lunate sigma. It's a real Greek letter. Mm-hmm. D is mm-hmm. delta. E oh my God. is schwa. F is feta. And I'm not going to go through all of these. Like, like a um, H is ampersand. And and you can see the pronunciation. Like Ampersand is pronounced huh, as H would be. Uh, J is... Hold on a second. I gotta... What is that? I gotta look this up. Okay. It's definitely from Jordan. Oh, J glad we left this in the, the video. Santagruli. Johnny, which is a Georgian letter. And M is uh, Sigma. It. Yes, just, just a Sigma. It's pronounced M as M usually would be, but it's a Sigma. <laughs> it's just on and you'll see like capital and lowercase <laughs> oh, Sigmas. No. Who knocked over my M? Place. Maybe not capitals <laughs> so much as lowercase, but yeah. O, the letter O is a special case. Because the, like, which letter you replace it with, or which symbol you replace it with, is dependent on, like, how many O's there are in the word. Like, the first O Uh, of the word should be replaced with Omicron. The second O in the word should be replaced with the Cyrillic O. The third instance should be the Armenian O, and... All remaining O's, no matter how many there are, there are, they should be left as Latin O's, and missed, they're all pronounced. Missed opportunity o. for to include the Burmese Continuing letter on, of A. Uh, once again, I'm not going to go through all of these. Q gets replaced with the percent sign, and it is the only silent symbol. That is very be. important. Mm. Uh, R is a two. Yep, just a two, and pronounced R. S is gets replaced with the long oh, S. Cherokee this character? is a real symbol that used to exist in English. It's in the that is rights, the Declaration yes. yeah. of Independence. No, no, no. The uh, uh, the it, U it, letter. It, yeah, it's a real thing that exists, and it's pronounced uh, sh, which is. I think it's a Cherokee character. Uh, w hmm. is this ASCII character, and X is the Greek C. Yes, that's how it's pronounced. C. Some of you might call it psi, but that's technically not correct um it i'm is glad my pronunciation is being is corrected Greek. in this cursed calling video z <laughs> is once again a georgian letter uh y is replaced with a j that is a latin j and it's pronounced yeah as it's supposed to so now we're moving on to converting <laughs> english to uh long long and there are six <laughs> steps to, that you need to follow. Oh and God. the first step is fairly easy. You're supposed to replace some of the words with words from Tokipon.
Kona. Like, if the word oh is unambiguously oh and unquestionably able to translate back and forth one to one, then you use the Toki Pona word. Like, the word the is e, eh, or e, eh, not is ala. Uh, that, that's just some basics, like basic words. And of course, not every, every word in Toki Pona is represented, but just, just a few of them. The second step else here is to their... replace yeah, it's animals also cutting with out their Latin taxa. The what? It was Audio cutting out for me. That may just be Agma's connection. Might be. Um, hopefully, it's fine again. <clears throat> All right. Let's let's see. Economic name, and the plural and the singular will depend on the Latin plural or singular. Like you can see. Uh, human is homo sapien, uh, humans, plural, is homo sapiens, which is how Latin pluralizes that word. Uh -huh. uh, B and bees is apis and apes. So there, of course, you can see apes right away what? where but... the inspiration from other languages comes into play. But this is nowhere close Inspiration is the word you can use in that situation. <laughs> I will Both say, of it actually comes in because, step um, three. As you... the what? As you mentioned Latin here, uh, the uh, not the word for human is just homo, in in Latin, and homines is the plural. It's a taxonomic name, though. There you yes, go. but take that. Homine sapiens is this is just the singular of the, um, the 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 the, the what's the um, is part, just present knowledge? participle. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Why he thought of his word. All so right. Here, where all the remaining nouns get translated into another language dependent on the first letter that the noun starts with. So the uh -huh. word apple gets translated to Armenian because it starts with A. <laughs> okay. And oh, okay, oh, I get it. No. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's that. So <laughs> and then if the noun starts with B, uh, translate mm -hmm. it into Bengali, if the noun starts with C, translate it to Cantonese, etc. And you can see the list here. If you want to look at it, go right ahead. <laughs> uh, next step, here's where it starts to get a little more random. Uh, the following conjunctions are to be replaced with their corresponding word. Uh, I'm not going to go so through just, all of uh... these, but I will say that after being converted to the French avant, uh, the word avant actually means before, not after. And <laughs> if you look at before on this list, it gets converted to whole which means after, so it is intentionally backwards, and that's not the only instance of that on this list. Uh, the word if is converted to the word 69. Uh, of course. You pronounce it like that, 69. Good, good. Uh, Likewise, the word unless, it's the opposite of if, so it is 96. And the last one I'll <laughs> go over on this list is the word Actually. while, which gets converted to desearing egg. What? Step five what? is probably the most cursed thing I could have possibly come up with. What? And this is probably also where the most cursed part of the language comes into play, because there are just so many like rules and exceptions here that the list could easily be like revamped into something else, but I won't do that because I want to keep it cursed. Essentially, what you need to know is that the first thing that these rules say is that all verbs are to be translated to Georgian and left in the infinitive. However, by the time you read all the exceptions to this, you'll find that no verb God. actually gets translated into Geor Georgian, except the final <laughs> exception all the way at the bottom which means the verb to grab and all its conjugations should always be translated into Georgian, regardless of all other rules. Great. So it's like an exception <laughs> okay. upon okay. exception. And yeah, if, if you want to read all this, you can Not do that. Really. So something that all speakers must learn It's just intentionally 
wild. <laughs> and after that, step six and the final step is to replace all remaining words with their longified equivalent. So you're supposed to do the long longification process with all the remaining words that did not get translated or did not get changed in some way. Okay. And, of course, uh -huh. Uh -huh. after saying all that, you want to know, what does the B-movie script look like? So, yes. this is what it looks look like. like. Oh, and here is my attempt at saying this. Oh, man. Rosato al knon istatimai of aviation tara eb ala y e apis rushhoud eb ablato yo. Each adena the eb to o lili to tag each fat lili for ear of e ethos. E apis of hran yof on y. Bacon, afes the non patch seme homo sapiens tink eb impossible. So. <laughs> Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to enter this competition. Uh, I don't have like high hopes for placement, but I just wanted to have fun, and I and achieved that. that. I, I, this was a lot of fun to work yeah. on. I liked making this as ridiculous as possible, and I hope there are more opportunities like this for me in the future. Thank you once again for letting me enter, and if you're watching on my YouTube channel. I suppose I'll see you in the next one. Got him. Bye bye. All right. Cool. Also, yeah, exactly. Sorry for uh, saying earlier this year that I could commit to doing the whole thing and then definitely not being able to do that. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. The uh, timing just worked late. out I, I really bad. Or anything. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. As yeah. As, like eternal and i will be the basis for the judging and everyone else who can yeah. join in along the way is special icing on the cake so let's Ooh, let's, right. let's i love icing let's finish <laughs> off tonight with zero 33's atoki maso let's let's all see right. what, let's see what happens all right hello and welcome to a a a ter ma a a skipter Ah ah upper na a upper na a upper ma a a skipter ner na a upper na a upper na a upper na a upper ner ma a a skipter or the bad redundant language. I saw this video already. Ah ah upper ma a a skipter ah ah upper na a upper na a upper ma a a skipter ner na a upper na a upper na a upper na a upper ner ma a a skipter is a language made to be redundant and bad. Uh, for my own sake, <laughs> we're going to be shortening it to a a a ter ma a a skip ter for the yeah, rest of the video. Yeah, like, oh, okay, fact, really short. Um, yeah. It's meant a to true be truncation. Bad. Uh, the name <laughs> roughly translates to the language is bad, the language is redundant, the bad thing is redundant, the redundant <laughs> thing is bad. <laughs> the goal of the language is to maximize the amount uh. of sentences needed to get across a concept and also to just sound ridiculous and cursed in the process. So, yeah. We've succeeded at that. Yeah. Yeah. has a pretty <laughs> simple phonemic inventory. You have m n p t k f s h i o a. Pretty simple, very small, but uh, the but phonetically it is pronounced uh, a little differently. Oh God. Well, m n p t h all stay the same. You have k being the glottal stop. Okay. F is pronounced V, uh, only voiced obstruent because why not? S is pronounced skipta, oh, and then you have the three vowels, I, er, and a a a. Yes, <laughs> okay. that is right. That this is language clean. is tonal. That is clean. Yeah. I must have a high tone, er must have a low tone, and a a a <laughs> must have a high tone, then a low tone, then a high tone. So yeah. There are three parts of speech in a a a ter i ma a a skip ter. Uh, <laughs> nouns, they always take three syllables when they have no affixes. They, these also take the prefix, or can take the prefix her to negate them, and they also have suffixes for grammatical case. Next is verbs and adjectives. They're always two syllables with, when they have no affixes on them, except for the word for redundant. Na a upper, na a upper. Um, 
these can take the prefix her to negate them as well, or the prefixes ner, me, and ter to turn them into nouns. Pronouns are always one syllable. They act the same as nouns grammatically, the only difference is that they have one syllable. For grammar, a-a-a-ter i ma a uses sv word order. Uh, subject verb. This means even simple sentences in another language have to be expressed using multiple sentences. <laughs> not uh, 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 um, oh, uh, okay. Anything um, that would normally have a direct object? No. Uh, split it into multiple sentences. For example, uh, the dog writes the book would be skipthernerper. Which is basically oh, the dog writes. The written thing is a book. <laughs> now that's not too bad, right? Oh, Wrong! Adjectives! This oh, all becomes no. so much worse when you try to construct sentences <laughs> with adjectives. Each oh, adjective no. has to be repeated when you add another adjective or verb with the nominaliz su nominalizing suffix ner. If you want to say, eight white dogs write a small book, it becomes skipthernerper nitte, skipthernerper hermer, nitte ner hermer. Skipthernerper na a ate ni inner na a ate hermerner na a ate tin na a a a a a skip de skip de na a a dinner tin na a a a a a na a a dinner skip de skip de or literally <laughs> the dogs are eight or like there are eight dogs the dogs are white eight things are white the dogs right eight <laughs> things right the white thing is right. Oh, the book is small. The written thing is a book. The written thing is small. Oh, no. You can see how this gets out of Jesus hand Christ. quite quickly. Oh, no. A-a-a-ter-i-ma-a-a <laughs> uh, uh, also features a grammatical case system. Uh, you have nominative or accusative or are just null. Nothing. You have genitive, which is va a a ter Dative would be me. Ablative is a a a a a a Locative is i. Causal is ner. Committative is per ta a a. And instrumental is iskupther. Okay. These allow you to make sentences like the dog is at the village, the dog is the man's, or the dog is using the tool. Uh, which those can be combined to make bigger concepts like I bought fruit at the store, which would be quite a sentence to try to construct <laughs> something like uh, I bought the bot thing was fruit the I I am at the store oh, the God. buying is at the store the fruit <laughs> is at the store beautiful <laughs> these prefixes can also be added to nominalized verbs and adjectives for pronouns there are technically three pronouns in the language uh, mer, ner, and ter <laughs> However, remember that due to the way the language works, you must repeat any name or adjective that you add to the pronoun. A name is considered an adjective or a verb in this language. It's kind of a little like tokipona. Um, so, yeah, if I wanted to say I am Syro, I'm making a language, it would be mer skipta a aner mer erme skipta a aner ner erme ermin ner a a a ter i which would be literally like I am Syro, I make uh, the <laughs> thing named Syro makes, and the thing that is made is a language. Oh, but God. if you think about it, it would just be easier to not bother with the pronoun and just say Syro makes a language. <laughs> uh, that would be easier in most circumstances, so most people just don't use pronouns very often. <laughs> now, verbs and adjectives aren't actually grammatically distinct in this language. They use the exact same grammar pronouns. and are always two syllables in length. <laughs> what, uh, oh, anything that we would think of as an adjective, like bad or good or small, uh, are actually a verb meaning to be bad, to be small, to be uh, good. They use the exact same grammar, and they're always two syllables exactly in length, except for the word uh, na'a-upper, na'a-upper, for reasons. 
You must conjugate <laughs> these <Okay. laughs> verbs or adjectives for tense. However, this isn't done with a prefix, but with another sentence with the noun past or future in the locative tense. So like at the past, at the future. Um, okay. So the dog uh, is bad would be skipther nerper ma'a a skipther. The dog <laughs> was bad would be skip skipther nerper ma'a a skipther. Ma'a a skipther me eh 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 The dog will be bad would be skipther nerper ma'a a skipther. Ma'a a skipther me it er er er. Verbs and adjectives don't conjugate for aspect or mood. Fun fact about the word uh, ma'a a skipther. It derives from a nearby language uh, where the original word appears to be something like agma schwa. But yeah, they <laughs> borrowed it in as a a a ma a a skipter. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then they just took away the first a a a in order to make it sound more like uh, the other verbs and adjectives that are always two syllables. Okay. So here okay. we have the sample text. Oh god, what is this going to be? Skipter, skipter, ma. Ah ah. There are multiple. Skip their ma ah 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 ah. Perskip ta ah ah ner ah 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 ner. Oh god. Ah 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 er ner timimi. Skip their skip their ma ah ah ma ah ah ner timimi. The law is the law. Ah ner ma ah ah ner timimi. Me ha ah ah ne. Multiple <laughs> 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 Inner er va a a ter ver. The wing is inner er va a a ter ve ve ve. Inner er va a a ter ver ner ner. That's a b. Inner er ta a a skp ta a a. Inner er skp di skp di. Ta a a skp ta a a ner skp di skp di. Inner er. Her pa a a ha a a the two wings can't the small things can't her pa a a ha a a skip this skip dinner her pa a a ha a a skip this skip dinner her pa a a ha a a her pa a a ha a a her pa a a ha a a me her pa a a ha a a ner ner skip this skip dime her pa a a pa a a me ner skip Skip dimmy, skip di skip dimmy, va a a ter. I could be going off with a bang for the night. Skip di skip dimmy, va a a ter. Ta a a sk ta a a ner. Skip di skip dimmy, va a a ter. Skip di skip dinner. Her pa a a pa a a me, va a a ter. Pa a a pa. Not away from the ground. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Finally. Vivivitime, ververtime, timime, hina a a. Life is off here. Persa a a ner 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 ner
Nerhurskta a anime. <laughs> the beef. Oh my god. Oh, that was beautiful. Uh, no. I that love that. That might uh, be like near the top. Or that that is for that, me. That, 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 that is, was extremely good. Quite something, yes. Like I, I'd say the, the the creativity I give that like I'll do a ninety two for the creativity. I'll of give it, it a ninety. Sure. That that was oh that's an apostrophe. Hang on, there you go. The uh, the <laughs> cursedness I will do a uh, I will do a ninety eight for that. That was beautiful. And, it was quite cursed, yes. And then the execution, the the final part was the funniest part. Yes. Like that, that was hilarious. That one, <laughs> that one, I'm I'm gonna do like a ninety. I think that deserves a one hundred. The, the okay, yeah, go go for it. I that that is that was awesome. <laughs> yes, that was really really good. Ah, uh, beautiful. It was not about rocks, and it was not a posteriori, but it was mm -hmm. the first place language now. That the, nice. the tense of uh, that zero point zero sense. zero yeah. eight three points. Yeah, Isn't yeah. It literally, <laughs> just because of that point two and that point nine. Probably. <laughs> oh my Probably. God. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, can I just switch it for just one second to check? Uh, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, it okay. is. Yeah. It, would, it ties with it otherwise. <laughs> That's uh. awesome. Oh my god. Alright, well, I think that is where we shall end uh, end uh, night one. And yeah. we will return for night two. Um, mm -hmm. Any any final words before we say goodnight to the tri-state area for the night? Um, I'm sorry I couldn't be here to judge the rest of the contest. Uh, good luck to all the contestants. Yes. Juno, you know, you'll be here in spirit. That's right. That, that, yeah, but that... like in physical body, I'm going to be out in the Mojave Desert. So I can't yeah, that uh, act. Name, I guess. Hey, Certainly. the Mojave Desert's great. <laughs> it's, it's not all my favorite the, people in it. It's not as good as the Sonoran Desert, in my humble um, it, opinion. It's actually, uh, it's actually much better. Because we're on the west side of the Colorado River, which is better. Uh, 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 well, no, no. Uh. See, because east of the Colorado <laughs> River is is Phoenix, and that's pretty bad. Okay, okay. I agree, that is pretty bad. Though, to be fair, west of the Colorado River is San Diego, which is also pretty bad. And Las Vegas, we don't need that. We, we don't need any of that. Yeah, but they're, like, north of the Colorado River. They're... Relative to the both of our home cities, I think. You know what else is north of the Colorado River? Utah. Like a bunch of stuff. Canada. Ugh, Utah. <laughs> we don't need that. Who south, wants Utah? South and east of the Colorado River, gang. Take that. <laughs> Caesar's Legion. Mifwa. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Oh, that reminds me. I was playing... Sorry, sorry. That'd be off track. I won't... Well, well, say, say it after the recording ends. Mm -hmm. All right, G I just G. I like the shape of the Salton Sea. The Salton Sea is pretty cool. All right, anyway, stopping this recording. Shape. Goodbye, yes. recording. See you in the <laughs> next batch. We got through like what was that? We got through twenty three. Well, howdy! Looks like we moseyed on down to the old watering hole. This part of the town. Well. Good thing I happen to meet you here, cause I got some important information that you'd want to know. Well, I don't <laughs> the 2023 Con Langer Census. If you've been around this channel for a while, you already know what I'm talking about. The 2022 Con Langer Census happened last year, and the 2021 before that. It's a quick little Google form, it takes like five minutes, it's anonymous, it just helps us collect some cool information so we can make some fun and wacky charts showing how the Conlang community looks and how it's changed over the past couple years. The more years we do this, the better the form gets. Hey, I mean, it's right down there, link in the description. So why don't you just go ahead and open up a new tab, fill out that form real quick. I mean, what you got to lose? You're gonna be here for a while. Like I I'm telling you, you're, you're gonna be here for a while. So why don't you, why don't you just fill it out? Like go click that link, 
open up a new tab or something. Keep this, keep this premiere going. Fill it out. Like, I, I, seriously, go. Fill it out. But keep the premiere on. All right. I'm trusting you. See you in the next intermission. Here we are, session two. It's a week <laughs> later. I've got, mm -hmm. I've got uh, an oat milk latte, a sugar-free Gatorade, four cough drops, and a water bottle. <laughs> God. Uh, you ready for this? I think I am, yes. <laughs> All right, so our next one on the list is the letter Y with a tilde and a grave on top of it by La Tortue PGM, and it's two video <laughs> links. So yep, let's Some, sometimes go. people submitted two links, one for the video, one for the translation, typically. Yeah, it, it's because of like if they're not monetized, they can't get the length or whatever. Mm. Oh yeah, my YouTube Premium is gone. Damn. Uh, Hello and welcome um, to my uh, perfect conling, uh, which is called... <sighs> so, this conling is mostly based on well, purring, as you, well, purring, as you may have inferred. So, um, as its phonemes and phobes are basically just that. Um, so, Good there God. are three phonemes with... Um, <laughs> Oh no, the other thing is worse than the pronunciation somehow. Which forms <laughs> micro coincidence. Yeah, coincidence. attached to some phones, which are and for the N one, for um, the Y one, and for the A one. You can also. <laughs> this is like Hyper Pirate as a mini lang. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Dude. For when you catch your breath. So there are oh five super segmentals to the length. So there is a distinction between and there is the middle tone that is not indicated, it's just, um, for example, <laughs> there's the rising tone that goes something like that. There's the oh high tone that goes, for example, and there's the falling tone that goes. So the word order oh, is on. SOV. I do okay, I know that's pretty basic. I feel like it's. So what? Hold on, hold on. Um, all of these sounds are voiceless. I'm not an expert in that respect because I've always been bad at tones, but can you make voiceless sounds tonal? I mean, obviously, the, the uh, frequency of those, like, voiceless sounds did go from up to down down to up etc so i guess it's technically exposed. yeah but i don't know if it i mean i guess that they are literally tones but they're voice I, I don't know that's mm -hmm. they're 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 fricative tones new new term invented mm -hmm. there you go i guess <laughs> either way it seems to be physically possible <laughs> It's not very um, edgy anymore to put like VSO or something. So, and adjectives can be placed pretty much anywhere unless you give a noun and stuff. For nouns, likeness is expressed through near repetition of the of the noun using an indef marker, like an indefinite marker, for one of the two instances of the noun, and the other doesn't have an indefinite marker, which makes it definite by default. Yes, I know definiteness is the default one. And for adjectives, um, because adjectives accord their definiteness uh, with regards to the noun, it's um, actually just going to be blatant repetition of the adjective. And then there's also uh, syllable and stem structures. There's a lot of syllabic consonant uh, as the nucleus. Uh, there's an occasional tone, and there's an occasional length thing in none. Uh, and that's basically the whole syllable structure, as you might have expected. And uh, stems have one or two syllables at best. Okay. And now, noun classes. Um, they're not like male or female, they're positive and negative. Uh, <laughs> obviously, they're, that's self explanatory. Things that we deem as positive or really positive. Is not. 
and vice versa. <laughs> so the markers you can put on a noun, or a not marker, uh, which is pronounced <laughs> um, and then uh, after that you might have a definiteness marker, which might be none by default, uh, which is going to be definite, and it's going to be uh, indefinite if you put the marker, which is pronounced <laughs> There is uh, adjectives uh, which are obviously uh, accorded with the nouns, so the, the rest is still the same as for nouns, it's just that we have positive and negative, uh, that might be between the two. And for the two noun class markers, we have and we have and now for verb formation, so it's going to be a bit, well, actually much different from the other two, there's only like the not thing that we've already seen for this so far. Um, but there's also the semi-passive um, voice what? kind of thing. And it's not really the passive voice, that's why it's called semi-passive, but it's fine. <laughs> what did you say? What, oh is a what is a semi-passive? Is that like a middle? Or... Got, maybe. It could be the middle voice, or there could be like five distinctions. <laughs> Whether mm. you got you got your active, your semi-active, your middle, your, se your semi-passive. This passive. was already complicated enough to reason about. <laughs> just I don't want any more granularity there, thank you very much. Just accept <laughs> it. Semi-passive. Semi accept it. <laughs> oh god. Most resembles that in English, so that's what I call it. Um, and it's notated with the marker. Then there is a pass and non-pass markers, which are and <laughs> and there is also the infinitive <laughs> marker, which is pronounced uh, okay. And then after that, there might be first person, second person, or third person. Also, uh, except there is no singular or dual or popular or plural or whatever. It's all the same. Um, so, the first person pronoun is pronounced, um, um, the second person pronoun is pronounced, the third person pronoun is pronounced, or something like that. So now we can see a bunch of vocab uh, oh, in the language, so there is, uh, which just means happiness, it's obviously oh, a positive noun. There is, uh, which means uh, domination or plot. There's also positive. Which means death and last <laughs> one, next, kill, stuff like that. Um, mostly because it sounds like you're snapping someone's neck, basically. Like, <laughs> yeah, something like that. On the other hand, you have a bird, which sounds more like when you're hungry and your tummy rolls. I don't remember how you guys say that in English, but whatever. Which is obviously the word for hunger. And then there's, which means bird, now, so any type of food. Obviously, of this one is a net positive, just like word domination. Then there is also <laughs> pause, but also hostility and more. It's actually stem that from it. Uh, so anything warm like or hostile, obviously, war in hostility is obviously net plus. Obviously. As for peace, it's obviously negative and it's pronounced. <laughs> but then there is. Um, <laughs> well, that's obviously the word for breath. Air, wind, and stuff like that. And then there is a uh, mecha or weapon or anything mechanical. What? I love how world domination is positive and peace negative. <laughs> yeah, exactly. War is also positive. This, this is this says a lot about the lore and culture of these. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Of of these of these cat people. And stuff like that, which is pronounced. Which kind of sounds like when your mecha or your razor weapon uh, starts up. Well, you guys probably don't know how that sounds like, but whatever. Um, and Doing finally, there is... <laughs> which has a possibility of being positive when it means space, but it's negative when it comes to movement, because we're a bit, I mean, they're a bit lazy, we gotta admit it. And um, here's basically the rest <laughs> of the vocabulary. Um, okay. Yeah, oh, there yeah. isn't a lot of words, but it's mostly things that we, I mean, cats care about. As for the rest, they don't care about it. Now let's hear an example, which is obviously going to be the Mashua copy pasta, obviously. Oh, I see. So this is why it's two videos, because because they did the last year's one. Wrong copy pasta again, I see. I yeah. see. Oh, there's a sentence trick too. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh god, not the nest VP. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> the nest VP for little oh, VP. God. god. <laughs> There's two of them. There's three VPs here. Yeah. Oh, is that a little VP? It's uh, there's, there's a little VP. Oh god. <laughs> Annoyances pilot flying. <laughs> Annoyances are ungrateful to human thought. It's also a VP with three leaves. Oh, there we go. I don't know there if it's go. like <laughs> a ruthless look at oxlings. Yeah. More videos by La Tortue PGM, I guess. All right. <laughs> Well, there we go. Quick. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> I can't wait to see this one. Let's let's find out. Thank you to my mom and literally no one else for requesting this episode. Welcome to Clon <laughs> Critic, the show that gets facts perfectly accurate about oh, your no. favorite clone. I'm Jan Masali, and in this episode, we'll be looking at this thing. Oh, this thing is oh, an international no. auxiliary language created by Accuracy on April 20th, 1969. It <laughs> An international auxiliary language created on April 20th, 1969. April 20th is a rather cut date. Uh-huh. Good God. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. 1969. All right. 1969, naturally. Good God. This is absolutely <laughs> atrocious. Is that Nacho Libre dead as one of the, like, graphemes? <laughs> I have no idea what that is, but I can see an... An amogus, if you will, in of the course. bottom left. Yeah. Of course. Um, it's not complete the, without an amogus. It's a multi-ocular O. A uh, an e, for some reason, it's in magenta, as opposed to the regular E. Um, we got okay. a bathroom sign here, seemingly for... <sighs> mm -hmm. <laughs> There's All right. and just... What I can only describe is an indescribable mass of black ink towards the center of the fifth row from the bottom, I suppose. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like a lambda and a y upside down y put together into one with something else inside of it. I don't mm. even <laughs> I don't even know. Hopefully, we get a closer look at this. Oh, the freaking the freaking Perks Vanille phonium. <laughs> what? 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 The, what? The, it, it's in the middle right. It oh, looked... I saw it. I saw it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. Mm. Let's see. It was designed to make international communication more efficient, practical, elegant, and easy to learn. So let's dive right. This thing's consonants oh, are. Blah, blah, blah. <coughs> Sorry, I got something caught my throat. This thing's real consonants <laughs> are. Ma. Oh, ma. oh no. Ma. <laughs> That's an iceberg. Ba. Oh uh, no! That doesn't bode da, well. Ga, <laughs> uh, sa, sha, the international sh phonetic sh iceberg. Sh z, 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 so far, so totally normal. Z, uh, okay, let's see where this is going. Th, th, oh, sh, 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 the, the, it's getting worse. It is. R, g, r, v, w, l, r, y, v. The freaking r, sigh. G, uh. r, oh god. R, 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 Solid. <laughs> that oh, is cursed. Oh. Oh. <laughs> what? 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 Ma. 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 Ma.
As you can see, this thing contains pulmonic consonants, non pulmonic consonants, and demonic consonants. Also, that trill is the whatever rhotic, even though all the other rhotic sounds are taken. Is this, is this still a phonology or is this an SCP at this point? Yeah, it, we, we've, we've crossed that boundary. We're, we're somewhere in the like liminal the, space in between. The percent sign, which stood for some sort of, like, percussive sound, as they call it, like a uh, clap or something, and it was labialized. The labialized clap. That was the worst part, I think, about this something. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. This thing's vowels are E, U, A, O, A. Ha ha, five vowels system E, U, A, O, A. There's also one diphthong, EO. Backlist, it was originally going to include another vowel that sounded house and big, but it was scrapped. That's the purpose because I think I recall that's a diphthong that no one can pronounce because it's in like no language. Yeah, he said that was like the least common diphthong. And then relating it to as in English, house, or big. Because like the only two languages I know that have the diphthong are Portuguese and ancient Greek. Yeah. Yeah. Oh god. Yeah, it makes it forces two syllables in Spanish. Day with a. <laughs> oh my god. A anyway. <laughs> Wrapped. This thing sound of tactics don't exist. Any sound can come wherever. Oh, this no. thing is also oh. a tonal language, like all the best international auxiliary languages. Uh, its tonemes are. Uh. 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 And whoever the heck you pronounce that. <laughs> there is also one. <laughs> because I'm tangent line. <laughs> that one. Yeah, the freaking like spiral that goes back on itself in the graph, yeah. like it's on a freaking spectrogram. <laughs> the best one was the tangent, though. Like, yeah. <laughs> it was just the infinity all the way around and back. Yeah. <laughs> the 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 like, or was that like a secant function, like one over tan x? It's like no, it was literally just the tangent. Oh my god, uh... tangent goes like that. It goes up. It has it has an asymptote at like I don't yeah, know okay, where. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's. Go. Anthony McCap, because of course there is. This thing, okay, Alphabet, okay, has the official okay, English name, I Hate Myself. It was designed to be transparently accessible, <laughs> delightfully intuitive, and best of all, very, very beautiful. <laughs> yep. Oh my god. <laughs> Additionally, there are digraphs. NH for <laughs> FF for <sighs> and OE for EO. These are not counted as separate uh -huh. letters, unlike ST in the alphabet. Oh my god. You may notice there are two letters for <laughs> K. Which one you use depends on your gender. If you're male, there are strict etymological rules about which letter to use that can't be told from context. If you're female, you can use whichever the heck one you want. And if you're non-binary, there are simple contextual rules. There are also two letters for Wuh. There is one rule no matter what gender you are. The sob emoji is used in even numbered words of the sentence, you brev, in odd numbered words. The brr letter is the unallocated Unicode code point U plus A, B, C, D, E, while the t letter is the unallocated Unicode code point U plus 69420. Do not mix them up. You will lose all trust and respect from the distant community if you do. What'd you say? <laughs> well, I need to explain that one because some people might not get what this means. Un unallocated Unicode code points mean that there are reserved code points in Unicode that you can use for whatever you want. They are they don't have any characters assigned to them. <laughs> you just <play> <laughs> so those are just two random of them. code points that have no symbol associated with them. That's why they show up like this because they are literally <laughs> do not have a symbol associated with them. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Do not substitute them with other unallocated Unicode code points either. The observant may notice there is one phoneme from the phonology section above that is not represented in the alphabet. Literally. Someone had in fact asked accurately, I am curious as to the reasoning for why your orthography is fatally missing a symbol which maps the uvular ejective. 
because this response on this thing has to use the skull emoji to represent the sound. However, this is non-standard. Also, even though they're extremely important for differentiating words, tones are not written because no. This thing uses SOV word order. However, when you turn 50, you must switch to OVS word order. And if you turn 80, you must drop nouns entirely and switch to V word order. Also, on October 20th of the year you turn 34, you must use SOVO word order, where you list objects twice, but only for the one day. Then you go back to SOV. This thing has no less than 42 different parts of speech, including but not limited to noun, verb, pronoun, proverb, adjective, adverb, adnoun, decorative filler, pro-decorative filler, Demonic Screech, Rick Roll, My Cat, <laughs> Pants, Pro Pants, and your great grandma's secret chocolate chip cookie recipe that's really good but has gone on in for 23 years until you recently found it in your attic while looking for a comic book you love as a child. There's also a word, rookie, <laughs> that's not considered to be any of the 42 parts of speech, and if it is, it is unknown which one. Some say it is a new 43rd part of speech, but this view is not accepted by most scholars. Nouns are declined by case, gender, number, opinion <laughs> wait, on wait, Bosnia. Wait a second, wait a second. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Singular dual null no. tremil tremilla quadra guess additional yeah <laughs> pile <laughs> plural any number of them except fifteen fifteen of any is inexpressible Inexpress <laughs> and then <laughs> opinion on Bosnia <laughs> opinion on Bosnia. <laughs> <laughs> Legal <laughs> or illegal. <laughs> Strategic linguistic ambiguity. Um, the, oh god. And how recently was the last time they ate a taco? Verbs are declined by <laughs> tense, whether or not the speaker wants the action oh, to happen, yeah. mood, moral judgment, oh, and number, god. subjects and verbs. Back to the mood. <laughs> oh man. Go back to the mood. Really wants it to happen. Someone wants, somewhat wants it to happen. Does not want it to happen. Isn't sure if they want it to happen. And hey, look, a tree. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the mood. mood. The oh, bad mood. That's it. That's the only one. <laughs> oh my god. god. <laughs> Moral Jesus judgment Christ. and number subject. <laughs> what? Nova ves Nova. Ve Nova guessa septimillicenta quadral. Nova guessa septimillicenta quadral. <laughs> uh, the, yeah, no, 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 no. 97,104. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, I think that is right. That is how you would say that in Latin. Sounds, right. sounds right to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. It adds up. <laughs> All right. Checks and verbs numbers must agree. However, there's a form where they don't agree. That's called, it's literally called I'm stupid because that's how you'll be seen if you don't have agreement between subjects and verbs numbers. Add nouns are declined as food or not food. Note that water cat is counted as food. Adjectives and other modifiers are placed as far away as possible from the word they modify. So good luck finding which word is modified. <laughs> this thing inherits nearly all of its vocabulary from European languages because Europe, God. However, most of them are distorted <laughs> way, way beyond recognition. Confusingly, first and second person pronouns are merged into the same word, bobrika. I asked Aka as to why he did this, but his response was just saying yurnan over and over. Another interesting thing about the pronouns is the pronoun qua, which specifically refers to Taylor Swift, regardless of whether she is in the first, second, third, or fourth, don't question it, person. <laughs> There's also a word, <laughs> nganging <laughs> ngango. Is that even a pro- is that even a, 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 a proverb at this point? <laughs> oh god oh, damn it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm looking at this slide. The entire being God right. damn it. <laughs> Not Don't. just like not just the section you have to translate the entire B movie script. Yeah, that that just pronounces the B movie. Imagine like the subtitles having the entire movie and just having at the beginning just <laughs> the B -movie that, that word and then it's the just silent. Of the B -movie. <laughs> oh my god! Which translates to the entire B movie script. This thing has a second register called, <laughs> which accurately describes as it's literally just English because I give up. And finally, we have the spoken sample. <clears throat> oh no, I'd say I like this thing more than I like Tokipona, but not as much as I like Poliespo, making it the yes best Klong reviewed so far. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, where I'll be reviewing Mandarin Chinese. Fuck, girl. God damn it. Okay, so bonus thing that wasn't in the original Google Doc, since this is for the Cursed Conline Circus, who in which I'm supposed to have a translation for... Uh, the opening line of the B movie script. Um, now, there is already a word, as I said earlier, that translates to the entire B movie script, but I felt to, to really un to, like, make sure that I like,
qualify <laughs> that I would make like an actual translation of the B movie, the first line, okay. just the first line. All right, this is gonna be a heck to pronounce. All right, it is. Sumioya Irina Ranto Binu Giel Yawi Eos Yurnan Bornid Kokolo Kokoko Yurnan What? That was just like the first line of the gloss there, yeah. like on the, like the first three lines. Yup. Is it an Well, guess your name. Skni, zig zig ah, pranto ah ah. Irina Ranto. Irina. Ranto. Irina Ranto. Alright, so that's the translation. But however, another thing I should point out is that due to the K bop level ambiguity of this thing, this translates not only to according to all known laws of aviation, there's no way a bee should be able to fly. Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. The bee, of course, flies anyway because humans don't care what human things are possible. But it's also the translation of, all human beings are born free and equal and dignity enough. <laughs> they are endowed with reason and consciousness and should act towards one another in the spirit of brotherhood. Article 1 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. <laughs> oh my so, God. uh... 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 <laughs> oh my God. Oh. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is you wow to say the other way, but okay <laughs> okay <laughs> on to the next one which this is this one was interesting this, this on one archive.org yeah. this is fascinating i have never seen this before in my life but someone has published a video to archive.org and posted that is this truly fascinating yeah <laughs> so let's uh let's witness it Mm -hmm. Imagine you'd want to create a language that's A, as close as possible, B, influenced by as many languages as possible, and C, involves rocks as much as possible. What would you <laughs> yeah. do? Since a very similar question was posed in a second cursed conlang contest by Akma Shwa, there are going to be many answers <laughs> soon available. Like, Here's mine. Same oscillators, <laughs> basic structure, a space and component, inspired by Lushman's abstractors, and additionally has five words to functionally convert a complete sentence to a single word. They are used by surrounding the sentence we want to convert on the left by the word corresponding to what part of speech it should be, and on the right by a special closing word. Okay. There are such words for nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs, and abstractions can be nested arbitrarily. To make your stain oscillate as close as possible and to involve rocks, I decided to only use words meaning rock, which are being based <laughs> on Tacopona. I need nearly 130 words. <laughs> I don't think English has so many synonyms, so I needed additional languages. Since I tried to base it on as many languages as possible, I decided to only take one word from every language, since, as oh you had no. left, I did not in fact speak 129 <laughs> languages or something. I needed to look the translations up, but it turns out to be bloody difficult to find accurate translations for so many languages, so I decided to give up on the accurate part of it and just take Google Translate <laughs> translations instead. <laughs> From Gamer the move. point of Christmas, Naturally. the bad translations are actually, unintentionally, pretty good. And some of the translations really are bad. For example, the second word of the language's name is Osolea, which is French for rock. But in the sense of rocking back and forth, not <laughs> at all. It's probably even worse for some tiny badly support languages that I don't speak. Here's the full word list. The pronunciation Dear is God. according to the original language of the word that is currently being said, or if you don't want to learn 100 languages, the best you can based on languages you already speak. 
For me, Stein also near phonology is therefore approximately the union of English and German. So these would be my consonants roughly, and these my vowels. Written can it be either with Google Translate's Latin transcriptions of the words, or in language oh, original Wait a second, there wait a direction. second. <laughs> no, 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 that was too fast. <laughs> okay, wait, there's the... Oh god, okay. Okay, okay, okay. No, nothing, nothing too crazy. We mm-hmm. got... Fricative Lenis and Fortis as distinctions. That is interesting. Um, actually, can, these I, are all I, split into Fortis Lenis. I can I can understand that for the for the stops because like in it. some dialects of German, especially like southern dialects, they do uh, do not have a voicing distinction between stops. It's I like see. a distinction aspiration actually. So uh, a B is just pa and the P is pa. Interesting. So, yeah, I, there I've is seen no people vo- make that argument for English too. I don't know if it's actually yeah, true. Yeah, no, no, yeah. no. I, I've really. seen so, I've seen some people say it though. Like you know, I, I like the at least like in our Discord server, I've seen a couple conversations where they're like, "Did you know that English is actually a Fortis Lenis distinction?" And I'm just like, no. No, not I really. Can't, I, I can't say that I do. <laughs> anyway, yeah. and, the, and the vowels. The words, or in, in language. German, that's true, but for stops, uh, there are voiced fricatives, though. <laughs> yeah. That is a thing. Yeah. Um, okay, and then we just got basically the English vowels in here, it looks like. <laughs> yeah. Except, basically. okay, yeah, I, I guess you could make an argument for that one. But yeah, <laughs> the shui. <laughs> Um, alright. This is original script. The writing direction follows the majority of the words in a given paragraph. It is therefore usually left to right. Oh. If necessary, the first word serves oh as a tiebreaker. <laughs> it's therefore, literally the written last in the... word of oh, different man. directionality. No, no. When tiebreaker is necessary, the leftmost word always left to right, and the rightmost word is always right to left. So the directionality can then therefore not anymore be recovered from the written text. So it's ambiguous. <laughs> <laughs> Which is quite nice for Christmas, I guess. As an example, here's the opening paragraph from a B-movie. Carpa dutze silla rock katana da patoro papa stein rock patu. Papa patoro katana stina silla stanza pop silla rocky rocko patoro. Patu patoro chulu pop ripie rocky da rock rocka sikela katana ripie libanga pop dagax da dagax tash rock patu. Papa Patoru Katana Tiena Silla Stanka Paprumi Patu Petra Paprumi Patu Thank you for watching and a big thanks to Akmashwa for hosting this awesome contest and a huge sorry to Sonia Lang for being yet another one who abused his simple language of good for something <laughs> awful. <laughs> okay, that was um, pretty awesome. I, I, I like that. that. Something that maybe got unnoticed is the, I don't think, I'm not sure if I mentioned that, but that first word in the name of the language, I'm pretty sure that's just Yiddish for rock. Because it is awfully similar to the German word for rock. That makes and sense. It's Hebrew, so I think it's probably Yiddish for rock. I feel like I recognized a few of the, uh, yeah, of, yeah. Of the languages yeah. in there. <laughs> All right. A pretty easy alien language, also mm. split into two videos. All right. Mm-hmm. And let's watch. Hello. You are recording today. Right browser, aren't you? Just, just a question. Yeah, yeah. The, the the computer's recording my whole screen, so we're good. Yeah, yeah. Just, just making sure because you know you and technology and uh-huh. no offense, uh-huh. but I just just wanted to make sure. <laughs> yeah, we're good. We're good. All right, I don't want any captions. Why are the captions on? And also, could you disable autoplay, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, All right, oh. anyway. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Today, I'll talk about the language that humans cannot understand or talk. Tap, tap, on. This is my submission for the Curse Colon Surface. An idea of okay. this guy. Great guy, I never met him. <laughs> A bit of context. <laughs> this colon of mine is spoken by aliens with oh, only no. one extendable oh, body part, like our arms. These aliens don't have voice, as we do, uh, so they had to use vibrations and body odors to communicate <laughs> oh, one by later. 
We know about humans because of radio transmissions. They received in the 90s and 2000s. This radio signal passed through a wormhole, after which they were able to contact the government of Djibouti, so the <laughs> secret agents arrived to their planet. And it is only humans who invented a script using vibrations and positions of the extendable body part. Uh, vibrationology. The vibrations of this language oh, have no. different lengths. Some are only short, some only long. Some with three levels of distinction. Following are the vibrations of their language, visualized for humans. But remember, these aliens here them from the soil, while you hear vibrations from air. Way different. <laughs> These aliens oh, must eat moss and material living on rocks. So when they want to say they are hungry, they need to use rocks. For example, to say the children dinner is ready, mom throw rocks to their children, like true Christians. <laughs> I remember I mentioned others, well emotions are expressed by others, not vibrationally. They feel happy, they emit an odor. They are sad, <laughs> emit a different odor. Now, if you <laughs> think this face. analogy is not a curse, because we're human trying to understand language in the dark, we won't be capable to understand left tap or right tap in the dark, as the aliens do. Try it, think about it. Aha, they were both left. Moreover, we cannot express their emotions. <laughs> So, to the audience, we seem like robots, motionless, like me when they ask me about my future. Our order <laughs> to them is just human, which probably is the emotion of feeling suddenly useless. Now the grammar. I mean, I'm not really a grammar fan, if such a creator even exists. I think even if a Latin super important person called Grammaris invented grammar and it was his big passion, so he would hate his creation and his name, which sounds more like a unit measurement, but whatever. The sentence structure is OVS. This language has only one pronoun for all persons, because the aliens don't <laughs> have to find identity, but identify within their group. Being out of group is called being without rocks. Nouns differ from moving and not moving by prefixes. All nouns are collective. This language has only the number one. For the numbers, the number <laughs> one is repeated as many times as the number oh, is. No. But the aliens <laughs> also have a limited memory, so generally they don't talk about numbers over 42. Numbers over that are considered too difficult. To have cultural transmission and don't forget the repeated knowledge they possess, they have collective memory made by the continuum of information transmission. So they really vibrate a lot. Verbs are <laughs> conjugated in seven ways. Why? Because you know, three is a magic number. Happening is the base form. <laughs> the others are formed with practices. In the memory, potential, past potential, which is out of memory, foreboding, well, which is going to happen, postboding, for which is quite <laughs> sure it happened before, and long ago, which is knowledge that comes from previous generations and is always potential. But hey, why there are always free choices about the prefixes as for the conjugations? Uh, well, I said it, but also because these aliens distinguish <laughs> from thumpy and teeny vibrations. The first ones are with the palm and cap, the second ones are with the back and shuffles. Words with more thumpy vibrations take different prefixes from words with more teeny vibrations and from neutral words. Funny curiosity, did you know that teeny words make the aliens domestic animals scream? But the aliens <laughs> can't hear this only vibration, so they're fine. Where <laughs> adjectives go, you ask? Before or after the noun? No, no, not so easy. They go between nouns. Not verbs, <laughs> say. Between verbs or the things they're fat. It's language. What? Hold on. The. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, the adjectives are in fixed. Oh no. Yup. <laughs> God. <laughs> Oh my god. ...which have more than 20 distinct levels in directionality. By that, I mean it is mandatory to say the exact position of something in space, like an expanded demonstrative system. The top vibration lengths indicate distance, the arm position indicates direction. 
Central tap is forward. Long left tap is left for a bit. Those are unidirectional. My direction can be forward forward, for a bit, forward left, left right and so on. These aliens can distinguish three colors, blue, black and white. Green <laughs> is just blue. What is red? Who knows? Remember it for the text. Bye. Okay, and then the text is the next video. Oh, video, yeah. That that that's pretty good. That one's got a 1.4k views already. All Ooh. right. And then this guy is the text. I love all the so the text. Awesome. What? I love all the recommendations on the right are just all conlanging videos. Yeah, it's like, a, I'm not even logged into anything, but the algorithm yeah. just knows that all these are like part of the same <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah. that, that's pretty good. That's probably why I'm getting such a big subscriber boost lately. Maybe, um, yeah, sure. Alright, anyway. It's this one. First, a disclaimer. Because of the short memory, the sentence will be transmitted from Adam to Alien every 42 seconds in order to do it entirely. Another Alien has to repeat the part just learned. And the same goes for the 42 successive seconds. So there will be a little bit of interference. Another oh, clarification. His language don't have a word for human or aviation. They have to describe us. The translation for human in English is this. Oh, for B no. is this. Take ah. your time to read it, and now the moment you wait. Oh. <laughs> this goes on for seven minutes. It does. It does. <laughs> oh my god. It also is maxing out my microphone, but it's beautiful. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. Oh god. <laughs> they're overlapping. Oh god. Yeah, they're overlapping because they gotta repeat each other for the. Yeah. Well. Wait, what was that? <laughs> Wait a second. What, what did that say? Okay, oh, I, did we just miss it? I don't know. I think it was a glitch, maybe. I don't know. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> it's just getting more intense. Okay, wait. The infos are passing to other infos, to, uh, to other individuals. Soon, an alien will continue it. Oh God! So, so this is this is why it's intensifying. Mm -hmm. I see how it is. Okay, I don't know if we need to go through all of it, but let's let's skip ahead and see what it sounds like. Okay, so yeah, it gets pretty consistent after that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Holy crap. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh my god. Jesus Christ. This is the last one, for real this time. And so that- okay, so that's why it just repeats the entire thing massively. Oh my god. That that was that was pretty glorious. That that was that was certified. quite something, yeah. Certified. So, uh, next we have Pomum oh, Terrestre. One, this is okay. the one I need to explain. Uh, you can show the Google Sheets document for that one, maybe on on. 
I mean, I can't see it here, but on in the recording, I mean. Uh, what? As you can see. Oh. I've I've put the number in Roman numerals there. Yeah, uh, yeah. 28. So, uh, for, uh, for the people that don't know Latin, uh, let me translate this here. Uh, the the name of the author Pomum Terrestre. Uh, the most literal translation is that is is like Earth fruit. Yeah. I think that what they're trying to say here is it's it's used as a word for like uh, potato. Yeah. Sometimes because that's what French calls it. And the name of the language is Terrificissimum Meum Opus, my most terrible work or terrifying <laughs> work. <laughs> my most terrifying work. Oh my god. Yeah. All right, this one is seemingly also split into two videos, mm -hmm. so let's, uh, let's find out. Jeez, like most of those are either my videos or their other cursed conlines, that's awesome. All right, anyway, <laughs> here we go. Salve, an Mashwa. Salve, te judices. Salve. This is my submission to the cursed conlang circus. You will note that this slide does not mention the name of the language. This is on purpose. I'd like to make a game out of this, you see. Oh, God. Here oh. are some of the characteristics and features of the language. We have some rather cool standouts, like probably agglutination. Probably. One word about <laughs> <Okay>. rocks. <laughs> One the word about rocks. Is, okay. It's okay. an a priori. Sly move there. So, the game is quite simple. I want you to guess what language this comes from oh so basic outline of the presentation we have phonetics and phonology followed by grammar lexicon and and the logo logographic writing system between each of these uh -huh. i will pause for you oh God. to make a guess okay um the Ugh. answer will be revealed concurrently with the final section. All I'll right. Three examples, and then I will tell you. That's how it's gonna go. Anyway, sounds good. Now that that's out of the way, institutuamus. Here's our inventory. Uh, okay. With nasals. Oh. Oh, that was fast. Oh. Um, oh okay. There we go. A couple go. things to note: three-way stop distinction. Could have okay. been four. Can't do voice aspirated stops, so it's only going to be three. <laughs> um, okay. Lots of vowels. We've that is got lots of vowels. Nasal, long, rounded, whole nine yards. Most okay. of those are probably um, allophones of one another. But, eh, I just want you to see the scope of what kind of vowels you're going to be looking at. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I already mentioned that. Anyways, grammar time. I mean, the, Sorry, that, that, pause. Yeah, that's on me. Anyways, wait. That so so if he wants us to guess that first mm -hmm. one, if if we're looking at the phonology, mm -hmm. I don't know what what does that remind you of? Um, let's okay. Let's analyze this for a bit. We have uh, a distinction between voiced and voiceless stops, and also one aspirated stop. Uh, keep in mind that this is probably not the phonology of a natural language, but rather derived from one. So yeah. there was some evolution somewhere. We have a dental fricative, which is interesting, but also a post alveolar voiced fricative only, which mm. is a bit unusual. Um, and then we have, I'm not sure what the tildes are. Maybe they're supposed to be superscript, but maybe that was too hard to do if you don't have an API. And IP, API key, we've got too much programming. <laughs> IPA key. Uh, so I, I suppose these are supposed to be na optionally nasalized. All yeah, of these? I, th I, th I think that's what it is. I think that's saying mm -hmm. that like it can be lengthened and it can be nasalized. Mm -hmm. And it seems we have uh, a lot of rounding going on here too, which the... can point towards umlaut or something like that, maybe. Yeah, I I think my f my first like vibe check guess was like ancient Greek or something. I don't mm -hmm. know, because like, uh, we, have, we have th, we have the aspirated t, we have yeah. e and e, we have er, and like, stuff like that. Yeah, but there's uh, a few things that don't add, fully add up for ancient Greek, because ancient Greek does not have er. Yeah. Um, 
It does not have anything close to Ja. Yeah, <laughs> very true. Um, and also we have both Ta, Ta, and Tha, which That's is a bit true. weird because Ancient Greek only had aspirated stops, which then became fricatives later. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So Ancient Greek doesn't fully... I also, uh, it also looked like that to me at first, but it's it doesn't fully add up, I think. Yeah. Uh, I think it's maybe close, maybe Old French. Maybe. Or some flavor of French, because that I'm not sure about the dental fricative in that one, but it it, it had the post alveolar fricative. Um, mm. And also most of the vowels, I think. Hmm. I'm not entirely sure. Okay, well, let's see what happens in the next section. Mention that. Mm -hmm. Anyways, grammar time. Sorry, okay. I forgot to pause. That's on. Yeah, we, we got that. Anyways, <laughs> nouns and in eh. Adjectives okay. and in aw. Um, you pluralize basically everything you do with this language is prefixes or uh, infixes. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Basically, you pluralize using that. I'm going to save all of the nonsense for later. Uh, when I read the translation poorly. Um, we have three cases. Subjective, objective, genitive. Genitive is far too complicated to talk about until after the veil is lifted. <laughs> oh, God. Get there. Um, we've got uh, verbs next. They're not fun. Um, they're <laughs> marked for tense, mood, voice, and person. Oh, God. Um, it can technically go up to anything, but I stopped at fourth. Um, you see what's <laughs> there. We have uh, the fun little just infinitive future perfect. You have a past, present progressive, present perfect, future imperfect, all those prefixes. Oh, um, God. We have a habitual mood, an imperative, and indicative, oh, an no. optative or usive, a, subjunct a subjunctive an interrogative, and of course, the three passive voices. Passive, hey. middle, passive, and okay, anti-passive. Woo! <laughs> anti-passive, that makes one. sense. Good. Yep, subjective yep. case and an objective case. Just to make my life a little easier. Um, word, or, word order changes depending on the voice. Now, oh, the person is the easiest <laughs> one. Uh-huh. Basically, in all of these prefixes, you <laughs> the might notice there's a prefix, prefix prefix. Oh, no. Tons of fun. Yep. Basically, you take that and you slap it between the root and the ending in the main word bit. The bit that carries the meaning to it. That differentiates the snake from fire. Um, <laughs> I have a bunch of prefixes... You already know how this works. Anyways, <laughs> you thought we were done. Oh, God. Ignoring the oh, last no. one. That's a lot of prefixes. Well, how do we know what, how the uh, prefix order goes? Well, there you go. It's nice and easy. Uh, there is a mistake on the last one that I didn't get around to fixing, I guess. Uh, it should be ill as the rest are. Uh, okay. Okay. Then if you have I don't think I would have noticed. More than one main <laughs> prefix root, you slap all the prefix prefixes in that there order before the main prefix root. Dear God. You get the idea on how that works. Now, on to the Lex. Okay, button. let's pause for a bit. Okay, maybe. so. Break again. <clears throat> he just said, oh, well. I forgot to break again. God damn it. Okay, we're, we're playing this game. It. I I think. I'm starting to feel like this this segment makes me feel like it's based on either like straight up Kartvelian or some Uralic language. Mm -hmm. Like that that's that I'm I'm getting some some Hungarian vibes out of it mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. That's that that's my current thought. I don't know how that pin, like uh, how that matches with the phonology if at all, but uh -huh. that's that's what I'm getting out of this we can we can go back a bit and look at some of the affixes maybe those 
Hell, yeah. I don't know. Let's see. And then I didn't... Come on. That differentiates the snake. So yeah, we have like... So the, the person is... Are, are these infixes that go between mm -hmm. the roots and the endings. Which... Yeah, even, even further back, I'd say. There was and something early on. Is the on. easiest... Just to make my life a little easier. We got moods. Okay. Uh, because even with this, like with verbs ending in 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 e, uh, this is the like if we look at you know, verbs generally end in, but that's probably not the infinitive. That's like some sort of. I mean, the thing is, in in ancient Greek, there are an awful lot of endings of a root record that contain a or like like in or something like that, and that could, could that could become nasalized. And, that is true. That is and, true. Mm -hmm. Um, and I get I guess both gr like Greek and Latin are both known for being able to append a bunch of, you know, prefixes and also conjugating their verbs. Uh huh. Uh huh. So I get. I guess ancient Greek could still fit the vibe a little bit. Mm -hmm. But also with are, all yeah. with the, the grammar on the on the next slide with all the yeah. Uh, yeah. What was I here? With all the, the moods here, because that is an awful lot of moods, and especially having both an optative and a subjunctive is a very, like, brief <laughs> of Sanskrit. I mean, I don't think this Sanskrit really fits here, because that's the other language I can think of that has an optative and a subjunctive. Yeah, yeah. Though at the same time, like, Sanskrit does have the the uh aspiration distinction yeah but sanskrit also has a a lot more like sounds yeah yeah that's true like a lot more nasal a lot more stops hmm okay well i guess we're just gonna have to find out then for the rest of this let's see mm -hmm. the ending uh it's a very simple equation you've got a root you've got an ending then you have prefixes infixes in there all that fun uh, fun stuff. Anyways. You add all that, and you get your definite muni meaning. Few okay. irregularities. We'll run into, like, one, I think. A verb becomes uh, such that it looks like an adjective. Oh, God. Fun stuff. Mm. Anyways. Simplest word. Morpho morphologically. <laughs> yeah. Insofar as it's a nice simple word it is uh -huh. also inc it's nice and simple in so far as it is to say I should uh, I should point out because it is incredibly complex and vague in meaning basically it's just an auxiliary word it can be a demonstrative pronoun never used it that way um, it's a definite article with nouns hence why i made it a demonstrative pronoun um and then with verbs it's used as a replacement marker when they run out of space <laughs> what <laughs> oh look at that what anyways dot, dot, dot. anyway next slides <laughs> you'll see the roots not necessarily the derivations thereof okay so here's the first 18 oh. including the rock word which is about halfway down the right column do what you will with that. Um, Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. No. It can't be. What? A couple of these roots kind of look like, uh, kind of look like Autogen roots. Like, like, uh, like, Edad is government, um, but Etad is or etal is uh is like state or governed body in auto june um also also uh <clears throat> where is it where it says petad is or, or pet, petad is boulder the rock word i mm -hmm. like i think uh i think petal is like rock and one, one, one of the many words for rock in Auto June. Now, some of them are mm. not related at all, for sure. 
and I know that. Uh-huh. But that th- those are just a couple that have jumped out to me. It's probably not that, but I that that would be a big plot twist if it was. I don't think yeah, any yeah. of the other things really fit that. But I'm we'll see. I'm looking at them and nothing really like jumps out to me. So. <laughs> I don't really recognize any of these as anything that I know of. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's not a posteriori, but it is based on a language. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. All right, well, let's let's keep watching. 18, including the rock word, which is about halfway down the right column. Do what you will with that. <laughs> I like how you um, think that just having a word for rock means you're going to qualify. Here's- Okay. Five. <laughs> that, by the way, is the entire lexicon. Oh no. Uh, I do have an Excel sheet with all of this again. Um, um sustain, bez, autojune, bez meaning balance and terraforming. Um, erm. Uh, I still don't think it is. I think it's just coincidences. But anyway, but the, the word for me. sleep. Uh, reminds me of the Greek god Morpheus, hmm. at least in it's uh, it kind of works. Um, hmm. huh. interesting. You'll see what I mean after the veil is lifted. I can't wait to see this veil get anyways, lifted. Speaking of, we pause, we flip the page onto oh, the no. logography. Better get your guesses in. To start, that word I was talking <laughs> about. Orthographically, it's a letter C. What? Oh, what? Now, <laughs> on to the next one. No. There's what? that word. Okay, that's not fire. what I was expecting. Um, and then Is finally, it going to be a syntax tree? You got this one. I, I don't think so. Uh, now, okay. You might start... <laughs> To see what's going on here, don't you? The next wait, what? 15th slide. Wait, 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 This what? reminds me, the only thing I can think of now is like chemical bonds with this one. That's like. Oh no. That's what this reminds me of right now, like these, these lines. I was gonna say syntax free at first because, you know, C. But also sees the head, so it wouldn't make sense for it to have things coming off of it. But uh, like with the zigzag thing, I mean that that one, the the it, double line looks a bit more like a yeah, double bond. Yeah, so. it looks like a double bond. Uh-huh. And, and maybe like plobe or plobe is like pl- plumbus, like like lead. I mean lead, you know. Mm. Hmm. Uh, okay, I. St- I, I don't I, I, let's find out I guess I mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know what else to say about that mm-hmm. finally lift the veil and reveal the name of the language Judin otherwise known in English it is you it is, it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so mm-hmm. now you might be thinking you did all of this with chemicals? And the answer is yes. <laughs> so, IUPAC basics. IUPAC is yeah. an organization oh that god. names chemical that compounds. Oh yeah. my god. Uh, this language okay. takes inspiration from alkanes, the veil alkenes, was indeed and alkynes. Mm-hmm. Alkanes are the ones with single bonds. Alkenes are the ones with double bonds. And the alkynes are the ones with triple bonds. <laughs> Anyways, how you may see it in this language... Um, basically, the way that this works is, uh, you have different substituents that are attached to the carbon chain, and those carry the, uh, minute grammatical details. Oh, God. For example, (laughs) with the plural prefix, which is that, again, um, Basically, I made that by taking a hydroxyl group and sticking it on the second uh, position, otherwise known as two hydroxyl. <laughs> two hydroxyl, goddamn. Now, oh my god. You kind of oh, see where good. most of the sound change oh nonsense came from, and if you didn't, there's also uh, sizg. 
<laughs> six. Yep. Okay. The genitive is incredibly wacko. Um, basically, I Mol- took, Oh no. The idea is you take the possessee word and you stick it onto the or the possessor word and you stick it onto the possessee word at the first position, which creates a longer chain. <laughs> so oh, God. At this point, we get some fun things. Like, long words that I don't know how to derive. Anyways, when I was talking about how methane is used as a an auxiliary word with verbs, how it fulfills, <laughs> okay. how it basically Math- flags, uh, say, hey, methane. this word, not the, enough uh... room to say what it needs to. Uh, that's because of the octet rule, and you can't have too many things sticking out of it on the cutting room floor is surprise agglutination within sentences such that words would react with each other, but I did not have the time. <laughs> Making them to, react with each uh, other. Nor the desire to <laughs> Oh no, they're literally no, chemical happening. reactions. Simple. Oh, this can't mm-hmm. happen. Right. Anyways. Translation. <laughs> this uh, took in place hours. of a gloss, you'll see uh, the exact broken English translation as literally as I can do it. In retrospect, I probably should have made the indirect statements a little bit easier for me by making it <laughs> more like Latin, but I forgot. Anyways, let's see if I can fit all this real fast. Hem. Kethil for for ethyl ethyl zer blobil Juduzer Fur Dari Mathen 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 Dars Gil Dejde. Oh my god, it's beautiful. Duda Dars Gil Gila Gila Gilad Gila that's a fun vowel, let me tell you. <laughs> tu zer da fil va dars gil fun. I like how the I is a capital I to match yeah. the L. zer va dar i ag du furan furan o dars gil dars gil as gay <laughs> English Oh god Fura Ludu da Dars Gilag de Mathe Mathe Filva Dars Gil Zer Blob Blob il Ag du du Zer Dari. This is canon, what es all chemical compounds are saying in any given moment. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> eh da dej de. I think that the main thing to take away from this is that Arjun is manifest and inspired by chemistry. Oh god. <laughs> do dej do zerva. I, gotta, I gotta make the periodic table of elements based on this. Oh, darj. Yeah. Oh god, the audio is horrible right now, I'm not. <laughs> oh god. Oh god. Furan. Furan. Dos. Dars. Gil. 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 Te. Dars. Gil. Putting on headphones doesn't help. Va. Dars. Gil. Eb. Dun. Ter. Thil. Da dars gil fur i feel I'm running out of time, so I am going to start this slide over from the top on a new video. Okay, is that all the second video is then? Um, I'll, I'll check, I'll check, but if so, I think, I think we got I, the point. I quickly want to confirm something, one second. Go for it, I'll pause real quick. Interesting. I'm going to start from the top of the slide. Okay, However, let's, let's go to the bottom of the slide. Translation. Yeah. Dars. Dars. Ag. Ah. Dars. Gil. Okay. Okay, we're back here now. 
Afila Dej du zer va fe de de la I guess Very confident Dar skill de la Ej den Wow. Great last sentence. <laughs> no care, B flying, B is flying, impossible, thank you, Vince. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. The end. I think, I think the name uh, Terrificissimo Me Amorp is my most terrible. All right. We're on to the zip creators, right. whatever that's supposed but to be pronounced. Before that, I'm going to be right back. Okay. Okay. I'll take a break too. Let me pause real quick. Yeah. All right, <laughs> and we're back. I'm gonna crack open my oat milk latte. Here we go. Night caffeine, oh, part two. Part two. <laughs> Thank you, fries. How, right. how long have we been recording? Um, one hour and twenty three minutes. Okay. All right. Yeah. Are we, are, yeah. Are, are we ready for? For Tiduna, whatever it's gonna be by Zip Creator. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. Oh. Ooh. Excuse me. Most languages have the concept of the verb or the noun. We think of these as fundamental part of our languages, and to be clear, they definitely are. Pretty much every natural human language in the world has nouns and verbs, and even many constructed languages that claim not to have them do in fact have them, but call them something else. It is very, very difficult to avoid having them, because if you want a language to have any semblance of meaning, well, what else are you supposed to do? Objects and actions are pretty fundamental. These are, I don't intend to remove them. Instead, I intend to construct them in a way that is fundamentally different from other okay. languages. So, okay. what if you called, instead of having roots for objects, nouns, and actions, verbs, instead construct them from a list of words that describe them? This is the primary idea behind the TV law. So how exactly do we turn adjectives into nouns? Well, when we think of an object, we can list its properties. For example, water is a liquid, it's blue, and it's edible. Okay. Now we translate those words, all descriptors, over to Tolomba. And then, as you could probably guess from either the thumbnail or how I've been saying the name of the language this entire time, we say all these words at once simultaneously, like oh, so. No. La -la -la. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! The speakers of this language would require a potentially infinite amount of mouths. We can do the same with verbs. For example, if we want to say to fly, we use the descriptors not stationary to knock and above, which combines to knock, we can then attach oh, the verb part of giving yach. Not that verbs in this language are just the case, like how nominative and accusative are a case. They're not exactly <laughs> cases of nouns though, they're cases of compounds, which is a combination of descriptors and particles. Both of these words are romanized like so, where a comma shows multiple words pronounced at the same time. So, we've managed to create words, cool. How the hell do we go from this to actually saying sentences though? Well, in order to start a sentence, or a group, we'll see why it's called this in a bit, we start with a group type. The simplest group type is U, which introduces a statement. Let's translate the following sentence, the person ate the apple. First of all, we don't have articles, so we can get rid of those. Now we need to translate the remaining words. So what is a person? Well, they're alive, yella, and they're sentient, <laughs> uma, which is probably enough to describe a person. So we combine those into yella, then we add a nominative oh article to get the compound, yella, Next we have the oh. eat. Earlier, I mentioned the adjective edible, or rich, and if we attach the verb particle yach to it, it becomes a relatively unambiguous way to say to eat. Yach. Now, an app. Apples are red, edible, and organic. This creates rich. Note that this could be any red, edible, organic thing, so this could, for example, be a tomato, but I'm going to say this is specific enough. We attach the accusative particle, and we get rich, and boom, oh, there's a sentence. Yach. Ooh. Note that those words, except the oh, can be no. rearranged, since it's all marked. So some of those letters in there probably don't make the sounds you might expect. This gives me an excuse to talk about the phonology, which I probably should have done at the start of the video instead of now, after I've already explained <laughs> some of the grammar stuff. But uh, anyway, it's just fucking phonology. Use the phonology <laughs> of Tidumo as an IPA chart. I guess this is the part where I say all the sounds. Consonants. But 
t d k g n g w a w a h a s a y a l a v o w e l s e u a a a And then the phone attack is our CBCC. Although at another time I only really go to CBC. The elves are also not allowed to be directly next to each other. Anyways, now that we've seen the phonology, let's go back to grammar. Remember how I mentioned groups? What are those exactly? Well, while saying a phrase, you can, in the background, say a group phoneme, those being la, hua, nga, ya, or sla, for the entire uh, duration the of the phrase. This ties mm. the entire phrase into a group, which can then be used as a standalone unit in a verb or a noun. To see a case where this may be useful, take the group type equal, which is just the genitive. It takes a possessi and a possessor, and on its own, it would mean something is owned by something else. Tied into a group, however, and now you're creating a genitive. So, if we want to say my house, we'd say, Oh no! Here's our map breaks down, pause if you want. We could also leave out the pose of C. Doing this means that the listener will know it from context. So, there's a few other group types, as well as some particles with tenses, aspects, and moods, but there's not really any other unique rules past this point. So, before we get into the translation of the requested phrase, let's talk about the orthography. Something I've neglected to mention until now is that these creatures are four dimensional. This yeah, no has way. A few <laughs> First, there's some adjectives for four dimensional directions, but more importantly, their writing system utilizes three dimensions, since oh, to a 4D being,、oh, a、God. sheet of paper would be a flat, angular prism. Now, my shitty renderer can't do images quite yet, so I'm just going to edit in a video here. Anyways, with that said, here's the orthography. It's not、ah. a beta, with vowels being <laughs> affixed to the bottom、oh, of consonants. If there is no preceding constant to a vowel, then the vowel <laughs> takes the consonant's place. So, here's the orthography. Oh, that's awesome. Long, for example. You can see that vertically we have each descriptor in the compound. Horizontally we have the letters in each descriptor. If this is tied into a group, we write a bar up here over every compound which we wish to tie together.、Oh, Note that the group phoneme for a given group is not recorded. This is because it's basically arbitrary, so there's no real reason <laughs> to write it down. If we were to have more than one word, it'd go in this direction. For example, here's our example phrase the person ate the apple from earlier. <laughs> Oh, okay,、God. now back to text land. So we've、oh, seen the phonology,、beautiful. a brief overview of the grammar and the orthography, so I think it's about time that we hear the requested phrase translated into Tiki Long. <laughs> and for fun, here's the north wind and the sun. Jeez, look at the text. Oh my god. Hey, Sun Gazer! That, dang it, that, that means I, I'm gonna have to split the video into 12 hour chunks. Because if there's one bit of copyrighted、oh, music. Remove that in editing, Agma. <laughs> But I love the song so much. I love Sun Gazer. So, that's about it. In the description of this video, there's a link to our GitHub repository containing the wordless grammar, orthography, and the script for this video, as well as two programs one to phoneticize the level of text,、oh, and another to write the level of text in the script of the language. It exports a file which can then be opened by the box of Leonard and Gotso. As always, remember to dislike and unsubscribe. If this channel has a burn and <laughs> fucking died by the time this video is posted, please dislike on multiple alternate accounts so that I can die quicker. God, I hope I don't become a fucking YouTuber. I've, I've added a comment to this one. The document is vital, apparently, because this was a Reddit post, I think, where、Something. they linked this and they said the document was vital, so. Yeah, so if so, let's watch the video first, and if that turns out to be true, we'll check out the document. Mm hmm. Alright. Welcome to a journey into the world of unique language, a language of nature, a language that、oh. transcends traditional boundaries of communication. This language 
rich in sounds from the natural environment, tells stories, conveys emotions, and shares wisdom. In this language, constants such as the river, stream, pond, ocean, lake, oh, and no. rain each carry their own nuanced meanings. Imagine the river's sound, a gentle wave pattern created by the arm, its strength defined by speed. It's a symbol of life's constant. What? Is this video a video? Yeah, it does. It, it just uh, okay. it's, it stays black for a while. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to know if you were supposed to like um, look at the docs while this is reading. Yeah, well, it it has like some stuff in it. I, I don't know. We'll we'll we'll, we'll see. Constant movement, written with a series of seven tilt symbols. Then consider the stream embodied by a forward push of the hand. The number of pushes signifies the strength of the stream, symbolizing determination and perseverance. It's represented by a line, repeated seven times. The pond, on the other hand, is a circle made by the hand. The size of the circle determines the strength of the word, symbolizing a sheltered, tranquil space. This is written as a series of seven zeros. The ocean, oh, vast and powerful, is signified by a cross made with one arm across the chest. The arms... Okay, wait a second. I think the, I think the document might literally be vital for this. Mm. Eh? No word order? Yeah, I think it is literally the script. Oh, and then, uh, but then we get to like the way the text is actually written out. That's why it's vital. This, this, uh -huh. is, this is how everything is actually written and how to understand the translation as it comes up. Uh -huh. Okay, so I guess let's keep listening to him. Let's see. Uh -huh. Distance from the chest signifies the ocean's strength. It's represented by a capital O repeated seven times. The lake, <laughs> drawn as a circle in the air, signifies a serene and steady presence. The size of the circle drawn signifies strength. This is written as a series of seven number sixes. Rain is signified by a hand moving downwards in front of the face. The number of fingers on the hand signifies the strength of the rain, symbolizing cleansing and renewal. It's written as a series of seven quotation marks. The wind, a crucial element in this language, interacts with each constant. Wind over each constant is signified by clapping, with the position relative to the body determining strength. This communicates change and unpredictability. Written as a series of vertical lines with the space between defining strength. But there are also sounds that belong to neither category, like the lion's roar and the bee's buzz. The lion's roar, signified by cupping hands around the mouth and pushing <laughs> outwards, symbolizes power and courage. Oh. The distance between the hands at the end of the action signifies strength and is written as a series of V-shapes with space between defining strength. This language, rich in natural sounds, is a dance of strength levels, physical movements, <laughs> and cultural interpretations. Oh, Every word in this language could theoretically mean any other word, but its true definition is defined by the culture around the direct sound. Oh, the use of a loud roar could symbolize strength, while a quiet buzz could signify gossip. In summary, the language of nature is an intricate dance of sounds and movements, each carrying its own unique meaning. It's a language where the roar of a lion can symbolize strength, the buzz of a bee can signify the gossip, and the movement of wind over a lake can represent change. Without any set word order, this language offers unlimited potential for expression and communication. It's a language that truly embodies the beauty and complexity of the natural world. Uh, hello? Oh, this is it. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. <laughs> Fascinating. My arm, what? <laughs> oh god! Oh, you might want to enter the warning gift. I think it's four more minutes of this. I think so. Five. That was a that was a jump scare right there, a jump scare of nature. But it, it does it does really feel like the jungle is pulsating at me. When I'm listening. To this. Wow.
Okay. Hmm. <laughs> so. Wow. Okay. What's your comment on this? My my comment was just that the document was supposed to be vital, but I guess it's just to get a good visualization. Mm -hmm. Of how, how the whole uh, structure of it works and how the visuals of it work. And mm -hmm. so that, like, multi-minute thing is all represented in that. <laughs> mm. Now let's move on to Jan Milo Take's annoying language. Annoying language. As a comment here, I had to manually search YouTube for the what video is... because there was no video provided. Good God. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see. Let's see what this turns out to be. 25 Oh, minutes. God. Jesus Christ. What? Can you turn up the resolution? <laughs> no, this is the resolution. No, try. Let's... I don't believe it. This, this is a... This is this 7... Is 720? How is this 720 p? Okay, okay, wait. That's there better. That's better. I was okay. gonna say. It's not 720p. Good God. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. Jesus Christ. Okay, so we're in typewriter font, which doesn't help at 720p, I'm but that's a lot time, better than yeah. what it was. Um, <laughs> yeah, what it was is just blobs of ink. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's see what we got here. Um, 25 minute video. Good if, if, if this person talks too slow, we perhaps we should speed, speed it up. up. We'll no, no, we'll no, no, no offense, Jan Milo Take, but we got to many many hours of this you stuff 19 to go hours of footage left so the, well let, let's see let's see if you got normal speed 25 minutes yeah and our, our rate currently is about like 1.5 or 2 to 1 so this will be like 30 to 40 hours of footage at this point uh, uh, okay all right here we go Toki this is the annoying language pronounced vetviorisa no better. <laughs> oh, I forgot to sing that. Sing that. Oh, whatever. <laughs> I admit I took some inspiration from blah, uh, that, mainly from to the tone system, bizarre orthography, and the way each word. That that's that that one. The 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 black the whatever that that was. Uh, um, whose whose language was that last year? Oh um, God, I don't recall. I think it was. Um, dang it, I can't think of it right now. Oh, it was it was Daniel's. It was it was the K K Bot Man Daniel Swanson's. Ah. Okay, so it was inspired by his from last year. I do think yeah, that one was so fast I didn't even remember the name of it. Yeah, <laughs> that it was the very first one we went over last year. I do think we need to speed this up a little bit though. Yeah. Also, it it, it from what I saw, it looks like they're just reading the text that's on screen. Okay, let's see. It has different aspects. However, I decided to expand on these ideas and add my very own madness into the mix. I'm grateful for this opportunity to express my passion for linguistics and the opportunity to marvel at other people's submissions without any further ado. I present my language, the annoying language. The phonology, these sounds are not directly represented. Rather, they form words which are represented by the symbols I chose. What have I done? For my sake, I will continue describing lettered pronunciations. There will be womanization in parentheses here. So we have, uh, ba, 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 ba. As for the vowels, we have e or e, m, u, e, a or e, o or o, n, u, and a. Okay. Because, of course, syllabic consonants have to be here. And there are tones. There are seven tones that can be on a letter, although the articulation depends on the number of syllables that letter represents. The royal tone, marked with a, I think it's called a karen, it's, it's a pointy thing that goes up. Um, <laughs> it, okay, each of them have four, six, eight, or ten syllables. Uh, there are bits from songs, tone. and I include the notes oh God. So that you can try. I mean, they're not exactly correct. I wrote the sources for them. The potato tone oh is Oh no, the I think marker. I see where this is going. The liquid tone is default. Oh These uh, breakdowns, default. they all have source songs. Oh yeah. no. <laughs> so, oh okay, no, I favorite. recognize I some of these. Days. It's like a little smile. It's Dragos 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 Um, oh, and clean, the song I came with myself. 
And I'm like, I'm no Pokemon Tone, Mark with it. And a cute mark, because of course, Pokemon actually becomes a big thing. <laughs> Lavender mark. Town. Um, the unhinged tone is an upside down Karen, uh, pointing down. Uh, these are other various songs, including, yeah, and then launch the boomerang. Uh, 8-bit or chiptune with a macron. <laughs> da 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 da. And some others. <laughs> oh, the Legend of Zelda item time. collection, I get it. Here's where things get really weird. There are 33 letters, 31 of which have three possible pronunciations. The other two, if placed after another letter, change that letter's pronunciation. A bit like the softening letter from Cyrillic. If those two don't have a letter in front of them, they'll have their own sound. There are 665 possible readings total, including tones. One less than the infamous 666. Okay. Ready? <laughs> I'm sure it's up not. Don't worry, I'm not going to be reading each of these individually. Dear uh, God. So, each of them comes with their own syllables. We have Ash. Those, two Those are the sounds associated <laughs> with them. Other one from Cyrillic, uh, Japanese Xi, a Xi, capital Sigma, Esh. Other thing from Cyrillic, Japanese O. Other thing from Cyrillic, C, both deltas, H, I, I with a line through it, K. <laughs> thing from Cyrillic, Polish W. Uh, and a lot more, including uh, <laughs> oh, Yolk and Ampersand. Great. Just because. Great. And then here's the Yuma forms, which when a Yuma no, no. have half this number of syllables are pronounced like this. Oh, they no. They have more syllables. This and is quite cards, atrocious. But that's Good not God. always the case, like with Pi here. Uh, and U. U is a weird one. And then S Z forms, which are when an S Z is after them, usually they make it shorter, but not always. Uh, and they're Dear pronounced God. a little bit differently. I wrote the Romanized versions here because I, I don't want to have to go through this crap. <laughs> uh, and then there's the default pronunciation for the S Z and U umlaut. And U umlaut. Uh, the Pokemon, 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 Pokemon type. Because of course it does, I wrote it. Or their order based on type of effectiveness. Example, fire being weak to water, being weak to grass. Not, fire is good against grass, good against water. Modifiers go after the word okay. by the modifier, regardless of the type. However, the heck, the next head word will be affected by the type of the modifier adjacent to it. For example, if a noun is fire type, and it's an adjective is psychic type, the verb will be dark type, or another type is, that's good against psychic. And then it's adverbs fairy, noun will be poison because it's good against fairy, and yeah. <laughs> Dative, vocative, ablative, instrumental, and genitive cases are marked. Genitive is seen as a modifier on a noun or verb, though. Verbs must be marked for whether the subject comes before the object, or vice versa. Or rather, it is not be, it is not marked when the subject is before the object. It is marked when the opposite is true. Okay. Here's the words for each type exists too, so a speaker does not get stuck. Meaning that they don't really have a meaning, they're just there for the type stuff. Each type has a number associated with it too. If the numbers of each word in the sentence, or clause, are added up, we get the modal number, which, when combined with the tone of the verb, determines the mood of the verb. There are also some very cut and dry affixes to be attached to the verb, which are used for tense and aspect. So we group together su two subjects, or more, oh, or two more objects, there's a title sparkle which can be added between the two subjects or the two <laughs> objects. You can continue chaining these along for as long as you would like. Uh, and don't worry, those affixes and particles will will be introduced later. I'm just introducing concepts right now. So, in the post house dialects, the only ones that are allowed, uh, there are these types, <laughs> grass is four, bug is one, and I also want to say two, mean? resist, post and placeholder, dialects. words there, uh, water is three, ice is seven, fire is five, electric is ten, psychic is fifteen, Poison is oh, six, can you... ghost is two, ground is nine, rock is fourteen. Uh, no, yeah. Yeah. Uh, dark is I, as in the imaginary number. Okay. Steel is eight, normal is E, whaler's number. <laughs> Flying is eleven, dragon is sixteen, <laughs> the highest of them. Fairy is twelve, and typeless is zero. Uh, the modal number L is also mod sixteen, so it basically has to be a number above six. It, you, subtract, you subtract sixteen if it's more than sixteen. The placeholder is grammatically viable, uh, with typeless, when no other will work. Okay. E and I do not work like the other girls. If there are two I in a clause, <laughs> the mood of the verb is negated. Can becomes cannot. If there are an odd number of I in a clause, ignore them when counting. If there are an even number of I that is more than two, the clause is to be regarded as irrealis or sarcastic. The number of E in a clause, if greater than one and not a prime number, is to replace the count that would otherwise be considered. Uh, uh -huh. and there are some exceptions to this stuff later, which I'll introduce in the number section, which is after the... Uh, Transcription. Oh, so God. Numbers, 16, oh, no. Uh, here's all the numbers and Potato? the various tones and then the moods that correspond to them. What is. Uh, what yeah, the each heck? mood appears once what in the column. Potato? So... The what? Potato. The fourth column. <laughs> what? V Vocaloid Royal Potato. Intoxicated Pokemon. Probably, yeah. Unhinged, unhinged. And then 8 bit. Those are my yeah. guesses. Oh yeah. my god. god. It doesn't matter what the Mod tone of the verb is, it will always have a mood. Obviously. It. I mean, every, it will always have every mood go along with it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, here's a guide to the moods. Memory. Speakers are calling memory, perhaps fuzzy, hyperbolic. Speakers are exagger exaggerating the verb. Exaggerating the verb, goodness. Presumptive. Resuming or continuing an action. Obligative. Need or duty, they need to verb. Volative. A want, they want to verb. Speculative. Maybe verb, perhaps. Uh -huh. Ability. Uh -huh. Able to verb. 
Imperative. Speaker is issuing a command to the verb. He must. You should. Oh. Um, I'd also like to issuing apologize for a command uh, to there the being verb. a bit of a discrepancy between my uh, video and no, audio. Not, I was trying to record the Xbox Live. Uh, game board thing isn't working. Issuing a command to. That's um, what. That, I I think so. But if it's the other way around, that would be a very cursed. No, I think they're just describing what imperative means. Yeah, yeah. Uh, try, attempt to verb, trying to verb, not there yet. Optative expresses the speaker's desire for cause to occur, not necessarily the, the desire of the subject of the sentence. Uh, the first two lines of the chart there are completely empty, meaning no mood. Otherwise, moodless spots are scattered about. Good luck remembering this. It will be on the test. <laughs> there is no test. Word order is resistance oriented for yes, no questions. Fire resists fairy, resists dark. Reverse weakness for causative. Grass is good against fire, is good against- oh, sorry, grass is good against water, it's good against fire, goodness. Uh, and reverse resistance for contextual clauses. If what? dark, fairy, fire, uh, because dark <laughs> is resisted by fairy, is resisted by fire, then returns to normal order, grass, fire, water. Oh, uh, God. pronouns. Third person pronouns go at the end of nouns before being used by themselves, so that it is clear what they are referring to. They take on the type of their host. This is um, a complicated math formula Pronouns here. for you and me, this and then nested he, arguments. she, it, a, it, b, and such don't have types. Um, demonstrative can also refer to an entire clause if it's marked on the verb of that clause. Uh, first person pronoun is water, second is very, and one generic person is usually psychic because the word for person is psychic type. Intro letter mutation, uh, each letter begins and ends with a consonant. It may be difficult to pronounce any given word, that is why, depending on context and other variables, the beginning sound of the second letter or the ending sound of the first letter may be excluded. In neither of those cases, one of the six vowel phonemes is inserted between them. If the word's number is less than or equal to eight, or the word is a locative case noun, including adjectives of locative nouns, <laughs> endings between letters are excluded. Oh, no. If the word's number is more than eight, or the word is ablative or instrumental case, including adjectives of those noun types, beginnings between letters are excluded. If the word's oh, number is no. I, or the word is a verb, one of those vowels, and one of the vowels is inserted between them. The schwa, a, uh, is for no mood or non-verb. U represents volatile or optative moods. <laughs> a is for memorial and resumptive moods. O is for hyperbolic and imperative moods. E is for ability and or speculative moods. And finally, eh is used for attempted and obligatory moods. For specificity on moods, see the previous chart about number and tune. I mean, tone. It's, it's, in cases where it's criteria tumbling, and are met, go it's whatever snowballing. Best in your opinion. Or you can come up with some convoluted systems to sort this out. Whatever. I honestly I prefer convoluted, as long as you don't uh, overshadow me. Then here's the rest of the <laughs> con that I could be arsed to do. To fly, hmm. dragon type, law, fighting, all, ghost, some, poison, none, no, negation, hypeless, Hymenopteran, being a bee, wasp or ant, is bug, wing is flying, arm is fighting, to be, the copula, is fire, small is fairy, to have, possess, is dark, ground, <laughs> okay, sea level, so this world, is just ground, like, this big, is a code small, for cumbersome, the unwieldy, is rock, okay. uh, to think, have opinion, that, is psychic, body, form, fighting, okay. relevant, valid, grass, and future okay, tense there we go. <sighs> oh yeah, and Dear number of sexes, fighting types. Okay. <laughs> uh, the translation, context, all bees fly, as an adjective, bees cannot fly, wing all bees, genitive, are small, body, all bees, genitive, are cumbersome, context, <laughs> fly, noun, Bees obligatory have wing object big. Bees have not wing object big. Do you fly from ground? Context think noun human genitive. This can negative be. Think noun gen uh, human genitive are relevant not in comparison to be dative. There's my little script that I did. And um, oh, so I'd beautiful. like to take this moment to remind beautiful. you that each and every single one of those symbols represents a four to ten sung syllables with the possible exception of you umlaut and SZ, depending on context. Oh, the, God. the rest uh, brackets of the mean because of rule, the color brackets mean Holy include because crap. of rule. Uh, the parentheses mean tone, and the period means end of word. I swear, now I'm going to the description. I recorded every word individually. Um, uh, stay after that because there's more stuff. Oh God. <laughs> This really is like Daniel Swanson's one from last time, mm. because it was like the codes that all mapped out to different Christmas carols, basically. Yeah, God, that, yeah, that was yeah. the one from Daniel Swanson's one, so uh -huh. this one is just like a random assortment of songs that this person chose. Uh -huh. I see how it is. All right, we we can we can skip through a little bit to save some time. Tabuta ara hotab zekfe pa fa tole beka sirpi helma velta hokim zevri karpe zepira hamshagat na tabuta ara hotab. Guys, it goes on for longer.
And now for the number system. Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> there we go. Number system because there each we go. Is already equipped with a number. Saying a number is as easy as reduplicating the type placeholder that represents the number. However, numbers are considered typeless, and depending on whether or not the number is above, below, or equal to eight, the end of one letter or the beginning of the other will be excluded in pronunciation, just like other things. Nested. 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 Also known as nested. 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 Uh, AKA <laughs> the idiotic Barry Every Benson. type represents its associated number, other than dark normal, of course. Reduplicating the dark type placeholder implies a negative one. Attaching a dark type placeholder to another number makes it negative. Well, the, the normal the, type placeholder uh, rather than actual being, being yeah. numbers, an indicative yeah. of modal number exclusion, which we'll get to in a couple of paragraphs. Reduplicating the normal type placeholder by itself means that it is a variable. Aside from that, standard mathematical notation applies, just suited for base 17 instead of base 10. So, example, um, base 17 is quite atrocious. Two, <laughs> uh, Prime numbers are base. Uh, because two times seventeen. Yeah. Plus four is, wait, sorry. Oh my God. Plus thirteen is forty-seven, and then seventeen plus four is twenty-one. You add those together, you get four zero, mean seventeen times four being sixty-eight. That was kind of difficult to explain, but I think God. you might understand. Wait, there's more. Firstly, numbers are considered nouns in this conline, and in order to say that there are a specific number of something, you must use the thing that you're quantifying as a genitive on the number. Second, how would I be able to tell the difference between one and uh, eighteen? Or two and thirty-six. <laughs> Excellent question. Oh, Currently, no. there's no valid way to tell the difference in writing oh, or in speech. However, in dialects justly outlawed by our glorious leader Guzma, the ground constant cluster <laughs> okay. of a number is replaced there's by. There's lore, Guzma. Uh, well, I'll stop. In writing, this is indicated by an apostrophe. So two is that, and uh, thirty-six is that. Technically, this means there are six hundred sixty-six letter pronunciations. This apostrophe is analyzed as altering sound of the letter before. If this technique is used in the Empire of Team School, however, you will be besieged by bug types and possibly jailed. This is a valid and fair punishment for the crime of wanting to be ambiguous, and unambiguous. I mean. Only team school members can speak as clearly as a crystal skull. Excuse me? As they deserve to. Is this like no. taking place Actually, in a Pokemon universe? I wouldn't know. That determine the mood of a I that contains a verb. No, barely a normal, know anything about. I, I know hardly anything about Pokemon, so I couldn't tell. Yeah, neither do I. If, if, this, is, if this is canonically taking place in the Pokemon universe, then. You, you're cutting out again. Oh, God. Is canonically that... taking place in what? If if this canonically takes place in the Pokemon universe, uh, that that's that's another level right there. Oh, God. The normal type placeholder at the end of it. That means it is excluded from the modal number. Oh my God! If it has two normal type placeholders <laughs> at the end, that means that number mod sixteen is subtracted from the apparent modal number to indicate the actual modal number. Um, also, it has to be the absolute value. So if it if it be, if the actual modal value number is negative, just use the absolute value. Oh God! Uh, oh, in ordinals, uh, just add the ablative case to the number. It won't be considered as ablative unless you reduplicate the ablative suffix. To say that something came from an ordinal, you use the ablative suffix three times, I guess. Okay. This is like one of the last things God. I added. To turn a noun into a modifier, add that to the end. To turn a noun <laughs> into a verb, add that to the end. To turn a modifier into a verb, add that to the end. To turn oh, a modifier God. into oh, a noun, man. add that as a suffix. It's just all slightly different my, as much as my ones. Lexicon, I will be bemothered. Yes, that is a word. Thank you, Rob Words. To make section. But then it would have spilled over to the next page and ruined my aesthetic, most, and much like the tone section did. Unless I come up with any more ridiculous ideas I can add to this, expect this to be the end. The bloody end. This was a nice exercise in sheer stupidity. Affectionate. I look forward to seeing other people's entries, and I hope to make another atrocity next year, if there is one next year. Anyways, thank you, and, uh, mitawa. Good times. Good times. Alright. Next. This one. This one is not that long. Okay. Luckily. In comparison. So this one, wait, who's the creator? This one is by Orange191. Let's see what we got, Orange191. <clears throat> oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, God. That's not oh. just me, is it? No, that's not just you. <laughs> that's actually God. how it is. Okay, if, if, if it, that continues for the rest of the video, we might have to read it ourselves, because good God. So, All right. you may be asking Agma Schwa, me, how could a language be both an Abjad and an Abugida if an Abjad relies on the absence of written vowels while an Abugida relies on the presence of vowels? We'll get there, don't worry, okay? So that means exchange of ideas. Three of the four symbols used are also letters, but specifically the letters P, B, and BAR, okay? okay. I can also see how uh, the, the language name contains Agma Schwa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where, where'd you get that from? <laughs> <laughs> so there's the exchange of ideas written like that. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Um, okay. Introduction right. of phonology. Right. So the pulmonics are ma, na, ba, I mean, pa, ba, sa, ja, pa, and uh. And then we have. A bunch of vowels. We got a bunch of vowels right there. 
two of the uh -huh. two other vowels exist, which may or may not be part of the IPA. Those being the screech oh, and the gravelly oo. Oh, Good God. God. And the non pulmonic consonants are uh, what is that? And Sorry, I, I still don't know the clicks too well. Like I have memorized, I memorized the entire IPA like years ago, but I still struggle with remembering which click is which. I'm uh, pretty, I'm pretty sure it's. Uh, I think uh, the first one is like the alve the the second one is the alveol. I'm pretty sure, and the first one is the dental click. I think. Oh, Let's that see. makes more sense. And those two. Uh, yeah, the first one is the dental. The second one is the post. Uh, is the post alveolar click? Apparently, there's no alveolar. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, next slide. The phono tactics. <laughs> Okay, the words in this language are CCVVC. Yes, this means that some of the words are entirely silent. Oh, God, because they're oh, all no. in parentheses. Okay. <laughs> Many academics have argued that the language could only be truly understood even by native speakers in its written form. Great. As these silent words could result in entire sentences losing an important aspect of their meaning. There are no major rules preventing specific consonants from residing in the same syllable. Except for in the prevention of a je followed by a sa, so there's that, or a dental click followed by an alveolar click. Fail. That would Fail. be horrid, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, it's not even possible. Yeah. Glottal stops only occur when a vowel is followed by another vowel in the same vowel set. Okay, so ah uh, becomes ah. Uh, uh. So word order mm -hmm. is free, but OSV can be used for added clar clarity. I do wonder, though, because it says that the language can only be understood in its written form, but the thing is, if you go back a bit, oh. where, uh, where it says silent words, the thing is, it's not just that they're silent, it's words that contain no sounds at all. Yeah. Like, how would those words even be written? No. Like, <laughs> we're going to find out, I guess. So yeah, there's, so there's... The apostrophe... Okay, okay. Pretty consistent. Then we have a knee slap as and a, a clap as well. Of course. Would be... And then we have schwa written out as the word schwa, obviously. Actually. Gravelly U is a capital G and Screech mm -hmm. is a capital S. Great. Alright. Mm -hmm. Alright. The drama space in between them and sentence are separated with a vertical line. Great. Okay, so oh no. Run. Oh god. Grammar characters go after the noun or verb they affect. Okay, mm -hmm. so it looks like we have all the component oh, sounds with. Yeah, it makes sense. I see. So, so the vowels just kind of go under. That's actually kind of uh -huh. how the uh, auto junes like Jotarank, like the fancy system, not like the normal alphabet, uh -huh. works, except it's the opposite. It's like the consonant mm -hmm. goes on the bottom and then. The vowel goes on top, so it's like technically not an abugida, but like, I mean, yeah, that's that really what like Arabic also puts the, the vowels on top, and like Hebrew puts them below most of the time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I see how this works. I see how it works. Um, All right, and then the unknown tense is noun to verbs. Okay, gotcha. Uh huh. Vowels. Okay, system. I can read this one now. Go so, for it. So you don't have to read the entire thing. Vowel sets are groups of three vowels that most characters use one of. When a character's information is shown, the upper left-hand column contains the pron pronunciation of the character written in the orthography, but usually with a plus sign thrown in after a vowel. This plus sign shows where the system vowel is located in the word. A system vowel can be any of the three within the specified set, depending on whether the character is connected to any other character to form the more complex idea. I'm not entirely sure what they're describing here, but we'll get to that probably. <laughs> and the lone characters representing simple ideas always use the default vowel, there's also a default vowel apparently, of as course. the system vowel, which is shown in the lower left corner. Oh. In contrast, connected characters use any of the three vowels within the set of the specific vowels used here, depending on exactly what characters are connected in the first place. Every practical and frequent combination of characters has known vowels used for its pronunciation. But these combinations numbering in the tens of thousands are too numerous to be <laughs> That's that that reminds me a bit of, of what like um the the Fama's last theorem. I've discovered a wonderful proof for this, but alas the margin of this page is too small to fit it. Uh, <laughs> and, and it went unproved for three hundred fucking years. Like <laughs> they only proved that very recently, a few decades ago. Oh my god. That's <laughs> well, awesome. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, however, any combination of characters which is less practical or common still uses the default vowel. Finally, a glottal stop occurs when the regular first vowel of a word is in the same set as the system vowel after it. The stop appears in between the two vowels and is not normally written or directly shown. I'm going to be honest, I'm not sure I understand what I've just read. I, I don't know either, but we're about to see a visual representation, yeah. I guess. Okay, so there's a visual representation of what was just explained. Um, okay. Um, oh. So... Uh, plus Q and does an O. Oh god, what? Okay, hold on. Um. Menach. Oh, wait a second. I think I get how this works. Oh, do you? I think so. I think what I think what it's trying to say is that whenever you have the these like singular characters standing next to each other, it changes like the actual phonetic representation of what happens in them. Mm -hmm. So I it's like, so it's like if those are independent words, then they're pronounced as monoc and bob or or, bo mm -hmm. eb or whatever it is supposed to be. But whenever they're right next to each other with nothing separating them as combined characters, they're literally pronounced differently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Interesting. Whack. All right. Okay, that's the thing we. Red L, I think, upper left corner pronunciation, upper right corner, letter used for the writing system, lower left corner, default vowel for vowel system. I see. I don't know what a vowel system, or what the vowel sets are that they're referring to here. And finally, with all the important stuff done, we can get the sample text out of the way. Oh, we're going to the sample text already. Oh, God. Good would God. You, would you look at that? Um, Do you want to turn the audio back on for this part, or should we yeah, just... We yeah, try. Okay. So sorry for the 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 background squealing. Oh. Na ak baib jmod meik baus. We're gonna speed up a little bit. Baib. Nyep jai. Make it a little more fluent. Saan jmod baib sna saik imon baib sehish. Ah. Kyeb sus sus baib na jaiish. The screech reminds me of the squeaky cricketer yeah. from High Performance. Yeah, a little bit. Baby Moon. Pa. J. Nope, J. Splunkers. Sus. Na. Pain. Bnaim. Ah. Early history of Pacific. Wow. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Dang. Alright. Um, sh should we continue with audio on or go back to reading it? Uh, if it's gonna be, if the background noise is gonna be as bad again than not, we'll see. Let's see. In an unknown region of the world, spanning from modern-day Iran better. to the western edge of modern-day China, the earliest think, known yeah. versions of Pseidic were spoken, and written using a now-extinct species of square-shaped reeds. From the year 500 BCE to the year 400 AD, the language developed to include more complex grammar and more complex symbols made from a higher number of squares. By the year 500 AD, the language had split into a common and formal variant. Okay. Differing little in vocabulary, but greatly in writing style. The common form was written using normal brushes, but the formal variant was still written using the square-shaped reeds, which were sometimes adapted into square-shaped brushes. For the next 1,500 years, the formal variant used more and more squares to write each character, until they began to resemble modern-day pixel illustrations before the invention <laughs> of the digital computer. In the year 1920, a small group of Passaic speakers immigrated to the U.S., where their language was entirely <laughs> undocumented. These speakers knew both the common and formal forms of the language, which would be important soon. When the computer program MS Paint was created and expanded upon, oh the grandchildren of these Passaic speakers realized that the program was ideal for writing the formal form of the language, and so they employed the program to preserve their language and write it for future of generations. So it's literally this is when all the illustrations of the language so far have been in Paint. MS Paint instead of a more robust program. Most speakers have sadly abandoned writing the language on paper, due to the extinction of the traditional square-shaped reeds and the convenience of modern software. <laughs> and here is a very small part of the vocabulary. I did not have enough time or patience to make every single one of the 12,000 plus words that are in the language, but here's a small number of them. Would you uh, look the at the very right column. That's where all the numbers are. Four is just silent. <laughs> Four is silent. Unknown is also How do you silent. How count to ten, then? 
It's like <laughs> one, two, three, five, six, seven, yep. eight, nine. <laughs> That's awesome. Alternative writing system, alphabet. In addition to the standard method of oh. writing or speaking, there are two other methods which can be employed. The alphabet system is used as a code for writing the language in a way that novice speakers may not understand, and the syllabary is used for loan words, some names, oh, and to write no. messages that resemble sentences in other languages. Oh, God. The alphabet system places symbols Japanese after each other moment. to represent the phonemes of words, rather than one symbol being equal to one word or character. As seen previously, each character has its own alphabetical value, corresponding it to a single sound. For example, to write the word naok, important, one would use five characters for the letters m, n, a, a, and p instead of the one character. This can be much more time consuming, so it is most commonly used as a handy trick to encode short, fra to, to encode short phrases. Some clever people even encode alphabetic phrases into grammatical sentences. Alternative writing system, syllabary. The syllabary can be used for a variety of functions, ranging from important to interesting. By selecting symbols with specific pronunciations, one can form most combinations of languages' phonemes. For example, the name Agma Schwa in syllabary writing would use character spelling Ak Ma Schwa. These characters mean grass, sunlight, icicle, by the way. Grass, Interestingly, sunlight, the alphabet writing icicle. and the syllabary writing can even be combined to allow for any combination of the languages' phonemes. And thank you very much for watching. Uh, I did not actually put that much effort into this language, um, but hopefully it made someone laugh. So. Very uh, cool. Goodbye. Okay, right. so, yeah, that's pretty solid right there. All right, so, now, Agma Schwa, with a freaking strut inside of the word yeah, schwa. Agma Schwa. <laughs> Agma Schwa. Agma, Agma Schwa. schwa. Uh, okay, has totally not English. Totally not English. And uh, apparently the comment I left on this was utter chaos. I have no idea why. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> Oh, 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 hang on. I'm having trouble using my own computer. Hang on. There we go. Okay, we're good. Um, <laughs> okay, cert certified in a moment. Let's see Welcome what totally... To oh, God. Dressed, schwa or ma. Today, we will look at the language <laughs> that? totally not English. So, first of all, the full... Oh, 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 that oh, is oh, why I wrote for the chaos. Jesus Christ. I am I'm ready for this chaos. I'm gonna go back a couple seconds. Oh my god! So first of all, the phonology. Oh god! What does this shy mean? The phonies are. Ma na na na. Baba. Da da aka. <laughs> literally uh, the uh, freaking uh, uh, Wikipedia uh, IPA reading. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. Okay. Oh, it's what? Ja. Ha. Ra. Ar. Ha. Oh god. Whoa. What was that? Oh my diddly dang, those were so cool. Especially the glottal approximate. Time for the stupid fuck. What you mean is the grammar, no swearing. Remember, even with brigadiers, <laughs> we just say faded here. So we daddy nya. Shut the fuck up. Nya. So basically, <laughs> nya. nouns are split between partial number, singular, dual, hockle, plural, formal. It's like literally formal like unreadable. Like, which is used most often. And that's for persons. <laughs> <laughs> formal, hyper formal, and then neutral. You have to help me here because I don't drink. Is this what being drunk feels like? In in, in a way, it, well, th think... this is this is more what it feels like when you're like crossfaded. This this is a crossfade experience right here. Right. It, it's been a long time, but I remember that feeling well. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, this is a nightmare. There are first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. And of course, there's multiple cases of which we have nominative, accusative, dative, <laughs> ablative, genitive, vocative, the locative, and voices. instrumental. I definitely didn't just steal oh. the Wikipedia list of grammatical cases. Yeah, Who yeah, would yeah, do yeah, such yeah. a thing? Anyways, there's also <laughs> grammatical gender, <laughs> feminine. God. What? The, the, the order of the cases is a bit interesting. Yeah, yeah, a little, little whack. Oh, there's hyper, and then of course there's communism at the communism. end. Of course. Of course. Masculine, neuter, sus, and other or common gender. <laughs> oh my god, gosh, you yeah. will like her. It's already time for verbs. Yeah, don't 
the warning. Verbs are split between present, non-past, near past, far past, and far right future. To. And are also split between infinitive, perfective, perfect, habitual, continuous, and imperfected. The only combination that doesn't exist is near past perfect. These AI voices. Here's an example voices. of a verb conjugated for every tense. The oh. verb in question meaning to play. <laughs> there also exists a form of umlaut and the blaut which involves an extremely complex system of vowel alternation. No little Timmy, this uh. group says simple system, not complicated. But I thought it would be a compliment to the creator. You were such a dumb fuck. Anyway, there is also <laughs> a system life. for conjugating by person. And it is a pro-drop language. There is also yet another system oh. which is used to denote ability to do hypotheticals, and you can add on a negation prefix. Yeehaw! Now it's time for adjectives, adjectives. Now it's time oh, for God. adjectives. Hate this KMN. Wait, are you slash J or slash Sirs? I am slash J. I am slash J. Right. Phew, what we can't afford winning? to lose another singer. I mean, we already pay <laughs> five cents an hour. Adjectives are just nouns that precede the noun they're modifying, and in dictionary form, they receive the in suffix. To wrap this all up, oh, here's God. a couple miscellaneous grammar points. There's a non-real pronoun which is used in certain instances when a pronoun is unspecified, or if it would be dropped in an English sentence, usually seen as an object. Another point is with diminutives, to make one at a Q suffix plus feminine gender endings. Finally, to link two or more clauses together, just put one after the other, <laughs> and in the second done. one, all verbs become the infinitive no matter what. It's totally not confusing, trust. <laughs> Now, which you've all been waiting Hit the for, bell icon. the spoken text done by our own native speaker, Shix. Pretending to be a human by singing Oh my god. The <laughs> notification <laughs> bell. I will kill you in your sleep as I'm going to die. Is that Agnes not clickbait? <laughs> clickbait. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and the worst part is because it's totally not English. <laughs> <laughs> Assumption. Some ambition. A some ambition. God, that was. What did you say? <laughs> Crossfaded. I, 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 yeah, I get it. I, 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 I can see that. That's, God, that that Jesus goes Christ. beyond anything I was expecting to perceive today. You know. Oh God. I. When I added all of these submissions to the spreadsheet, I probably watched the first couple seconds of each of them. Inadvertently. Yeah, me too. And I would have watched the first couple seconds of the of this one because I wrote utter chaos as a comment. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think describes it pretty well. God. <laughs> God. The next one is by Homeless in Canada. <laughs> Homeless in Canada. Okay. Um Pokey Lang, yeah. God. All right. Uh, good okay. good luck following that up. <laughs> Let's see. Oh. Alright, so this is. Okay, yeah, a different vibe here. Um, my submission for Completely August different, yes. Circus for two. You, you need to turn up the volume, Magma. No one can so, hear that. There you go. Uh, the overall goal, mission statement. Um, well, the what makes it curse is not only that it's made out of poke games and po Pokemon morphemes, uh, but also that I made this and Well, this should say five. like two to three hours now. Um, while I've had a fever uh, of about <laughs> Oh god. Okay, pause. We need to translate this to actual units. Okay. One or two to centigrade is uh, 38.8. That's. It's not very high fever, I'd say, but 
It's yeah. a, it's a it's a moderate level fever. It's a moderate fever, yeah. There you it's go. Thirty eight point eight degrees. Centigrade. It would, it would be pretty bad for me because my typical body temperature is like lower than. Okay, you're cutting average. out again. It would be pretty bad because. My my body temperature is like lower than like what the human average declared by doctor seems to be. Like I typically sit at like ninety six point nine. So if okay, I went up to if I went up to one oh two, that would be a pretty severe fever. Yeah, your temperature is like 0.5 degrees lower than what it's usually supposed to be. Yeah, I don't know why. I can't explain it. It just is what it is. <laughs> anyway. I think it's probably like a, an, an, I don't know, your body is having an adverse reaction to your environment. It has to cool you down to combat the intense heat all around you. That, that might be it. It's trying to match with my ecosystem a little bit more to try and like make the make, make better like flow of calories and particles between the mediums who knows anyway <laughs> uh just a little bit ago um uh, i had a weird fever dream about it after watching uh <laughs> senior schwa's um curse con like circus video the six hour one i don't think i'll win but this is more of a personal challenge and just what a, no no better way to so, spend your sickness uh, overview this language is spoken by way of using pokemon shutdown uh, replay feature um, it's a Pokemon battle simulator, so it just simulates Pokemon battles. I guess this could be used on official hardware or mainline Pokemon games um, if you could record it so that you could actually speak to your interlocutor and they could respond. Um, number one thing, this language is obviously intended as an Oxlang, uh, international language sure. auxiliary language, because Pokemon <laughs> obviously. can be played in basically any language, I think. Everyone gets Pokemon, not everyone speaks English. So. Okay. <coughs> Uh, so, uh, each Pokemon is a Pokim, uh -huh, instead of a Morphium, conveying a given <laughs> idea. The moves that it uses mark certain things about the Pokim, like case or aspect. Um, because each team can only have six Pokemon, each sentence can span multiple battles. Luckily for- I'm learning a lot about Pokemon today. ...having to do that. Um, <laughs> the ends of sentences are indicated by punctuation in all cases, however. Uh, so, punctuation so can come in four forms. Make so explosion, which is a... so many Pokemon conlangs, apparently. Interesting. Yeah. Again, well, uh, I should have done my um, homework and played every Pokemon game in existence. Yeah, Magic, Magic the Gathering is Turing complete, so you can probably make a, a language just that where you just play Magic in, in a certain way. Yeah, 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 exactly. Oh, God. Makes right. a nice statement or like an imperative uh, phrase, sentence, whatever. The use of self destruct, which makes it a question. The use <laughs> of the move mind blown, which uh, makes it an exclamation or interjection. <laughs> the use of misty explosion. Um, which is the same as um, statement, but in, in pink. Like, okay. Um, so, grammar, uh, it's SVO, because every international auxiliary language needs to be as much like English as possible. Um, the rest of the grammar is <laughs> It's English, only natural. That's how it's supposed to be. <laughs> for, for the international <laughs> auxiliary. <Oxlade. laughs> um, so, cases are marked on nouns, I guess. Certified Jan Measley uh, Also, shininess disapproval and moment. I had, this was part of my dream specifically, so I had to include it. Um, example, the Pokemon B drill indicates the general idea of a B. So, if it were <laughs> okay. to use a fighting type move, that would modify Naturally. the Pokemon and would ma make it marked indefinite. So it would be A B instead of just B. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, I don't actually remember making this slide. So, uh, <laughs> fever dream. Well. Fever straight dream straight out of the oh, fever dream. Example. So I'll just. I penned that on the end of this video, so in the meantime, thank you for watching. I hope you hated this video. Wait, was that it? Wait a second. Spoken oh, oh, wait, no, the spoken sample's coming up. Okay. Wait, it's literally Pokemon fight. Oh my god. So it's actually just like the, like your Pokemon, like, team or whatever? I see I a lot of- how the battle, like... It's actually the Pokemon battle. Yeah. No way. What? Okay, I mean, there wasn't much explanation of how, like, the grammar works, but if this is legit, that's pretty impressive. Uh-huh. <laughs> ah, the misty explosion. This is just aesthetic to watch. 
that this is my therapy to recover from the previous submission. <laughs> oh god. Wow. And there we go, it's gone. <laughs> Enderman <laughs> with racist. God damn it. Well the, these freaking thumbnails of my not logged in YouTube are starting to they're starting to derail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <sighs> All right, well, we just experienced that. The Pokey Lang Flatula, which I've seen like a couple seconds from this one, but I don't know I think so. yeah, me too. most of it. So this is from, uh, who created this one? Where was that? That's from Crusader, which might just be pronounced Crusader, but I don't, oh God, what are we seeing here? <laughs> Hello, and welcome to my channel. Oh, no. I am Crusader, your humble goat of a host, <laughs> and this is my submission for the Agmashwa Cursed Conlang Circus. Hey. Flatula, a language of farts. I got inspired to make a submission to this year's circus while re-watching Disney's Treasure Planet, <laughs> for the same reasons you do. Okay. In it, there's a okay. scene where Snuff, <laughs> the one and only of his kind we see in the whole movie, is heard speaking in Flatula. And Dr. Doppler, despite having none of the trunks of flatulence, is able to converse in it fluently. So, I chose to make this language a reality. Let's take a look at their biology. <laughs> it's significantly different from that of humans, <laughs> having a set of five trunks coming out of their face and ten on their back, all of which are utilized for speech. <laughs> for humans okay. to speak flatula, they're required to make sounds not common among human languages, if present at all. The seven articulations include made from trilling your lips like you're imitating a horse, <laughs> made by forcing air out through a small hole at the front of your mouth, <laughs> blowing a raspberry, blowing air over the top of your tongue, <laughs> blowing a raspberry from oh, under your God. tongue, this one sprays oh, spit no. everywhere, <laughs> sucking in air from the corner of your mouth, Ew. Oh, oh God. <laughs> a whoopee cushion, and an armpit fart five of which can vary by tone and length, uh. and three of which can have a rising or falling tone. <laughs> the remaining two don't vary by length or pitch. Mm. Okay. P, B, and D were initially chosen because they all look like a stuck-out tongue, but if I were to do this again, <laughs> I'd probably switch D and Q for F and T to make it look more like fart onomatopoeia, but here we are. I see how it is. When speaking to flatulence, it's important that you address them with the appropriate honorific to avoid offending them. Luckily, oh, the chart isn't too complicated <laughs> and all the honorifics are audibly distinct. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. oh boy. Well, what's, what's your count here? <laughs> well, luckily, uh -huh. you can just think of the appropriate honorifics as just the end of their name. It's not like you have to put a different suffix at the end of every pronoun or adjective that refers to them. <laughs> oh, well, Hyper looks like we've stumbled into the main joke of this con line. Yep. They speak in farts, but you're the impolite one. Do you get anxiety <laughs> around speaking to natives of a language you're learning? Well, this con line should feel extra cursed for you. Very oh, often, no. by making minor errors in pronunciation, let alone grammar, you'll end up saying something very rude. It doesn't help that their speakers are aliens, so you can't rely on the universality of human body language and facial expressions. Aww. <laughs> this sounds similar to the premise of yeah. hyperformal, Correct. one of the most <laughs> cursed conlangs. But oh, importantly, when you I make a mistake in Flatula, <laughs> you don't get killed in Mortal Kombat. You just wish you were. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of mistakes, the grammar that. requires you to keep in mind an animacy hierarchy and list all of the nouns at the start of the sentence accordingly. The hierarchy, from most to least, goes flatulence, animals, including humans, forces of nature, including times of day, Ideas, including actions and events like sleeping or laziness. Artificial objects, non-animal organisms, mainly plants, and inanimate nature, including locations. So there's the other axis of our graph. I, a drink for you can buy, implies that the cute flatulent you're chatting up is worth less to you than the drink itself. The correct <laughs> order should be, for you, I, a drink can buy, since humans always go after flatulence. Uh, I mean, since humans are always placed after flatulence in a sense, you know what I mean. As you could probably <laughs> okay. guess, the nouns are inflected for the nominative, accusative, and dative, since the word order doesn't denote those things. Although, 
They aren't used if the most animate noun is the subject, a less animate noun is the direct object, or the least animate noun is the indirect object. That is to say, that it's assumed that more animate nouns will act upon less animate ones. Okay. And inflection is only used when necessary. Similarly, adjectives agree with the animacy of the noun they describe, unless there's only one noun in the sentence. A compound subject or object is denoted via inflection on the conjunction, which is placed before the noun phrase of the lower animacy oh, noun. Again. For example, uh, if you were to say, flatulence and their language spreads among the humans, we need a moment. <laughs> yeah, it's just minor issues here. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I'm definitely seeing the hyper formal vibes in here, but I'm also getting yeah, some yeah, Japanese yeah. vibes too. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, here we go. It'd be. Okay, let's talk about glossing for a second. Okay. Glosses for flatulent sentences can be confusing. So I've elected oh God, to use the these colored, colored boxes to help group related God. words into phrases. Let's start with oh. these three red boxes denoting noun phrases. Here they are. Flatulence, humans, marked as the object of a postposition, and their language, marked as the subject. Note that oh. there is marked for a flatulent as a possessor and a concept as a possessee. The yellow there box is included within the red language box to show that the word there is describing language. Not too complicated so far. Next is the purple postpositional box, which oh, includes geez. the postposition and its object. It's hard to switch from thinking in prepositions to postpositions, but hopefully this helps. Next, we have the conjunction green box, which stretches over the words flatulence and their language, meaning that uh. there was being conjoined as a compound subject. Finally, the verb stretches over its arguments, flatulence and their language, but I'll go into more detail about That's that. That's a cool way of representing Note it. Note that the blue the box goes again. behind, not over, the postpositional phrase. This shows that the phrase, over humans, is not one of the arguments of the verb. So altogether, this sentence reads, flatulence and their language spread amongst the humans, although the postposition can be translated a few ways. With that out of the way, let's move on to verbs because noun declensions on their own still leave ambiguity in sentences like the flatulent the seed ate. Since you know the seed is a noun less animate than a flatulent, but it's unclear whether that seed is from a plant or not. Okay. That's where the verb <laughs> conjugations come in. Let's take an example. <laughs> Imagine you're in a fancy flatulent restaurant or <laughs> and you want to give your compliments <laughs> to the chef. So you say, oh, no. literally, the food tastes good. Except, oh no, you've conjugated the verb for a flatulent. <laughs> you said, the cook <laughs> tastes good. And now you're getting weird looks from the kitchen. <laughs> I mean, maybe you do want to say that. Oh. You do you. Ooh, ooh. Let's look at the verb conjugations. There's some sort of sense to it, but ultimately, you'll just have to memorize what prefix to start verbs with, depending on the animacy of the subject and the object. Importantly, it doesn't matter which is the subject and which is the object. You should like this video, it's conjugated the same as, this video should like you. And it does. <laughs> Why not return the favor? Aww. On top of the grammar, you also should really be careful not to say a sound for too long or not long enough, or use the wrong tone. There are many common words in flatulence oh, that mean God. something completely different if you make an error like this. Oh, Examples no. include Oh no. meaning kind, <laughs> meaning stupid, <laughs> meaning butt, <laughs> meaning face, <laughs> meaning greeting, <laughs> meaning orgasm, <laughs> meaning time, and <laughs> meaning solitude. Oh God. Such that could you give me the time becomes could you leave me alone? Further adding to the complexity is or oh no, oh no, slang. which like, is a type of reversing like slang wrong. with the flatulent you <laughs> use often flatulent. nowadays. They'll take a word like parent and reverse the letter to make which coincidentally means dirt. In fact, when a noun is reversed, it gets ordered in the sentence as if it has the animacy of the noun it resembles but the verb still conjugates for the true animacy of the noun. For example, is this your parent would be this in standard flatula.
<laughs> but in this reversing slang, parent will get reversed to look like dirt and get placed later in the sentence <laughs> oh, after the verb if you want to be extra rude. And the honorific will probably be dropped. <laughs> Failing to use in informal situations isn't impolite or anything. The kids will just know you're uncool. They'll probably start okay. calling you. This just means earthling, but it's more of a legal scientific term like what you'd find on documents or signage. In speech, people usually just call you meaning alien. If the kids you failed to impress start calling you it's because it's slang for meaning genital. <laughs> and there are a plethora of words they'll start using because of their meaning in reverse slang in an attempt to further confuse you. And unlike normal reverse slang, the verb will change its conjugation in response to the reversing. So that sentence from before would become... <laughs> This sentence literally Three means, is this your dirt? And while the functioning oh, kids will know that dirt means parent, you won't. That is to say that if you're not on top of the reverse <laughs> slang, you're gonna get flustered and confused more than you already are if you talk with any kids. Now, let's move on to the mandatory B-movie translation. I think you'll need to pause for a moment and then continue on the time, Yeah, probably. oh my god. This is uh, <laughs> this this is pretty solid. The freaking three layers of uh, of slang needing to be on top of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting so much from the flatulation. All right. Yeah. <laughs> let, let, let's let's see. CB's flight despite these laws. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm being called. Hang on, let me pause the recording real quick. Uh-huh. <clears throat> yes, my my ringtone is indeed the the part five like Jornos theme from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Um, I see. Don't worry about it. Hmm. Anyway, uh, let's finish this off. That's all I have to show. Thanks for watching to the end. Nice. There were a bunch of little details that I chose to leave out for the sake of pacing and time, both your and mine. That's okay. Like, there's some peculiarities <laughs> with the noun time. declension system, and the reversing slang had a couple extra wrinkles. There are some irregular plurals based on certain plurals sounding like the singular form of rude words. Hell, I didn't give you a good look at the honorific chart at all. If this video piqued your interest and you want to dig in, there's a link to the Google Doc below for the grammar and the Google Sheets for the lexicon. And if you're still around, you're probably into linguistics. I'm working on making a set of lecture correct. descripts that automatically derive modern Germanic words from their ancestors. Oh. I tried looking for online resources on the phonological history of Germanic languages, and the best I can find are on Wikipedia and aren't detailed enough. Like, it doesn't explain why great, meat, and threat don't rhyme. If you can help... <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, you get the point. Go find Crusader if you're interested in that. I'll, I'll 
all, all these videos that are like public, I'm going to put into a big playlist after the main video comes out uh -huh, anyway. Uh -huh. So it'll all be there. Um, start. All right. Who's ready for the language called C by the lucky red shirt? This one appears to be 22 minutes and 19 seconds, so uh, we may end up speeding this one up too. So let's uh, find out. Mm. De depends how you... Okay. I'm not in a closet right now. <laughs> yeah, no, totally not. <laughs> it's totally not like you can see the, uh, you know, like the... <laughs> the clothes racks up there. It's yeah, actually just a totally sigh out. I'm not in the closet. Um, mm -hmm. But, um, so, obviously, you're here because this is the Curse Conline contest. And um, I'm here to provide you with just just such a Cursed Conline. It's <laughs> mm. okay. the latter okay. pain. I am in pain. Um, <clears throat> I, I know that yeah, feeling. I spent about yeah. oh, just you uh, two weeks <laughs> making this language. Uh -huh. It was quite painful, and my vocal cords are shot. So it's going to be good. Okay. It's going to be entertaining. Again, I, know I hope. The and, <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you, if you, um, if I should, you know, lose my voice entirely because I have to present this, um, blame Nga, because yeah, you're going to this whole thing. Without further ado, I'm going to present to <laughs> you this language before I, you know, like this video go way too long. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Here we go. Uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, mm -hmm. so let's get right into it. Um, before we go any further, I should probably introduce myself. Um, my name is Purple, and I'm a part of the Lucky Red Shirt channel. Uh, and I'm here to present you okay. with, uh, yeah, it's not pronounced C. It's oh, pronounced. No. <laughs> exactly okay. like that. It's a um, palatal. Dental, well, I can see what this then is going. Uh, dental tap. Uh, uh, uh. Hard. Dental tap. <laughs> a hard <laughs> dental tap. That'll give you a little um, insight into what we're going to do here. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. This is um, a language made up entirely of voiceless sounds. There are no vowels, there are no voiced consonants. So, it's so lovely to say. You'll understand why it doesn't have any voicing, uh, but we'll get to that. So, yeah, mm. let's 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 get right on with our lives, shall we? All right, I'm gonna up <laughs> you're, this you're to one point two five, knowing that this yeah. language exists and that I've made it. So, what is? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> and yeah, it's pronounced like that, very ejectively. Um, doing it without spitting is considered one of the highest honors that you can have in <laughs> culture. Um, but yeah, it's the strange and some say cursed language of the <laughs> people. Um, residing on Adams Island in the thought to be uninhabited Auckland Islands within New Zealand territory. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, and the people were only just documented as even existing about three months ago. Oh, this is a and fresh, so, um, fresh discovery. Recent intensive research has been Real, put in by confirmed. the International Society of Linguistic Anthropology, or um, as we call it, ISLA, uh, <laughs> to uncover the secrets of the language, which they have done and and done well. Yeah, I will give them that. Um, how they managed to achieve such a uh, monumental task is unknown, although one does not simply ask Isla what their methods are. Oh, yeah, no, asterisk. No. But what they found was truly <laughs> shocking. A... Oh no, at the bottom, if the thing will go yeah. away, it says editor's oh. note. Isla's uh, actions involve strange occult rituals such as certain indigenous practices, redacted and redacted. <laughs> <laughs> and immensely complex. It's a language spoken by people who have no concept, not even the idea of voicing sounds. So their entire <laughs> language is voiceless and comprised of only the strangest sounds you could possibly find. So I have come here today to enlighten you who watch this video As well as our beloved ringmaster for the first Conling Circus, Nga, upon the most confusing subject of the language. So, the culture. Uh, very little is actually known about the culture and lifestyle, other than that they have not really advanced beyond stone tools and that their diet is mostly subsisted on by uh, seafood and seabirds. Um, little vegetation can actually grow on Adam's Island. 
Um, and what's there is not very edible. So, um, yeah, it's mostly a, um, um, a meat diet. But it's evidence that they uh, settled the island around 1100 CE during the uh, Maori migrations. And it appears as though they are also genetically related, very closely okay. genetically related to the Maori people. Does this well. mean it's going to be a uh, posterior? Uh, research proves oh, that God. the <laughs> belief system is. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Same thing. It is. is just. Oh my God. Uh, what have I done? <laughs> um, it's quite. Their belief system is quite intricate and provides actual light on why the <laughs> people do not have voicing in their language. So. So their mythology goes, their ancestors arrived on Adam's Island via a prophecy made by their true gods, who directed them to seek the rocks of the holy place. And once they arrived, the gods supposedly instructed them in the true methods of fishing, hunting, living, you know, like lifestyle. <laughs> and the rocks, I just noticed guy, that now. Oh no. Speaking, yeah, yeah. Uh, the <laughs> gods supposedly taught them to emulate the sounds of the sea and the rocks on the <laughs> island in their speech, sort of like Waves crashing and okay. rocks falling. That's okay. kind of what the entire language is, and you're going to see why. Um, so that's uh, the language that previously had a lot of voice sounds, lost them, completely lost them. Yeah. Uh, and today, the people uh, still speak in this way, and they don't even have the concept of voicing. They, there's no, there's not even the semblance of a vowel in their speech, which is just so impressive and something that I could not even begin to replicate. I am only a beginner at so I don't really know the intricacies uh, of the language yet. And I don't intend to get there. I'm just going to present it to you. So, the phonology. <laughs> oh, right. God. Uh, the answer. phonology of is <laughs> really, really bad. It's not even strange. It's bad. And the romanization is even more confusing because you have C, which represents <sighs> And then you have Thorn, which will represent some other sound that I'll get to in a minute. So yeah, this is the IPA chart with the romanization. So let's let's um let's go over them, shall we? So, uh, yeah, you'll notice there's no voice sounds, there's no vowels. That's it. That's all the sounds you get in the language. It's literally. There, there, there's our Fortis Lenis so, injective have... <laughs> versions. Oh, sorry, no. I'm gonna go up to 1.5. Let's see if we can handle it. And then you have two affricates in the language, which are represented by thorn and sea. So you have corn. Pronounce it exactly like that. Practice it a bunch of times because you're gonna end up spitting all over that when you try it when you try it the first time. <laughs> I, I when I tried it the first time, I yeah, it was, it was bad. And then of course you have the all important sound. So yeah. All important. Oh god. It's a great idea. This is gonna get a lot worse, so yeah, brace yourselves. Okay, so hold on, can you go back outline of the grammar. Side? Uh, it's, it's Wait, what? Go back and slide? Back and slide. Yeah. yeah. I love how the, 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 the C sound, the, how it has a, an affricated palatal adjective, oh. despite there not being a regular palatal adjective in the language. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> the same it's found explicitly. The, the dental fricative. It only occurs in that affricate. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome so far from English that you can't even possibly imagine. Um, it's got object, subject, verb, word order. <laughs> Flexible head marking, so you're not exactly sure where to put the adjective at any one given time. It usually comes after, but it's not really known what causes it to come before, because it can. Really? Um, it's incredibly, oh, incredibly polysynthetic. You have entire sentences spoken in four words, but those words are stuff. incredibly long. And <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> There's little bits of nuance that make it really confusing. To, for anyone to speak it natively, uh, well, like like natively, the people had uh, somehow speak this natively. I don't really understand, but yeah. And so you know the little thing we call phonotactics. Yeah. So take that concept, throw it out the window because there are no such things. You can stick whatever sounds you want together in this language, and you do. You will find strings of related like um, you'll find strings of bilabial plosives just in a row. It's insane, <laughs> and I hate it. I genuinely hate this language, which is probably all the better. Good. So now it is time Good. for an example sentence. Oh. Okay, so, yes, the an insanity. example sentence. Um, the ever important. Um, I have Look. a book about cats in my library. So, yeah. This, uh, this is it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that is horrid. <laughs> He's bracing himself. Yeah. Now I'm going to pronounce so, it. Yeah. You, you, uh, you, you asked for this. You, you caused my sanity to, I did. to destroy. You did this. You did this. Sorry. That's no. okay. 
<laughs> anyway, this is this is penance for so, what I've done. Forget for my bad pronunciation. I do not speak natively. I know that's not part of it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the pain in your eyes. Yeah. This is worse than high performance, yeah. I think. Yeah. Dude, this is this is like gum smack. Yeah. So I'm gonna explain this now because um, it, it, the explanation takes far, far too long. I'm gonna go over a brief outline on my phone, which I'm bringing up now because I didn't have it prepared because I'm dumb. Um. Yeah. Anyway. Um. So <laughs> let's get into a little analysis here. So, we're going to start off with a word for cat, which uh, is... So that's our base <laughs> noun for a few steps. Um, it'll take a plural marker, which is... Uh, and so that means that it is an animal. Uh, has a very high animacy hierarchy, um, which is evident a lot. It changes some of the grammar aspects, but um, I'm not going to go too far into it because the video is already getting really long. Um, so since cats do not exist, uh, like, physically within a book, it takes what's known as the representation marker, uh, which is... Um, okay. and Because it's... Uh, it's only the representation of cats, it's not actual cats inside the book. So now, we have what's known as the association markers, and that's those, those, those relate the things together. And relate, relation <laughs> markers sort of work like genitives, but they also don't work like genitives. It's strange how, they, how you use genitives. Oh yeah, in... there's a lot of those in there. <laughs> so, oh, <God>. yeah. <laughs> and honestly, I still don't get it. Just, again, probably over there. So yeah, they're, they're used to convey the two nouns are linked to each other. Um, so, since the book concerns cats, not cats concerning books, cat is the object and book is the subject. Um, Oh and then, God. so the next up, you'll have. It's like a subclause <sighs> contained within it. Which is book. Um, we're not sure how they have words for cats and books. So the fact that they know neither of those things, we're not going to question it for now. So yeah, it's going to take a definite <laughs> article because it's a definite <laughs> thing. You know, you have the book about cats. Um, and it's a defined book being spoken about. Uh, and so next, you put on the association marker, this time the subject, which is. And then it's interesting how um, library effectively translates to book building, which is. <laughs> Fair. Basically, yeah, it's book, uh, it's building, subject, book, object. Those are, there's those association markers again. Gotcha. So it does make logical sense if you think about it, or if you're insane. Uh, Both. I think I'm the... I'm, Both. Yeah, I'm, I'm insane. Um, <laughs> so, insane. now, it's strange because sometimes the animacy hierarchy works better than others, and sometimes it just doesn't. Again, we're not really sure what causes it. It's very confusing, even to me. So, yeah, that's, that's how you say library. Um... Then, what else do you have? Oh yeah, then you have to define the fact that the book, that not only the book is in your library, not only that the book is yours in your library, but also the library is yours. So, uh, you add uh, this, the, starting at the green there. Um, the, oh yeah, and you also have to add the fact that the book is in the library, which you add onto the library instead of the book. I don't really know. Uh, I see how it is. Yeah, okay. so you'll have the, uh, the first person singular genitive pronoun, which is or something like that. And they have to denote the fact that it is an alienable possession, because it's an object, and then you have to associate the fact that the uh, the library does not also own you. You are the only person who owns the library. Um, <laughs> also the fact that you are the only person who owns the library, not someone else as well. Next you move on to the verb, which is actually the most simple part of it. It just takes the first person position. it just takes the first person singular pronoun and then the verb. And that's it. It's not exactly as cursed as I might thought, as you might think, but no, that's still pretty good. That's, yeah. that's, still, oh that's still pretty good. God, that was so bad. Uh, you think it would have a really simple meaning? I thought it had a simple meaning. I thought it would be nice. But no. No, no, no. Yeah, that was like the only example I could find from Isla, aside from you yeah. know, the translation things I'm going to get into. <laughs> yeah, not sure how to, how to know about cats or books, but Isla made it happen. <laughs> oh God, you already going insane. Again. I'm going to go insane. Okay. <laughs> the, the, the insanity that we're witnessing here. This yeah. is, this is a nutshell of my experience attempting to uh, speak the ultra French dialogue. The ultra French was that one really that bad? Was I think hyperformal was wasn't hyperformal worse than ultra French? Okay, yeah, I guess hyperformal. I like literally, like I I legit like almost threw up <laughs> when I was trying to speak hyperformal. So yeah, I guess that, I have, that one is worse. Because high performance is basically just this, but with uh, with pharyngealization. Or, or like, glottalization. Glot yeah, essentially. <laughs> this, is, this is like high performal plus Hungarian plus 
Austronesian alignments, I mean, not alignments, but possession, and, mm -hmm. like, Gumsmack's lack of voice singing and all that. I don't know. Yeah. It's whack. All right, let's get back into it. Yeah, I've taken some time to recover from that. I had a, a bit of a stroke there. Um, yeah. Relatable. So, I'm not going to show you the example sentence that um, our, our our beloved Kanlan creator Nga has asked us to translate, and I have done so into for your entertainment due to both the absurdity of the sentence and the destruction of my vocal cords for the remaining month. Maniacal so, laughter. The reckoning. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to this because, oh, the time has come. We must view this beautifully written and infinitely wise sentence as translated into... According oh, to yes. all known laws of aviation, the bee shouldn't be able to fly. Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. The bee, of course, flies anyway, because bees don't care what humans think is possible. This is what it looks like. Oh, God. Prepare themselves. <laughs> and remember, that's not part of the language. That's oh. a voice sound. Okay, yeah, yeah. Can't... <laughs> gotta keep that in mind. <laughs> that I see. <laughs> oh no, I'm being called again. God damn it. Hang on a sec. Anyway, <laughs> back to finishing off this. The the oh, terror right. in, in this person's eyes. <laughs> no, that's not how it ends. That's not how it ends. I'm going to repeat the last word. <laughs> I'm actually lightheaded. I'm actually lightheaded. If you want to try this Welcome out yourself, to the club. <laughs> take note of the fact that you have taken. Yeah. Uh, if you want, if you want to look at that, pause the video. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not describing that again because this video is already almost 20 minutes. No, I think I. I think I so get yeah, that point. I think I get I'm it. Done. I'm, I'm <laughs> if you want to try pronouncing it for yourself, uh, go on vocal rest for a couple of days before yeah. and after. Because yeah, my voice is already kind of giving out. Uh, how the people can communicate anything, I have no idea. Yeah. So, uh, I'd like to thank the wonderful people who had to put up with the creation process of the language. Uh, yeah, it was uh, a lot of strange noises being made. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it was probably very confusing for anyone who was you know, like inside the house at the time. Uh, yeah, so I'd like to thank them because they deal with my BS, and I can't thank them enough for that. And I also thank God for allowing the fine people of the world to have their ears exposed to whatever this abomination is. Please don't yep. ask me to make me... Please don't ask me to make more, or I will likely... I am already suffering a mental breakdown. I can't even speak English anymore. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, thank you, and uh, have a wonderful day. I'm gonna go sleep now. It's like the late. So. <laughs> wow. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. But you, you, you got close, though. I, I see a lot of people trying to get close to including rocks without actually including rocks. You, 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 you yeah. are pretty close. All right. Let's see. I've, I've got, I've got food arriving soon. That's what the, uh, that, that, that's what those calls are doing. So that'll be an intermission. We get to that, but it looks like these two next ones are pretty short. Oh God. Yeah. The next one is the Spanish one, but all right. Um, okay. So let us move on to Fire's Paxamana with a berry sax. I am I, I I am intrigued by the name of this one alone. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Hello. And uh, oh. welcome to <laughs> this nonsense. I made a language for the Curse Conway Circus. Now, 
you may be noticing this little thing right here. And that's because this language is played with a saxophone. <laughs> now before we get into it, I have a couple of disclaimers. This language is pretty much just a relax of something I already made a while ago for a project. Uh, here's the link if you want to see more like specific details and the word list and such. But that comment was started about a week after the Kong Circus 2 was announced, and I didn't know because I was not at home. <laughs> but let's just jump right in. Uh, first off, let's start with the phone attack text. So if you are, have already gone to the website and run up on the language, uh, you'll know there's a couple of consonants. And uh, those are played oh, by uh, impersonating Leo P. <laughs> Uh, so basically, we play one of 21 consonants, and each of them are played by s playing a certain lick on the Barry Sax, all of them, of course, taken from Leo P's iconic performance at the BBC Problems 2017. Well, now, Leo P is in from Lucky Chops? Those are just the consonants. I've no what idea what that is. I do. Over the vowels, <laughs> you have to dance. So, uh, I'm not gonna get super into it, but ah is the forward jump. Yup. <laughs> it is the sideward slide. <laughs> e is the spin. O is the jumping moonwalk. Still don't know how to describe that. U <laughs> is the leg raise. U uh, is the foot rotation. And U uh, is the jumping foot swap. And now the letters U uh, and U uh, show quite a bit because they're used for grammar reasons. <laughs> so uh, yeah, have fun trying to pull that. I'm not gonna dance right now. I'm gonna pull these up on screen afterward. And now, basically, the syllabus structure is CDCC. So, at the start of a syllable, you'll play the lick, and you'll start dancing at the same time. Uh, no, you can't break between licks to dance, because that's inefficient, and we don't like that here. And, now, the orthography is pretty normal. It's just pamahana. Like, it's just written in Cyrillic. Uh, that's the only interesting thing about it. Now for the grammar. It's pretty much polysynthetic language from a guy, uh, me, that has never looked up how polysynthetic language is actually <laughs> So it's pretty much just like, st it's just stack shit. Stack shit on there, yeah. 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 So, start off with verbs. Uh, pretty much they're marked with, usually, the person, the person forming, the person receiving, the person indirectly affected, and the time. And a lot of that is either marked on the verb with using, like, particles, or it can be marked on the nouns. Oh, and speaking of nouns, there's grammatical gender. Uh, it doesn't matter what the genders actually are, just pretty much it changes the vowel of pretty much everything in that cluster and in anything of directly affecting that specific noun uh, based on the gender. And uh, the most common one is o, living, and uh, there's also mechanical, which is used a lot, which is e. Oh yeah, and then there's a uh, free word order. So, pretty much, you just do whatever the fuck you want, because the subject and the object are marked in the actual nouns using uh and uh. I told you those would be important, because uh, a, e, o, u are all genders, and then uh and uh are uh is subject, uh is object. So I have you have fun if you have a, if you have a sentence for an object. <laughs> yep. Uh, jumping mm. what the fuck did I call it? You have to do the jumping butt swap. Have fun with that. Oh so, uh, no. A uh, couple of little things, basically adjectives attach after the noun and cases and such attach before. It's not that confusing. It's it's pretty much self-explanatory if you know the words. Like, you don't need to fucking construct anything. You just need to watch me uh, do this nonsense with dancing and the whole fucking shebang. And now, I could definitely explain way more, but I'll just get into the, <laughs> I'll just get into the translation. Chato daipag joto lur. A fondo joto lur. Mescal zech chet nashlo. Thaudres moa jibo jot nalo joti juk. O lur a fondo achra. Lurugua hotnek nolo co perjumos anegahra hutaneges. Wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Lucky Chops was like this like kind of brass and saxophone band that existed for a while. And like band kids who existed during that time 
definitely knew who Lucky Chops were, and most of them had a particular obsession with that sax player with the with the pink okay. hair because he was a true legend. Hmm. <sighs> and I speak Spanish, but I speak Mexican Spanish, particularly Mexican American Spanish, Arizona Mexican American Spanish. And much of the slang is very different in Peru. And so I am going to ask uh, ask MHMD for some, uh, some subtitles of their own. But I will somehow attempt to uh, translate for the most part what is being said here, I guess. Yeah, I... <laughs> I know Spanish to some extent, like I can understand it a lot better than I can speak it, but uh, it's the difficulty is in figuring out what they're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Because exactly. I think that, from what I remember, the audio in the video is also not the best, so that makes it harder. Yeah, it'll be a little extra challenging. So we'll see what we can do about this one. <laughs> Pues bien, primero hay que tener en cuenta que este video es altamente especulativo. Si quisiera un resultado concreto diría algo como Rotocas o como Surinam, teniendo en cuenta de que la regla de mínimo no se fue nada más fuera real. Bueno, tampoco soy periodista profesional ni nada parecido, así que... Bueno, en todo caso comencemos con la fonología. Los idiomas más simples vocalmente son el Lugvik y el Bajás. No sé si lo pronuncio bien, son idiomas del medio del Cáucaso. Teniendo tan solo dos vocales, A y U, o A y teniendo el conteo. O sea, dos diferenciaciones entre una vocal alta y una vocal baja, siendo de esta manera de que la localización se consideraría glofónica. No se percibiría igual, así como la I en meter, no sé si lo estoy pronunciando bien, se percibe como una I o como una U dependiendo del oído, bueno, para la gente que habla español. Pues bien, se podría argumentar que para que un idioma tenga pocas vocales tendría que tener una cantidad horrible de consonantes. Los idiomas como el Piraja tan solo tienen como 8 consonantes y 3 vocales, la A y Do. Así que la regla no es tan consistente, al menos existiendo algunas excepciones. Ahora las consonantes. El idioma natural con menor cantidad de consonantes en el mundo es el rotocas, habiendo tenido solo pataka, badaga. De esta manera sabemos que el resto de modos consonánticos son opcionales o se persiguen de la misma manera. Viendo la fonación, se puede cortar la badaga ya que hay muchos idiomas de que no poseen diferencias en fonación. Pero estos idiomas se contrastan con otras cosas como la yictimilización en el quechua, pataka. No puedo pronunciar eso con esta huevada. La aspiración en el chino, que también está en el quechua. Ataca. Pero bueno, investigando idiomas hay por ejemplo el maorí de que no tiene ni fonación ni tampoco algo que lo reemplace. El único de que se puede percibir más o menos sería la P y la V. De que se puede percibir con una B, pero el resto no existe fonación alguna. Ahora, todos los idiomas contrastan al menos tres posiciones consonánticas. Si me hago el chistoso podría decir de que todas las consonantes del mundo están ausentes en al menos uno idioma y podría poner un idioma sin consonantes que no tiene sentido. Pues bien, por eso es de que las consonantes y también las vocales se cuentan por contraste y percepción con respecto a otras. Como la oclusiva olivelar, o sea la T, de que en algunos idiomas se pronuncia como una oclusiva dental, así como la T, T, pero no se percibe la diferencia. Y bueno, al parecer todos los idiomas del mundo poseen consonantes o alveolares o dentales o ambas. Y hay idiomas sin consonantes dorsales, pero esto se contrasta con los glotales, haciendo de que haya al menos dos distinciones consonánticas. Quitando la P, ya que hay idiomas que no poseen un equivalente, o sea, sin bilabiales, ni ningún tipo de consonante labial. Siendo así, el set fonémico, pa, ta, a, a, u. Pues bien, pasando a la gramática del vocabulario, inicio quitamos las conjugaciones, ya que hay idiomas que no tienen esas vainas, como el mandarín. Y obligatoriamente todas las palabras tienen que tener cuatro sílabas para aglutinarse y no confundirse entre sí. Esto va a ser de que hayan palabras más grandes que bonarense cagando, pero de todas maneras no tengo otra solución, así que... Y bueno, teniendo solo cuatro tipos de palabras, sustantivos, números, nombres y preposiciones. Y también orden de palabras libre. Y bueno, acá dejo la lista de palabras de que saqué el taqui, -taqui muy probablemente no lo hice porque me dio huevo. Y así tenemos un idioma de que sea capaz de hablar de cualquier vaina como ciencias humanidades sin trabarte cada 10 segundos. O tener que explicar sobre explicar los conceptos de una manera de que no se entienda. Y bueno, como dije anteriormente, me dio paja hacer 500 palabras y reinar todas esas tablas, así que tan solo hice las palabras necesarias para terminar este video.
Sí, eso lo hice la primera. Este idioma es una mierda. Ojalá de que no se desarrolle nunca una huevada como esta naturalmente. Right, that's also the video. Yeah, and then on to the second video. That's why he said this is the this is the only the first sentence. So let's go on yeah. to the second part here, and let's uh, let's experience the rest. Oh God, there's the writing too. <laughs> the little bee. Tukutaka <laughs> Okay, I think we get the point. But yeah, there we go. Okay, again, if, if you know, I, I tried to give like the general gist, but I'll try and yeah, get yeah. like an actual translation from them. That that would be nice. So some like so I could put some actual subtitles on there or something for it. Um, well, they could put subtitles on the video. That would also help. yeah. That that would have been nice, but it's it's all it's all good at least for now. Uh, I was gonna say conversation, but four hours is a bit more than a conversation. <laughs> uh, while we've been in this call, like the sun has risen in the meantime over here. It's not like you can see it though because it's raining. <laughs> I've been shrouded in a convenient darkness that eludes me of the passage of time. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Speaking of uh, nature, I'm guessing from the name of this next language, Sylvan, mm -hmm. that it will have something to do with nature. Let's yep. find out. And hopefully I won't have to do any on-the-spot translation. <laughs> All right. Hi, I'm Snickups. And my <laughs> name is Mars. I'm the conliner and the Agmashua viewer here, so this video was my idea. Nice. The language concept belongs to Mars. I'm also here because Snickups doesn't know how to make videos. Now, <laughs> Mars and I play Dungeons & Dragons together. He's the game master of our group, and he's really good at it. If you've ever played Dungeons & Dragons, or are familiar with fantasy tropes, you're probably familiar with the Fae. These beings make their home in another plane of existence, the Feywild. And even if the word Fae sometimes conjures up images of harmless fairies, their folkloric origins portray them as extremely powerful and unknowably strange and eldritch. In our current campaign, Snickups and the other players are slowly uncovering the secrets of an ancient war between Sound mortals and Fae as they explore an alternate North America. The Feywild invaded the mortal world about 25,000 years ago and were fought off by the distant ancestors of the later American peoples as well as the people of Atlantis. Now, so many millennia later, the players are thrust into the spotlight by the reemergence of forbidden Fey magic and have been traveling around the American South, talking to archeologists and researchers and fending off Fey and cultists to get to the bottom of this whole thing. Naturally, that process involves finding texts in both Sylvan and Ancient Sylvan, the language of the Fae. I just gotta point out, I th think this is, like, we passed through South Hopi, and they talked about the American South, and Arizona, while being in the Southwest, is technically geographically South. Is this meant to be in, like, a fictional version of Arizona? Hmm. Oh, God. Hmm. If that's the case, then my condolences. Okay, okay. It's called Sylvan. It's gonna help I'll trees. That Mars is not I mean, a conliner. It's not Arizona. He likes languages, but uh -huh. has never intended to make a coherent one. Nor has he spent any time immersed in linguistics or the conline community like I have. He talked about Sylvan and the other extraplanar languages like they're eldritch entities. 
When I showed him Babylon was Seraphim from last time, <laughs> he decided to make it canon that that's how Celestial works in this setting. <laughs> so my goal for him that's is awesome. to take a bunch of statements by someone who never wanted this language to make sense and form a coherent, if cursed, conline out oh, of God. them. Here are the things <laughs> I have said about Sylvan during the campaign, which Snake Ups That's will be working off of. First, yep. Sylvan does not use normal vowels nor consonants. All Sylvan speech sounds like the sounds of nature, with each speaker having a unique aesthetic okay. for no, their speech that. That instead mm -hmm. of normal vocalizations. You're going to have a mix of sounds from an environment associated with you that you use to speak, and the sounds you make are going to be completely different from anyone else's. For example, a druid in the campaign who comes from the mountains of Tibet speaks in prayer bells and mountain winds, while another character communicates through the sounds of dark caves and deep tombs. The fae speak this way because in the Feywild everything is fae. The rocks make rock sounds, the trees make tree sounds, rocks. and all can understand each other. <laughs> I have to somehow form a coherent phonology out of all this. Second, when your in-game character <laughs> speaks in Sylvan, out of game, you have to speak in poetic form, such as rhyming or iambic pentameter, to indicate <laughs> that you are speaking this language. Other extraplanar languages have similar conditions. I do this to better indicate when players are speaking in a language from outside this world, and to add a bit of strangeness and a touch of difficulty to the whole ordeal. This was supposed to be a fun thing for the players to do, rather than an in-universe feature of the language, but I'll see what I can do with it regardless. Third, Fae do not have the same priorities as humans, and among those is the purpose of their language. Many times I've had to remind my players not to think like humans when discussing features of the Fae, while humans regard speaking clearly and actually communicating ideas as a good thing, Fae <laughs> speak in riddle and in metaphor actively <laughs> obfuscating their true purpose, no matter the social context. This one confuses me to no end. I know the whole point was to make them more alien, but it was my job to make a coherent language out of this. I think I came up with some pretty fun stuff, though. Without further ado... How does a language work when every speaker has a completely different set of sounds? Well, all we have to do is make an inventory of phonemes that can each realize <laughs> a different sound based yep. on your personal aesthetic, okay, we're going while still direction. fitting a recognizable like enough general pattern to be the same phoneme. Instead of being sorted by place of articulation, sylvan phonemes are categorized based on the classical elements. <laughs> elements okay. of articulation, if you will. And we're going with the Chinese elements, not the Greek ones, so instead of earth, water... Yup. <laughs> Mm -hmm. The Chinese elements, love it. Mm -hmm. For fire and air, we have earth, water, fire, metal, and wood, with air falling under the category of metal. Earth sounds can include things like the sounds of shifting sand, falling rocks, scraping stones, or any sound made by burrowing animals. Hey, it's a little bit of involvement from rocks. Okay. I'm not sure if the <laughs> option to put rocks in your phonology is enough to qualify okay. for the rock prize, but I think it's appropriate. <laughs> That, that's... Water we'll talk about that later. Flowing water, <laughs> bubbles, waterfall noises, or any sound made by aquatic animals. Fire sounds can be crackling or burning noises, or they can be the sounds made by any warm-blooded animal. Metal sounds could be anything made by the wind or any flying animal. I guess it could also be literal metal noises, but I'm not sure how much that fits the aesthetic of Sylvan. <laughs> Wood sounds could be the sounds of trees doing things. <laughs> or any animal that lives in trees. These five elements of articulation are then things. crossed with five manners of articulation. Background sounds are the sylvan equivalent to vowels. A syllable consists of a series of one or more so-called consonant sounds over a background sound such as wind or rain noises that serves as the equivalent to a syllable nucleus. As for the consonants, there are four types, gentle, neutral, strong, and rough. Gentle, neutral, and strong sounds can be any form of sound that matches their element, whether these be animal noises or natural phenomena, as long as each one in a series is louder, clearer, and stronger than the last. Rough sounds, on the other hand, are always the sounds of something breaking, being struck, or otherwise generally not having a good time. Syllables, made of consonants over background sounds, make up the words in the main sylvan vocabulary. Consonants or other noises by themselves can be used as interjections and other forms of communication outside the normal language. Remember, all the sounds on stream right now are just a generic phonology. When you speak this language, you can fill in this table with whatever sounds you want. Here is my personal aesthetic. 
Zillion is quite resistant to sound changes, nice. both because their sound inventory is so personal and because individual fae can live for thousands of years, so there are still some alive who spoke ancient Sylvan 25,000 years ago. Oh god. However, some changes have indeed oh. taken place. That the question remains of how any person, oh yep. fae or mortal, could make all these sounds come out of their mouth. Mars has so far refused to answer me on this point. <laughs> and I'll never tell. <laughs> This one might be my favorite feature of all. Sylvan is both oh, polysynthetic and highly oh. non-concatenative. <coughs> Good times. I like how this is that this video is coming in the form of the process of accommodating yeah. for Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. All right, let's resume. And by that I mean, many morphemes can be joined together into long word strings that are treated as single words, but within each word, each individual morpheme still has to take a huge amount of non-concatenative marking to demonstrate its exact grammatical role, just as if it were an independent word. So the polysynthesis effectively does nothing! In terms of how the non-concatenativity works, it has some similarities to Semitic consonantal roots, but instead of syntax okay. being determined by vowel placement, it's determined by consonant placement. Oh god, it's the Background vowels oh, stay constant, no. while the consonants shift around, with syntactic marking determined by their order and which vowels they fall under the syllables of. Oh, and some forms require more consonants or syllables than a short word might have, so you just reduplicate the first consonant or vowel until you have enough. <laughs> Sylvan grammar is just as impenetrable as the fey culture that came up with it. <laughs> word order is theoretically free, thanks to case marking, but all phrases are required to come in reverse order of salience, opposite to how human languages operate. Therefore, the subject is almost always placed at the end of the sentence. I'd say that verb object subject is the default word order, but object verb subject is almost as common. Nouns are marked heavily for case. There are seven basic cases, nominative, accusative, ergative, absolutive, dative, locative, and committative. Then there's the genitive case, which agrees with the case of its possessum. The genitive of the genitive, which does the same, and the genitive of the genitive of the genitive, which also <laughs> does the same. Oh God. <laughs> Ergativity is split along participation, with the presence of the first or second person causing a sentence to tend further toward nominative zero? accusative marking, while a sentence with oh only third God. person or imper- What is zero it supposed to mean? <laughs> Apparently impersonal. Okay. All right. All right. We'll go with it. Personal, that is zero with person, arguments okay, yeah. is ergative absolutive. And because there are fully separate sets of nominative accusative and ergative absolutive cases, the oddball combinations of nominative absolutive and ergative accusative show up on occasion as middle grounds. <laughs> In order to be as frustrating and semantically grounds. ambiguous as possible, <laughs> nouns take no marking for number, noun class, definiteness, or any other property. Especially not animacy, which Sylvan pays absolutely zero attention to. Adjectives agree with their noun in case. Verbs nice. do not agree with anything and are marked only for aspect. This is my other favorite feature. Oh, God. Again, okay. to be as frustrating and semantically ambiguous as possible, Sylvan is not only completely lacking in tense, but also in mood. <laughs> just, so there is just literally aspect. no way Brilliant. of expressing mood, modality, or evidentiality in this language. Is this a statement of fact, or is it an opinion? Is it true, or just something you heard? Or are you actively stating falsehoods? <laughs> Was this in the far past? Will it be in the future? Is it just something that could happen? Are you asking me whether it should? Are you ordering me to bring this about? Or is it all completely hypothetical anyway? <laughs> That's left entirely up to context Stop vague and to the wits of the statement. <laughs> Speaking to Faye is not easy. If they ever need to speak to each other quickly in a context that absolutely demands clarity, they don't speak Sylvan. Instead, they mimic animal calls and use the extra linguistic sounds I mentioned earlier. <laughs> oh, and for even more ambiguity, the elaborate Navajo-style aspect system of ancient Sylvan has been whittled down over time to just three. Perfective, oh, imperfective, and gnomic. <laughs> Sylvan speech should be poetic and grandiose. There's a reason they still have a gnomic aspect. It makes for elegant statements. Therefore, one should strive to never use a sylvan word in its literal sense. Every word can be extended poetically and given metaphorical meanings. Oh, to translate the again. example text, I first mm. rewrote it into a short, freeform poem. <laughs> a oh, a God, short, freeform poem. Oh, God. Oh, no. We're... One attends the laws of a. Uh... 
other floating bees do not, the bee limbs are too dust like for its fat middle. <laughs> the yellow palm move, mover, I suppose, curves not and it does float. When we call it an impossibility, what changes? <laughs> I'm not sure. Not Just like the meat, but nice. I, 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 I like it. I like it. By the way, is there to imply small like a speck of dust? Might not be an intuitive meaning to you, but Faye are good at improvising new metaphors on the fly. Here's a gloss of that poem into Sylvan grammar. Notice how when becomes with the time that, turning the next verb into a relative <laughs> clause, as well as how the questioning what changes at the end becomes a mood neutral quite the one considers right the changes. Also, the aspect shifts from imperfective in the first line to gnomic in the middle of the poem, and then back to imperfective for the last line. Here's how the Atlanteans would have written the sylvan forms down into their alphabet. <laughs> yeah, but that's okay. using pure word roots and some misunderstandings <laughs> of the grammar, not the properly inflected word forms. That rendering looks like this. Uh, or more accurately, like this. Oh no. But that one's still an ancient sylvan. Updating it to modern sylvan comes out like this. Woo! And if I were to speak it with my <laughs> personal sound inventory, it had actually come out like this. <laughs> oh my god. Oh god. <laughs> There's just, just trains in this. <laughs> Oh god. This is the frickin' B-movie translation. <laughs> oh god. Interrupted by a train. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. To witness a quick success. Yeah. <laughs> so there we have it. A language for terrifying extra planar entities, based on a non Todliner's ideas, with an inhumanly broad system of diaphotemes, and equally inhuman pragmatics. Once again, thanks to Mars for the concept and video editing. A big thanks to Snickups for the conlanging. And thanks to Agma Shua for running this contest. That's me. <laughs> All right. Whoa. Oh, that was that was quite the experience right there. That one was quite something. Yeah. All right. Um. Okay, this one was emailed to me like it's explicitly a Google Drive. Like, yes. Thing. I, so I put gonna... email there so you don't leak your email. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna... I'm putting this on a different tab real quick so that I can, uh... uh also, make sure to tell me how long the video is because I couldn't access it, so I don't know. Alright, I just have to find the correct user ID that I am on this browser <laughs> for 
Thing uh, bill address. There we go. Mm hmm. Okay. Mimi, download. All right. Opening the file. Hello. Is it a video? It is a video, and it is three minutes and 53 seconds long. Okay, I'm entering the time. Good. All right. Can you see it? Probably not, no. because I have it on just that application. So for th just this one, I'm going to have to break this system. I'm going to pause the recording <laughs> real quick. See, unpaused. Let's go. Hello, untime. T-H-Y-M-E, not T-I-M-E. This is my language, <laughs> Mimi. So, knowledge of Mimi is relatively simple compared to the rest of the language, consisting of only five sounds, four of which sound quite familiar them being mm, oh god mm, 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 e oh conscript god. is also kind of simple since well since there's only five sounds there's only five letters so word order if you're talking about yourself you would use sov word order if you were talking about a person you're talk you're talking to that would be so nope that would be osv word order <laughs> If you are talking oh, about oh, objects, it's all of them. Oh no! Word order. It's all of them. If you are talking about an animal that is nearby, you would use VOS word of, order. If you are talking LCS about an animal that is yeah. far away, you would use VSO word order. If you are talking about a person that is nearby, you would OSV use overlap OVS stuff. word order. If you are talking about a person oh, God, that is does. far away, you <laughs> would use SV OSV word order. Oh, <laughs> If you are talking about an object that is far away, you would stand on your head while talking about it. If you are oh, talking no, about an object that is far away, you would shove it oh, into the no. other person's face. If you are talking about something that happened a moment ago, you would flip off the nearest tree. If you're talking <laughs> okay. about something that happened five minutes ago, you would flip off the second nearest tree. And every five oh, minutes, God. you would go another tree. Oh, God. Well, yeah, the translation of this, right... Oh boy, so the translation of this would look like that, and it would sound like me, 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 To be honest, I couldn't, I, I couldn't tell if they made a mistake. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, me, me too. Me too. Me, 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 me. I mean, it's like hard to even tell the difference between like bilabial ma and labiodental ma. Me, me, me. Me, me, me. Me, me, me. You made this background music. Me, me. Oh, good, I did it. Alrighty. And. Because I'm an artist and not a writer, I decided to draw the creatures that speak this language. Oh, the creatures. It contains a little bit of information about their biology and their culture. I'm... I'm sorry. Oh. I'll they're just they're, they're, they're kitten bear this. things. I see. Very nice. <laughs> their horrendous language and being oh very soft. Hold on. Pause. Pause. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait, wait. What about it? This is concerning. It says they're known for their tasty cuisine and then cannibalism. <laughs> this is concerning. <laughs> very, very tasty cuisine. I don't know what you're talking about. This is no, very concerning. No wonder they have the, all the muscle diagram and the organ diagrams drawn oh, out God. perfectly oh, for, no. for preparation. <laughs> 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 That's amazing. Me, me, me. That me, me, me. Yeah. yeah, if I if I included me, bloopers me. and hyperpyrite yeah, and all that, like, no, that would not me, be good. No. 
<laughs> so I, I get this. <laughs> it should include some at some point. Oh god. Cool. Yeah. And now we're on to probably the one that's gotten the most like algorithm traction from this year's batch so far. Because it has been in my feed constantly. And I'll finally get to watch it more than the first five seconds or so. This is uh, Eleanor's Hanzi Yu. Alright. Is your screen sharing working on your end? It is, it is. Nice. Alright, let's do it. Here we go. China, one of the oldest civilizations and the land of John Cena's native tongue, <laughs> along with many, many other languages. <laughs> These languages vary widely, but... Freaking John Cena. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> But they all Don't. share one common thread, the characters. Throughout history, many people have tried to standardize one of these as a lingua franca across the country, and others yet have tried to create new systems to replace those characters. The latter, however, has never succeeded because all attempts suffered from the same fundamental flaw. They mm -hmm. created a system to write the way only one of the many languages was spoken, when they should have been speaking oh, no. the way all of the languages write. Oh, oh no! <laughs> Chinese sure. characters, also known as Han characters, Hanzi, Kanji, or Da Si Dagata, are part of a logographic oh. writing system used to write the Chinese languages, along with a number of other languages influenced by the country. The earliest known Musical version of this writing system yeah, dates back that. to 1200 ish BCE and is mostly pictographic, meaning the graphics are like pictos and their appearance is directly linked to their meaning, like emoji. Okay, there we go. <laughs> However, as the writing system matured, characters moved away from these pictures and became more abstract. Okay, yeah. Going from person to, sure, mm -hmm. that can be water, and then right back to absolutely 100% <laughs> clear what they mean. <laughs> the bian, Along bian, with characters getting yeah, more abstract, yeah. <laughs> they also standardized. Because of this, characters often contain other characters, which are themselves made up of standardized mm -hmm. components that convey some base meaning, except when I it actually doesn't most of the time. Radicals. These base mm -hmm. components are called radicals, yep. and what's considered a radical is mostly arbitrary. <laughs> In 1716, <laughs> under the direction of the Kangxi Emperor, the Kangxi Dictionary was published, which defined a set of 214 radicals. Like most Chinese dictionaries, the characters within it were ordered by their radical and then further ordered by the All number of, of strokes needed strokes to write the character. Yeah. While this was not the first time this particular set of radicals was defined, it cemented them as the standard set to use for centuries. It's still used in some places to this day, although there's a more modern set of 201 radicals used by the Chinese government and many modern Chinese dictionaries, Everyone's or for anyone else radical. who's a big fan of using yeah. 13 less of things. <laughs> Along with these radicals standardizing, so too did character's stroke order, which is the order in which mm -hmm. the strokes are written. Whoa. Generally speaking, <laughs> Chinese modern stroke order is based around ten Plants versus strokes. zombies. Oh, Top God, bottom, yeah. then left, right. Horizontal before vertical. Save the big stroke till last. Diagonals go right to left before left to right. Symmetric characters have their insides written before their outsides. Inside after outside in a box. Yep. Left vertical stroke is written first in a box. Bottom of the <laughs> box is written The rules last. in Japanese are just slightly different. Yeah, I'm sure they number are. Two if that vertical <laughs> is are. actually diagonal. <laughs> With all of these rules, plus the occasional exception to keep it spicy, each character has a correct way to write it down. This, combined with a set of <laughs> yep. radicals, can then fully describe the way any Han character is broken down, and how each of its segments is written. We can even type out exactly how it's broken down with the wonders of the Unicode Consortium, also known as our Emoji Overlords, yeah. which in 1999 <laughs> introduced 11 ideographic description sequence characters to Unicode to represent how characters are composed from one another, oh. including next to each other, top bottom, and polyespo style. <laughs> so, characters are made of more characters, which are made of radicals and written with officially ordered strokes and with internationally standard ways to represent their composition. What a simple, intuitive system that we can now use to create just as intuitive of a language. Oh no. This language's full name in the simplified dialect, oh yeah, there's dialects too, is <laughs> But for simplicity, I'll be referring oh, to it by its pronunciation in Mandarin Chinese, Hanzi Yu. 
To speak Hanzu, a speaker simply pronounces the components of a character and then the oh, strokes that make no. them up. Oh, There's no. many ways of analyzing Han character strokes, but Hanzu is based on a six stroke analysis, which is the smallest system that can realistically describe a character. This means that so-called combining strokes are not used, and instead are represented by their most similar base stroke. Complex strokes are pronounced as their component strokes, meaning that this is represented by the two strokes na and dian. <laughs> Each stroke in Hanzu can be realized as one of three consonants or three vowels, giving us 18 consonants and 18 vowels, including oh, diphthongs. No. The consonants are ma, na, nga, pa, ta, ka, ba, da, cha, za, ja, fa, sa, sha, ha, and la. And the vowels are e, u, the audio is getting u, crossed again. E, u, o, o. This is very cursed in general. <laughs> this, is, this is very cursed. It is. It really is. This is, th this is gonna be large <laughs> when it comes I, I, love, I love how the text on the slide is horizontally centered but not vertically. Yeah, it's always good. Love that. Typesetting. <laughs> Certified typesetting moment. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's see. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, you, way, oh, wa, all, a, oh, i, o. Oh. This inventory is loosely based on a combination of Mandarin, Hokkien, and Cantonese, plus a healthy dose of completely disregarding any and all phone tactics from those languages. This means that in Naturally. Hanzi, any consonant can be put next to any vowel, but CV syllable structure is required. In addition to these okay. phonemes, there's nine tones, based on the same languages, but with a couple nine of extra fun distinctions, nine. including a high-low dipping distinction and a peaking tone, giving us these nine. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, 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 and ah. <laughs> now let's talk about the orthography. It's the well, To make it readable, however, uh. there is also a romanization based on surprised. pinyin. It also adds a new vowel character for u and u, uh, and removes pinyin system of consonants changing the way vowels are produced. So this is pronounced ji rather than ji. <laughs> To pronounce a character, we need a list of its strokes in order. They're then split into pairs, and because we're doing linguistics, they're not just strokes, they're stroke eems. In each pair, the first stroke <laughs> realizes a consonant, and the second is a vowel, giving us that strict CV syllable structure we talked about before. For each of these pairs, let's call the first stroke the C stroke, and the second the V stroke. Oh, God. For the first stroke pair of any character, the C stroke is realized with its first consonant reading, and the V stroke by its first vowel reading giving us k uh. and e in this example. The tone of the vowel is based on the V stroke's position relative to the C stroke, with one tone assigned to each of the nine possible directions. <laughs> if two oh, strokes in a pair oh, touch one another, can. all nine strokes can be used, but for disconnected strokes, only the four cardinal directions can be used. <laughs> in this case, the E touches the bottom left of the character, oh, giving no. us key. For the rest of the pairs, the reading of the stroke is determined by the C stroke's position relative to the V stroke of the previous pair. This works just like choosing a tone, and also follows that touching no touching rule. In this character, however, there is an exception. If the V stroke of a pair is a hook, then the next pair's mapping is based on the C stroke that that hook was attached to, rather Naturally. than the hook itself. So here, the consonant stroke of the second pair is left relative to k, uh, meaning the pair will use C2, V1 reading, giving us <laughs> pe, with the ez tone in the center right position. Remember how I said there were nine tones? That was an example of a classic linguistics uh, technique called lying. There's also a tenth tone, pronounced like Mandarin's neutral tone, which is used when there's an odd number of strokes in a character. In this case, the last stroke is pronounced as a consonant with a neutral schwa appended. This means that the last stroke of some characters is ambiguous in its horizontal position, but that just makes it more cursed, so it's a feature, not a bug. <laughs> we now technically have a complete system to pronounce a character, but simply accidents. speaking those strokes is just way too slow. Remember Kang Si and his radicals? Let's take those simple common characters and shorten their pronunciations a bit. The process for shortening these mainly consists of combining two oh. vowels and their tones together, oh, no. and either removing the second consonant, replacing its vowel with a neutral schwa, or occasionally keeping the second vowel but giving it a neutral tone. Uh. Some duplications also cut out, and in shortened radicals, a uh huh oh, can man. be pronounced as a glide between the two vowels rather than an actual consonant. 
So instead of pronouncing this <laughs> we can just say Wow, how efficient. Now that's efficiency. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> True oh. radicals are nice, but radicals are really meant to be standard Back components to the of other characters. Zombies. Thanks to Unicode, we already have a way to decompose characters, so we can break down how a character is written and pronounce its pieces. To combine them, each of the 11 composition types is assigned a final like this. And surprise, I lied again. Our <laughs> syllable structure is actually CVC when the oh, syllable man. is at the oh, end of the character's God. component because of these finals. There's also a new sound, mm, which is just the geminated form of mm. <laughs> okay. In some dialects, these two sounds are allophones, as well as all of the voicedness distinctions for the finals. With all that done, we can append these finals to each component and finally speak a full character. Oh, and as a quick side note, when in a character, a radical often doesn't look like the actual character. All of these are in fact different yep. ways of writing the same radical. Yep. But in yep. Hanzi, a oh radical God, is yeah, always yeah. pronounced as the shortened form of the full character. <laughs> oh God. Hold on, hold on. All radicals are based on their form in tradition. <laughs> hold on. What is that word? Hold on. How is, how, how, how is that CV? What is that? Uh, well, hold on. The V, the V is a, is a, like a, I think it was the strut. Actually, Sorry, no, no, the V was the was the letter Y. Like it, it was a E. Ah, okay, I think so. I so it's like B bien. Oh my god. B bien, or something like that. Jeez. Cursed. Traditional Han characters, even in the simplified dialect. Well, now we can speak any character we want. <laughs> oh, All we no. need to do is get its full decomposition as a tree, stopping at any radicals you find and going as far as possible on the non-radical components. Oh, no. And for each Splitting radical, we use the short the pronunciation of its full character, and for any non-radical, we pronounce its strokes by pairing them into C and V. We read across the leaf nodes of this tree, adding a final based on the component's composition type with its next component, and bing bam boom, you got yourself a full word in Hanzi. <laughs> Easy as <laughs> Jushu Lai Ring up Te Fuck J Le Ho Jushu Lai Ring up Bip Dup Daga. Oh god. Hanzi is based off standard written Chinese, but there's two key differences in vocabulary to any other Chinese languages, loan words and compound words. Because of the one syllable per character rule in Chinese languages, there's a lot of homonyms. To avoid ambiguity, many nouns are actually made up of two words which overlap in meaning together, like mei li or yu yan. That way, the listener can Venn diagram the words in their head to get a better idea of what the speaker is talking about. <laughs> this is a really clever solution, but obviously in Hanziyu, this Very homonym problem clever. doesn't exist, so the second word oh. in these kinds of compounds is just omitted. Okay. Because Han characters are a logography, the written form of loanwords in languages like Mandarin is a bit silly, giving us literal translations like Han Castle and Three Bright Rule. Of course, <laughs> no one thinks of these literal meanings, but we can do better in Hanziyu. Instead of finding characters with the pronunciation we're looking for, we can just create oh God, a completely no. new character based on the pronunciation. For oh, instance, no. we can pronounce oh, no. Agma Shua as Zaga Ma Sua and write it like this. What an hey, elegant system, and what like a perfect it. new logo for the Agma Shua hey, channel. There we go. Oh, well. <laughs> well, that's everything. Pronunciation, grammar changes, shortenings, graphic design consulting for Conlang and YouTube channels. <laughs> I guess that means there's only it. one thing left to do. Oh god. Oh, here we go. Do tat to tega de hai to tat to kelo ke bit da ja la tu sa do ta ta to je ja la tu ya je se ke la bo ta ja bo ju chai tu cha ja lu hai se ba tui dai hiu ja le zhi ge ba tui pi pia pu je ke ga se ke ga se je fa pe de ka I like how there's just a B in the background to symbolize what this is. ปาเทจาระจูตูไทโดเซฮอบัวทะจาเบเดฮอตอฟลียาเจคาเจฟอเตงะปะฟลคีเพจาเลเคเทฮอเตซะเปเรเลคเคตะคาเจฟอปิล
<laughs> Keep up to her, catch you for down a patchy, battery, be papa, duck, cake, gasser, cake, gasser, jeff, hop, that delta, jay, so, sap, jeff, hop, ba, ba, tu, jay, lasso, do high gazer, the two, sir, kayla, die, he'll do chai, tu, chow, do high tears, or do, riadal, do, to be, dap, key, kaylam, danger, bull, jamba, ba, tui, tar, do, do, tie, do, set, her, do, to, do, take, ya, do, to, the, that, jess, or, jay, luck, do, her, I feel like I'm witnessing proto Sino Tibetan just like yeah. coming back into existence. I love how it's slowing down. Yeah. <laughs> For the grand finale. Wow. Good. If you want to see the list of translated characters and radicals, <laughs> along with all oh, of my no. sources and a couple of scripts I wrote to help speed up the translation process, oh, there's a link to my GitHub in the description. Oh man. Thank That's you to awesome. Agma Schwa for hosting this incredibly oh, cursed oh, competition. Nice. Thanks for watching. Awesome. See you around <laughs> and let the bull do hacker hurt you. You know what? From from what I just saw, that the actual translation probably didn't take that long because they just probably just wrote a script that decomposes it into Unicode code points and then just does that automatically. Yeah, that was yeah. <laughs> oh, Which cool. is honestly the only sane way to do this. To be honest. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, that video's got eight, like seventy nine thousand views. Oh god! Wow! Wow! God. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> Who hurt you? <laughs> the grandma hurt <laughs> Oh man. Oh man. Okay. There 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 you have it. Oh man. God. Oh man. Okay. Um should we make this like the last one for the night cuz it's 18 minutes or should we do a couple more? What do you think? Uh, what do you want to do? Uh, at least this one. Let's watch this one and sure. then could decide. I've got a lot to do tomorrow. <laughs> but let's mm -hmm. let's let's see what we got. I'm also starting to get really hungry, so. Hi. Yeah. Is... Yeah, so here we are with Leaf's Belgian. Belgian. <laughs> this one Go has 5.7k views. This has been a good way to get people's channels started. All right. Okay, let's let's do it. Hi, this is a mission for YouTuber Akma Schwa's Cursed Conline Circus. Link in the description. Okay. In 2245, the last person capable of speaking more than one of Belgium's three official languages, Dutch, <laughs> French, and German, died. This is a symbolic defeat plunge the nation into chaos. <laughs> Separatism ran at an all-time high, and the federal government hastily made plans for a single form of communication. I like this lore. Most Three languages Belgium. for the common man in the city, seven governments for the politicians' pockets, nine health ministers to beat COVID, oh one conline to rule the world, <laughs> and yeah. the curseness bind them. The ultimate goal devised for Belgium was to be as neutral as possible, and it was subject to constant lobbying and arguing over governments to ensure this. The result of this is Belgian phonology, which has been tailor-made to ensure not a single sound in the language is found in any of the source languages. Belgium's consonants are... Oh no! <laughs> Yeah, and whoa, whoa. 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 sounds good. Uh, <laughs> like, are any of those sounds like actually in Flemish, Belgian? I mean, not Belgian, in Fle it, Flemish, said, French, or Dutch. They said it has been tailor made to ensure that no sounds is found in any of uh, in any of the three source languages. That's perfect. That, that's that, that's that's great. I might good. speed this one up a little bit though. A bit, yeah, sure. Let's try one point two five. Belgium has six vowels, A, U, 
Uh, well, that vowel uh, in Venturian. Uh, that's, and, oh. that's all right. Both consonants and vowels <laughs> can be long or short, and the maximal syllable structure is CC, VV, CCC, right. or a minimal structure is V. <laughs> Every cluster is allowed, except for cluster of sounds differing only in voicing. In the end, this ends up only mattering for the dental fricatives, palatal stops, and lateral fricatives oh, as they are the only voiced voiceless pairs in the language. Before we <laughs> talk about the writing system or grammar, we need to talk about the way Belgium generates its vocabulary. The language is a posteriori to all vocab as generated from its three source languages. Which source language to use, of course, was a hot point of contention during its design, so in the end it was decided to leave it up to chance. To make a word in Belgian, you need to first devise its word root, regardless of the class you want. Say you wanted to create a root for Belgium. You derive it down to its verbal essence, which is to collapse or implode of a government. You then roll it down. If it lands on a 1 or a 4, you translate this into German. If it lands on a 2 or a 5, it is in French, and a 3 or a 6 gives Dutch. In this okay. case, we've rolled a 5. French does not distinguish between government collapse and regular collapse, a highly important <laughs> distinction for Belgium. So rather than translating directly, we just take the noun Belgique, meaning Belgium, as that exemplifies what you mean rather well. With your root word found, we need to enter it into the Belgian chain. This is a pattern which details how source language words should actually be pronounced. Oh, In the Belgian no. chain, every word derived from one language must be spelled out and then pronounced as if it would be the next in the chain. In this case, the source <laughs> is French, so the word will be pronounced as if it were from German, oh, Belgique. No. Belgique. With the Belgian chain completed, uh... the next process is referred to as the ossification. It involves two <laughs> obligatory steps and one optional one. The first is that all roots must be monosyllabic, so all onsets, nuclei, and codas are grouped together, and we get Bekeel. Now this <laughs> must be matched to Belgian phonology, which gives us the end product of Hokel. Uh... If this word were polysyllabic, it would be reduced a second time, which is the optional step. Congratulations! <laughs> You've just oh, made infinitive, the easiest to construct type of word in Belgium. Every verb root is represented by a single character, either a Latin capital letter or a handzil, and they are all completely different and unrelated. <laughs> Neither pronunciation nor meaning have any influence in deciding them. This is the symbol for to collapse implode of a government. <laughs> now you may want to actually use this word in a sentence. Since Belgium is polysynthetic, oh, you can actually make one using only this word. At least theoretically, because you need all six mandatory suffixes first. So let's <laughs> use a simpler root to form our new sentence. Imagine you wanted to say, I farted. The root for to fart is fuf. First, we will have the single prefix, which designates the jurisdiction by which the action is regulated. As you may know, Belgium has seven legally recognized governments, and failing to distinguish between them is extremely impolite in Belgian society. Two of the seven governments are legally the same entity, so that leaves six possible prefixes, in addition to actions regulated by foreign governments and those not regulated by any government. Since farting is legally allowed anywhere and not regulated by any authority, it is unrestricted. Fam. Oh god! <laughs> the action has already occurred, so it is not future. Chinese Fam. character with an agadek under it. <laughs> this action has been completed, so we add the perfective marker as well. Fam. Oh no! <laughs> it is indicative, so we have the indicative marker. <laughs> Finally, we add both first person and singular markers. <laughs> I now that you've even... successfully farted, it's time for the next section. <laughs> One of the most important words Nightmare. to be able to say in Belgian is, of course, waffles. But how do you form a noun like that? Well, waffles are the fundamental basic diet of all Belgians, so we can figure out it must be derived from to eat, which is ugh. Just about every part of the root was obliterated during a Belgian chain, as a Dutch root, eat, had to be pronounced like French. Now, to turn this verb root into a noun Dutch root, which will also be sorry. used for adjectives and adverbs, we need a prefix and a suffix. To start with a prefix, we need to define the gender of the noun. 
There are five grammatical genders in Belgian. <laughs> Flemish, Walloon, Brusselsian, Foreign, and Undefined. Since Belgian has no pronouns, these prefixes are generally used on names and bios to tell people how to refer to someone. You can send a letter <laughs> to, to the first letter Flemish. of your name if you're using a different script. For example, I am Flemish, so my name is Flaerhoesleaf. Since waffles from Liège are objectively superior to those from Brussels, we'll be using the word gender Walloon. So we get Walloon. <laughs> The suffix we need to complete the noun group is a case suffix, which also acts like a derivation suffix. There are seven of these. Nominative, dative, accusative, accusative two, instrumental, locative, and lative. A waffle is a receiver of the oh, action of man. eating, so we'll take the dative suffix With that, the noun root is complete. If we are farting waffles, one would imagine they are a side product of the action. So the case the second accused it. <laughs> it's just actually uh, just uh, an H uh, superscript this time. They are indefinite, which has no suffix, and we can assume there are a few of them. So it is Pockle, which also has no suffix, and that leaves us with the final word already. Belgium has no conjunctions or relative pronouns, as linking a nation together is a futile effort. Instead, chains of possession or other workarounds are used, as in the B movie line, where, according to all known laws of aviation, a bee should not be able to fly, is our place with oh, no. all known Hold laws on. say we oh, can God. this flight to be possible. Hold on, let's take a look at that. It's wait, 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 it's wait, wait, wait. place with all known laws. <laughs> und, und der Bienen. Oh, no. Also, the, 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 the translation is brilliant. All known laws say we deny bees flight to be possible. <laughs> <laughs> the colon in there. Oh, my God. Oh, God, say, yeah. We deny bees' flight to be possible, and its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground, is glossed oh, roughly as bees' wing bees size prevents wings equal small body marks. from denying ground words. The word and is replaced by simply saying the same thing twice, but the second time with all the words in reverse order, as happens to flies using the medieval practice of quartering, like so. In the previous examples from the bee movie script, you may have noticed three things that were absent from the previous explanations. We're almost done, but we still need to discuss adjectives, possessives, and adverbs. Thankfully, Belgium considers all of these to be pretty much the same thing, dependence. <laughs> there are, however, differences between noun-derived and verb-derived dependence. Verb-derived dependence function as participles, adjectives, or adverbs in other languages. They are rather simple to construct. If we take the farting example from earlier, we use a root with the unrestricted jurisdiction prefix and non-future tense. <laughs> and then add the verb to adjective suffix <laughs> Noun derived dependence use the noun root from earlier, so <laughs> We then add either the possession suffix <laughs> Or the feature suffix <laughs> All dependents must agree with the nouns they describe in gender, plurality, case, so while waffles may be balloon gender, they will gain a second gender prefix to reflect <laughs> the head when possessing or describing. <laughs> the second case suffix is also applied as it works in nouns. Finally, there is no negative in Belgian, so verbs like to deny or prevent can be used, but usually it is inferred only from context. With all the grammar out of the way, you can now understand the Belgian word for the Belgian language, which is foul. <laughs> <laughs> In other words, it is a language of government collapse. And that leaves us with just a B-movie script. The most fun part of this was deciding the genders of random abstract nouns. Impossibility is Flemish because impossible ce n'est pas français, while small is the because a lack of economic growth has been their motto since the 60s. The hardest part of this class was honestly figuring out which governments had what jurisdictions. I hate this country sometimes. I'll be giving the balance in script as I read. According to all known laws of aviation, there is no way a bee should be able to fly. This is just like a Lovecraftian... Like, I feel like the worst part is the uvula stop followed by a bilegal fricative. Oh, man. That's like man. Just, just peak horribleness. <laughs> and then later on the dental fricative followed by a pharyngeal fricative. 
I just can't get over the frequency of hua in there. It just mixed with everything else. <laughs> yeah. So much hua. Uh, okay. Take in the writing system for a second here. Yeah. Just piles of diacritics on Chinese characters and then just the letter O. <laughs> yeah. Velarized, of course. And Naturally. nasalized. And a bunch of other things. Yep. They look like Santa letters. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Its wings are too small to get a Oh my god. Holy crap. This is I want to see what it sounds like if you put it on two times speed. Yeah, yeah, let's... It's gonna take long anyway. This is gonna be brilliant. Let's see. Here we go. <laughs> oh, this is the fluent speaker right here. <laughs> could be, of course, flies anyway, but these don't care what humans think is impossible. Licking. <laughs> oh man. Good god. Good content. Uh, Good this is brilliant. disturbing content. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's only in terms of submissions in terms of like watch time we still have six and a half hours and a half hours remaining. Woo! The watch time we're a quarter the way done. Oh god. Oh god. Alright. Yep. <laughs> Alright. How long have you been recording? Um, t two hours on the second recording, so this is five hours tonight on session two. <laughs> five hours, and last time we did what? Four. So we're at nine oh. hours of recording now. <laughs> nine hours for six hours of footage, yeah, it's pretty much 1.5 times. Yep. Good so times. It's going to be a study video, good. Good times, good times. Brilliant. All right, well, with that in mind, let's end this recording so I have less to do later on. Uh, uh -huh. says, see, see ya in the future. The viewers okay. will see this as just one second going by, but yeah. Yep. So All right. Be... All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. All right. Until next time. Yep. Got him. <laughs> and. Just moseying on down to the next intermission. One moment. Do you like what you see?
Well, if so, there's a link down in the description for the fan favorite vote. We did this during the last Curse Combine Circus, and we're doing it again. Except this time you have like 120 choices instead of 37. So, if you like the conlangs you're seeing while this video is going, go onto that Google form, check it down. It's a big old checkbox. You can check as many of them as you like, but whoever gets the most checkboxes marked in their for, for their submission in the form will get the honorary fan favorite award. I'll leave it open for like a month or so. And then you choose make all your choices no matter how long it takes you to watch the video you can edit the submission and then at the end i'll make a little youtube short saying who the fan favorite was no matter who wins so why don't you go ahead and do that yeah all right record button has been pressed yet again this is, <laughs> this is, what's, this is session three. Session I three. Think so. Woo! Which means it's also in real lifetime week three, I think, because we did, no, no, it's week two, but it's been three weeks since we started. I don't know. Yeah, it is currently the uh, 7th of October. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Ugh, good times. I, over this time frame, I have gotten a haircut, and that hair has <laughs> grown in for a week. So, <laughs> good times, good times. <sighs> we ready to dive into this? Sure, the next one is Hyper Slavic, it would seem. Yep, Hyper Slavic by Comac. Let's do this. This is a shorter one. That's always nice. Yeah. The, oh God. <laughs> okay. Let's oh, let, let's see what we have here from Hyper Slavic. All right. Let's see what happens. Oh God. <laughs> Very interesting. Wait a second. Is this is this person speaking the conlang as the narration? Is... Either that or it's gibberish. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I don't know. I, I guess let's just find out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. A posteriori. <laughs> <laughs> Citation needed. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> Zero time. Jesus Christ, that's the format. Oh god. We'll slow down a bit, shall we? Yeah, hang on a sec. I need to see that. <laughs> oh man. That's, yep, that's a whole, that's very Slavic. You can tell just from yep, all the freaking... Modern <laughs> Juicy palatalization. Lots of Africans. Yep, that that sure does look hyper-Slavic in my opinion. Yep. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I don't even... Yeah. I, I don't even know how to interpret this one. <laughs> We got yeah, nasal eh, we have eh versus eh, and all eh versus all. Eh. Interesting. Yep. Okay, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> okay, I have noticed. Oh god. Interesting. I mean, I, I can't read Cyrillic, so this just looks normal to me, or I guess equally weird as regular Cyrillic. I, yeah, I mean, I, I can read at least Russian Cyrillic, and I know there's a whole bunch of different varieties of Cyrillic, but, like, some some interesting things are, like, this one, which is probably, like, a Nya or something. I don't um, know. And if then, you're using your mouse cursor is not showing up if you're pointing at something. Oh, 
great. <laughs> okay. Well, yes, there are some weird ones, especially a lot of the ones on the bottom row and uh, mm -hmm. the and the first one on the second to bottom row. Um among among some other rather sus ones, but like there's a lot of sus Cyrillic characters in different languages, so I can't really mm -hmm. tell if some of them like actually do exist in in various I Slavic see, languages yeah. or not, because I I only learned to read the Russian Cyrillic alphabet mm -hmm. in like high school. So I that see. that's that's about as close as I can get to having an in depth analysis of this. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Anyway. Uh-huh, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait a second. You gotta go back a second for that. One letter- oh, followed by the soft year. Okay, yeah, hyperslavic. Certified hyperslavic moment. Hyperslavic indeed. Yeah, like that symbol there, like, it's supposed to be like the softener symbol in a lot of like the, the Cyrillic alphabets. And this is one that has like this and also another one with a tail after it. Like, <laughs> okay. Good times. Mm. Good times. Hard years. <laughs> But any should work. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> sus, sus. Yeah, you don't make sense. Okay, good stuff. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. Okay, yeah, there's all those grammatical cases. The declensions of wolf. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Good times. Oh god, the character. <laughs> okay. Good stuff. <laughs> Freaking like Fortnite dance going on. Oh god. I feel like this is gonna give me nightmares. It's just like uncanny the way this character is existing. Oh god. Oh god, the formatting is also uncanny. <laughs> Like, just looks very wrong about this song. Yeah, it's 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 sus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh god. Okay. Without the dot for masculine. Okay. Oh. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> God damn it. Of course. Just mentioning rock doesn't make it a rock link. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Vedle všechka zvěstný zákon to flotu, bychala nepovinná moji látať. Mě nekřivla příliš malé, bez zničení malé, plus tečelo zemlí. Bychala ta očividně látajita. Potem už nich neobchodí, što člověk myslí o zašet, nevzmožné. Interesting. Okay. Um, All right. <laughs> All right. That was 
Uh, the, I mean, good, good on you for making like an uncomfy feeling presentation because mm-hmm. that whole presentation was like, uh, I, uh, <laughs> okay. it, it Let's just, take a look at this then. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, next one is this one. I, I, the comment that I've added for this one is ooh. <laughs> all right. I assume it's gonna have a similar vibe to like the uwu speak, but we're about to find uh-huh. out. Okay, well, I will be calmly inspired by the necklace calmly enjoyed it. You made it pretty quick, calmly enjoyed it. Okay, I'm out. Uh-huh. I, I will say, this is rather hard to understand. I can, I can tell still what's being said, but it's rather hard to understand. And if this goes on for 12 minutes, then <laughs> I'm not sure I'm willing, or we should be willing to subject the rest of the viewers to it, candidly. Well, yeah, <laughs> like, there is such yeah. a thing as two curses, you know? Oh, so, man. Alright, let's find out. Let's find let's out. Let's find out. Let's see. I'm sorry about my voice there. Okay, also, sorry okay. about the audio quality. Anyways, vowels. We have O. Oh. Uh. <laughs> mm. Yes, and is a oh, vowel. God. Don't question it. Hold on, pause that. <laughs> what What in the world is... Oh, it's strut or N? Is that... Is, am I reading that I th- correctly? I, th- I think it's either strut or, like, the carrot symbol. Like, like... Uh, like but the... that's a bit of an oversized carrot. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh, I see. It's spelled... <clears throat> no, 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 that's because that is the sound, but it's maybe romanized as a carrot, is what they're I saying see. here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Okay, okay. How, how a vowel can alternate between strut and syllabic N is a bit beyond me, but all right. No, I think or it just it's... is maybe... N. I think it just is N, mm, like a syllabic N. Mm. Yeah, and, yeah, but yeah. the strut is a bit strange there. I think the or strut maybe... is just the romanization. <laughs> the strut is that could be the case, or maybe <laughs> it's it's a strut if it's a vowel and an n if it's a consonant. We'll see. I think, uh, yeah, well, let's Ooh. see. And ah, uh, yes, that's an a. <laughs> oh man, Don't Don't fucking question that. Consonants. Okay. <laughs> we got W. It's pronounced W. Only one consonant, I hear you ask, oh, not God. all. Yeah, that's right, baby. We're working with one consonant oh, God. and five kind of vowels. It's not the minimalistic one. So you may yes. ask, how do you make all the words when all you have is vowels and W? Well, it's simple. U O O. And, uh, oh, yeah, it also uses uh, verb, object, subject, word order. I did not know where else to put that, so it's okay, going on the slide. Good, good stuff, good Anyways, stuff. Anyways, sure. it has a strict vowel consonant vowel what a surprise. structure. God. Uh, if a vowel is capitalized, it is stressed. This is why there was that oh, star there on the five. Uh, because each vowel, there's technically two forms. Uh, if it's capitalized, it's stressed. If not, it's unstressed. If need be, you can mark stress with tone. You can use a <laughs> high tone for stressed and a low tone for unstressed. So that's how we get our combinations. Pronouncing mm-hmm. is much easier than pronouncing mm-hmm. uh, So, oh you know. Uh, because there's only one consonant, which is lowercase w, and there are five vowels with two forms each, there are a hundred words slash faces slash syllables you can make. <laughs> faces, oh god, yeah, they are. other words are compounds oh, of these 100 roots combined using dashes and tildes. <laughs> As this language was made in only a few hours in between naps on a short road trip, not a single one of these words was a good <laughs> idea, and you will just have to deal with that fact, or you will be going to bed without any supper, young man. Uh... Oh god. Uh, there we go. uh, this oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'll we'll totally click that through the video. I put that out manually, video. letter by letter, it's in your internet you can search click it browser, in the video. and come back to me when that's done. I'll give you some time to pause now. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. While I'm, not, I'm not that typing out, that in. I'm sorry. <laughs> name actually translates directly to the number zero in the language. This is because it is simultaneously the amount of this language that was actually necessary and good. And the hardest word to pronounce. Say it with me. <laughs> Isn't that fun? <laughs> so enjoyable to try and stress two N's and pronounce a W. 
Oh, Anyways, God. punctuation and lust. That's quite a title, what? isn't it? <laughs> Just like vowels, there are five punctuation marks, each split into Very two forms. However, <laughs> unlike the vowels being split based on stress, the punctuation is split based on sheer horniness. <laughs> That's right, the lust of Not the writer really. affects the punctuation. There's the punctuation. No, 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 no. It's not indicative because I want to make everyone uncomfortable. Angry is the imperative. You're telling someone to do something, you do something angry, a little angry voice. Conditional uh, is for nerds, and so it's glasses. Okay. And if you're asking a question, you're being a nosy little bitch. So you use nosy. <laughs> Uh, and also, oh, you use tilde instead of dashes, the compound words, if you are... <laughs> Divided boring. by simple. <laughs> Google Slides literally would not let me reformat this slide, so okay. whatever, loan words. I know uh, that feeling. Loan words can be written in their original languages script with the following changes. All L and R sounds must be replaced with a W or whatever the language's equivalent is. So to say terrible, you would say terrible. Uh, spelling can look like God. your three-year-old nephew transcribed it for you. Even better, actually get your three-year-old nephew to transcribe it for you. You need to talk with your brother more often anyways. He misses you. You really should hang out with him and his kids. Talk to your nephew. And Wait, what? Sort of words as much as you can. <laughs> him and what? his kids? Nickname. Wait a second. <laughs> what? What? Wait a second. Okay, okay, I get it. I get it. Okay, never mind. I, I, was, I was like, how does a three-year-old have kids? No, it's the nephew. Okay, we're, we're good. We're good. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's biologically bi bi biologically possible, but all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're gonna use short words. You're gonna again make it sound like a three-year-old transcribed it. Writing compound words. Uh, yeah, that's that's these good. rules are not entirely strict. Uh, you can read that uh, thing at the bottom. Learn writing compound words. Start with a word also, that you want your compound sans. word to start with. Oh, it's definitely Comic Sans. <laughs> Naturally. Obviously, yeah. That makes sense. If you're writing an animate noun, yeah, you can sense. start with an animate noun. Non-physical verb, start with a non-physical verb, etc. If there's more than one that you want to choose, choose the earliest one in alphabetical order. Then simply follow alphabetical order, which is top to bottom, left to right on the chart. Uh, I've already marked it out. Connect the word with dashes or tildes, depending on mood, and you're all set. This is oh, alphabetical order. Now you may be saying, hey, <laughs> wait a minute. This is alphabetical order. I, I, entirely... I, suppose is. I suppose this could be considered alphabetical in, in, in some world. Uh, <laughs> I like how the one that's pronounced as ah is the end of the alphabet. <laughs> Ah, oh, I see how it is now. Yeah, the, the capital strut is the capital form of the N. I see how it is. There we go. Good God. <laughs> capital schwa. Never thought I'd see you around capital here. <laughs> oh, yeah, I typically prefer the reversed capital E for the capital schwa instead yeah. of that thing. Yeah, yeah. There's something special about that. It's used in mm -hmm. a, a couple Slavic languages, I think. I've, Naturally, of course it is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway, <laughs> just arbitrary and random. Why is that? What alphabetical order is? It seems like you just picked a random order for things to go in. That surely there's some kind of meaning behind this. No, there's not. It's <laughs> random. Here's some sample sentences. <laughs> sample sentence up at the top. Translation into mm -hmm, on the left, and a literal translation on the right. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Oh, oh God. Okay. I see how this is going to be. <laughs> God, the punctuation. God, I'm terrible at pronouncing my language. <laughs> See around oh, hard oh, yours oh, is thin. I think uh, I recognize that. Sphinx of Black Court yeah. does my vow. <laughs> hmm, hmm, where could you possibly recognize that from? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not like I, I once spent a certain and far too much time translating that. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> oh no, Sphinx of Black Courts, judge my vow. 
This is my favorite yeah. pangram in the English language. Oh, no. Vsauce oh, moment. Oh, whoa. Oh, whoa. Oh, whoa. Oh, whoa. You're supposed to do oh, my vows because you don't have a lowercase oh, s otherwise. Oh, uh, yeah. You do I've never oh. understood the appeal of Agnes Schwa. The first oh. video I saw from him had him oh. starting out by trying to gross out. It's the, the last floor. year's Obviously, one. I didn't continue the game. The wrong the one. I saw had him oh, we'll see. Would see. Maybe both will be in here. Let's watch. find out. I just don't get yeah. why anyone would watch a guy who makes videos <laughs> like that. It's seriously like he's trying to be as off putting as possible. Such a he good quote. It's more like a troll channel to me than anything else. That one is pronounced this way. I'm not telling okay. you. Figure it out yourself. This is for last year. This is this year. There we go. There's no way that a bee should be able to fly. Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. The bee, of course, flies anyways. Because bees don't care what humans think is impossible. The colon three. One block share. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Own. No, wow. Own. 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 I like how B is animal, air, cute, yellow, black. <laughs> I like both of them. Big, not big. It's mob, not big. It. <laughs> Walk there, act not not. <laughs> Do not feel emo thing person plural. Complex action not. <laughs> <laughs> now that was spliced together from one take that I had to repeat like three times because <laughs> goddamn I made a terrible language to read. I <laughs> can't stand myself. Anyways, final I note. Understand. Um I know I probably have no hope of winning this, but as long <laughs> as I made your day just a little bit worse, I, I'm happy. Uh, I won't be able to sleep for the weeks. The dictionary table will be in yep. the description and or the pinned comment of the YouTube video, depending on whether or not I actually remember to put it in the description of the YouTube video. If you go back <laughs> into this slide, you can look at the speaker notes. Now that you've seen all the animations, speaker notes have some funny ha-has in them. Uh, sadly, because this language was almost entirely made when I was half asleep in the back of a car crossing state lines up to Canada, before I even knew <laughs> that the Cursed Conline <laughs> Circus 2 was going on, I did not manage to involve rocks in the language. Tragic. I am sad about this fact. But... And that's a rock fact. It's, oh, how am I supposed to put rocks in this shit? <laughs> my preferred name is Sai, or Athena, or my full channel name, or whatever the fuck you want to call me. I leave it up to you completely. Call me whatever. Any pronouns, I am cast gender, ugly, flag gang, let's go. Holy fucking shit, I forgot the numbering system. Uh, <laughs> God no, damn it. Ten numbering system. Oh, oh no, no. Okay, ten base ten. Base system is base ten, or base one oh. Uh, mm -hmm, oh, uses God. binary, which is base <laughs> Every base number system is base one oh. So, here's the numbers. Also, oh, that's cute, yeah. Why do <laughs> operators have their own entire, like, column? In the language, they have like a dedicated letter, so I think Dear technically God. my language might be Turing complete. Oh, um, my God. the numbers that I will now read out. I might have to explain mm -hmm. that one. Well. Zero. <laughs> mm, well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Well, what does that okay. mean? <laughs> for the non programmers, uh, there's I'm not going to talk about this for too long, but. Uh, there's this thing that Alan Turing came up with called the Turing machine. It has an infinitely long tape and a head that can write symbols onto that tape and move to the left or to the right, depending on what the, symbols is, the symbol is that it's currently reading. And uh, Alan Turing proved that this thing basically can... Com pretty much anything that is computable can be computed using a Turing machine. That's actually the definition of computable. So computers are basically just honestly weaker forms 
of Turing machines, actually, because Turing mach machines have an infinitely long tape, but computers have a finite amount of memory. So the Turing machine can actually compute more than any computer. And Turing complete, if, if, a, if a programming language is Turing complete, that means you can theoretically write any program in that language or compute anything that is computable. Turing complete means that it can uh, simulate a Turing machine, so it can do anything. Interesting. And so... <laughs> <laughs> and so there's so many logical operators built in as words. The language might be Turing. Okay, that actually makes sense. Yeah, there, there, oh, there's God. more than just logical operators to Turing completeness, but yeah. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> One. Mm -wa. Two. Mm -wa. Three. Mm -wa. Four. Mm -wa. Mm -wa. Is... 10 base 5 or 5 base 10. <laughs> mm -wah, mm -wah is 11 base 5 or 6 base 10. is 4,441 base 5, which is 621 base 10, yep. which is a number that I chose completely at random and has no special significance to anyone. That's what? the last slide. <laughs> um, enjoy some bloopers because I can't speak. Oh, whoa. Oh, no, whoa. Okay. Oh, whoa. Uh, fuck. Fuck, fuck. Uh, uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm cutting this part out of the video. Oh, whoa. Oh, whoa. Oh, uh, uh. I, I hope all this was done like in the car on this road trip, <laughs> like 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 with the whole family oh, around. This is this is me every time I'm trying to record one of my like. Freaking the enormous the translations that I have to go to. <laughs> the the gloss is brilliant for that one. Uh, <laughs> nope, that's yeah, it one is. Way. It is. Thank you, Wondershare Filmora. <clears throat> All right, that was pretty solid. <laughs> yep. All right. This next one is uh, there's a oh. I, the comment I put on this one is. I'm not gonna try to write out the, right there, just click the link, that's what you wrote uh, in yeah. the in the other list. Uh -huh. And my response to this is, did you know you can copy and paste YouTube <laughs> video titles? The thing is, I couldn't because I was doing it on the iPad at the time, and, and on the iPad, like on the YouTube app, you can't copy and paste YouTube video titles. Hey, uh, then my next question is, why would you do that on the iPad? <laughs> I was okay. Okay, I was getting so many submissions. I I was just I was trying to collect them, just whenever I possibly could. And, and doing it's, that on an iPad <laughs> is definitely the most productive way of doing it, naturally. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm a hundred percent. All right. Let's take a look at this next one. All right. Seven point eight k views. The best language ever. Good. Good God. What? It's already pretty horrible. <laughs> oh God. The, the list of classes goes beyond the page. Oh God. There's eleven of them. Oh man. Okay. Right. Okay. Let's okay. see. <laughs> what the pronoun? <laughs> oh no. I I see hyper pirate in there. Oh God. <laughs> Okay, what do we have here? Again, if you're narrate slow, we're gonna speed it up, but I hope we don't have to. <laughs> Hello. Oh, oh God. Oh, God. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> I oh, no. <laughs> Jesus Christ, the phonology. <laughs> Vila pharyngeal drill and like a vila. Oh my like god. Like god. Many hours of being bored at school and one of my <laughs> best friendships have been sacrificed to make this. Worth it. I present to you. <laughs> Are those some big snorts? <laughs> <laughs> Meaning to slap someone across the face with a duck. 
<laughs> this language is spoken by beings of a higher plane of existence, or something like that. They also like rocks. Without further ado, okay. pay yourself. Okay. We'll see how yeah, much they good. like rocks. We'll start with the phonology. As you can see, it looks weird, but not horrible. It's, it's made up of <laughs> major fricative and trill consonants. It's not too strange. But there are allophones. I introduce to you phoneme coolification. Oh god. Basically, there are cool and boring phonemes. Boring <laughs> phonemes become coolified before cool phonemes. This is great because everything sounds more cursed now. But now the cool consonants sound boring, so they become even cooler than the other cool consonants. Yeah. No cool. What? I don't say there were no vowels. Um, yeah, there's. there's These no are truly horrible. Oh god. For the okay, that is. Yeah, just this is. So kind of boring. Uh, the Jesus full documents Christ. available. Uh, for download in okay, the, we just got a lovely little word list right there. Is okay, pretty much just whatever you want, honestly. Mm -hmm. Now for the <laughs> syntax is grammar. whatever you want. Oh god! The basis of all the grammar is that Jesus there are Christ. eleven classes. Class one, nine, <laughs> class two, three, <laughs> class three, cool kids, <laughs> class four, racist, sexist, or homophobic. <laughs> <things>. Class five, <laughs> things easily hitable with a rock. Uh, class six, cursed things. Class seven, depressed uh -oh. things. Class eight, so of course it's class, class nine, six liquids, too. Class ten, gases. Class eleven, other stuff or unknown. Sure, I love how those very normal classes that all people languages people. have. Yeah, <laughs> classes will affect the grammar a lot, as you'll see soon. Additionally, nouns can be in multiple classes at once. Moving on to pronouns. There are three thousand nine hundred and sixty days. That is mentioned before. Oh uh, God, there's a problem for each class. Classes at once. And <laughs> three three thousand nine hundred something. <laughs> what the fuck is this? This is horrid. Good God. The like, you, like language doesn't even show up with how small these are on such a big yeah, graph. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm struggling to compare this to anything else. <laughs> I mean, hyperformal with its even hyperformal's huge honorifics table fits on the page and is still legible. Yeah, because that was only like two hundred forty something. Four hundred, yeah. I think it was. Oh God! About. God damn. Okay. <laughs> Are the amounts it's, singular? Yeah. Forty two. This is more inflection than even. I mean, ultra French may be more, more, more but still, one. this is <laughs> just say them both as one word. The, the, this is more inflections than words that a language needs to have to be a language. <laughs> yes, I'm pretty sure the ultra French dictionary is shorter than that, and it's five pages of like double column yeah. entries. <laughs> Dear God. Okay. All right. Let's see where this goes. Therefore, uh, they are about. This many pronouns, if I've done my math right. What? <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Wait a second. Give... Wait let's a... let's see what this number is. Hold on. Uh, oh no. Billion, trillion, quadrillion, 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 quadrillion. Non. So this is one undecillion. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> one point Jeez. two undecillion. Different combinations <laughs> multiplying yeah, and to the problems. power of like, I think oh, six or something. Jeez. Oh, no, like, yeah. No, is six, that, yeah, that twenty six? Oh god. No one to the uh, a decillion is what one to the power of twenty one. Oh, oh, something yeah. Like that. Dear God. Okay. Ten to the power. Of, one to the power of thirty is one. Sorry, ten to the power. Of 30. <laughs> god, Max. Um. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, let's see where this goes. Any pronouns, if I've done my math right. For a demonstration, if you want to refer to Timothy, Bimothy, Gimothy, Jimothy here, who is a very annoying person, using a third-person pronoun, you first need to find his classes. Timothy, Bimothy, <laughs> Gimothy, Jimothy is a person. Additionally, he is an annoying person. He is not a cool kid. Whilst being annoying, he is a decent human being and is not racist, sexist, or homophobic. <laughs> he is difficult to hit with a rock. Not cursed, <laughs> not depressed, and is a solid. So this adds up to him being in classes one, two, and eight. Oh God! You can so have all of them. Oh no! Person, inclusive singular pronoun would be. <laughs> or. Or. Not or. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
With Kula. Oh, Kula got darker. <laughs> also note that fourth person is the thing that people always say is fourth person. Like, one could create a conline with fourth yeah. and fifth person for Agnes Schwarz. The obvious third person. Fourth person doesn't yeah. really exist, but I don't care. Uh, fifth person is for, like, bro. As in, bro <laughs> is creating a conline with fourth and fifth person for Agnes Schwarz's cursed conline circus. Um, this is, uh, you often used to talk about someone behind their back, but directly to them, if that makes sense. Uh, it, it's pretty much like what someone just did to me. Uh, so 42 <laughs> is when you're talking about 42 of something, and uh, there's also inclusive and exclusive pronouns for first. And, fifth okay. Person. Yeah. I see how it is. Noun inflection is quite simple with oh something like odd <laughs> case number and class. Again, uh, can't even read it. Negative, accusative, intransitive, privative, similative, associative, causal. Instrumental and ablative, uh, you can look them up on Wikipedia because the case not a system is horrid when the cases have to be in the columns. Nouns yeah. Be for <laughs> which I'll refer to as noun existence marking. These are suffixes which encode your evidence for the existence of a noun. The categories oh, yeah. of evidence are, in theory, in practice, according to my calculations, according to Agnes Ra, in your dreams, <laughs> rumored, from trusted source, imagined, according to Wikipedia. Witnessed and witnessed while in a tree. The suffix is also in code number and class. Moving on to verbs. Verbs are oh, split into uh, oh, verbs, no. verbs, which each is is up to you. There's the tenses shown on screen. V stands for very, and V stands for not very. These there are all are significantly in different in each one, too. Yeah, uh, the, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. You also need to show where the verb is in relation to you in space and time. And, uh, the time axis does not line up with the tenses God. because yes, it does not line up with the tenses. Here are the naturally. copulas, which are the <laughs> great feature of encoding how much copula you want in your copula. Uh, so if you're not feeling very copula y today, you can just stick with a bit copula. Or if you're in the mood for a good strong copula, you can use really copula, or even so mean? copula. <laughs> like, what is that supposed to mode for first fifth person? Adjective disagreement is a thing, which is just adjective agreement. The adjective disagreement? <laughs> uh, this is the biggest what? table on the sheet. Behold. What, why in the, the world is this? Prepositions. The prepositions. That, that, oh, with sorry. these prepositions, you can specify the location or motion of something in relation to a star, <laughs> planet, basement, white van, or other. All in one word. Um, <laughs> It is 5,148 of these. Jesus Christ. 5,148. There's emoji <laughs> indicators, but I'm not going to show them because I'm getting really tired of them. Anyway, uh, there's also the most holy, good, excellent feature in this language. Rock indicators. Okay. Pretty much if you reference okay. rocks in a sentence, you hmm. have to put a rock indicator uh, at the end of the sentence and use it to mm. say like what what rock that's is the still rock not thing. rock it's related yeah it's, it's just a random rock okay, thing in the language the sorry it's not here's rock the theme. translation of the beam unfortunate me. unfortunate um, i mostly did this in the mornings at school when i had nothing to do i was tired so there's quite a lot of mistakes but i guess that adds the cursedness well here we go i guess <laughs> i don't know if i can do the whole thing but i'll try you, you don't need to believe me <laughs> oh, oh no <laughs> you might uh, want to consider speeding that one up a bit otherwise it's going to take for a long time yeah like, let's let's, it's let's gonna sound more fluid that way anyway yeah let's listen to some fluid speech here <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, yeah, no. We're not gonna listen to all of this, but <laughs> let's li let's listen to a little bit. Let's let's yeah, embrace yeah. this. <laughs> oh god. Alright, this this isn't going well so far. Um just just have a quick break. I, I promise I'll keep going. Like, this seriously makes me feel lightheaded. It's, yeah, uh, I'm making a lot of mistakes, but... That, okay. that makes sense, going. because it sounds like a combination of Santa and Gumsmack and Hyper Pirate all put together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it reminds me most of Hyper Pirate, I think. 
A aesthetically, definitely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> with, with some hyperformal in that too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> some good brief breath laying in there. Yeah. <laughs> so that bit meant according to all normal laws of aviation, there's no way that the beach should be able to fly or molecularly. Jesus to Christ. Okay, keep going. Push through. <laughs> <laughs> I I think we get the point. But holy crap. <laughs> oh god. I'm like skipping minutes and it's like <laughs> still happening. I I understand the suffering, believe me, I truly understand. I <laughs> the, bet you do, yeah. The double exclamation points. <laughs> oh god. Oh god, it's even worse on mine because now the audio is glitching out like oh, sounds no. even worse. <laughs> See you next year, I guess. Bye. <laughs> okay, I think we got the point for that. <laughs> God. Okay. All right. That would have happened. Well, there's that. <laughs> Five thousand prepositions. <laughs> Good God. That is um, beyond. This Villager. is a short one. Okay. And it's apparently. It's a Reddit why post. did I not? Oh, it's. I bet this is embedded in Reddit. That's why I didn't put a YouTube link here. About to find out. I bet it's actually uploaded to Reddit as a video, not as a link. Yep. Yep. All right. Let's see does if it's it gonna have, have any sounds uh, or anything. Does it have sound though? I hope it has sound. Please have sound. I beg. Okay. This is the village oh, one. Okay. Like yeah, it has sound. It's it's actually pretty loud I on Reddit. It has sound. Let's see. Oh, let's, let's hear. It. Let's see what happens. Okay, this is the villager language, a language created for Agmar Schwarz's cursed online circus. This is the villager language, a language spoken by villagers of Minecraft. They are recognizable by their sounds, but what do they actually mean? So, the, this is the oh content God. inventory. That um, you can I, see I recognize here. that. Yeah, that looks a little familiar right there. That looks Look. very familiar. Hmm, except with a, hmm. a glottal stop added. Interesting. Yeah, vowels yeah. here, so, this is the vowel inventory. You know, it's the vowel inventory okay so so okay yeah but, i mean if it's villager of course they're all going to be nasalized obviously yeah yeah ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah uh. <laughs> the, yeah, a nasalized schwa versus nasalized strut distinction that's pretty good it's pretty bad yeah <laughs> uh, 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 yeah oh god and the freaking writing system. This is all IPA, so oh, that's God. good for onlineers. <laughs> okay, this is Latin alphabet. This is the uh, romanization. So, okay. yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of interesting s vowels. But I mean, vowel transcription is really weird. I don't know why. I mean, it's a class conlang, so it doesn't matter. The symbol structure <laughs> is CV. Tones, villagers, okay. ten tones, low, flat, low, rising, oh low, falling, God. low, falling, rising, high, <laughs> falling, high, flat, high, rising, high, Nine falling, many. high, falling, rising, <laughs> high, rising, falling. Yes. Grammatical okay, cases, okay. these are the cases. That's our mathematical combinations. Villager. Okay, I think I okay, don't think that, for the that word counts for 14 cases. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, that doesn't that's count, because you seven. have the, your different ones for singular and plural also, and all the that. the case order is wild, good god. Oh, god. <laughs> Genitive, instrumental, locative, vocative, accusative, nominative, dative. <laughs> like, this is yeah. neither the traditional Germanic nor the traditional English case order. This is just a bit confused. <laughs> that's... perhaps there's a deep underlying purpose to it. <laughs> Let's see. What for house? Oh Specifically, villager house. Who cares? Um, there are no plural markers in villager because there are plural cases. 
Case okay, endings well, are different in every world. There's like no consistency okay, in villager, okay. so basically we don't know when. Grammar, word order, OSV. English, the creeper blows up the tree. This is a villager. And Beep. yeah, this is. The there's only one pronoun for everything. And another feature Naturally. of villager, okay. which is not on here, is basically proper nouns are not allowed. So everything has to be encompassed by one pronoun. Like, why? So this is the sentence, according to all the laws of aviation, there is no way a bee should be able to fly. Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. The bee, of course, flies anyway, because bees don't care what humans think is impossible. Of course, Agnes Schwarz's favourite quote from the bee movie. And this is in Villager. This is in Villager. See it? In Villager. Wait, are you not gonna read it? Yeah, I like the transcription of Villager. Are they not gonna read it? And well, this is pretty much the uh, well. Villager language. I've also submitted the Villager dictionary on here, so... That's okay. Alright, well that's unfortunate. G yeah, that will that will get a point deduction. Unfortunate. Um, that's... Yeah. yeah. But still, so we have yeah. yeah. Alright, good stuff. Again, I, I, I hope the... Because, like, I, I hope uh, that they were recording that, like, out loud in front of everyone, like, in school or something. I just love all these ones that are, like, obviously, like, recorded in, in like, public or with their family and stuff. It's mm, awesome. Mm. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, well, what, what would it be like to be watching from the outside? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Next one. Oh, this oh, one. Oh, boy. <laughs> Daniel Swanson, back at it again. I, I may not be able to read Cyrillic, but I taught myself the Greek alphabet when I was like, I don't know, 10 or something, so I can read that. Is that like Litholonica? Like, Litholonica. Yeah, Litholonica. Yeah. So it's stone thing, I yeah, guess. Uh, uh, I forgot what, what like gender it was, but I think it was Litos is, is stone for... Uh, is this oh, ancient Greek for stone? I almost said old Greek because I'm so used to old <laughs> Irish and English. Ancient Greek for stone. Old Greek. <laughs> All right. Greek. Is it Litholonica? Yeah. A karst conlang. Oh, I, I, okay, this I, is the village. I get it. Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. we'll be talking to you. Oh, let's. Oh, put, go, you go, you go slow. Yeah, let's put you let's back. Re it. Reset this. At least, yeah. All right. This is a 19 or so minute video, though, Daniel. So we'll see. hopefully we don't have to speed you up. But I'm sure this is going to be good. Let's see. <laughs> Hello. In this presentation, we will be talking to you about oh, brother, Lithalonica, a sure. dialect of ancient Greek. Uh, <laughs> we being myself, Daniel Swanson, uh, Percival the Mammoth, and our colleagues who could not be present with us, the Matatas of Atava, <laughs> and the ghost of Christmas procrastinated. <laughs> uh, as a bit of background, the Lithalonica is spoken by a group of Athenian hoplites who were present at the final battle of the second Zathragon incursion assisting the Pangolins. Oh. Uh, these wait a second. Excess. So wait, is that this is in the cinematic universe then? <laughs> it may be, yeah. It's in the cinematic universe. I think it is. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. It's of wild magic uh, in that event uh, trans transformed them into hydrological spirits and transported them to an otherwise uninhabited planet for several thousand years. Upon their return and rehumanization, we were able to interview them and find and examine some of the changes in, in their their speech. Uh, the changes we had the most success in documenting were some of the sound changes, particularly oh the transformations of their vowel system. <laughs> uh, God. To the best of our ability to, recon to reconstruct ancient Greek, their what does that even the mean? pronunciations of the vowels have not changed substantially but the phonological structure and uses of them have changed considerably. So, uh -huh. to begin with, uh, the, th uh, the non-high vowels uh, have, uh, here we have non-high vowels become low and unrounded oh. uh, when, mm -hmm. when at a, this, we have uh, abused the notation slightly. The hash sign in the next few, in the, the next several rules we are presenting is not actually a word boundary. Oh no. It is a clause boundary. Oh no. <laughs> this was, uh, this, 
we had a great deal of fun actually figuring out that this was the case. <laughs> yeah. There were some very strange patterns otherwise. Um, so what is the M? Anyway, uh, we have this a class of sounds that we are denoting M. Okay. Uh, X here is any phoneme. <laughs> Five uh, of them, to be exact. Utterance final, preceded okay. by M. Utterance initial, preceding M. Between two instances of M. Preceding M, followed by a number of phonemes, which is a multiple of five, or mm -hmm. preceded by a number of phonemes, which is three more than a multiple of five, multiple of five, and then an instance of M. <laughs> what is M, you may ask? Another, another mathematical is this formula language, I see. Uh, oh, God. A low unrounded vowel, <laughs> a, an anterior coronal fricative, uh, a labial consonant <laughs> that is either a voiced sonorant a voice sonorant or a voiceless obstruent <laughs> okay or a voiceless feeler consonant or a lateral consonant dear god we're this getting into some one. nested math now there's also yeah. one that, that, here's another one that changes oh god non high vowels <laughs> this time it makes i them, can't wait to see what uh, class s is <laughs> uh Mid front vowels. By the way, just just uh, a quick mid front unrounded here. vowels. Yeah. Um. Uh, that uh, because he uses the the parentheses in the star. That star is likely supposed to be the Claney star, so that means zero or more. So it could be zero, five, ten. Oh, Doesn't have I to see. Be at least five. <laughs> but it multiple of five. That is still cursed enough. <laughs> oh man. Okay. These. Uh, environments are essentially the same, except we have, except we have changed to a different uh, class of so sound. This is clearly made this in latex. This class is similar, <laughs> is uh, yep. similarly fun. Um, we have oh god, any mid front vowel, any non coronal fricative, any non strident fricative, any coronal obstruent. I think it may have been just uh, easy to write out the sounds and of any of these Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unless this is like any out of and all that is humanly this is possible. Three. Mm -hmm. This is these are again the same environments, but with I. And here the vowel becomes oh, God, uh, more fast. a mid back rounded <laughs> vowel. Uh, oh I God. Can be okay. any round okay. vowel. Any high vowel. Any non-lateral coronal sonorant. Naturally. Any, Again, I'm really hoping that uh, this is out of all sounds that are humanly possible. Voiced <laughs> velar <laughs> obstruent. And notice how we any, started with this uh, instead of starting yeah. with like a phonology. <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stopping with the sound changes. Or fricative. <laughs> anyway. We also, oh, no, we, also we, also found, we also now present a sampling Holy of crap. changes to the consonants. Uh, first, we have non-coronal obstruents become voiced. Uh, oh, and this is all from ancient Greek, two too. Who sound, yeah. which are, oh, man. Which are of classes I or S, or essentially which are not of class M, since I, S, and M do in fact cover all of the sounds. Uh, how are the if rocks there's a, come If there's a multiple this? of five preceding <laughs> M, and then the next sound is not M, <laughs> or there's a multiple of five, if there's three more than a multiple of five, and then a non-M preceding them. Naturally. And these, the next two have the same environment, exactly the same in this case. Uh, here, a non, a voiceless non-strident <laughs> coronal fricative becomes oh. a stop Dear God. in this environment, and any nasal consonant becomes coron. This is... I, I don't even know and how this also is going to end up. Of metathesis. How is we this even... Up. We will note two. Uh, one is that <laughs> here we have cut because <laughs> tuck. If there's, that is oddly specific. If the number of phonemes <laughs> preceding it in the clause is a multiple of five. Oh, man. 
And yes, we're confident this is the best analysis. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. And again, uh, not becomes anta. Uh, okay. Either utterance finally, or if the number of phonemes preceding it, the clause is two more than a multiple of five. Holy crap. A multiple of five. It's insane. And now, the syntactic changes. <laughs> there was a diachronic syntactician in our project. He, he um, descended into madness, and uh, we were not able to replace him. So, unsurprising. rather than unsurprising. give you uh, a structured analysis, we are just going to give you a handful of examples of sentences in Attic Greek and with Lonica, uh, and comment on some of the interesting oh, changes. Here we go. First, we have this one. Uh, <laughs> the original. <laughs> Katatantas nomus petomenu gignoscomenus. Uh -huh. okay, which in the Thelonica, uh, in the in pragmatically neutral form, <laughs> takapontes petononu namus Gignoscamanus. What? That <laughs> means according to all. Wait, after, <laughs> after all that, that still sounds relatively similar. Yeah, yeah. God damn it. I got bait and switch. All known laws of flying. Oh, uh, God, yeah. This first instance is fairly uh, benign. We have merely moved the genitive before the noun. Uh which might lead one to suspect that we have, that we are just developing a preference for more head final, but we shall see. It gets much worse. Here, Melita ukestin dunate petestai. A bee okay, is not sure. able to fly. Uh huh. Uh huh. Duntao ukmalita petestai ostin. Okay. Uh, here, the phrase able to fly has been split apart. Oh, God. This, might, this is not <laughs> true out of the able not in Greek to fly in is. poetic context, text, but this is specifically the neutral, the most neutral form of the sentence that we were able to elicit. Uh, like, we have split the phrase apart. And next. Uh, Tamen patera out tu microtera esin. Aha. On the one hand, its wings are too small. Uh, <laughs> utu oisin microtera patera monte. Uh, oh God. Here, oh we man. note an interesting the trend. At the beginning of it, <laughs> what we'll see, is a rather interesting trend of the determiner of a noun frequently moves from before the noun to two places after the noun. <laughs> it's oh, two the noun. men move to the end. <laughs> <laughs> we have precedent in Greek for things being over a word. Uh, for example, this men in introducing the first half of a uh, con of a contrast uh, mm -hmm. typically comes as the second word in the clause mm -hmm. here as quite frequently splitting a noun phrase. Mm -hmm. um, but here we have a noun phrase where we will see later it does not seem to matter what is what the other word is. It is in fact the noun phrase itself that is uh, pushing for the splitting. Oh man. Um, Oh god. Additionally, Mind if we, we speed up a little bit? Which <laughs> a bit has uh, let's, the let's, predicate sorry, and Daniel, the copula let's bring you to between it and the thing it is possessing. Going on. Oh, Aoste. Man. Este. Okay. A. Oh you know god. <laughs> this, we're giving a stayed the same at least. Somewhat of a fixed phrase okay. in that to begin with. And now it has switched order for some reason. Oh please. I just noticed uh mm. uh -huh. if we Ancient Greek normally uses um, a bunch of uh, uh, like diacritics. He isn't using any of them. That's true. Um, there is some amount of precedence. I mean, I think 
Homer didn't use any either, because they were only introduced in like 300 AD or something, but still. Uh, this is still rather cursed to just write ancient Greek without accents. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Oh god. Irentosoma mikron kion altu apoteskes. To lift its fat little body from the ground. Oh. Uh, which becomes bion altu oiroin ges te te sema apa nigron. Uh, here, as noted, uh, the determiner for gase, ground, is two words later. The determiner <laughs> for, for sema, body, is before it, where it would be expected uh. in Attic Greek. Oh no, oh, that's God, there's two thus. If we had this sequence <laughs> it's here, two of, uh, determiner, determiner, noun, where one determiner yeah, is within like the Yeah, they're like basically. We would oh, God. expect to read this. That's something that ancient Greek doesn't really do. Uh, this as. Oh god. It prefers to, like, if ancient, ancient Greek, the way it works is if you have a noun phrase, the, uh, the, of the article and the, like, adjectives either come in between the article and the noun, typically, or it's, it's repeat, the article is repeated with the adjective. <laughs> so this, like, nest, the, like, this way is very cursed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. All right, anyway. As the second determiner as indicating an elided noun phrase, and thus we, this would probably be her body. Um, but in fact, this determiner goes with, with Gase and would, is from I still love how fat is just Bion, um, which... It's also somewhat amusing to know. <laughs> yeah. Bion, fat, has now become a... Has now, First at least in some context, become a homophone of Bion, life. Yep. Uh... He de melita petatai. On the other hand, the bee flies. De malitai petate ho. Once again, oh, the oh, the noun <laughs> phrase has been split <laughs> with the <laughs> determiner moving uh, after no. the noun and putting one word in between. So the feminine article is a and, and the masculine article is o. So it just changed <laughs> a few sentences ago. Oh my god. That's the whole red. That's pretty good. <laughs> Men. Which was originally in second position and then moved near the end of the clause. Here we have day, which was originally in second position and has moved towards the beginning of the clause. <laughs> Next, meditai gar u frontizone. Oh no! Frontizuno gor nalitoi u. Oh man! Uh, oh, hold on. There is less of weirdness to note. <laughs> It's the same thing. We have, we have oh, originally melitai, where I is the feminine plural, and on the bottom we have oi. So now it's, it's masculine plural. <laughs> these subtle things were just done in that whole sound change section just to break all these elements of ancient Greek. Oh my god. Since, he, since none of the phrases have more than one word to begin with. Uh, so, it is interesting that the negation is now further away from the verb than the, than the nominal argument. <laughs> and as our final example, <laughs> What humans think is impossible. They come edunotes hon onthroboi degeusin hoi oinoi. Who's a frickin' Again, relative the is the second position. Afterwards. And again, and, and interestingly, the relative pronoun no longer marks the boundary of the clause. <laughs> and also, here we have a matrix verb that is between uh, Edunotes and Oinoi in the two parts of the dependent clause. Mm -hmm. We were, as you might imagine, extremely confused by all of these changes. <laughs> and then it, ha it chanced to be that we learned about uh, the uh, there we go. orthography. There we go. Uh, orthography. Okay. In fact, okay. As hydrological spirits, it is actually extremely difficult for them to remain in a fixed location for a long enough continuous time to actually articulate a, anything by moving air, and thus instead they took to communicating by constructing uh, geological formations, uh, <laughs> where. 
constructing <laughs> geological formations. Was by, by a type of rock. Thus, alpha, uh, alpha will be represented by a layer of serpentine, beta will be represented by a layer of sandstone, gamma will be represented by a layer of granite, and so on. <laughs> okay. And in fact, this Whether probably counts because this is literally using rock. Sedimentary or igneous mm -hmm. precisely corresponds to the three classes of sounds we had in our phonological rules earlier. Uh, for as it turns out, the way that they construct these uh, formations is that they build columns five layers high, red from top to bottom, and then they read the, the row of columns from left to right. Uh, and most of the phonological changes in the language have been, have been driven by the fact that Placing a metamorphic rock on top of a sedimentary rock without turning the sedimentary rock into another metamorphic rock is extremely difficult. <laughs> it's time consuming. And that's they would avoid having metamorphic rocks on top of piles. And thus, we take oh, the no. changing, changing non-high vowels, and we introduce a notation for column boundary, which <laughs> denotes the dollar sign. We can say that actually, a non-high vowel will, assimil will assimilate in rock type to the surround uh, oh, man. the sounds on either side of it are the same rock type or if it is at a column boundary and the one sound it borders is of that type uh, the other rules given admit similar similar simplifications uh, as for the syntax we re-examined <laughs> the situation and discovered that what the speakers seem to be doing is that for is that they have split their sentences into some notion approximating clause boundaries and within <laughs> each of and within the clause of the unit they have reordered the words, they reorder the words uh, however they, they wish in order to minimize the number of difficult transitions between rock types, both vertically and horizontally. Uh, and, that is, <laughs> and that is why phrases are so often uh, split in such strange ways. Oh, that's that why the, the multiples of five and stuff now are does in not there. Oh my god. Uh, Subclausal phrase structure at all. Oh, uh, man. In conclusion, uh, if you are uh, documenting a new language, uh, it may be worthwhile to investigate whether uh, the speakers of this language have, uh, at any point in the near past, uh, changed their manner of articulation, such as from tectonics <laughs> to vocal articulators, or between vocal articulators and sign language, or something oh, yeah. such. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll always be sure to check for that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Additionally, given our, the experience of our diagrammatic syntactician, it, it may be reasonable for IRB re review boards to uh, examine the analysis, the data analysis stage of a project as well, uh, especially if there if, if you, there's been a finding that there is mixed modality in the history of the language. And finally, we will make sure to do that next time. <laughs> <laughs> <I forgot. Anyway. laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, please, please don't, please don't report us to the university, please. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, that plot twist came together pretty well at the end. Oh god, yeah, yeah. And we're back. Let us commence. Looks like we have Almond Kit Kats. Oh, oh, summation symbol. Video. Yeah. Oh, two minutes. Okay, I like the sound of that. Hopefully, it contains a translation. Hopefully, we won't have to read it. Yeah. Really. All right. Please have voice and please have translation. Shaw you fall. Agmashwa coming to submission by me. Okay. Okay. That's tiny. Sure. All right, all right. Also, uh, uh, L sound from a paleo Hebrew version. Okay. <laughs> Vowels. E, A. yeah. O, O, I, A, uh, A. Uh. Interesting. Participles. Past, nya yeah, word. Now, if the word starts with a nya, yeah, then the starting nya yeah, turns into a no. Present, okay. Visible. Word, la. So, a word in the future, sh, sure, word. Same for all, pi from past participle. Plural is la, and then. Yeah. <laughs> like it's just a picture of the pale you you love. movie intro. So that is very. Nizanga, fi, nisha, yagashio, ni, wedo, ni fi fresha. Oh, we're already in the middle. Okay. Wow. Li di shabwa, ya jaya, ya bi jaja gida feja. Nifi Bedo Be fly Moja Misha Nifi Dada Shafinga 
G Gamma. And um, that is it. Thank you for watching. And this has been my Conlex mission for 2023. You know, the new Agmashua mission 2. And I'm it's on Kat, and I am done. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that was fast. All right. Next, we have Strangated Borbs. Or whatever it's going to end up being. Let's find out. Let's see what we have here. Mm -hmm. uh, hello, God. today I will be showing y'all my uh, creation for Nuz Gers Conlang Circus. Correct. So the name of this beautiful Conlang is... <laughs> uh, the phonology okay. is pretty simple. There are three consonants. Oh no. And <laughs> uh, you may be asking the, where the vowels are. And trying to beat my none. minimalism again. Uh, so verbs in <laughs> agree with <laughs> subject, object, person, gender. It's actually noun classes, but we're gonna pretend it's gender. And some okay. other stuff like tenses, polarity, evidentiality. So there, so we have subject agreement and object agreement. Uh, which also agree with first and second person and third person and third person verb agreements also agree with a gender okay so we got some pretty logical genders <laughs> okay as... again rock i do like how that is yeah i do <laughs> I, i'm pretty sure we're, talk we're talking about the same thing but i do like how there's just the word rock with a sign background and flanked by two stars as yeah. well, that would make the rock language. <laughs> um, You're gonna have to do more than that to impress yep. me. <laughs> <laughs> the freaking Captain Knuckles at the, at the little flipping dog. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the queuing the, the, yeah. the, the hyper pirate Captain Knuckles. Yeah. At two times speed. Yep. Just play that. <laughs> Oh my god. If I have the energy during video editing, maybe I'll add that in. Yeah, <laughs> just put in the hyperpower. You saying that in hyperpower at two times speed, that works. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Alright, anyway. You know the drill. Anyway. Insects, including trees. I might up the speed of teeny Sea animals, mm -hmm. but Good not idea. including fish. As we all know, fish are more alike to small plants. So there are four tenses and this is fair. We got present, non-present, which is past or future, near non-present, which is near, fa near past or near future, and then the always then tense, which is <laughs> semi-negative, is always occurring. So past, future, and present. This is different from the infinitive. Okay. So for evidentiality, we got sensory, which means I saw it. Inferential, which means I infer Strong hearsay, which is uh, I heard it from someone else. For polarity, we got affirmative, which means it's true, modal, which is, it might be true, and negative, which oh. is, it's false. Then we have semi-negative, which is, it, it's, but it's not true, nor is it false, it's somewhere in between. Is the polarity like uh, a horseshoe got a graph? Then, a for all, <laughs> on, or everything besides. Because negative comes before semi-negative on this, on this oh, scale no. of polarity. How does that work? So does that mean that it goes beyond the edge of the graph and like loops back around? It's like the halfway point, the middle point of like the horseshoe theory graph or whatever. Is the the problem with something like a semi-negative is that something is either true or false. Anything in between, and you get into uh, quantum quantum yeah. computing. I mean, Tri-state logic is a thing, but uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is a quantum computing language right it's here. It's always tense, yeah. and another chart for always tense. And then a lot of these uh, verb conjugations uh, are the same. The always verb, tense. Uh, verb I think it's just gnomic. Verbs are structured, structured like a subject agreement, then object agreement, then the verb root, then the tense, and then evidentiality and polarity. There are no... Adjectives or pre-slash postpositions, 
just use verbs oh. or parts of the verb structures are required, including object agreement. Okay. If there's no object, you can conjugate however you like. Uh, verbs can be verbs can become affixes of nouns in some cases. Also, there are no adverbs. Just compound them with existing verbs. Same with indirect objects. N uh, nouns do not have the case markings and aren't ordered, so you have to guess each subject and object based on verb agreement. Uh, if the gender is the same, then you have to use context. Okay. <laughs> Utilizes a base one system. In the base one system, a number has as many sounds as the length of the number. For example, okay. one is two is three is etc. Because all numbers are verbs, they will be conjugated as sus. So, for example, we got three apples. Since apples are part of the plant, they have the body part gender, you know, which is gender number thirteen. Naturally. Obviously. So the translation of this is. Which means apple and. Uh -huh. Obviously. Which means, uh, uh, the number three. The root <laughs> of the number three is this. Uh, Naturally. This is the conjugation. Of the word apple. Oh God. Uh, it it has gender number taken for object and subject agreement. And then we have, the dense evidential singularity. Oh god, okay. This is the translation back into English. There are no pronouns in... <laughs> because... Hold on, the, the translation, hold Words on. are the conjugate for pronouns. What about it? So, so, what he's translating is three apples, and that's what the translation is. But if if you translate that back into English, the literal translation is, I saw three apples a while ago, and that might be true. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They were they were witnessed, and it might be true. I see how it is. Okay. The most common writing system is in for, 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 is uh, okay. Rocks, which means it's, rock it writing seems system. to actually this use rocks. Writing system uses okay. three colors of rock: white color rock, black colored rock, and brown source. Red colored rock. White <laughs> rock represents black rocks. Represent oh, and brown God, rocks it represent. <laughs> <laughs> it counts. You, you, you made this it! You made it cross the threshold! This monstrosity. It's monstrosity, yeah. <laughs> I like how the cases and the classes are all listed out as like the numbers. Yep. <laughs> well, why bother glossing it? True readability. There why would you ever want to look at a gloss and know what it is? <laughs> Defer to the table. Yeah, go back to page 4 to know what class 16 is. <laughs> I can almost imagine like a bee making sounds similar to this with its wings in, while, while it's like on flowers. Oh god, yeah, I could see that. <laughs> Just the... I could see that. <laughs> okay, I think we can skip ahead. Yeah, of it. yeah. We get the gist. Alright, I get it. Yeah, we got it. Oh my god. There you go. I hope y'all enjoyed my low <laughs> effort on link. Good times. Good times. Okay. Delora okay. is next. Delora that, by Steven yeah. Kramer. 21 minutes. Oh, I've, oh, this has been floating around in my recommendations for a I while. I mean, you don't even need to copy the link. Just look at your screen, but Just open up the Brave Window game. You don't even need to copy the link. Yeah, yeah, look. It's literally right there. <laughs> <laughs> I've been seeing my own face watching me in my yeah. YouTube recommendations yeah, for weeks now. <laughs> it's so and weird. Also, I like <laughs> during this entire recording, all of these sessions, it's constantly been there. Yeah, it's been there waiting this whole time. But and again, I just can't emphasize how weird it is to see my own face <laughs> in my, uh, like constantly in my recommended feed from a video that's not me, you know? Like, <laughs> oh, one thing that you can do is retroactively now, uh, up to this point, in the recording, every time this comes up, just zoom in on it. 
for like two seconds. <laughs> and it's just I've foreshadowing. So good on the screen. <laughs> it's just foreshadowing leading up to it. Yeah. Oh god. All right. Well, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. 15k and all of the con langing community as i share with you oh no terrible cursed con lion what what effect was that what is yes that is actually how it's spelled because it is pain it is suffering it is mind-breaking frustration, and I made this, despite the fact that I'm severely dyslexic, and I failed out of two language classes when I was in school. But anyway, let's get on to the consonants. As you can see, there are a normal number of quite normal consonants. We have na, sa, za, the, the, ha, la. Except, of course, that's a lie. In reality, this is the consonants, because we have some lovely non-homotic cursed consonants. Good, good, very good. And among others. Oh, Except, God. no, that's a lie, too. This is the actual consonant chart. Uh, and it contains some terrible, terrible, terrible consonants that you can see here with diacritical R's over them. What uh, did that diacritical uh, R mean? I've never seen that on the IPA, you might be thinking. Well, neither have I. In fact, I don't even know if this is the correct way to classify these sounds, because unless <laughs> I'm mistaken, they belong to that dark and seedy category that is sounds that the human vocal apparatus is capable of producing, but no natural language actually uses them. Yeah. Oh, good. Love what I'm trying to represent with these diacritical R's is yeah. that the phoneme is... Uh, Ultra French has a similar thing, except that it's not the velo trill, it's the uvula one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I love the little literal letter R's over this. So, mm -hmm. I... I would put it as a subscript <laughs> next to it. Uh, that would probably make it clear what it is. I've never seen anyone put it above it. The thing that this reminds me of is how uh, in... In German, uh, the way umlaut used to be spelled is you would put the letter E above the vowel. And that's where the double dots come from. So fun fact, the two dots in in, in German are not Darius's marks. They look the same, but they're actually just derived from how people would write an E in, like, old handwriting. <laughs> Oh, wait a second. Hang on, before we go on, because th mm -hmm. this is reminding me of, of something that I saw in an email. Hang on, I'm going to pause this while I pull up the email yep. recording now. So I got this notification, and it mentions this language. It says, it, it, first of all, it's not true. It says, Agma Schwa's second cursed conlang circus is on YouTube. Like, I wish. Uh, for those who enjoy a good conlang, these are bad ones or rather fantastically difficult and strange ones to enjoy even more. <laughs> Although the links to YouTube videos that take some time to watch, you can consult the transcripts or use captures for quick looks, which is true about the first one. But again, we're in the process of, you, you know. Anyway, check out the marvelously alien gurgle. Okay, we haven't seen yeah, that one yet, I don't one, think. Yeah. Um, and then, or the ridiculous Dolor, the one that we're watching right now. And then in parentheses, ultra fresh. <laughs> <laughs> with its oh god okay that that might be spoilers but tired of noise say yeah. it with rocks instead using geolang and then yeah uh so i i just thought that was funny how whoever wrote this post called Dolore ultra french in yeah, quotation yeah, yeah, yeah. marks that, that was hilarious <laughs> that's really funny because yeah <laughs> So let let's see let's see if uh, if that's a reasonable yeah. uh, mistake to make. We'll find Remember out. Remember to unpause the recording. Oh, it, it it was unpaused. We're good. Oh, okay, good, good. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's get back to it. It's made simultaneously with what I think is a uvular trill. Hence, we have such sounds as shh, uh, oh, etc. It's awful. Okay. In addition to these Hold weird on. trilled consonants that aren't real. Yeah. If it is a uvula trill, it should have been written that with the uvula trill subscript. You can, if you want to, you can pull up the ultra French grammar real quick and show that or something. <laughs> All right, let's see. On that uh, oh, colored fricative column, this is how we've uh, written that in, in ultra yeah. French. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Except this is not a trill. It's it's called it's coarticulated with a uvula fricative. If it was a trill, you would write the regular uh, small caps R. Uh, I, I only use the alveolar R if it's actually with an, articulated with an alveolar trill. I but if see. what they're, they're describing is actually articulation with a uvular trill, I would just use the uvular trill. <laughs> I I don't even know, but like. <laughs> 
<laughs> we'll, we'll see where it goes. We'll see how it ends up being realized. Really trills. has a number of very strange <laughs> vowels because speakers of this language love nasalized vowels. What's worse, this is actually a lie too. This is the real vowel uh, chart because yes, uh, you can see speakers of uh, pull this same stupid trill trick with their vowels as well as oh no. the language <laughs> has <laughs> trilled vowels <laughs> like <laughs> ah, ah, uh. That's horrifying. <laughs> I pretty horrid. Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> I should write that down as a feature chart to a language co-articulated oh, vowels with consonants. Oh, I'm gonna God. add that to the, uh, to the joke line idea list. One second. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I've been adding some some stuff from some of these languages to that list. Oh, uh, just God. Just reference. Uh, you can look forward to that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Thanks uh, for that, also, Stephen Especially the, this feature might come in handy for a particular uh, Romance based uh, <laughs> online coming up, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, God, it might, it might, it might just work pretty well for that, let's be honest, because oh, otherwise, yeah. I don't know what to make the technology for that. Okay, so, oh, uh, God. Pull up, like, um... uh, okay, I'm gonna oh. press play. I, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay, uh, uh, etc. And moreover, they included a very odd sound, which is not known to be fully phonomic in any natural language, and linguists are so interested in keeping track of it that they put it on the vowel chart twice. <laughs> what? Okay. Moving on to the orthography, it's terrible. It's just terrible. It doesn't look all that cursed, and indeed, it produces words that sometimes look halfway normal. Because as you can see, it has a number of nice, oh. lovely, curving Latin that letters, but some have weird diacritics. Why but does M come out as a non pulmonic <laughs> so What's up, it's an adjective patel viola fricative? Is that what it is? Uh huh. Okay. All right. Is that the way that they are mapped onto the actual phonemes makes absolutely no sense. For instance, here, the N letter makes the sound shh. And here we have the N sound being made by an apostrophe of all things. Oh no! What? Now, the final tactics of this language, genuinely, actually, for real this time, aren't that cursed. It is a CCVVCC syllable structure with a distinct list of letters that can begin and can end the syllable. All clusters of either vowels or consonants greater than two are eliminated. And the only really weird part is that the apostrophe, making the N sound, can only appear after a word initial L, making the N sound. <laughs> These are kind of together as one syllable what? for uh, phonetic. <laughs> and uh, an important point to note is that identical consecutive phonemes, whether they are vowels or consonants, are not long, they are reduplicated. Mm. Now, on to the <laughs> this is an OVS language, like most languages. And by most, I mean literally one natural oh, language rich. deep in a remote part of South America. Great. It also has a feature that doesn't actually look <laughs> cursed, which is do support. Why is do support cursed? Because English is one of three languages, alongside Welsh and some weird Alpine dialect of Italian, which actually has to specify that an action is being carried out in <laughs> most cases. <laughs> yeah. And there are articles. Articles. Very true. We'll get onto articles later. But the language okay. also has gender, <laughs> grammatical color, grammatical person, grammatical grammatical color. Grammatical color. Animacy, verb <laughs> class, and tense. <laughs> Now, grammatical gender is quite simple. We've all seen this before. It has the standard ultra-feminine, feminine, infra-feminine, infra insectile, piratical, and other <laughs> Piratical? Okay. Piratical. Grammatical color. What is grammatical color? Well, if gender is essentially a system of classes into which nouns are organized, this is like another system of gender, except it's specifically for colors rather than for actual gender or for being hmm. an insect. Or so an animacy. And grammatical colors are red. It's like a color-based animacy or something. Something like that. Oh, God. Okay. It's just of noun classes on top of... It's like two parallel systems of noun classes. Uh... Okay. <laughs> Purple, pink, black, or white. Brown, cyan, orange. Yellow, beige, and blue or green. I love it as, oh, it now, has blue or green. Is a little unusual pink. because it goes from ultramarine <laughs> to masculine, yeah. to, to non-masculine in the niche oh, situation where someone who is not masculine is speaking, to quotative masculine, quotative <laughs> ultramasculine, quotative inframasculine, and quotative non-masculine. Oh god. Mm. Now, grammatical number. It has the excellent addition of the sub-singular number. Sub -singular. In addition to Pile. singular, dual, trial, pile for things of the value of 3.4.5.9. Literally the letter pi. <laughs> pile. <laughs> pile. That one is for when you're specifically describing the circumference of a circle. Yeah. Literally <laughs> just for just for casual 
casual <laughs> kitchen table conversations involving circumference numbers. Yeah. <laughs> tetral, pental, hexal, heptal, octal, and nile. I go side tetral. I go side tetral. Of the value specifically of 24 I go and the good old like, uh, 24th, I think. I, I think so, yeah. Echosine yeah, is 20 and the Tetris is 4, so this will be the 24th, yeah. Great. <laughs> The system of evidentiality begins, of course, with the five senses. So we have visual, oral, tactile, olfactory, gustatory, reportative, confident inferential, unconfident inferential, deductive, inductive, opinional, cultural, for things known <laughs> to the greater society as a truth but are not eternal truths, personal, okay. for things that are known inherently to the self but cannot necessarily be verified through any other form of evidence, and finally, gnomic. Animacy begins with the highest form of life, which is obviously the hyperform of human, then descending to the adult human, the child or large animal, the small animal, the insect, which is not to be confused with the the gender, universe. inanimate objects, weather, astrological phenomena, and finally abstractions. Perhaps the crown jewel of Farouk-ish no. grammar is the verb class system. Not we already have two Lundial. different classifier systems for <laughs> nouns, but this language uniquely has a gender-like system for its verbs as well. Moreover, these are not based on the, the gender in which the verb is. The what? The crass time. Crass is Latin for tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> okay. So, like procrastinate. Yeah, and for something that happened yesterday, something that happened earlier this day, that's the whole year will pass, something that will happen later this day, yeah. and something that will happen tomorrow. Oh my god, interesting. Associated with, but rather the time or the tense in which it is generally believed to take place. So, we have first the far past, the past, the hesternal for anything that happened specifically yesterday, the hodiernal past, which is in the past but still within the same day, the habitual, the present, the persistent, the hodiernal future for anything which happens between now and sundown, the crastinal, same root as procrastinate, which refers to anything happening tomorrow, the future, and the far future. As for the actual tense system, it just has future and non-future. Okay. Now, you might be wondering, how are these systems actually applied? Is it through suffixes? I am wondering. Prefixes? Maybe this language is special and it uses infixes, or maybe tonality, like Chinese. Or perhaps, like, say, Lithuanian uses all of the above. But no, <laughs> no. Oh, no. Oh, God. So this language uses mutation to indicate grammatical category. Now, oh, how does it do this? Like Irish, where it just mutates the initial vowel or consonant for whatever needs to be indicated? Well, no. This language mutates everything. Oh, every vowel no. and every consonant goes through a unique system of mutation for every single grammatical category that is applied to it, <laughs> except That's evidentiality right. and animacy. We'll get to that. Still sounds like now, old Irish how to how are these mutations mm -hmm. actually applied to the words? Oh. Is it something rational, like nouns being inflected for their gender and their color, and verbs being inflected for their class and their tense? No, you silly Arizona cringe monger. No. Okay. <laughs> that is the consistent and consistency is stupid, and we can't have that. Instead, True. nouns and verbs take on the mutations set by each other's grammatical categories. Specifically, uh, nouns uh, take their mutations from the sentence's main verb, and verbs take their mutations from the sentence's subject. Uh, Thus, nouns no. are mutated first for tense, then for verb class, and then for number. Well, they get to keep number. Verbs, on the other hand, are inflected for the noun's gender, the subject's gender, rather, the subject's color, and the person of the speaker. <laughs> However, it's Naturally. important to point out that for the noun that is the main topic of the conversation, the order in which the numerical mutation and the verb class mutation are applied are reversed. That's definitely not due to a mistake I made in the translation. <laughs> to better illustrate these points, let's start by walking through the translation of a simple sentence, a topical sentence, like be flies. Now, first of all, is an OBS language, so it becomes <laughs> flies be to be numerical. These are the words uninflected. I'm not going to pronounce them because I don't hate myself that much. However, <laughs> these words would almost never appear to an actual speaker of this language. An actual speaker might not even recognize these except if they were maybe in their <laughs> adjectival form uh, because no. these are the ungrammatical defaults of the words without any of the mutagenic effects applied to them. First of all, <laughs> we need to determine the subject's gender. Looking at the list, okay. it's quite clear that it is piratical okay. because it has take nectar from flowers, thus making them a class of pirates. <laughs> now, what is the color of a bee? Not the actual color, but the grammatical color. Well, bees are stripy. 
and stripiness is implied by the alternation <laughs> of black and white. Therefore, bees are considered to be black and white. <laughs> black now, the person, and white pirate. That's pretty obvious. It's masculine because I'm saying it. And I am a cursed conlanger. And as we know from last year, all cursed conlangers are masculine, but not that masculine. masculine. You, now we can see the effects <laughs> of these mutations apply to the word, remember, not for bee, but for flies. Looking closely, oh, you might notice God. that this word has actually gained a couple of new syllables in its travel down this cursed road. <laughs> That's because in this language, terminal and initial nulls can become vowels or consonants depending on the situation. Oh, Though no. for adding new vowels and hence That's new consonants, great. this is considered optional, so you won't see it all the time. Amusingly, these mutations can also turn pre-existing vowels into nulls. And if a syllable's only vowel is transformed to a null, that whole syllable is dropped, which means that there are a few cases where mutations can produce entirely null words. And here are the mutations applied to the word for B, based on the fact... The what? Um, because just if you look at any of these mutations, you'll notice that there seems to be little to no correlation between them, at least not in terms of the spelling. Oh god, you're right. <laughs> Maybe like, they actually pronounce this similarly. I can't tell because the spelling is so cursed. But <laughs> the spelling is completely not apparent. But that means that all of this going through that turns into lavasio. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Oh man, okay. Oh, fact that this is not taking place in the future, that there is a singular bee acting, and that the activity of flying takes place normally in the past. Thus, we wind up with this completely unrecognizable sentence, based on the <laughs> which literally means bee, not acting in the future, performs an action typically performed somewhat longer ago than yesterday, flies, an action performed by a black <laughs> and or white pirate reported by a masculine person. But what if instead of bee flies, you simply want to say, it flies. Well, in that case, we can bring in animacy and evidentiality. Oh, yeah, God. you can only indicate how alive something is or how you know it by referring to it indirectly. It's terrible. Mm. <laughs> Recalling our list of levels of animacy and evidentiality from earlier, we find that we have quite a lot of potential pronouns, but in practice, there are only two. Consulting the chart, we find that this is the one we want. Thus, using a pronoun, this is how the sentence looks. <laughs> However, what if instead of bee flies, you want to say the bee flies? Oh, the no, bee flies. No. We need an article. How do articles work, you might ask? Well, they are inflected for everything. Again, except for everybody <laughs> in fantasy. Now, keen students of mathematics will now note that this leaves us with 137,280 uh, possible permutations of the article in Pharaon. Now, what's the system oh, for constructing man. new pronouns to fit the very specific situation that one finds oneself in? Well, there isn't one. Instead, <laughs> all of them are irregular. All of them. All 137,280 of them. And that's not just me not wanting to make up a system for making new articles. I actually made them all. <laughs> all of them. On an Excel spreadsheet oh, so enormous that even by zooming out as far as Excel will go, I can only show you half of it in this format. Is this what you wanted from us, Agma Schwa? Yes. Table, this is the article that we want. <laughs> Thus, we wind up with this rather clunky but specific sentence. At this point, you're probably wondering, what about adjectives, or adverbs, or prepositions, maybe postpositions, or anymore. all the other parts of speech in this language? Uh, yeah, they exist. I mean, they don't really do a whole lot. There's not really anything special about them. They're not inflected at all, but by God, they sure do exist. <laughs> now we're finally ready for the full translation of the B-movie quote. I'd like to apologize in advance for all the mistakes there are in this and for the terrible non-standard gloss I'm going to be using. I have no linguistics training formally, and I'm not going to learn just for this. Oh no. <laughs> It looks, oh my god, the freaking, the freaking romanization, it looks exactly like French. Oh god. I need to make a comment, this doesn't just look like French, this is the exact French translation of the B-movie script. I know that because I looked it up for Ultra French. This literally is the French <laughs> translation of that text. Oh man. I recognize this because I looked it up for Ultra French. <laughs> and it all came like, full this, circle. This is just French. 
It all came full circle. Oh no. Does that mean... Is that a posteriori? I think it kind of... <laughs> I, I guess. I, 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 I guess it has to be. I guess. Uh, <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> Certified French moments. Oh my god. <laughs> this is okay. I can see why that blog poster called this ultra French. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> God damn. Yeah, that tur that is backwards. That's I insane. It is quite literally a posteriori, yeah. Yeah, it's gotta be. That's like the only way to describe it. And, but it was <laughs> but as a plot twist. Like, holy crap. Yeah. Today was an exhausting day. I, I had to give a... A, a Jeopardy, a landscaping Jeopardy presentation in front of a whole company. <laughs> like the game Jeopardy? Yeah, or... yeah like the game Jeopardy. So I, w I was a Jeopardy host today. And... Oh yeah, I, 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 I know how that works. <laughs> Alright. Good times. Alright, we're back on. Our next one seems to be Omic by Hen Henkun or Henchun depending on what kind of uh, romanization yeah. that's meant to be. It's only 3 minutes and 36 seconds, so okay. please contain a translation, I beg of you. Please contain a translation. Oh, I just pasted Delora again by accident. <laughs> Hang on a sec. Copy. Come on, there we go. There we go. Hi everybody, so this is Omen, the con line made by me, Heng Un. Let's go! Okay, that explains okay. it. <laughs> now, I'm not sure how to label this bit because, uh, well, Omic isn't a spoken language. Gotcha. Uh, I'm gonna just label it as uh, phonology for now. But just and that is actually the official linguistics term, even if it's mm -hmm. not spoken. Items oh god, are items. <laughs> stone, Tunnel, okay, I guess cup. it's intending to literally so, use yeah, rocks. This is a really simple uh, item setup thing. I don't know, this uh, bit isn't uh, well scripted. Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, you need to speak with those uh, or else you won't be understood. Olmec has a simple grammar uh, with uh, hmm. no articles whatsoever. Oh. And uh, yeah, it's mainly a VSO language, which is the word order I like the most. I can go on a whole rant about why it's the best uh, word order, but I prefer uh, not to. Uh, yeah. So, uh, it's also very head initial, and I don't have anything else to say. Okay. <laughs> oh. So is this the- this is the translation? Hmm. <laughs> it's a worm cup, the, the rock, and, and paper towel roll. <laughs> Oh god. It's so uncanny. Oh man. <laughs> that that worm is staring directly into my soul with those pitch black <laughs> eyes. Oh god, yeah. Is the rest of the way just translation? I think so. Yeah, yeah, the rest of it is is this visual interpretation of the the worm and all that in various positions uh-huh wow 
Okay, I'm seeing some repeating phonemes and quotation marks. <laughs> this is a good place for someone's parents to walk in to, to see what you're watching, and it's just worms. <laughs> <laughs> just clay worms <laughs> oh my god all right well there was that right. yeah nice and quick looks like slanty's bcap is gonna be pretty quick too uh -huh. please contain a translation i beg of you contain a translation let's see hello i am slanty and for the second curse conning circus i have made bcap or as it is natively known pan hum and at the at the but first, I have to talk about okay. rock, paper, scissors. In a traditional <laughs> game of RPS, two people go against each other, and on account of rock, paper, scissors, shoot, one tosses out the sign, but you have an equal chance of winning to losing no matter what you choose. So imagine that, but instead of three options, you have 101. That leads you to what inspired me to make this language. <laughs> now, let's start oh. off with the grammar. Every sentence consists of a noun phrase. The word shoot, which is a pushing outward motion, and then another noun phrase, and then the verb phrase. The noun phrases, okay. and the verb phrases all have rules that are based off of rock, paper, scissors. The verb begins with an intentional breaking of the rule here, the object's phrase. But since none of the words in the language are nouns, every verb is at its core just to do or to be a thing related to the noun. For example, this cage could be anything from to contain to being able to be contained, and brain could be anything from to think to being squishy. Gotcha. Load words gotcha. are discouraged, but are needed to work and chain before it after the loan word. I am slanty becomes men shane slanty shane shift men shane slanty shane shane men. Isn't that lovely? Okay. But now that's everything for the signed well, version. Who needs it? I mean, you can just say it out loud. Every word is alone from their English counterparts from rock, paper, scissors, oh, God. and then put through a bunch of sound changes to give them an interesting sound. The oh. phonemes are. Oh na, God! Does that na, count? Na, ta, ta, ka, fa, ka, fa, va, sa, va, sa. Does that count? Za, sha, like it's. Ja. Sorry. La, ra, i. We could talk about it more in a second, but if ever if the words are all pulled from English but rammed through sound changes and then put into a different grammar, that is a posteriori, right? I guess that sounds sure. Yeah, and it does literally involve rock because it is rock paper scissors. I guess. I mean, that's a stretch. It, no, it no, is, no, 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 no. Well, let, we'll that's like no. no let, let's no. see. Let's see the execution okay, to, to find see. out. U, u, e, u, u, o, a, C tier. A. And to write it down, I've made it use a combination of alphabets with only one very important feature. It's all X height, because sometimes people read from the shapes of letters, especially the heights. And I wanted to mess with that. Uh, okay. And now for a good friend of mine, Kua, to read off the B movie segment. I wasn't as successful. Maybe. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Bug, object, fly, verb, fly, upward, air. Oh god. <laughs> and that's the end. Oh my god. Okay. That that was that was pretty solid for such a uh, short video. A comment on something they said because maybe some people don't know the terminology. They said they are all X height. This is a term from uh, typography. X height is the height that uh, lowercase letters like A, S, or X, for instance, go up to. If you notice, if you look at any reasonably designed font, you'll see that all these have the same height. And because letter X has that height, it's called X height. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. So all X height means there are no letters that have ascenders like a T or a D. Oh, God. Yeah, I guess that Those makes sense. Us, I, I, yeah. Wow, okay. <laughs> now we're on to... Oh, another quick one. Oh god, oh, be no, prepared to choose a narrator. A <laughs> uh, I can narrate this one. Okay, <clears throat> okay. Alright, we have O'Herrick by Raz. Let's see what O'Herrick is. Okay, let's see. Yep. Okay. Okay, let's see. Um, 
Oh, this is very cursed. Oh, Backstory. no. Hold on, I need to get my mic here. Uh, I've got, <laughs> I didn't have a stand, so I've got to sit up now. Tragic. Ah, wait one sec. Absolutely tragic. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> I need to leave this ASMR this moment, oh god. Yes. <laughs> okay, the year is 2099. The Spiderites have taken over <laughs> Nueva York. With the Spiderite -right movement rapidly expanding, the cult created a language to identify each other and to honor the return of Spider Man. You misspelled the word honor, but otherwise, okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, joke, a language in tribute to Miguel O'Hara, whoever that is, and Spider Man 2099. Dear, did you see the new Spider Man, like the Spider Verse movie? Across the Spider Verse? I've heard of it. Oh my god. Okay, yeah, yeah. That that that's where Miguel O'Hara is from, and that the, thus the name O'Haric apparently. <laughs> oh, O'Haric. That makes sense. Interesting. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay, we're seven seconds in. I think we can. Okay. 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 What is a haric? A language combining Irish and Mexican Spanish? Story? <laughs> that seems rather horrifying, okay. Um, I could probably help decipher that with my basic knowledge of Irish, and you, I, as far as I'm aware of, speak Mexican Spanish, so yeah, yeah. we'll see. Includes memes and in-jokes associated with Miguel O'Hara's Spider-Man 2099. Mm -hmm. Disclaimer, this joke language translation from English to Irish and Mexicans and, and Mexican Spanish aren't 100% accurate. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't would imagine that. that there are many people who speak both Irish and Mexican Spanish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh god. Oh no, okay, let's take a look oh, at the god. phonetics, apparently. Oh god. Uh, not even phonology, so just phonetics. So we're just just talking about raw sounds here. So we have nasals, and we have uh, in typical Irish fashion. We have the velarized, uh, palatalized, and unpalatalized variants of ma. N oh god, that's oh no, you did the thing that I hate. Well, <laughs> I, this is very correct actually. Irish has a distinction between sometimes dental and alveolar. Some dialects at least have a distinction between de more dental and alveolar oh. sounds. So we have a dental ma and a, a nya. Not to <laughs> nah. be confused with nya, which oh. is different. Uh, <laughs> then we have pa, ja, ba, ja. Great, and that's written the T. We have, of course, also regular da and ta. Uh, then we have uh, ba, ya, and pa, as well as ba, and that's a typo, probably. I think they're meant to write ya yeah. and ba. As well as the same thing for the labials. Uh, this is also very Irish, by the way, the distinct uh, having a wa and ya, because in, in old Irish, the sound was. Va. It was a nasalized va, but then in modern Irish is usually pronounced as a uh, as a labiovelar approximant. So that's very correct. Um, <laughs> what else do we have here that stands out? Oh, we have the the s, which stands for fa or sha. Yeah. 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 Uh, the oh yeah, the, the the these are difficult to pronounce. Like the velarized tap. Oh that, no. Yeah, that one always gives me trouble. Um, of course, we have the distinction between um, ra and ra here. And then we have a bunch more dorsal sounds, which uh, these are actually not just palatal lies, they're just straight up palatal. That makes sense, I guess. I think that's also really how it is in modern Irish. At least that's how it's typically transcribed. The thing about modern Irish is also is that there is no single Irish language. There are Irish dialects. So depending on whether you're talking to someone from the west or east of the island, you'll get different sounds. So it's kind of a mess. Yep. <laughs> Again, as, as we've said in multiple previous videos and live streams and stuff, if you ever think your conlang is naturalistic enough, just remember that Irish and especially Irish Old exists. Irish exist and existed. Yeah. Uh, the they were real things. Is <laughs> yeah, the spelling is also very uh, ac like pretty accurate, I'd say. Uh, we have some interesting features of Irish, like the DT. I imagine that's, if you're thinking, okay, words end with DT sometimes, that's probably not what this is. You'll probably see DT at the beginning of a word. And that's because in modern Irish, in order to indicate eclipses, the voiced sound that replaces the uh, voiceless sound, like as a simplification at least, is just prefix to the word so it doesn't change from d to t from t to d it just prefixes a d but the t is not pronounced 
Um, and then we have uh, features such as DH for RA. That's because in old Irish, DH was a VA, but a VA later merged with RA. So of that's course. why they are spelled the same. The same thing goes for VA and VA, uh, which those were the same in old Irish, except that VA MH was a nasalized VA. So, and that merged with BH which was VA, basically. So yeah, the uh, the phonology in terms of the both the consonant sounds that we have and the spelling is very accurate, I'd say. It's very Irish, definitely. Uh, the vowels, too, I think. Yeah. Especially also interesting, the distinction between uh, long R being R. That's also how it is, how it is in, in modern Irish. <sighs> so yeah. And Makes also sense. we have the trumpet sound. That is very <laughs> interesting. That is not that Irish. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll we'll see if it matches Mexican Spanish or Irish in any way. <laughs> also, like how those become but raz. What about the diphthongs that are spelt the same but have different phonetics? That's also a thing in in like Irish. You have <laughs> ten thousand different spellings for every single vowel, where you have like three vowels in a row and they're pronounced like a single vowel because of dialects. Uh, and but the answer, <laughs> my answer for that is to pray to Miguel, of course. <laughs> it's a canon event. Hmm. Pause, I missed something. Oh, oh no. Not so very nice. If you go back a bit, uh, uh, in the vowels section, you'll see a distinction between slender and broad. That's also a distinction that Irish makes. Um, uh. And there's a rule in Irish phonology which, may, which says slender to slender and broad to broad, meaning slender vowels can only go with slender consonants. Slender consonants meaning palatalized. And broad vowels can only go with broad consonants. Oh no. So if you have, for instance, a slender consonant followed by a broad vowel, you need to put a slender vowel in between that's then not pronounced. Oh, because you no. can't have a slender consonant next to a, a broad vowel in spelling. That's why you have a lot of silent vowels that are just there to mark, okay, this consonant is actually slender, even though it's followed by a broad vowel. I don't like that. <laughs> So for instance, if you have something like, uh, if you had sha, it would probably be spelled S-I-A, the I just being there to indicate that the S is uh, palatalized. Uh... But it's also then f it's also fun to try and figure out which vowel is voiceless. Uh, it's not voiceless, sorry, which, which vowel is silent if you have a consonant followed by two vowels and another consonant. And that, I think, really depends on conventions then. It's, it's, it's a mess. It really is. Cursed. I'm Irish. not as familiar with modern Irish as with old Irish, so it's it's harder for me to figure out how modern Irish is pronounced. Help us all. Let's 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 help us all we indeed. Got. We have via word order, obviously, as obviously. all languages. Um, adjectives go before nouns and subjects just to screw with people's thoughts from the future. I like that, I guess. Uh, I'd have to think for a bit on how adjectives work in old Irish, but I think they go after the noun, but it's been too long for that. Um, you have three grammatical genders, masculine, feminine, and neuter, that also makes sense. That's how it's in old Irish. In modern Irish, actually, there is no neuter gender anymore. That has merged with the masculine, if I recall correctly. There's four cases, nominative, accusative, I'm guessing possessive, and em whatever emphas. Emphatic? Um, Emphatic case. I oh, like I see. Yeah, I see. That makes sense because uh, like, like I don't vocative? think much case as Irish has emphatic variants of its pronouns. Probably I is see. what I'm referring to. And also the cases. Um, does modern uh, so old Irish had four cases, but I believe modern Irish no longer has a dative. If I recall correctly, the dative merged with the genitive or something like that. Because I think it only has three cases. This is a whole lot of Irish. I haven't seen much Spanish. It is a whole lot of Irish. That is yeah. that is definitely true. That's we'll definitely find out. true. Uh, what else do we have? 126 prepositional pronouns uh, for reflexive. Yeah, the preposition. Okay, the prepositional pronouns is another thing of Irish. In Irish prepositions and pronouns often coalesce a bit. So um, that's that. For a flexive pronoun, just say F, trumpet, small, <laughs> cell, after the subject's possessive preposition pronoun. Okay. Okay. We are half a minute in. <laughs> okay, there we go. 
Uh, there we go. Okay, I'm seeing some Spanish in oh, there now. God. Oh, oh God! Oh no! Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh no! It's just a combination of them. Oh man! Yeah, she and she become Dale and Sheila. Oh God! And Steve, Steve Cross. <laughs> You're using vos as the as the you formal. That yeah. you, are you considering Chiapas to be all of Mexican Spanish? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, uh, interesting but very choice. Good, but, uh, yeah, it, I I love <laughs> Shiv Tros. Oh, oh that's supposed to be Shiv Tros. Shiv Tros. Okay, this, for instance, would not be legal Irish because you have, and I guess unless it's, I think compounds are an exception if this counts. But the thing in this case is we have a slender you have an i and then the next vowel is broad so you have consonants in between and we don't know whether they're slender or broad that would not be legal in irish <laughs> the illegal. same thing with uh the word for she for for she which i see it's already confusing me because i'm starting to use the palatal sha for what is what i pronounce say the english pronoun she she because in irish it's she uh <laughs> But you can see that in, in O'Hara, apparently, it's Sheila. But again, that wouldn't be legal in Irish because you don't actually know if that L is broad or slender because it's next to a slender and a broad sound. That's, it's, it, is, it is allowed in, in Old Irish, but not in Modern Irish. I see how it is. Okay, let's, let's, let's keep on going. Okay, yeah, and it just keeps on going. We got Mismo turned into these curse. Oh man. Lo mismo. I, I, I love about yourselves with the Vache. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. And okay, for just a whole, go. whole load of prepositions. Yeah. Some of them are. Oh no, they're all combos. They're, they're literally yeah, just mashups. Hard. So I'd say a posteriori is going to be a yes for this. I love a leave and ante become leave <laughs> Oh, leave <laughs> Sorry. Tar and sobre, trujita sobre. Ar, ar, in actual life would be ar. TH is just H. I'm not sure how it's pronounced in this language, but TH in modern Irish is just H. In old Irish it was TH, it was ta. But in old, in modern Irish it would be har. Well, har I, I can't do the the velarize tap. I'm sorry. I can't do the too well. Oh God. Prepositions. Ah, yeah, the position of pronouns. There we go. So this is a thing that in, in in Irish prepositions and pronouns coalesce together, and also in, in all the different uh, uh, persons. Oh, cool. Meaning, you can't just say in and then the pronoun, but, but instead they two coalesce. So it, it seems that each preposition has different conjugated forms here. Okay. So yeah, Irish has conjugated prepositions, in case you didn't know that. I, I did know that, but it, I tried to forget sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Answers. This looks mostly Spanish to me here. Yeah, yeah. Except for like the, 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 the F in the future is very characteristically Irish, of course. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Base okay, 99. Base 99. <laughs> yeah, sure 99. it does. Is that really? Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, oh, for 80 or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty good. I love how some of them are just similar enough. Like, would yeah. you go back a bit? Uh, uh, it's, I don't know, like, uh, like, uh, three. We have three, and we have three, and tres become trees. <laughs> Yeah, in a way, it's like a, it's like a cursed like bringing back Celtic and span and Spanish like a, you know a, a, like a romance language and like mashing them together like that. Yeah, you know, bringing back the Celtic and Italic world. That, that yeah. it's it's kind of weird because it like some of these things kind of fold back into like some old like Proto Indo European looking things. 
Yeah, and again, <laughs> this I think even just these words illustrate pretty well how cursed just the baseline Irish is, I'd say. Because if you look at the word for um uh for one, how how do you how would you guess that's pronounced? Uh man, it's gonna be bad. Like I, logically you'd think you'd say own. Yeah, obviously not. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, how is it pronounced? It's pronounced in of or in in some some uh, 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 some accents. Of yeah. course it is. And the word for four, for instance, is also a good one. Kahar. Ka ka kahar. Kahar. Yeah. Kahar. Yeah. Oh god, that's rough. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. All right. Pretty good. Let's move on. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that's fair. Talking about a number out of the numeral system. Okay, we have the cat. trumpet making its appearance. Yep, good old trumpet sticking itself in there. I really hope there's like a, a, a recorded translation at the end of this. <laughs> Inspector oh, Six God. death as a canon event. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, uh, that's so weird. There, there's Candomica just like stuck in there. Yeah, oh, man. But most of it is is uh, I can see some Irish endings in here. <laughs> uh, I like the look of it. Honestly, it's pretty. Uh, the trumpet is the only standout bit. Yeah, uh, like if the, if it didn't have the trumpet in there, uh, that that this would be a pretty aesthetic uh, language. Oh, yeah, the trumpet is a bit out of place, I'd say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, there. <laughs> must always be eating an em empanada. That's some Spanish thing that I don't know. It's it's, while, it's Mexican food. Yeah. Naturally, while wearing plastic glow in the dark vampire teeth, whenever they speak the language. <laughs> Oh, the spider I'd say it keeps them close to Spider-Man 2099 every day. Okay. <laughs> okay, so it's not just a trumpet sound, it's <laughs> it's the canon event sound effect that became like the meme. The do <laughs> So that's that's the trumpet vowel. Okay, I I see how it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. What is this? Oh god, the Irish dictionary. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah. Next, oh, this is Gurgle by Averin, which is mentioned in that one blog post we checked yeah, out there a we go. ago. And has also been in my recommended feed. Mm -hmm. All over the place. I can finally look Wait, at. By the way, uh, Matt, we uh, hold on. I need to like angle. Oh, it's it's down. literally right yeah. there. It's the first recommended video. Yeah. Right. We there. are almost halfway done. Oh, oh, <laughs> numerically at least. <laughs> numerically, in terms yeah. of time, let's take a look at that. Fourteen hours remaining. We're done with eight. <laughs> Oh Ooh. man, that means all the longest <laughs> submissions are yet to come. That's yep. Oh man. Oh man. Looks like this is gonna take a lot longer. Great, great. But numerically, we're almost happy. Numerically, but in terms of footage, more like a third of the way done. Oh god. Okay. <laughs> the, the the power of speeding up videos. I don't know if we'll need to do it for this one though. We'll, uh, I'll, I'll, we shall see. We'll find out. All right. Oh, we got like a full intro going on for this one. Indeed. Lingulium. 
I like it. <laughs> Welcome to the Lingeleum. <coughs> this is my submission for Agma Schwarz Curse Con Lang Circus 2023. If you don't know him, there's a link to his channel in the description. The language is called. <laughs> Oh god. Oh god. How do you? Jesus how are you? Christ. How does that even work? But you can also you? call it Gurgle. <laughs> it is spoken yeah. on another planet by a species much more intelligent than human beings, which will be important for the grammar and the writing system later on. But I still try to keep the language naturalistic, at least considering the intelligence of the species. Let's start with the phonology. As far as I know, the sounds in the language don't really exist in any natural language on Earth, um, especially because what I'm going to present are only approximations, and when the species pronounces the words, of course, they will sound a bit different. There are gurgles, they can be aggressive and ingressive, Okay. The aggressive oh. gurgle sounds like. <laughs> uh, and this is the so-called uh, legs and voiceless version. And there are also two other variants which differ in the rounding of the lips, at least in the way we approximate these sounds. A rounded version and a tense version. Oh. How do you and even? These are obviously. Uh, voice, no idea how there are also really voiced versions. A low <laughs> and a high. <laughs> and they're very similar, at least in the approximation, to the uvula trill. And they can be combined with the rounded and tense. So, for example, the low, rounded, aggressive gurgle would sound like <laughs> and the tense. Oh. <laughs> Etc. Oh god. Oh god, of yeah. Of course, this is only the romanization. The actual script I will explain later. And it's also not IPA in any way because um, the sounds don't exist. Yeah, it's basically like gum smoke. IPA at all. Just suggestion. Yeah, I guess. Then we have the oh, ingress god. of Gurgle, oh. which can also be rounded. Oh, 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 and upside down or. And tense. Uh, uh, and also voiced and low and high. How do you even. Then we have the I have no idea that we make candidly. Which is sometimes <laughs> rounded or tense, <laughs> but <laughs> never on. voiced, and always follows a gurgle. And if the gurgle is aggressive, the glug will be ingressive and vice versa. And the roundedness of the glug also depends on the roundedness of the preceding gurgle, uh, which is why. Around it is, is, is not really marked in the romanization, and these symbols are in brackets. Telephonic, yeah. So, for example, an egressive gurgle followed by an ingressive glug would sound like. Oh. Then we have the gulp. It is never voiceless. Oh um, no. Or to be more precise, it is always either low or high, and the low one sounds like. And the high uh. one sounds like. Uh, we have the rounded and the tense. Uh, for example, the rounded low gulp right. sounds like that symbol. Oh god! Sounds like yeah. that is a UN ligature. And yeah. finally, there's the grumble. It is also never voiceless and never rounded or tense. The low version sounds like, and the high uh. version, like. <laughs> <laughs> the grammar is <laughs> fundamentally different from anything we get on Earth. The closest we can quick. get is the non-concatenate glitching, okay. glitchy time. Yeah. Is, oh man, this is this is insane though. Holy yeah. Crap. Good God, that is a phonology. Yeah. <laughs> you know how how on the IPA chat there's like sometimes black areas of articulation judged impossible i think we may have to amend this in hindsight yeah yeah we got we gotta contact the 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 international the phonetic association like vipa 
with with some new evidence, some new findings. Yeah, please give me an IPA. Like this could probably be some X IPA. Yeah, we, we need got some X IPA characters for this. We got a lot of mouths doing a lot of unnatural and previously unrecorded things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Literally expand the IPA's range. Oh my god. Anyway. Native languages like Arabic. Uh, only that in Arabic we have usually only three or four radicals uh, which are modified by so-called transfixes and in this language we have 21 what Ooh, I call slots, slots for grammatical categories oh, so every single slot and can oh, like grammatical root category and in every <laughs> of those 21 different categories there are nine or six uh, subcategories which I'm going to present later and Another thing is, because we have this vast amount of slots at our disposal, there are no different word classes. There's only one word class, so which is to Do say there's words. And yeah. Just the the word. way you hmm. fill the different slots, the word class is determined, so to speak, only that um, one word can uh, also be a whole sentence in English, so we can't really talk about um, word classes here. The grumble okay. can be inserted for every single slot and oh. either negates this slot if it is the low grumble or ask, asks whether the content of the slot is true, so it's interrogative, if it is the high grumble. Dang, so this really is some and intense non concatenative morphology. Of either an mm -hmm. egress of grumble, an ingress of grumble, either of them followed by a glug, or a gulp. <laughs> and in the subcategory of the slot, for example, in the case slot, this would be the nominative, genitive, accusative, etc., um, is determined by the variant you choose. So tense, rounded, low, high, or any of the combinations. Well, it, but okay. the gulps don't have voiceless variants. So there are only six instead of the usual nine different variants and different grammatical subcategories you can encode in a slot with a gulp. And there can be five gulps um, at most in a word because there are only five different um, grammatical categories that have only six instead of nine subcategories uh -huh. but this means that the positioning of the gulps in the lexeme determines the order of the grammatical categories so every single lexeme has a different order of grammatical categories which we have to learn and oh, this potential no. lies in oh. the thousands oh no so this is probably the most cursed aspect of the grammar um, especially if you consider the implications for example if someone utters a word the listener only knows which lexeme it is once the whole word is finished because we have only five different sounds that are modified in each slot, right? Hang on, I gotta, I gotta mention this real quick. Like, uh -huh. I'm just thinking. Like, I know a lot of people do when we're making languages, and that we're trying to make them naturalistic. And you can get situations where, like, your mathematical set of like all the combinations could be enormous, but like mm -hmm. that might be a case where doing a zip progression might be helpful or at least like estimating your own ziff progression of like the ones that are common because they're going to be like logarithmically more common um mm -hmm. in, in like their expression than others and so the ones that are deep on that list you know if there's like five thousand potential combinations of inflections or something you can knock off like probably four thousand nine hundred of them 
just in uh-huh. terms of like a naturalistic evolution or whatever. I don't know. I, there's just it's a, a whole lot of very large sets of inflectional possibilities tonight, and it just got me thinking about ziff regressions and stuff and how you can make things. I don't know. Advice for when you're making a non cursed language. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. So 21 slots. It's, of course, a lot of combinations possible, so every possible. A meaning you would wish for in a language can be encoded in a word um, but you have to wait until the end to know which word it is and <laughs> this means only in the end you know which grammatical category is assigned to which slot oh god right? so you have to memorize at least one word at a time and every single sound that is uttered um, every single variant of the different sounds um, and then retrospectively uh, assign the different categories and interpret the word. And this, of course, is not really naturalistic for us on Earth because we <laughs> just don't have the um, brain capacity for such a thing. But the species that the chimney man um, might, as I said, um, much more intelligent on average than human beings. So for them, this is perhaps. Um, easier and an interesting He'll challenge. He'll be our even. emissary to these gurgle aliens. So next I'm going to oh, present God, yeah. all the different 21 uh, categories and their subcategories. Not in detail, just those that are perhaps not um, very self-explanatory. And after that we go on to the translation. So this is the complete Dear list. God. On the left you have the 21 <laughs> oh, categories. And to the right of them, their respective subcategories. And five of them <laughs> have only six subcategories, as I mentioned. And of course, the order in which I present them here is just one possible order of thousands, right? It's a oh, it's an order God. that makes sense, which is um, intuitive. <laughs> but in either way, in both the vertical and the horizontal, anti-diminutive anything oh because no but only the order of the main category is different from lexin to lexin but the also mood. the order of the subcategories oh my god so the first concept that is probably not completely mm. self-explanatory is the nominal projection that's a term i came up with myself and it's basically a way of nominalizing a verb or in this case of course just um an action that is expressed through different categories in combination and for example the um, subjective nominal projection would mean that um, not the action itself but the word would refer to the subject who does this action so um, very similar to the English suffix er, so it, oh, as in um, <laughs> someone who uh, or something which prints is a printer, and in this case, this would be a say, subjective nominal projection. And this we have in eight different ways, and of course, one of them, the na, means not applicable, so this means that um, there is no nominal projection, it's just the bare action that is expressed. The next gotcha. one is the combination of case, proximity, and location, which is um, a very complex system that <laughs> I talk about in the previous video on my channel. So if you're more interested in it, check it out. And the combination of comparison and quantity is also something I already talked about on this channel. So if you're interested, check out the first video after the introduction. Finally, we have the verbal projection, which adds an action to what is expressed by the root, which is usually a nominal concept and not a verbal concept. The categories, for example, give, take, have, are very broad, usually context and the case of the object or subject, etc., take care of disambiguation. There's one verbal projection which is not so self-explanatory. I call it the habitual. Oh, like the pause again, the audio is going if we have insane again. Oh, God. I'm just looking at some of these yeah. many, many, many things. 
<laughs> wish, permission, daring, mutual, ni nihil, nihil, yeah. omnial. Nihil is is Latin for nothing, by the way. Yeah. <clears throat> it's just funny because it's not like nihil, like the word for nil, but like it's nihil, like. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my god. All right, let's get back to it. See if it works. The nominative in the mm. case slot, um, it basically means that the subject, which is expressed by the root, does what it usually does. Later, this will occur with the root b, as in the animal, and basically means that a bee flies, because <laughs> this is what bees usually do. Of course, you could imagine like buzzing or um, <laughs> collecting nectar, but uh -huh. Um, uh -huh. I just chose that this is what is encoded by this root. It's basically um, in every single root there's an information about, uh, lexical information about what the habitual would do. Um, if the case uh, slot doesn't have the nominative, but any other case, um, as well as the proximity, of course, then the whole meaning is um, dependent on this case. So, for example, if it is in the accusative, it would mean something like that Speed up a teeny bit more. the object is done to what is usually done to it. So, for example, you usually keep bees if you are a beekeeper. So, this would <laughs> then make the bee the object of keeping the bees. And this whole uh, concept would be expressed by the root with b as the main meaning of the root in the accusative and the habitual verbal projection. Right, let's move on to the translation. I'm going to go through it rather quickly again and only point out um, non-self-explanatory aspects. The first word expresses the beginning of the sequence that is to be translated Dear according to all the of aviation. More literally, it would be according <laughs> to all the conceptions flight. of flight. And in the nominal projection we have the conceptual, mm -hmm. because it's not flight, uh, which would be the meaning of the stem, but the conception of flight, or the concept of flight. And the combination of the genitive case and the proximal proximity um, means according to. You might also have noticed that there are not applicable markers in many of the slots. This is very common. In most sentences, not every word has a real, actual grammatical subcategory in every single slot. <laughs> Which sounds very disused oh. for the not applicable. The last slot has nothing. nothing. And not always the same. In this respect, of course, the language is rather unwieldy and ineffective. I think this makes it even more cursed, but of course, at the same time, also more naturalistic. The next word is there is no way a bee should be able to fly, or literally a reason why all bees can do what bees usually do actually seems not to exist. The a reason why is expressed by the causal nominal projection. The seems not to exist of the more literal translation is expressed by the combination of the illusory evidentiality and the negated subject as of syntax. And the verb projection habitual expresses the bees do what bees usually do. And of course in combination with the ability modality. In the word its wings are too small, the concept are too small is expressed by a combination of the excessive comparison, the <laughs> the stem for the entire verb projection with the. <laughs> then we have the word to get mm -hmm off the ground with mm -hmm being the object which comes with the next word and <laughs> the concept of the ground is expressed by the combination of genitive tangential and the location above as explained in the previous video here i think everything is rather self-explanatory here we have the habitual again we have a verbal protection <laughs> with think in this word and finally the last word expresses what humans think is possible with the nominal projection objective and the verbal projection think. Now, before I read out the translation, I want to present the writing system. The language is generally carved into rocks or faces or cliffs using the tentacles, which are also used for extracting nutrition <laughs> from minerals. And the language is read by means of echolocation, because this species doesn't have any sense of vision. When rocks oh, are used, man. they usually just pick them up from the ground. That's and some good walk. anatomy on right the there. Rock, the lexeme of the root is carved with a unique character for every single root, just like in Chinese. On the other side, the transfix is carved, also with a unique character. By transfix, I mean the specific combination of grammatical subcategories, which is encoded in the word. If we assume that every single combination occurs, this would mean you have to learn a number with 15 zeros of those <laughs> symbols. For us, this is of course completely unfeasible. For the species, it is possible and in this way naturalistic. 
<laughs> Sometimes there are regularities in the symbols for the transfixes, which makes them a bit easier to learn. But they always only wait. Rocks shaped by nutrition extracted tentacles of main categories or subcategories. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. With the respect of root, so you still have to learn those. And then there is an optional third symbol for negation and interrogative, which are, as I mentioned earlier, expressed by the low or high grumble, respectively, which are inserted before the slot which they modify. Um, so there are a lot of symbols because there are a lot of combinations of neg negation and interrogative but usually there's only one or two negations and or interrogatives per word so you only need like a handful different symbols for the negation and this is the translation every line is one of the eight <laughs> words i showed earlier if Dear you take away god. the diacritics you get the roots which are one of the two characters which are carved on the stones oh god and hold the diacritics on. are basically oh, the other man. character the transfix i want to hear this Obviously, in normal speed. this is just the romanization hold on the audio is glitching again oh no Oh god. Look look at this though. Holy crap. I am seeing it. This is horrifying. <laughs> what a nightmare. Oh man. This is special. Because themselves are unique and don't have those kinds of regularities. Oh, be Notice it? the three oh, words I guess not. which have the same root and only differ in the diacritics and in the negation markers, the grumbles. Oh yeah, I could sure see These that the without a gloss. These are the three of the root B, or the equivalent, of course, on their planet. They don't have exactly the Bs we have on Earth, obviously. <laughs> I will now read out the translation. <laughs> Oh no! Oh god! <laughs> How do you do this? in one take or are you doing this p stitch together okay i heard like a clip there oh, geez. yeah good god imagine just doing that one take yeah This is truly something. This is pretty good for an alien language. God damn. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the language Gurkle. I hope you've enjoyed the ride. If you have any suggestions as to how I could make the language even more cursed, let me know in the comments so I can take your ideas into consideration for the next circus. Until next time. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>